Will, you're gonna have to get into the into the uh, Twitch chat here in a minute and break up palm tree and lemon lids. They need a room. They they might need a room somewhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, those two. Mike Memenga now currently sitting about a second over his fastest for 144.767, which he just set at 1.2 seconds up. Let's follow this out and see exactly where he lands. Decent lap. Lindino, I know, I know, they do. No two people who argue that much don't aren't in a relationship of some sort. Could be a work relationship, could be anything, but they're in some sort of relationship. Good for them. Well, Mike Momega able to set a new fastest lap for himself. 143.5. And Goodnight11 in the chat says, just note, number 555, that Bentley on track. Two minute technical issue after the first stint, another one after the fourth stint, lost something like 10 minutes and just unlapped P14. Never give up. And they're right. Good. So, Palm Tree, I, I, I asked you, you said you needed my opinion on something. And then all you did was start arguing with Lemon Lindsay. These guys. Oh, uh, Dimitri Athwal now Providing into you the pits. I, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Just when you need it as well. Almost, right? well, to over 10 hours in now. Almost to the halfway point. Today's race. Rolling straight through to tomorrow morning. So the sun comes up, we will be here. I'm gonna lose Will at some point. I'm gonna lose Huff at some point. Or he's gonna leave me. Okay, I'm gonna stay me with all y'all. What's that, Clues? That's, you no, know, it's me, Kevin. Oh, Huff's back. What's up, my dude? All right, you know, just getting some things done. Awesome. All right, with Huff getting back, I'm gonna jump and do a couple of instant reports with Ottens and uh, Clueless. Uh, a few more come in? Yes, indeed. All right, well, good luck, I'm gentlemen. Terrible. Thank you. In a bit. You guys got yeah. it covered, right, Will? Yeah, yeah, we're good. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, gentlemen. Here, we'll talk Thank to you, you again before tomorrow. Yeah, indeed. See ya. You missed some interesting racing, Kevin. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. Nothing too horrendous. A lot of these guys really trying to send at, point, at times and throwing themselves off track. Um, luckily not causing too much grief on the way through. So, not a ton of incidents. Apparently some obviously have come in, but this is all backmarker stuff at this point. Our, our front runners are really spread out. We haven't had a real battle in quite some time. Yannick Kurtz doing his best to close in on Theo Overhaus. All of our solo drivers still doing a great job. Yeah, where's my man in the Lexus at? Uh, sitting in P4. Hers, yeah, P4. He he. So a little bit of a spin earlier. He spun himself out. Uh, yeah. Put him, dumped himself in the corner off the chicane and had to back up and and get back on track. But other than that, has been really consistent all the way through. Doing a great job. All these drivers, uh, so many of these guys have been very consistent through this whole race so far. Um, and really doing a good job to try and hold on. Now, if you take a look here, Huff, if I jump over. No, oh, that's not who I want. <laughs> uh, Nicholas Wayfair. I'm trying to find who I want. Mm -mm. Here we go. Check that out. And I need to go live again in the Discord, don't I? 
Uh, yeah, unless we, you know, speak with a bit of a delay. There we go. So check out that gorgeous BMW. These guys have kept this car on track. Massive pile, not a massive pileup, but got involved with a Ferrari in a huge yeah. accident in T1. Different drivers in both cars, uh, different team drivers in both cars at that time, but I don't know how this car drives anymore. My man needs some duct tape, but uh, uh, look at the, the bumper, look, look at, at the diffuser. <laughs> it's hacking. Like, like how are there? How is there not aero? Pro how are there not aero problems with this vehicle right well, now? But they're still running forty threes. Here's the thing: his hood's kind of propped up a bit, so he's getting some extra cooling to the engine, so he's probably able to push a little bit harder. You know, sure it's dragging him down, but he can run it harder. So I think they balance out. Balance it out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it looks rough. That is really rough. Corny now coming out of the pits with his signature "Don't Kill Me" across the back of that five one three Aston Martin. Is it just like a thing that each livery has to have some kind of like little hidden Easter egg or hidden pun somewhere? Little um, hidden message, yeah. Yeah, the livery I was running had uh, a "Don't Punt Me" little thing on the the rear bumper. Oh, there you go. You gotta send a message to the guy behind you, right? Yeah. What we need is somebody to go very, um, very trucker with it. And obviously there's no mud flaps on these cars. So instead, yeah. right, maybe right below one of the lights, a Yosemite Sam that says back off. Nice. <laughs> That's what we need on a livery right there. Yeah. Your boy Blue now driving that Nissan out on track. I have promised. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, dude. I actually had uh, had my earbuds in while I was out doing some errands and stuff, and you know, mowing my lawn. And uh, mm -hmm. I heard Blue's fantastic interview. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Yeah. How his you know his teammates had already previously thrown him under the bus. Oh, and G. Steven losing position now, spinning in the Audi. Jump back real quick and throws himself off through the chicane again. Another driver throwing hard, allowing George Garten to get by. George Garten now up in the ninth. As Steven gets himself reset on track, but another one in the chicane. It seems like these guys are catching that curb and it's throwing the back end of the car ahead of them and putting yeah. them right back in that corner. Yeah, man, it was doing the same thing with me, like the second part of the curbing, really. Um, and it, it seemed worse under, I, I guess, uh, lesser fuel load, you know, more tire wear probably mm -hmm. a combination of both it just it really did send the rear end around yeah it, it seems like it spins it right out and ahead of them and just forces them into that corner it's the same thing we saw with patrick kerr's earlier uh, it was the exact same thing that happened to him but g steven back on track now lost two positions back to p10 we'll see if he has opportunity to make those up only 6.2 back from garten now yeah, I heard uh, Brian, Mr. You know, Esports legend himself, made a fantastic drive from what was he P13, I believe, is when he started out. Yeah, all the way up eighth, thir I thirteen up correct? to yep, thirteen up to eighth. Lost two in the pits, um, but uh, no, who am I looking at here? Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong, uh, the wrong thing. So, John Tracy came out after him. And John did a great job, held held that position, held P10. Again, they lost two while in the pits, so back down to P10, but then held on to it for his entire stint. Didn't lose a single position, so did a really That's good great. job overall to, to stay that consistent throughout the whole thing. Again, driving in traffic, as we've seen today, yeah. to be able to keep it up is really a good job. And Mathis, Mathis was doing well up here. Patrick Kerr is looking to chase him down. 346 laps deep now. Molson and Huff, I'm ordering my PC on Thursday, says Palm Tree Oil. Oh, let's go. Y'all gonna be in trouble now. Y'all gonna be in trouble now. You gonna try to bring that uh, Minister of Defense title over to the, the PC? I think he Master can. Race World? <laughs> Hey, he's no joke, though, like, in all seriousness, and, you know, we saw with TG and, you know, a lot of the other Xbox guys that jump straight over, dude. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, a couple weeks for him to get the hang of it, and they're right there. Yeah, there is such a different palm tree. Very fast. Season 2 winner uh, over on Xbox. Or, I'm sorry, season... Yeah. Sorry, season 1 winner over on our Xbox League. 
Season 1 champion over there. And then, unfortunately, we lost him for a significant chunk of Season 2 because the update came out. We had to make a choice, Series X or 1X. After taking a community vote, there were only like three 1X drivers. So Palm Tree, unfortunately, not to be able to not was not able to participate uh, in most of season two. Finally got to a Series X and is back with us for season three over on Xbox. And now we'll be looking to slide over to the PC side. We'll see how long it is before he unloads his Xbox as well. Uh, dude, I think I did the same. You did the same. I did. Man, it just became a dust collector. You know, if you got a PC, it can do everything an Xbox can do. They can, and which is their goal, Absolutely. right? I mean, if you if you watch sure. it, what Microsoft's trying to do, they really don't care. Do you if you play Game Pass on PC or if you play Game Pass on Xbox? They're not interested in winning console wars anymore, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. They're they're interested in selling Game Pass. So I was able to. There were literally when I got rid of my Xbox, there were literally two games I had to get. I waited until they went on sale at like seventy five percent off, and it was worth it. Buy them on the PS five and be done. So. Yeah. Yeah. George Garten now up into eighth as Kill Divic drops into the pit. Steven moving up as well. So G Steven back up into P9. So again, gonna come out well from this stint, I think, with Steven behind the wheel. Yeah. And we will see. Yeah, I mean Steve's the lesser of their driver, not to, you know, not to like, you know, down not downplaying or anything, but you know, he's on a rapid team. So yeah, and the right, I mean, I mean yeah. one teammate's always going to be slower. It's not, again, like you said, it's not not ripping on him at all. I'm low no, all day. He's still fast. Yeah. Exactly. He's still, compared to them, you know, that's a mm -hmm. very good team. Very and good still team. able to hold these positions. I mean, you know, when you're racing with uh, esports legend Brian Canepin, you're still able to hold on. So. Palm Tree. I was thinking I might retire from Xbox ACC this after this season and become a commentator for Xbox ACC. Palm Fantastic. Tree. If that is the decision you make, and you're going to have a PC, all you got to do is let me know when you get to that point. I have that Elgato sitting here. I will ship that to you so that you can pipe it into your PC. I'll help you with the overlays and everything, and you will be able to commentate. Vanderhoekt now into the pits. Matthias Wass moving up into second. It looks like Garden seems still hanging in there tough too. P8. Absolutely. These guys have been today. Yeah, these guys have been doing a really good job today. Remco, uh Remco Ottens, George Garten, mm -hmm. Sebastian Lucasen, and Cole Gress. All really doing a great job. And we've got a little bit forming up here with Patrick Kurz moving into third. But Vanderhoek right back out from the pits. Only about one second off pace, and maybe we're gonna get ourselves a battle forming. I think so. Should be a fun dynamic with the Lexus top end and the M4. You know, it's kind of better at the mid range, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's going to be on colder tires, obviously, but he's going to be sharing a lot of that lovely Lexus tow. But able to come out only a second behind, give him a lap to warm him up, and then see where he's able to throw it, right? And we've seen it multiple times during today's race. T1 seems to be, and T, not just T1, T1 wide. You've got the position, you can take the outside into T1 because of T2 right there cutting back the other way. You've yeah. got an opportunity. All you got to do is get alongside in T1, and then you've, you're given inside position into T2. It's worked out for a lot of drivers today. Yeah, I think that corner there, you know, it, it's an aggressive overtake, but it's definitely there. And I think both drivers got to show, you know, racecraft, race craft, obviously, in a lot of respect to be able to take that two wide cleanly. Mm -hmm. 100%. But it's a great overtaking zone. Yeah, the, a lot of guys have taken advantage there today, and we'll see if it's going to continue now. Vanderhoek about still about a second back, so not going to happen this lap unless you know Kurz really misses his break point, either throws it deep or goes way slow into it. Um, what I've noticed is you got to be alongside or within about a tenth, where it's not going to work out, right? You, you've really got to be right there to make it play. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but as you were saying, George Garten and team, again, talk about consistency. They've kept themselves. We haven't seen a lot of trouble other than, and that's where I feel bad for those guys because if we look at that team and I will just throw it up here real quick because we talked about it earlier we talk about Garten these guys are back to flat right so you're like oh they've kept you know they've been p8 the whole race well no 
in lap one, before T1, Ottens gets waffled. These guys lose like nine positions, and now they're back to even. They were P19 oh, wow. at one point, and now they're yeah. back to P8. So they've done a fantastic job getting themselves back, just back to even, I think, is a, 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 a great thing. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, think, I thought they were P8 when I stepped away. I'm like, did they literally just hold their hold their position for <laughs> you know, a couple hours? No, they uh, they they had opportunity and they they got themselves back up there. So good on them. G. Steven now into the pits. Going to drop that Audi back to P10. But Vanderhoek still staying within about a second of Patrick Kurz. Kurz, one of our solo drivers today. I could only imagine. Uh, I know we touched on it a bit before, but just seeing the pace that he, he's able to put out lap mm -hmm. after lap after lap to be consistently that fast, holding, you know, P3 after, you know, what do we, just over 11 hours in? Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, Kaima, you would have to go to the Discord, Discord to ask that question. The stewards are working over there. Unfortunately, that is not one we can answer here on stream for you. Yeah, Patrick Kurz, Kurz is consistent uh, 143s throughout this entire race. Like, to just maintain that over and over. And again, that doesn't take away from Overhouse, Matthias Wass, who are both ahead of him right now. But they do have teammates, right? They're, they're getting breaks. This cat's running this pace by himself and again to me that's that pace is impressive no matter what because i'm slow so it doesn't matter but that just like it just amplifies it right like <laughs> for sure Definitely. yeah yeah you did it for two hours you did it for 24 so whatever <laughs> you know when i first hopped in the car you know i kind of stepped in you know felt my way into the race you know saw where we were at in position you know got comfortable with the car and just try to keep it together, pushed a little bit, but mm -hmm. he's got to push, push, push for 11 hours and 15 minutes so far. Yeah, and doing a great job at it, too. Yeah. And holding it down this whole time. And there he heads into the pits. Speaking of, the Vanderhoek able to move up into P3. Kurtz will drop there. Now, the question I want to see is, does this provide opportunity for one of these Porsches? You know, these Porsches we've seen running together today, currently driven by Pavel Dolzal and Nikos Handke, um, really sitting five and six this whole race, right? The, these guys gained a lot of positions. They, they're, they're both up six places since the start of this race, starting 11th and 12th, respectively. Both of them up six positions, now running in fifth and sixth. Is this the chance to get jumped up? Now, I think they're down too far i don't think i think they're down a lap or more uh i don't have a time in front of me right now as you can see it's blanked out because well kurz is in the pits um but i'm curious to see if these porsches are going to be able to jump up any higher and see if we can get one on a podium today well what i'm showing here adam is p6 uh car number 67 they're on lap 347 so they're currently two laps down um car number 70 porsche Mm -hmm. He's on lap 349. They're just a, a lap and a half down from the leader. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm showing, yeah, Kerr's showing on, on lap 350 for me. So, and he is now, looks like exiting the pits. He's got a long drive ahead of him, but I don't see Dolzal able to catch up in time. Although it may be close. I think he's going to roll 350, and yeah. So, right there it is. Coming out, Patrick Kerr's back out on track. Pavel Dozel only about six seconds back, so did catch up quite a bit there. Now tucking back down, yeah, around six seconds once it's all said and done as he heads into T1. So again, obviously puts him within striking distance. Yeah, and you got to think, uh, you know, the Lexus coming out on fresh tires. We're not sure where, you know, the car 70 Porsche is at on his stint. Uh, mm -hmm. He may need to, to drop in pretty soon. You never know. Let's see. No, oh, that's been stops. So hold on. Oh, 
thought I had a current stint timer somewhere. I told you the software's so comp. There's so much stuff in here. That's fantastic. It lives there. There it is. Uh, so, so, uh, Dozal's been in the car for about an hour and three minutes at this point. Okay, so he should be coming in pretty soon then. Yeah, he should be dropping in soon. Um, and this looks to be pretty accurate because it shows Kurt's only, uh, Kurt's only out on track for a minute 20 at this point. So, pretty accurate. Man, fantastic on that software. Yeah, I love it. I just, I got to talk to the dev because there's some things I'd like to do to make it a little easier to, to deal with during races. Porsche 70 will go into the pits in 10 minutes. Random JDM guy says in chat. Kerr's going to be king of Imola after this race. Wait, why is the JDM guy talking about a Porsche guy? We're, we're talking about the JDM guy and the Lexus battling him. Who, who signed <laughs> you on, buddy? <laughs> Guillaume Sinon back out on track. At number 22 BMW and struggling coming out of the pits into the gravel. Got to get your wheels under you on your way out. Vanderhoek, only 12 seconds back from Matthias Was Vanderhoek closing a lot of gaps today, so we'll see if he's able to do that again here and tighten those times down. Leader got a drive through. He sure did. That is entirely possible, yep. Cutting himself off. Track limits. Let's see if there was an incident uh, regarding that or if it was just track limits. seeing anything yeah i don't see any incidents so yeah. drive through will typically be but let's face it i mean part of what's kept this team made up of theo overhouse driving now julian rayberg justin wixman and leon lang ahead is that this is going to be their first drive through yeah yeah right and justin yeah, i see justin is in the chat right now justin i apologize if i'm mispronouncing your last name i i do my best man i apologize for that but but these guys have been impressive because this is the first one and it's part of why they've got that 100 second lead, right? Because the team two right now, the team sitting in P2 has three drive-throughs. Vanderhoek, their team, three drive-throughs, right? So track limits are a problem here for these guys and the leader finally got caught up in one and is now gonna go in and serve that penalty. But that's not gonna get, you know, Matthias Wass is not gonna catch him off of that. But he's roughly a hundred seconds off, so yeah. Well, I mean, for a pit stop here, a little I'm over for a lap down. It. Right at the forty mark is when he entered the pit. We'll see as he drives through now. So that's looking about like a 24 second drive through the pits, you know, not including obviously his slowdown and speed back up. So, so overall, not bad. Like 40 second penalty. So, and so if we look, look at, at that, me yeah. my math, he was 100 up and now he's sitting around 56, 55. So. 55, 56. Yeah. And, and I'm showing pit time of 40.6 seconds total. So, hey, I can count. Look at me go. <laughs> Proud of myself. <laughs> I, one thing I'm learning, though, as we watch this, you know, as we look at that time difference, if you'll notice now, did Wass head into the pits? No, why is it still, that gap is changing so much. It's like once someone goes through the pits, yeah. the timing yeah. has to find itself again. It gets very confused for a minute. And it'll take almost half a lap for that, that timing to work out the way it needs to, to be, to be accurate. Um, yeah. You see there, it's back up to, it's showing on Maya 98 seconds again. Like, what? No. And right there, it will, though, now, as Matthews Waz heads into the pits himself. The question being now, can Vanderhoek get around him? The guy's so spread out right now, it's very hard to tell sometimes exactly how far back they are. And there it is, Vanderhoek able to take up E2 from Matthias Waz. Still so much time left today. Nikos into the pits as well in the number 67 car. 
one of our Porsches dropping in, drops back down to P7 as Joris Mentink takes up position in P6. Joris, again, one of our solo drivers. So solo drivers now holding two of the top 10 positions. Got a yellow flag and a white flag, uh, car number, position number 14. Um, a coral. Just seen that pop up. A uh, couple yellow flags and white flags back through that section. Yeah, so the one thing I've learned too is this will, if you're watching the overlay, uh, mm -hmm. anytime someone comes out of the pits, they'll yellow flag them on their way out. Ah, so makes sense. I've yeah. learned to watch that if it shows yellow at right after the pit stop, you just ignore it. Yep. And again, part of that's talking to the dev, but part of the things, one of the, you know, like a couple of things I'm seeing is we don't get penalties with this overlay. If, if there are penalties on the standard ACC overlay, you can see those. You see drive through, you see stop, go 30, things like that. Yeah. We don't yeah. get them here. And part of that is, I mean, he has said directly when people have asked for it is that Kunos doesn't expose that. They, they don't expose it. He's trying to figure out how to do it. He's working on it. But from what he can see, they don't expose it. So it's very difficult for him to try and find that. There's been a, a bevy of them today, so... Yep. So, if if you're blue right now, so we're watching blue in his Nissan, in that 614 Nissan. If you're blue right now, now, Guillaume Sinon is behind him in the number 22 Ferrari. He's down four laps from blue. Do you do you bother defending that? Not at all. If you're driving? Or do you just let him uh, by no. so you can cruise? Let him by so I can cruise. You know, you got a lot of clean air behind you. Um... You know, in my case, it's probably going to be a faster driver. So I'm going to try to borrow some of his toe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh-oh. And let's jump and back real quick. Free. Patrick Kerr's off track. Looks to be self-inflicted, but let's catch up and see. And it looks like he just lost control of the vehicle. Maybe some hardware issues like we saw earlier with another team. Patrick Kurz just kind of comes out of the corner and then heads straight into the grass. And still sitting there, I'm going to have to believe. Uh-oh. I wonder if those are bathroom breaks. He's like, man, I can't go. I got to go. <laughs> right. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> I'm hoping he didn't disconnect here, though. He, nope. Well, Matthias Waugh is now moving up into P3. Patrick Kurz continues to sit there on the side of the track. You we'll see Mathis Heiss now catching up, going to push him down to P5. He's unable to get moving, still yellow flagged and still sitting there on the side of the track. Seems to me to be, that's got to be a hardware issue, right? A disconnect? A pedal yeah. disconnect or something? I think so, because, I mean, he's kind of parked perfectly over there, so it seems yeah. like he was in the steer, so I... Let's hope he's able to reconnect because, man, I I'm, hope I'm so. impressed with the work he's put in today. Absolutely. I'd hate for his race to end due to a hardware issue. I'd hate it to end for any reason other than it being over, but that, that one would just be insufferable after all that work. Palm Tree said his controller batteries died. Yeah. <laughs> Lexus needed a pee break. Uh oh, and hey, we've got a disconnect. Call. We just lost him right there. Oh, no. My Everybody man. moved up. That is that's sad. That is. But we'll see if he's able to rejoin Matthias Heiss now, or Mattis Heiss taking up P4 in the Porsche. Joris Mentank moving up into P5, another solo driver today. And Moritz Husser, oh, another Porsche currently into P6 with that move. That brings George Garten up into P7. Again, these guys finally jumping up, able to get themselves a position gained after that Lap one incident, starting in eighth, now up into seventh. Oh yeah, I'm showing them a, a lap down, though. I don't know if it's updated yet or not, but... Uh, uh, yeah, Moritz, yeah, because Moritz uh, Husser is down a lap, and then they're about 77 seconds behind him. Yeah. Oh. Still in a pretty good position to mm -hmm. possibly make another move up. Yeah, so right now, Overhouse is the only person on lap 357. Vanderhoot and Wasp both on lap 356. Overhouse just coming out of the pits, in fact. So, Vanderhoek. Van oh, wow. 
Now we're getting some action. Overhouse comes out of the pits 1.3 seconds ahead of Vanderhoot. There we go. So a play now for P1. Come up on hour 11. Our 24 hour race today. Julian Rayberg taking over in that number 36 car. Patrick Kurtz back on track in the pits. Comes back in in the 96 with the right livery. So hopefully that means he's reconnected and is going to be able to get back out there. Again, may lose some positions, but is hopefully able to finish his race today. Yeah, I would love to see him get back in. Well, he's very lucky, right? He doesn't have to worry about team swap or, or driver swap, right? So maybe that yeah. helps him be able to just jump back in versus what we see. Because with the, with the driver swaps, um, I think I mentioned it while you were gone. It's kind of been this 50-50 thing that's been happening. Your team, Huff, got cut off and couldn't come back in, right? We saw the same thing happen with the 949 team. They left this car 949, came back in as 950, then left again and came back in as 949, but then we're lost. We lost them. Oh, and there man. we have it side by side right there. Vanderhoek looking for that and undercut and getting the inside going through the corner. Vanderhoek going to move into P1. They are running side by side. Banging tires. Blue. Very good move through that corner. Julian Rayberg now. Tires too, so. Julian Rayberg going to have to go in at some point, but we're going to continue side by side into T1. We'll see if Rayberg is able to hold on to it on that outside swing. And we're, oh. we're rubbing. Little bump. Little bump That's into fine. the curb. That's but fine. Everybody's, everybody's safe. Rayberg able to hold on to position. Vanderhoek going to reset and come back at him again. That just goes to show you the, the straight line speed of the Aston compared to the M4. He got a lot better speed in the straight yeah, there. He had a much better jump on him coming out of that. Well, Patrick Kurtz now still in the pits, dropping down to P6 as Mentink comes around, taking P5 back, which we figured would happen. But Mentink now into the pits as well, so Kurtz may be able to get an opportunity to jump back up, but Hauser, Husser going around, both of them. We watch this battle continue for P1. Freyberg and Vanderhoekt. Looks like Joris moving. Patrick Kurtz now out. Of, uh, is he moving out of the pits? Yes, sir. He's leaving the pits now. Is he? Perfect. Man. And we watch Vanderhoekt. Vanderhoekt and Rayberg again going to doorbang around the chicane. Vanderhoekt able to get the run as he knocks Rayberg just a little bit wide. And trading paint down through the tight corners. Both chicanes on this track. These guys decided to play bumper cars through. Now, what do you do if you're a driver there in that in that particular battle? Most of you guys are, you know, P1, P2 battling out. You know, this is this is a dogfight at this point. Uh, you reporting stuff like that? Um, everybody for me, everybody stayed on yeah. track. Yep. Uh, what you know? What do people like to say? Robin is racing, right? I yes, think given the fact that both drivers were able to stay on track, even even with, you know, Raber going wide, coming off that chicane, he wasn't off in the gravel, he didn't bang a wall, right? Nothing like that. Didn't really lose any time. You still have opportunity here, right? For sure, yeah. You're less than a second back. You still have opportunity to catch up. I don't know that I'm going to take time for that. Because, again, to I, me, that's a racing incident. You, listen, you rear-end me and send me flying into a wall, Okay, come on. But a yeah. door bang, let's face it, again, much like we talk about how, you know, how Crow talked earlier about mechanical issues in real life translate to software network and computer issues for sim racers, right? For sure. Well, again, sim racing, some of these guys are on triples, some of them are in VR, some of them are on a flat screen right in front of them. And while their FOV might be correct, you can't see to the side. There's no turning your head to look at where that car is. Yeah. Um, and I think... Again, the perspective distortion being a sim race versus being in a real vehicle. You know, I can take, I can go out in my driveway and park my car on top of, put a tire on a frisbee, right, from inside the car. Yeah. Because I've been driving so long, and plus I'm in a, I'm in a real 3D space, not a 3D space that has been imprinted on a flat screen. For sure. And so I think in, in a case like that, no, everybody stayed on course. We can have this battle again in a second. I didn't lose a lot of time. Um, I'll let you have first for now, and then we'll come back at it after I calm down for a lap or two, right? 
Yeah. And you know what I like to see is they literally traded spots back and forth and back and forth, and they ended mm -hmm. up where they were before the two little bumps. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. I keep rolling. That's fun. Well, actually, Vanderhoek did, did take first. Oh, he got he up did. there. Uh -oh. Yep. Okay. That's fine. Yep. They traded. Uh, they did go back and forth, but Vanderhoek able to keep the tight, the tighter line coming out of the chicane as Rayberg went wide through there. Rayberg with the faster, fastest lap, however. We look at these guys about a second apart, then Vanderhoek about a tenth faster, a little about a tenth and a half faster on the last lap. Turtle Shell says at yep. least, <laughs> at least, uh. Kerr's got a much needed break. Yeah, he did. I think he'd rather still be in P5, but I get your point. He probably did like getting up for a second to stretch his legs. So, For sure. Um, I got to step away for a little bit. Uh, some stewarding is needed. I shall return briefly. Sounds good, sir. I will be here. Hey, buddy. And folks, you are left just with me again. We continue to watch this battle. These guys keeping it within a second. We head around this circuit. 13 and a half hours left. This 24 hour endurance event here at Box 3 Motorsports. Rayberg now, maybe a little calm after the door banging. Now looking to set up and see if he can close this gap up. Vanderhoek and take P1 back. And then this is part of what I love about this this length of endurance event is during our weekly, you know, 45, even 90 minute races, P1 you don't see change as much as we've seen it change in this race today. This has been at least three position one changes uh, during the course of these last 11 and a half hours. And again, as I say, we don't really see that during an, even a 90 minute or a two hour endurance race. It's a fantastic to get to watch. And it shows you that on a race this long, you know, until we, until we get down to that last hour and it turns into a sprint race. And even then a lot of these drivers are going to push. Some of them are going to go to sleep. They're going to be the last stint driver. They're going to, um, they're going to be rested and be ready to go and that last hour is going to become a sprint race mistakes are going to happen we're not going to know what's going on until the very end i don't care if we see someone 100 seconds ahead on track that was quick yeah just uh needed to make sure bases were covered for a bit um green is going to step away for a bit make sure that somebody was in here with a big hammer in case uh there needed to be one <laughs> Essentially. <laughs> gotcha. I'm just going to give give me one second here, huh? There we go. You should be able to hear me. Just hey, have man. to switch headsets. I got to take my little cigarette break. And with you here, I'm still going to keep the camera focused. For sure. Right here, these guys still, Vanderhoek and Rayberg, only a second, about a second separating them, sometimes stretching out to a second and a half. Again, I was saying uh, right before you came back, you know, if I'm Rayberg at this point, my blood pressure's gone down a little bit, right? I've calmed down just a tad from the from the door banging adventure I had with Vanderhoek, which honestly, to me, that whole lap was a fantastic lap to watch. These guys are really it was pushing. It was a blast to watch that lap. Um, but now, you know, you've been in that position where you have that hard battle fb have a great sleep get get some rest we'll be back we'll still be here when you get up um i've been in that position even myself as a slower driver where you have that great battle you feel the little bit of door banging that goes on maybe you maybe you're the one that ends up ahead maybe the one that ends up behind but it's you're still within striking distance and you just you know what i want to come back at you because that was fun but i gotta calm down a minute first right yes, <laughs> i gotta take a breath and there it opens up, though, as Rayberg loses a little control in the back. Vanderhoek, however, going to get caught up in back markers, may give Rayberg the opportunity to step back forward. Sorry, Palm Tree, I'm on a different mic, um, so it's going to be a little different for a while. 
I switched headsets to my wireless so I can step away for a few minutes, man. I know it doesn't sound it's as good. fine. Y'all deal with it. The man's been on here for the whole duration. <laughs> Dude, it's palm tree. Cut him just some quality. Him. Right, I know. <laughs> we just like to give palm tree hell. I know. He deserves every second of it. So Rayberg now back about two seconds after losing a little bit of the back end through a corner. But as I was saying, Vanderhoek hung up in these back markers. Maybe that gap gets closed up a tad, but he's gotten clear now. And with what looks like relatively open air in front of him, he's going to be able to run away. Yeah, hopefully that Ferrari is aware of the situation. He's like, man, this is P1 and P2. You know, we're nearly 12 hours in here. Let's let's let them do their thing. Uh, yeah, if I'm that Ferrari, I'm oh. I'm finding a nice straight line, and I'm just yeah. getting out of the way. I, I I'm, hmm. I'm like holding my hand out the window, like, hey, yeah. you know, you, you you go this way, you know, <laughs> Leave, <laughs> waving them through here. <laughs> yeah, Ace Ventura style, moving people. <laughs> George Garton, P7, now heading into the pits. We'll see who comes out next in that vehicle, if it's a driver swap. Did, are you looking at the Twitch chat? I am doing 75 different things, sir. Oh. So. Well, I'm just, I mean, if you look at the Twitch chat, Palm Tree Oil basically just answered the question of, you know, tell me you're under 30 without telling me you're under 30. <laughs> well, F you's, I'm going to go get high, he says. Just like that. Wow. Palm Tree, that's why you're my favorite Australian, sir. Oh. You might get clapped back for that. He knows. He knows. <laughs> I think it's awesome to hear, you know, him and John converse about because, you know, they, they give each other hell because they're from, you know, oh yeah, a stone's throw away from islands. Well, before you got back, they were going at it in the chat. I was going to have to ask Will to jump in there and put them in a room together. I was watching it. I thought about chiming really? in. I was like, yeah. nah, I'll leave them be. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to ruin the vibe for them. They're, let, they're nearly let, there. Let those guys go to <laughs> it. They're not hurting anybody. Uh, two great, great people, man. Honestly, they are. And I'm going to be really curious, again, you know, you, you mentioned uh, TG, Tobias Gable, that races in our regular league. Yeah. Uh, was an Xbox driver for a year that I've known him. He was driving on Xbox. Finally moved over to PC. Now, you saw a guy who on Xbox was, I would say, a fair to midland driver, right? Finishing, he could he could crack top 10 in, the, in the, like P7, 8, 9, but would normally finish around maybe 11 or 12, somewhere in there, right? Yeah, and now, right. since moving to PC, like to your point earlier, it took him about a month, maybe a month and a half, to get his wheels under him. And yep. now, you're typically seeing him finish in the top five, depending on the track. Tobias has really done fantastic, and I'm curious to see if the if the same thing happens with Palm Tree. Very fast on the Xbox side. I'm I'm curious to see if that translates over and over to the PC side once he gets used to the different feel of 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 how different it is on PC, because that was a big surprise for me. I know that. Yeah, yeah. And especially, you know, you and I kind of went through the same thing, you know, went from Xbox to PC, and then shortly after that, you know, upgraded the equipment. So mm -hmm. it it was a lot of change. And, you know, I, I just recently got new new pedals, and I've, you know, I've had them for, uh, we're going to say roughly a month, and I, maybe not even that long, maybe three weeks. And I'm still trying to get used to it, man. Yeah. Like it's a completely different feeling. I went from... You know some pretty decent thrustmaster tlcms you know they're they're mm -hmm. there's some entry level load cell pedals i mean they're they're great for what they are they're not bad and I upgraded to some you know uh some pretty high-end pedals the magic p2000 lovely uh it's an excellent piece of machinery dude they're beautiful they're functional that's awesome yeah yeah now myself i, I went from you know i was on a g920 on xbox and then stepped up before i got my pc stepped up to the CSLVD and the club sport v3s um, mm -hmm. And for me, I, and I know the Clubsport V V3 pedals are like the middle of the road, right? The, um, they're not high end, but they're not they're not G920s. They're not entry level either. They're somewhere right in the middle. Sure. Um, yep. Load cell. You know, I put the uh, the brake thing on the brake kit uh, so that I could have a little bit more control. I'll tell you, I love them dialed in the way they are compared to the 920s. Not so much. It's very. For one, you get a lot more feeling. 
particularly yeah. in eye racing because they actually vibrate like they're supposed to. Um, but it, but it's also the fact that with the 920, even with the upgrade kit I bought for the brake pedal, there was so little play there. You were going from you were going from no brakes to full brakes with about maybe a half an inch of travel right yeah. that's all it was moving where the v3s feel more like a real brake pedal now and that's where i i feel so much better modulating and everything so stepping up like that really makes a huge difference in how that feels you know i i haven't had them personally but you know i hear nothing but good things from the v3 pedals i think those are like about the best piece of kit you can get before you really step into that next level you know like boosting velds or you know the new Invictus, uh, yeah. who's made Ace Attack, you know, the, the, those seem to be the, the hot commodity right now. Everybody and their brothers buying them or doing YouTube reviews or whatever. Mm -hmm. Where's mine at? Y'all sent them yet? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> right? Listen, anybody watching who who knows, I will be more than happy to do reviews on kits. Just hard hey, to you do some, some awesome videos, actually. You really do. You need to buy some more stuff so you can do more reviews. Yeah, I need to buy some more stuff. Sure. <laughs> well, I tell you what, why don't I take this headset off and hand it to my wife? You can tell her that and see what she says to you. All right, cool. Let's see how that works out. So I'm Puss too far away to catch a black eye, so we're <laughs> good. Puss her now into the pits. <laughs> I will go about switching my mic back here real quick. So I don't offend Palm Tree's ears any longer. He'll get upset with me. Yeah, um, to Crow's point in chat here, he says um, the, the pedal vibration does work on ACC. That we were actually just chatting about that last night or you know, a few hours oh, really? ago, whatever, whatever time, whenever it is, wherever we're at. Now do I have to direct connect them to the PC, though, USB? Yes. Yes, you do. Well, there's, there's your problem, then I'm never going to get it fixed. Get a long-ass cable extension. You'll be fine. Say that again? I'm sorry. Get a long cable, uh, like a long well, extension. I have that. That's not the problem. The problem is because of cameras, keyboard, two headsets, and all this yep. stuff. Um, right there with you, dude. <laughs> not a USB ports at this point. So. <laughs> well, this is it's funny because we were having the same exact conversation last night. You know, talking about you know inputs and I/O on your motherboard and stuff. Uh, I myself am actually out of uh, hub uh, USB hub in, uh, USB inputs and. So Terrell, you know, another buddy of ours, uh, recommended getting a hub. I do want to get one. It'll, it'll kind of tidy up the wiring on the rig a bit too. Stick it yeah, on the back I, air monitor and, you know, tidy everything up. So Yeah, a hundred percent. I've thought about it, but I, and I did have one at one point, but, um, they can be finicky too. If you don't get the right one, right? Like for sure. Yeah. makes it a little, little tricky if you don't have the right one. So I'll have to, I'll have to dig up the right one to make sure I'm getting what we need, but us are now back out of the pits. Joris Mentink, right there behind him. We may see somebody get to make a play on one of our Porsches on track today. As they have moved up to P4 and 5. These guys have been steady and consistent throughout the entirety of this race. Yeah, yeah. He left. He left. I don't know why. Oh, Crow, apparently... I just approved your message. You're... Apparently it got it got held because it was bullying. Uh, the word pedal. I don't know. Maybe they thought that you were gonna put your pedal to the metal on my. I don't know what they were thinking. But we open that up. Joris Mentink now with a with a play on Husser headed into T1. There's the move right there to the outside, setting himself up for the inside corner in T2. And just like that, Joris Mentink moves up into P5. I think that's the first time today we've seen one of those Porsches lose a position to anyone. And a great move. And now Husser going way wide, spinning off into the grass. Gonna lose a little bit of time. No more position, but a little bit of time. His nearest competition, P7. Yildishev. 76 seconds back, so plenty of time to bring that back. Gils Vanderhoek continues to lead.
Now, we talked about Patrick Kerr's a connection issue earlier, but right now, speaking of Kildishev, Patrick Kerr's right there behind him. And about four tenths faster on the last lap. So, Huff, when are you going full motion ring? Uh, probably never, man. I, 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 just, I don't think that's for me. Do you say that, but I've watched your rig come together over the last, what, year and a half that we've known each other? Yeah, give or take. And yeah. and so, you know, the monitors keep at, getting added, new equipment, button boxes, all kinds of stuff. So I'm waiting to see when you're going to head for motion. Um, I think my next uh, upgrade, if you want to call it, um, do you watch a lot of uh, like sim gear reviews and just videos in general? I don't know if you're no. a nerd like me, but I watch a lot of this stuff, dude. Yeah, no, um, not so much. <coughs> excuse me, could get muted in time. Um, there's a guy named Race Beyond Matter. Uh, he's got a, a fantastic rig. It it it's the most immersive thing you'll ever see, honestly. And that's kind of the vibe I'm going for. And you've seen my rig where it stands now. And like that's the next move for me is to build in the rest of that uh, cockpit, you know, the, the the dashboard, the center console. You know, it's, it's I'm I'm ninety percent there where I want to be. Gotcha. I don't know. I think with with enough space and and obviously enough money, I would I wouldn't mind a motion rig at some point. Um, yeah. But for me, only if I can, only if I decide to also start uh, flying, sim flying, right? Yeah. Uh, I think at that point it really adds a lot of immersion as we watch here Kerr's heading outside not quite there a little tap of the brakes keeps any trouble away D. Steven right in front of these guys as they battle currently sitting P11 I wonder when Crow's going back in the car is he popping in next you're in chat when are you coming in Brian Simple, just buy a GP3 card <laughs> gun. Remember? Yeah, that yeah. Actually, easy, Will, right? yeah, Will sent me a, a picture on Discord the other day of, uh, I believe it's a, a, a Ventador shell. Uh, somebody made out of fiberglass that was up for sale. He was like, "Huff, you should buy this for your rig." I'm like, Man. <laughs> probably could just go to a junkyard, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't know about you, but dude, but you know where I live, we don't see too many Lambos or yeah. you know, the higher end sports cars just laying around the junkyard. <laughs> True enough. And right there, Kerr is able to bring himself back up to P7 after getting dropped to ninth with his disconnect. Hildish have a very nice pass. Crow says he's green. He's graveyard shift for the team with Tracy. So not till tonight. Yeah, that's that's what I was meant to do. Really, run most of the graveyard. Uh, you know. I'd, chatted with my team you know we kind of cleared up some space because i did have, you know i still do have a couple of things i need to take care of today you know it's easter weekend so uh first off happy easter if you guys celebrate that whatever blah blah, blah religious stuff um spend time with your family but you know we we, we got some traditions and you know mm -hmm. do the collaring of the eggs with the kiddo and the family and you know my wife's upstairs cooking and you know i helped her a bit earlier and i did have to mow grass today i told you about that because i didn't want my kid out there hunting for eggs in a <laughs> you know, crash is like eight inches tall in spots. It was awful. Well, you know, you, I kind of had the opposite problem. I woke up this morning. Um, it was snowing. There was about an inch of snow on the railing, of, uh, on the deck railing. And I, I came downstairs, you know, I'm trying to do wake up time. I got up around 430 this morning, to get ready for this race. And I'm trying to wake up and everything. And uh, I go back upstairs about 45 minutes later to there being four inches of snow on the deck railing. Nice. So yeah, def mowing grass definitely not a problem for me at this point. Yeah, I think you're uh, you're still rocking the snowblower. Yeah, no, it melted today. So that's the nice. fun part about this time of year is it snows quite like crazy, and then within a couple hours it's gone. So. So now, off I gotta ask you. You, you know, you guys say you have some. You said you have some traditions and stuff. Your wife's cooking and everything. Is it yep. ham on Easter? It is ham on Easter. There you go. Okay. Ham, potato salad, uh, macaroni salad, some deviled eggs. Excellent. I don't know what else she's got going on, but those those are the staples. Like those are they gotta be. 
got to have you got to do ham on Easter, right? I mean, that's like turkey at Thanksgiving. It's kind of like a rule. For sure. Now, what about Christmas dinner with the family, though? Um, it's like, every, yeah, everything. Everything? <laughs> All the above and more and this and that. Throwing and we usually down, do huh? the hosting here at our home, so. Okay. I'll probably gain about 20 pounds on the holidays. Oh, that. dude. Thanksgiving's my jam, though, because I'm, I'm a turkey guy, and that's the one time of year I get turkey. Stuffing. My wife makes the fantastic stuffing. We yeah, gotta quit talking about food, though. I haven't eaten pretty much all day, so. You should probably do that. I did while I was, I was out, actually. Yeah, I will be. Um, my wife's cooking now, and I'll, I'll be having a plate full of food here as we continue to watch. Nice. So, Patrick Kerr is interesting to see as we watch this. And again, these guys are starting to spread out, so we'll move on here in a minute. But if you look there at Patrick Kerr, is currently sitting in seventh. Even with his disconnect, still up two positions during the course of today's race. And we got to remember, he's driving by himself, therefore has been on the road for almost 11 hours at this point. Legend. Absolutely. Your boy, Blue. Let's jump back to Blue real quick. Not in any solid competition with anyone right now. But we got to make sure we try and commentate curse him as much as possible. Told him it would happen. Can Looks like just... Athol's team pulled their car. Um, I'm trying to avoid Welp Cakes' conversation. He's still talking about food. He's going to make me go eat more. Well, I'm, I actually delicious. wanted to ask him. <laughs> Dang, Canadian dressing, that does sound really good. But I got to ask Welp Cakes, where in Canada are you exactly? Just out of curiosity. Not exactly. I'm not asking for your address uh, live on the internet, but more of what province, maybe. Kildashev holding his own against Kurz right now, which is honestly very impressive. Uh, sitting back about eight tenths. He stayed that way for the last lap or two since the pass. Wait, Virginia via, via Arkansas? That's not, a, that's not Canada. I thought you were oh. from Canada, Welp Cakes. I'm so. Now I just know you're down there with bubs and everybody. It's scary. As I was saying, you know, Kil Kildashev holding his own with Kurz, at least able to keep pace at this point. Both these guys running about 143.8 on their last laps. And actually killed us have a little bit quicker, about six hundredths faster on that last lap. Yeah, so Julian Reberg, mm -hmm. he, he just he's a new driver, right? He just popped into the stint recently, I think. Uh, or somebody else uh Stand by. Yeah, Julian Rayberg. Uh not new. He's driven earlier today, but uh okay. yeah, he's been in for a little while. Software shows that too. Okay. Does it? Question mark. Oh, does the software show? Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't tell me what stints they've driven. Uh, okay. I don't think. I was gonna say, damn, does the thing make you a sandwich too? No, I wish. That'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> Hey, it looks like a Mercedes there in P5 split up the Porsche party. They were having P5 and P6 for... Yeah, Mentank was able to get race. ahead. Able to get ahead of Hussar a little while ago. Now stretched it out to 10 seconds up. Mentank, again, one of our... Uh, sorry, one of our, our, our solo drivers has really been holding his own. If we talk about him and Kurtz... Uh, and all the way down to Thomas Jenks. Tom, Thomas, even Thomas Jenks is currently running P12, but... Uh, let me look here. Yeah, still up seven positions. You know, again, we talked about it with Crow. All these, all these uh, solo drivers. It's it's going to be really curious to see if they're able to hold on all the way through this 24 hours because Janch is up seven positions. Uh, Mentink is up eight positions. Now we saw Kurtz have a connection issue, but he at one point was up six positions. Now still up two after that disconnect and rejoin. So these guys really banging it out. Nicholas Webvar, if we take a look at him, even Nicholas Webvar is up six positions now and holding his own in P17.
yeah, the team in P1, though, is strong. I knew, um, I didn't recognize the name, and then I go to the team, and it's Yannick and Justin Shepherd. That's, a, that's yeah. a strong team. That is a very strong team. We've been watching those guys all day. Um, again, getting to see some moves out of P1 to P2, but uh, now Patrick Kerr's back into the pits. Well, obviously just came back from a connection issue. I wonder if he if it didn't record a pit stop, even though he was in and he needs to make one anyway. That would kind of suck. Yeah, going back to our previous endurance, we had at Silverstone. Um, checking the date on that. When was this? Here? Uh, January 2nd, we had six hours of Silverstone. And uh, if, you, if you remember the weather in that race, man. It was uh, quite flooded for nearly the That's, entire six hours. Yeah, that was brutal. Uh, and actually, we have lost Kurz again. He is disconnected from the server. No. Yeah. Um, but, you know, touching on, on Yannick and Josine and Hook's team there, um, Yannick and Josine finished P2 in that race. I remember they had a very strong performance. Uh, ended up, actually, it's the same exact team. I don't mm -hmm. recall if, uh, if the... The Vanderhoot guy, if he drove in that, though. I know Yannick and Josie did, but... Uh, yeah, I don't remember his name, so he may be a new addition, but obviously these guys yeah, yeah. being very strong today. And again, even, you know, again, with the trades we've had back and forth for P1, um, sure. now Rayberg still only 10 seconds back off of P1. That gap was huge for most of this race. Uh, we were seeing 90 to 100 seconds between P1 and P2, so good to see it tighten up and gives us lets us know we're going to get a lot of good racing throughout the night as we continue this. Um, question: What's that big uh, yellow orange exclamation mark on P exclamation mark on P6 that just went away? I believe that. that uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh, basically means that there was contact or they went off track. Oh, cool. So if you see it on two drivers next to each other, uh, yeah. they might now, given where our race is at this point, you might not see it on two drivers next to each other because obviously they're in different positions and the, the tower is arranged by position, right? Uh, but typically that will mean drivers made contact of some sort. Might be minor, might be nothing there. Yeah. Well, I'll usually try and click over to, to catch whatever's going on. Same with yellows other than coming out of the pit. Heiss currently sitting in P4 in that number 70 Porsche. Looks like my man uh, Kurz came back into the server. Did he? Good. Yep, yeah. there he is coming in P11 now. It's too bad to see the connection issues there. Yeah, I wonder what's going on. If he's having hardware, I'm hoping he clears it up with this, uh, you know, post race or yeah. whatever happens yeah. well this time you know last time it looked like a, a driving issue as far as and when i say driving i mean driving hardware you know wheel disconnect uh maybe pedals because as you said it looked like he had steering he kept himself off track but just slowed to a stop and sat there um mm -hmm. from there he then stayed on he stayed in the server for a while got himself back reset now had to do it again so hopefully we'll see him able to stay in this time At number 555 Bentley, now up to P15. Matthew Givens at the wheel. These guys doing well as as you know as well as we talk about it. Christoph Arts, Timothy Glenn Dining, and Gasolina, along with Matthew Givens. These guys struggling up front, but now making up for it. Seems they are slowly gaining positions, working their way forward. Um, we got Eternal here in the in the chat saying that he had a major crash. Um, I'm assuming that meant a, a, a game crash. Mm -hmm. And then he reconnected and his pedals are not reaching 100%. Oh, that's not good. I wonder if that's, uh, I wonder if that's Kurtz, Kurz, Patrick Kurz. Yeah, yeah, I believe that's who he is referring to. B99 in the chat. Good to see you.
That Brandigan coming in talking about dinner as well. Mashed potatoes, gravy, and steak. Whatever. Getting eggs, sausage, hash browns. Be all set. So Kerr is now back out on track. Hopefully able to stick around this time. Comes out P13. A lot of time to make up, but very fast. I'd be curious to see where Kurz ends up at the end of this race if he's able to stay connected the whole time. Yeah, hey, I hope he gets it sorted. He seemed to, to really be looking forward to this, and he's obviously doing well, so... Absolutely. Uh, racing incident asking what's up with P19, saying they're 190 laps down. Um, we're not sure because it seems to change. Um, for whatever reason, P19, anybody who's in P19 will show 100, uh, you know, however many laps down. I can tell you for sure that they are four laps down. So Nicholas Waver in front of them at 365 laps. Josh Butler in that 614 car running 361 laps at this point. So again, really unsure as to why that's happening. Um, and we just had a disconnect up front, it looks like. Oh, um, oh no, we did. Yannick's team. Yep, Yannick's team dropped out oh, now. No. That's awful. So Rayberg now moving up. Matthias Wass moves into P2. Wyatt Hackley coming back out on track in P13 now from the pits. I hope they're able to get back in. Yeah, I hope so as well. I think the, the uh, I think I was mentioning it before, and then we had to cut off for a for a battle that was happening. Um, but one of the things I've noticed, you know, your team drops, can't get back in correctly for whatever you know server yep. side issues. Uh, yep. Another team drops, can't get back in, and then we've had two teams who have dropped and been able to get back in. So it's like there's this 50-50 shot that you're going to be able to get back in today, yeah, uh, in yeah. the right order to be able to drive. And there they are, back into the pits. Yes. Vanderhoek's back on track. They're still showing number one, but we've seen this happen. They're probably going to lose it. I would say at least one or two positions. I don't know if the controls are locked when you drop when you drop back in. Um, seems like it's possible because the pit stops. The, the time they spend in the pit seems to be excessive when that happens. Yeah, it may be, and you know, plus they got to throw the setup back on. You know, make sure petrol is loaded, loaded, tire mm -hmm. pressures are set. So I mean, it's. It's not like you can just hit back, jump back in and hit drive, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. I got them in P3 currently is where, where they're staying at the moment. Yep, they just I just have them drop to P2. And Matthias Wass in P3, but we'll see. They should... He sh Matthias Wass should be able to get ahead into P2 as they come through. Yeah, racing incident is a very odd bug because at one point during today's race, uh, E16 or 17, instead of showing down so many seconds or showing down a lap once you reach a certain point, they were actually showing down 10, 12,000 seconds. And then it just stopped on its own. Justin Weishman saying, I think they had a disconnect. Yeah, it looks like it. And Vanderhoek still sitting pits, currently in P3. See how quickly they can get out. Matthias, Matthias Heiss coming by the pits now, but still laps down, giving Vanderhoek an opportunity to hold on to a podium position right now. I'm currently showing Sheffer in the car, or at least above, you know, his nameplate, so I don't know if they're trying to get everything sorted. All right. Let, yeah. Let's hope they're able to get back in. Absolutely. We, we were and in Vanderhoek. They're off now. Perfect. You have seen pulling out of the pits now. So Sheffer is in the car? Yep. Okay, I'm still showing Vanderhoek, but we'll see if that changes. Usually once they're out of the pits, it'll update. He's going to be coming out in P4. Vanderhoek now and back is... out on track. That's odd. The nameplate above his car is showing Sheffer, but yet... 
you know, the timetable is showing Vanderhood. Yeah, that's what I'm waiting Your to see Your software again. is showing Vanderhood. You know, who's Plus driving it, here? <laughs> there we go. Matthias, it's updating. Matthias Heist now in P3. Vanderhood, and there it just updated. Justine Sheffer back out on track in P4. So again, now down about a lap, unfortunately, with that disconnect. Such a shame to see those guys having a great run today. Obviously, yeah, plenty of yeah. time for them to try and catch that back up, but really, you know, and just like in real life racing, you know, again, we talked about it, what, what a sim racer's problems are versus a real life racer's problems are and how that translates. And it was Crow yeah. who said it, making the point. And uh, even, in, you know, if you watch GT3 or anything, like you hate seeing a team doing well and all of a sudden you see the jack stands come out and they got to roll that thing into the garage and you know they're losing at least two laps, depending on the race. You know what I mean? Like, they just... It's heartbreaking to see. It is. And it's looking like, um... Blue finished his stand. We got Josh Butler in the car now. Back yeah, I the, saw that. Nissan. So best luck we to Butler. Pick on Blue. Yeah. Let's go pick on him, see how his stint went. Uh, is he up there? Where yeah, is he, he is. There they are. Yeah, let's go join Anderson, Butler, and Blue again, if you'd like. We can just both jump up there and see how these guys are. Blue. He's he away. just left. Oh my. Every time you pop in. Because this Did guy he... doesn't sit down. Why? Like, is what is he doing? He just finished He's... his stint. Of course we want to talk to him for a minute. He's talking to his uh, significant other right now. Oh, gotcha. Hey, Butler. Which is apparently not you anymore. Butler. Yes, sir. Tracks a little bit to the left there, bud. Just, appreciate it. Just, yeah. just to update you, make sure you knew. <laughs> okay, this, so this, this guy's a mad lad. He just came out of another another endurance race to hop back into this one. Yes, correct. I'm doing two races today. Are you serious oh. right now? Yeah, there's a uh, another uh, European group that is running a 2.4 hour event on Saturdays oh my uh, for the next goodness. six or seven weeks, and it's 40 minutes at times. And uh, one of the guy, one of the admins over there, invited me to run with him. Butler, you're a madman. So, wet oh. Suzuka. So, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the hope for your stint then, Butler? You're uh, you're down a good bit, right? Are you hoping to make up a few positions maybe or just hold your own? Where are you looking to, to land uh, this today? And then back a car that's not in pieces. Perfect. That is an Keep it on the track. Goal. Like, not that right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let me distract you. Uh, we can we can talk to Anderson instead. How do you yeah, guys I'm feel? I'm driving one-handed right now. Well, so listen, since he's not here, we came to came to talk to him, see how his stint went. No commentator curse. He did very. I felt he did pretty well. Yeah. But yeah, how do a, you how do you guys feel about on. Blue's 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 stint? I mean, I saw a couple yellow flags bouncing off of him. Is all I'm saying. Um. So he did pretty well. He went off track uh, only a couple times. Uh, one was in Aquaman and Raleigh, and then the other one was on the uh, last turn. The last turn one, he did give the uh, back end a good whack on the wall, but it was only uh, seven seconds of damage as Josh also spins it around Aquaman and Raleigh. <laughs> was just ceding the course to the blue flag cars, just being a gentleman. Yeah, it was all planned. Uh huh. Pre planned. But uh, yeah. other than that, he, he kept it on the track uh, for most of the time. Uh, yeah, that's all I can really ask. Just consistent, kept it on. Very good. We like to see. Now, who's running mostly? Isn't Blue Blue's running most of your overnight tonight, right? As the sun starts to set. Yeah, Blue's going to be doing two stints at night. I'm going to be uh, in the middle of those two stints. So I have the next one after Josh here, and then I will be joining Blue for some red eye racing. Gotcha. Now, are you guys having to, are you guys noticing you're starting to, you know, with, with uh, Josh, with you just having now gotten in the car, did you have to make pressure adjustments before you came out? Because track temps have started to drop down about five degrees from the high of 29. Tracks down to 24 degrees. It's in game time, 17, 16. The sun's going to start to come off the track, especially in certain places as the trees start to shade it. So did you bring those down a little bit before you got in the car or were you, did you just hop and go? I just hopped and went. They, uh, we had the strategies all worked out beforehand. So okay. we have pit strats set up for 15C, 20C, 25C, and then if it gets up to 30C, we have one. Perfect. We also have a couple of wet strats and a damp strat just in case. 
Wow, you guys are fancy. Very well planned. Came prepared. It's the, it's the only thing I bring to the table, that and the comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Driving abilities non-existent is what you're saying. Nope, I am the mascot. I'm the gentleman driver. That's, uh, that's the best they're going to get out of me. Perfect. You and I should race sometime then, because that's about all anybody's going to get out of me as well. Perfect. Julian <laughs> Rayburn continuing to lead this race now with a 43-second gap back to Matthias Boss. Speaking of being far back, uh, Molson, how, how many laps back are we? I know your stream says we're 190 laps down, but I'm kind of curious. Uh, you guys are down f about three laps to the driver in front of you. Okay. Jordan Strode. Yeah, that's. I don't know what it's doing. It seems to only count up for whoever. Actually, no, you guys are only three laps down. Jordan Strode now, P18. It's whoever's in P18 ends up being however many laps down since it stopped counting for them. But I don't think it's actually stopped. I don't think the game has actually stopped counting because, again, I'm looking at the software. The numbers are there. It's, for some reason, the tower on stream is not updating. And I have no clue why. Very weird error. Hey, today's been full of weird issues and bugs. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. You guys, he's hey, been here. He's always Yeah, I've just here. been keeping it quiet, letting you guys do your thing. Up, what happened to you guys? I, I saw you guys got dropped yeah. out. Yeah, we had some no. issues, man. Um, handed the car over to Wembley, our, our third driver, up, and uh, he had some issues, and he had a uh, his controls were locked for a minute forty. And then, you know, long story short, he went out. He did a couple laps out, ended up with a puncture. Um, went in to change his puncture, got a drive through. Oh, wow. Um, got back on My. the horse. Everything was fine. Um, and then all of a sudden, he loses connection to the server. And we were not able to get back in. He oh, did the, the blue thing. You guys remember, was it uh, Nürburgring? Whenever uh, Blue's car was flying? You guys remember oh, that yeah. stream? Yeah. He did that, but like, he was actually from his POV. He was driving around, but just by himself. Oh, so, that's weird. It was a very weird bug. And then we were able to get back in, but it only counted us as a new driver for some reason. Hmm. Never heard of that one. Yeah, it's, uh, dude. Yeah. We tried it all too. Uh, entering in the correct order, entering in the wrong order, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, very disappointed to see you guys drop out. I was hoping to watch you guys race all through the night. Still 21 drivers on track today. Benjamin Ashmore currently driving that Ferrari. Justin Sheffer holding his own in P4. There's our man, Josh Butler. We talked to him live. Clearing a path for Joris Mentink. You do not now see. Okay. I gotta ask you a question, Josh. Yeah, that was dumb. Did you do that on purpose, <laughs> or were you just like, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 I'm not. Like, so I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> no. trying to bust your balls. I'm trying to ask because, th I, as as someone who sits back and watches a lot of streams, obviously, right, watches a lot of driving, mm -hmm. it always, it's like becoming, it's very quickly becoming a pet peeve of mine when someone runs off into the sand as a back marker. Yeah, no, that was definitely not purposeful. Okay. It was a memory of two laps ago when I got punted by a different Mercedes. Gotcha. And was okay. It, and that's me talking and not paying attention. Oh, God. Oh, right, we have six. to leave you I, alone. That is 100% no, on it's, me. Nope, that's on me for not paying better attention. Oh, that was bad. Oh, there's Rotten's. Spin him real quick. Redeem all of this. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's why, like, like I said, I think Huff and I have talked about it. It's because it's very quickly, again, becoming a pet peeve of mine when a backmarker purposefully drives off track. I feel oh, like you, lo you lose so much control. You're taking a huge risk that by doing that, thinking you're doing the right thing, you're actually going to cause the incident, right? No, and like we talked about earlier, you're dirtying up your tires, you're lowering your pressure. Yeah. You, you, you're, out, you're looking around, you're not looking forward as you re-enter the track. Like, it's, no, it's a right. terrible plan. That's, yeah, that was, uh, that was accidental. I just overdrove that corner. A terrible plan, he said. 
Doris Mentink continuing to run by himself up here in P5 right now. So really sad to see because uh, along with Joris, Patrick Kurz, another one of our solo drivers, were both in the top 10. Kurz losing position, not because of mistakes or anything. Like you would think he's getting tired, going to have a problem, but no more because of connection issues. Really sad to see because I, I, and I'm very happy he was able to join back in. Yeah, I just want to see him finish. He's representing Lexus gang, so... You know, Anderson, we gotta, we gotta at least uh, help the guy out. Support. Yep. Yep. <laughs> um, what's your pace been looking like today, Anderson? Uh, well, it's not my Lexus pace. I could put it that way. Uh, yeah. but my best time is a forty-three-eight on high fuel. Yeah, that's exactly my best lap. Whenever uh, I was, way back when, when I was a driver. Can't wait for uh next week. Uh, because Lexus, I run forty-twos, so we'll see yeah. what that. But that runs. <laughs> I felt like I was a bit slower, man. I mean, even, you know, leading up, running practice, I felt like I was uh, about a half a second off my raw pace I was running. Yeah, I, I know when I did a little bit of practice with it, I was doing 42 fours. So we'll see where that gets me in the standings. Even holding his own, keeping that single Audi out there in the top 10. Running 86 seconds back from Remco Ottens. Remco's team doing really well today as, as well, I feel. You know, Garten, uh, Lucasen, and Gress. You guys have been very consistent. As I said, you know, they got hit hard. Now they move up to P7 with uh, Kildashev in the pits. They got hit hard on the opening lap and have spent the rest of this race making up for it and have done well in doing so. Um, when you get knocked yeah. back to like P18 and now you find yourself in P7, I'd have to say you did a pretty good job today. That was a car in the... What? There was a car under the pavement right there. What the heck? Oh, perfect. On the... <clears throat> it looked like yeah, an Aston is. Martin just buried. Somebody Hulk smashed it. Nope, we're losing, nope. We're losing somebody because I'm double clicking on a car and it's not coming up for me. Vitaly yeah. Barshkin is now dropping, should be dropping. Okay. That was blue that left. Oh, was it? Yeah. I wondered. I'm like, did Huff leave? I know. I was like, man, did we we piss you guys off that bad? We, we, we upset Butler. Butler's brought me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so we're what five cars DNF so far? Yeah. Was twenty five. Yep, we're down to yeah. down to 20 drivers now, but we'll see. Those guys may be back as well, right? Um, hopefully. Hopefully we get them back in here. You can always tell when something's going to happen, though, because I go to double-click on that car to bring them up, and they it's like I can't, even though they're still on the list. Mm -hmm. Jordan Strode in the sand right there in front of Josh Butler. Luckily holding off and not jumping back out on track. Thank you, sir. How many laps down are we just showed? We were three, um, so. Looking like one lap right now. Uh, what? Glitch? Never mind. Three? That's odd. Oh, you don't tell me, baby. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Yeah, nobody, nobody but you guys got to hear that, so I was thanking my wife for my dinner. <laughs> I am going to mute out a little bit as we watch this. Huff, just call out to me if you see something I'm missing, please, so I can uh, get some food in me real quick. Yeah, man, do your thing. Um, Step away for a bit. Uh, I'll, I'll stay, stay here right with here. you guys if you're cool to you know to chat it up for a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I'm good. Uh, so the, uh, the pressures are down a little bit. I don't have any tire over 27.4 right now. And temperatures right, what, what are you, what are you looking at? Because I, I know what we were doing. So I need everything up about half a psi. Okay. But I still have forty-five minutes. That, that so what have you guys been uh, like starting to adjust your pit stop? Myself, I started around the thirty-minute mark, getting everything pretty close. 
and then kind of adjusted it from there because I didn't want it to be like a last minute thing to where I was getting caught up in traffic or trying to make too many clicks at a corner or, you know, like ended up in a pack. So like I would just wait for clean air and then like, you know, we would do our adjustments and clicks inside the, you know, the 30 minute mark somewhere around there. I'm getting front brake fade. I'm going to try to move the bias back some. You guys on pad two? Three. Three. Okay. Yeah, it's something actually cool to touch on here. You know, if for the people who are running pad two, um, now's about the time where you're going to see those start to fall off and uh, may have to change them. How long does that even take to change? I've never even done it. Minute it 15. is, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Crow said it adds 45 yeah. seconds when we talked to him earlier today. Yep. Yeah, what that's it, what the strategy they're going with. Um, that's the strategy that we had planned to go with. Uh, because that, you know, pad three is better for like, or just raw endurance plus, you know, like mixed, mixed conditions with some rain or uh, colder weather. But, you know, the, the weather here has been fairly warm. It's not been, you know, insanely hot or insanely cold. So pad Come two on, is dude. probably the better play. That was 100% a break check. What are you doing? There's no way you have to break that early. Like, I'm terrible, and I broke 20 meters before you. Oh, is that, is that going out on the stream? Yes, sir. Okay. Hey. Well. Fine. <laughs> you're fine. You mother... No, uh, <laughs> you were all by yourself. If you're going to yell, that's because you did it to yourself. I was just watching you. <laughs> my tallying back in to the, to the server now, back in the pits, showing up in P13. Watch oh, was that the guy that got there. disconnected? Yeah, that was the team that got dropped. So they are back awesome. in. It looks, it appears as though they were able to join back in with the proper number and everything. They should be good. That yep. five, third. Aston. They want to wait about five laps, that's fine. <laughs> hey Josh, where's your uh where's your um pitch strat for the different temps? I'm trying to pull them up for you. Oh dear. Um uh, don't talk to a minute I'm, on. I'm going one more bump on the TC right now. Um it should be in the group chat. Oh, do you have it built into the setup? Is that what it is? It is built into the setup, yes. Okay, all right. Give me a second. So, and then check Blue's message. Blue sent a message on the last pit stop, I think. Bro, what's going on here? You're breaking too late, honestly. Really? Okay. Yeah. Let this guy through. So, give me a rundown, Huff, uh, while we're while we're watching some what's going on here. And again, everybody's spread out right now. No real battles going. Sure. Give me a rundown on the on the brakes, on the brake pads. What these guys are typically running today. I know you mentioned brake pad two, brake pad three. Yeah. No, um, brake brake pad ones are sprint race only, right? They're only they're only running up so far. I believe they are good for approximately 120 minutes. Uh, brake pad one. Let me actually, I've got that pulled up here, so I'm not just telling you nonsense. Uh, but brake pad, brake pad two is, uh, you know, like a, a pretty solid endurance pad. Um, they typically last around the 12 to 14, 15 hour range, depending on you know how you take care of them. Um, pad three is like a, a longer lasting. It's meant for colder temperatures, also um, heavy to moderate rain. And I'm trying to find our engineer channel. Um, oh, I can tell you it's uh, yeah. nine, 90 minutes to 12 hours for the uh, pad two, pad three. Uh, it, well, uh, let me back up. Pad two, you can run it almost 20 hours if you baby it. Uh, but pad three is meant for wet, cold, and uh, over 24 hours. Uh, the problem is, is it's a little more a wooden. Um, yep. It's not not as quite a nice a feel, uh, but better. Uh, it holds temp better. Now, do you reckon in the new update, you know, with the tires, uh, you know, the the tire model changing a bit, like the tires will uh, keep heat or keep cold in them more? 
do you think that has a play in? You know, if, if the brakes are running a bit cooler, they yeah, it's also that... going to control tire temps down a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, come on, Josh, come on. Easy, 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 easy. Ooh. Way to be aware, Strode. Good job. Um, yeah, I should probably just drive and not talk right now. You're fine, dude. Just drive. I can be Coach Dave's assistant later. <laughs> Simonov now heading into the pits, Wyatt Hackley gaining a position. Esar in, uh, in chat thinking aggro Josh is quite funny, by the way. Okay, sometimes. <laughs> I keep driving like this. I'm going to be stuck with you all the time. It should be you and me being the ultimate comedy duo. We can handle it. Oh, yeah. I'm about it. Oh. Just a couple of 40 year old, 40 somethings drinking and talking smack about the quick kids. We can do that. <laughs> Are you 40, Josh? I will be 42 this year. Nice. I'm glad I'm not the only one. That's all I got to say about that. Yep. I, uh, in most of the discords where I'm fairly active, I'm one of the older guys. But my buddy Mike Heisner actually takes the golden cane in one of my leagues. Dude's 53 years old and still beat me on track. <laughs> nice. That's the I cool know. thing about sim racing, dude. You see young kids, old men, Graham, you know, like, I mean, there's, there's a huge diversity. This hobby knows no age. For sure. Off at one point, we get large enough. I'm telling you, we're going to spin up a gentleman's class. Yes, please. Uh, we could probably make that happen now, actually. You know what I mean? Um, we've got enough of you slow people in here to make that happen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you got to be aggressive dangerous. about it. <laughs> right? Like you can think it, you can say it, but I mean, you don't have to get that excited. Right? Hey, I'll be right there with you. I am excited. Oh, I am slow people too. These are my favorite people. People uh -huh. like Huff that are like, oh no, I'm slow like you. No, maybe you're am class because you're two or three off the pace. I'm like eight <laughs> off the pace, dude. You and I are not the same. We are not two laps off the pace, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Joris Mentink, solo driver today, doing a fantastic job. Currently running P5. We are just about to the halfway point of our 24-hour race. 11 and a half hours down, 12 and a half to go. Is that one of them that uh, Dow King was calling Candyman earlier? Uh, no. That okay. was um, Thomas Jenks was telling us he had high energy, high sugar, and like <laughs> high energy candy. That's all he was eating. Uh -huh. It's weird he was eating with his nostrils. <laughs> oh, no. Not sure how you do that. <laughs> I just don't know how these guys are pulling 24 straight. I just... No. So we did the uh, Nürburgring 24 in iRacing last weekend. And I stayed up for most of it. And I wanted to die on Sunday. I can't imagine racing the whole time. Yeah, no. yeah, I could, couldn't either. No, I think about you know, I've done four hour stints before, and that, that's about the most I'd want to do. You know, give me a little break in between. Like, sure, if somebody wants to cover off an hour while I, you know, get up, have me a smoke, maybe grab me something to drink, urinate. I mean, I just, I, I find it hard. To oh, that's called a pit stop. Long. <laughs> yeah, right. dude. I don't know about you, but it takes longer than thirty seconds for me to to, <laughs> to even make it to my bathroom. <laughs> Huff sitting out there like uh, 
Oh boy, and Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Meet this chicken sandwich, make a phone call, I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> no, the last 24 hour race that I did, I did, I, I streamed the entire thing. Um, and I, I was in my, I was in my rig for, you know, 99% of it. I stepped away for a bit, but I mean, it wasn't that long at all. That's my big deal is I've got to get up and walk. I, got, I have to yeah. move around during it. Yep. Wrecks my back and wrecks my knees. For sure. That's what I do. There, there were like points in time where I would just like legit, like stand up behind my, my rig, you know, like lean over my chair and just kind of like stretch the back out a bit. Just get up and walk around. Mathis Wass and Mattis Heist both into the pits, P2 and 3. Justin Schaeffer, currently in P4. Yeah, I was just chatting with Yannick in Discord. Uh, you know, their team did disconnect, and he's a little obviously upset about it. You know, that, that battle for P1 and P2 was fantastic to watch. So their team's hoping to make a crawl back up there, so I, I really hope they do. Yeah, 100%. I would love to see these guys get back up front. Yostin Schaeffer currently running in fourth. Be great to see that battle able to continue. Hey, it's good to see that Porsche. Um, Heist, is that how you pronounce that? He's sitting in P3 right now. With, oh, they were running like, uh, was it five and six for like the entire race? Yeah, most of the race they were running five and six. Um, yeah. Now, Moritz Huss are still running in the other portion, number 67, still running back in P6. But these guys able to make the climb, getting past Sheffer and yep. Mentink during these pit stops. Robert Stemple now taking over in that number 70 Porsche. Damn it, Josh, come on. You know, what I see here is I see, uh, you know, G. Stevenson in P9 um, should be coming towards the end of his stand. And I believe their other driver, Watson, uh, I forget his name, uh, he's going to take over. And then esports legend Brian uh, Canapan is going to step in, and I, they're probably going to gain a lot of positions here, just like we saw last time Brian got in the car. Yeah, up five, up five spots during that stint. But no, looking right. right now, speaking of Porsches, Moritz House Husser about to be under pressure from Remco Ottens in the number sixty-four BMW. Remco reeling him in slowly down to about a second right now. By the way, Butler, tell us if you want us to leave as we actually commentate versus, you know, catch up with you no, guys. No, you guys are fine. You're perfect. Well, we called a lot of things, but thank you. Okay, you're close that. enough. How about that? <laughs> I appreciate that. Like we said before, I mean, the, the team with Moritz Husser here, the 67 Porsche, Fernando Martinez, Nikos, and Jimmy Lynn. You know, these, guys, these guys have been really consistent, not really giving up positions. Um, and here, just not too long ago, Joris Mentink able to get around, and now Remco Otten's threatening. I wonder if these guys are starting to slow down, or if maybe, you know, depending on, you guys were talking about brakes earlier, uh, if, if brakes are starting to become a factor as we get near 12 hours in this race, depending on what they're running and now their brake, you know, their braking zones are longer, they're having to be a little easier on them, or they're going to find themselves in trouble. Yeah, I think so too. Curious to see if we see a lot of changes in the pits, you know, with everybody dropping in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's looking like around the four to, to eight position, nine position are all, you know, relatively close on the same lap, same pace. Now Remco Otten's ahead, about a tenth faster on that last lap. So again, slowly reeling us are in still about a second gap between them. See how long it lasts.
Now, right here in our engineer, he says that the can easily make 12 hours this is for brake pad two, and can make 24 hours with a bit of care. Hmm. Define a bit of care. I was going to say, how much <laughs> care are you having to give them? Yeah. To make that full 24 hours, and is it worth the time? I guess it depends on whether or not you're going to lose another 45 seconds trying to take care of the things. 45 seconds is not that long. It's a long time when you're sitting in the pits. But it's not that long over the course of 24 hours that if you're losing that much, it doesn't seem like it would take long to get to that point by babying. Well, yeah, 380 sure. laps now, so one-tenth per lap, there's 38 seconds, right? Yeah. Quick math. Quick math. He's smart. I, it's good enough for Harry, Oklahoma. That's all I'm saying. Did you have to take your, your, your socks off for that one? Yes. Nice. Luckily, my wife's in here painting her nails. Oh, spinner, spinner. <laughs> hold, it. hold it tight, bud. Dang it. You're saying your wife's distracting you from driving, is what you're getting No, a uh, Ferrari spun in front of me in Aqua Minerale. Oh, uh, okay. And I end up going off track trying to avoid them. Uh, it's continuing to tighten things up here. Down to three tenths at one point. Uh, Johannes, no, you're not allowed to play in D3. Sorry, buddy. Uh, actually, double check with Duncan. I don't care, but double check with Dun Duncan, Johannes. <laughs> I have one friend. He's talking to me on my stream right now. I've got you. Us are doing a good job so far of keeping Otten's at bay. Otten's just not quite able to get close enough to look for an opportunity yet. Oh, I feel better now. I got some food in me. Huff, we're good to go. Nice, dude. We're going to roll it all night long. Yeah, buddy. Uh, what'd you have to eat? Oh, some eggs. We talked about eggs earlier. I had my scrambled eggs. I'm at home. Nice. Plus, there's no, there's no uh, homemade bread right now, so I couldn't have homemade toast. Uh, hash browns, sausage. Oh, wow. Well. Breakfast all day. You're like me, yeah. dude. I could I could literally eat breakfast no matter oh, what yeah. time. Doesn't matter what time Favorite it is. food. Yep. Breakfast is the best. And tomorrow I'm smoking a ham and having ham and eggs and bacon and biscuits for dinner. Oh, there you go. Oh. A little, little brinner, if you will. Hey, what? That's another one. That's that's one we missed earlier, Huff. That I'm sure, given where you live, you could appreciate biscuits and gravy. Oh, oh, that would be wonderful. That's like classic around here, man. Oh yeah, sausage gravy. Forget about it. Yo, yo. And not that Cracker Bell sausage gravy either, because that stuff's nasty. They don't know how to make sausage gravy. Nope. Um, we've got a restaurant, you know, that it's local, you know, to to. Here in West Virginia, um, president actually made it famous a couple of years ago when he visited. It became like a huge meme around here. It's called Tudors. It's T U D O R S. <laughs> he called it okay. Tudors. Oh boy! <laughs> so it, uh, he was trying to like fit in, and yeah, I'm, I'm from here. You know, these are my people, and I I go to Tudors and eat just like the rest of you. Nah, buddy, you, you don't eat at Tudors, man. You don't know nothing about that big tater. <laughs> No, but one of their specialties, it, it, it's called a big tater, and, you know, it's like fried potatoes. They put scrambled eggs, bacon. You can choose uh, cheese or um, gravy or both if you really want diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> goodness. I mean, it sounds good. I'm not going to lie. Me tank heading back out on track now. Dropping position to these two. So Me tank with the pit, pit stop losing... Two positions dropping back to P7 now. And in case you can't tell, yes, palm tree, I'm taking another step out now that I've eaten. Huff knows the, the challenge. Yes. We're, that's okay, we're going to keep our eyes right here. Because again now, Huss are leading a pack of Ottens and Mentink. So we'll see. Mentink, again, losing two positions these guys. We're going to have to see how quickly he can make it back.
Petrol A Racing back into P5 where we belong. Let's see for how long. What? So was Leaf ever actually able to get in? What? And drive? Martinez? What's that? <laughs> was Martinez ever able to get in and drive? I have not seen Martinez in a car yet, no. Okay. That was one of my buddies. I got to come over here. Mm. Just sad he didn't get to drive today. Gotcha. Uh, who is he? Is he... Leaf is he says... Is currently in here? Yeah, he's uh, with the uh, petrol A. Okay. The Porsche. Okay. Yeah. I saw him on the list earlier, but I did not... I, I, I don't think I've seen him do a stint yet, so... Yeah, I think in the Discord, Will was trying to get him sorted. They're having problems. He was online, but they couldn't request him. Huh. Yeah, I, okay. I remember that happening. Yeah. Unfortunate. Mentink now up on the back end of Otten's into T1. Gonna back off a little bit. Didn't quite have the position as we stay focused on Hussar, though. Otten's behind him having to play some defense. Getting some action here late in the race. 12, almost, almost 12 hours in. We're 15 minutes away from being halfway through this 24-hour endurance race here at Box 3 Motorsports. Uh, we got Remco um, right on the back of P5 right now. Yep, Remco pulling in now. We keep the camera right here on these three. Mensink backing off just a little bit. I'm wondering if he's waiting to let this play out. He just came out of the pits. He's on fresh tires. And again, I gotta wonder: Do I need to? Do I need to worry about it? I got 12 hours left in this race. Do I need to stress myself trying to get around these two when they're both about to head into the pits, and I'm gonna have an open air, open air track in front of me, right? Yeah, for sure. Let these guys battle. I don't know how how deep their tires are. You know, both of them in front of me. I don't know how long they've been out, what their pit stop situation is. But I gotta think: I just came out fresh. Let me maintain seven right now. I only dropped two spots uh, during my stop. And I can make those up when these guys head in. As he has a look on the inside, but looks like Remco's going to run too wide through the final corner here, and he does pull ahead. And that Josh. Right there, Mentink able to pull up on Remco Ottens. Good move. Very clean through there. Now Husser going to hold on. Again, that gap opening up. I'm sure he's happy to have a little bit of pressure relief. Yeah, 100%. You know, we talked about it a bit before, man. I'm, I'm probably going to let that guy go just to, like you said, you know, relieve some of the pressure, just kind of a bit of clean air, mm -hmm. steal his toe. We ran into a situation earlier, you know, I did whenever I was driving. We were we were actually battling for a position, and it, you know, it was right there. You know, we were back and forth. Um, I don't recall who the car was. And then here comes, uh, you know, some... We, we were the blue flag, so they were, you know, they were a lap up, whatever. And I was actually trying to dive into pits because I was on my last lap. Like, I, I couldn't have done one more. <laughs> and I had to leave Ferrari in between. Ferrari Crow <laughs> out of Aqua Minerale. Ferrari oh, hit no. Crow and or it's Steven, but yeah, the Crow yeah. car. That stinks. Oh, that is a shame right there. And I'm not but yeah, dude, I had I to... Switch to him. I had to, like, weave in between the cars. Like, I even tried to, like show my position to like you know hey i'm hanging on the right side of the track like let me be here please but no they come left right center you know i'm like oh, what do i do no we <laughs> saw you actually we saw you uh, uh i think i think we caught that as you went whipping into the pits you cut across you cut across yeah. between them having to weave to get in i had to bro i couldn't have made another lap i had to i had to rtg and you know take the penalty so i even flashed my lights too like you know hey uh, you know caution please help me all right <laughs> Mentink now going to apply pressure to Husser as Remco heads into the pits. Husser trying to break that, that slipstream and not give Mentink the opportunity. There you go, Josh. Mentink to the inside. Husser able to close the door through T1 and 2. Minting's on a run here, man. He is. And now we're going to go nut to butt as we head down into these fast corners.
Good little pack of three to watch here. Porsche takes a lot of curb there. Purse, Porsche losing it out on the outside now. And Mentic able to move ahead. See if he can hold it. Through the chicane. Clean and safe all the way through. That's a good drive. Two positions and you know, what are we looking at? A lap and a half? Roundabout, yeah. Able to clean up very nicely through there. It seems like we've seen a lot of action right around, you know, the, the 5 to 10 mark. has been a lot of shuffling back through there. It's back up, though, because it looks like Yostin Sheffer took a bump from the Porsche through the corner. So Husser oh. giving Sheffer a bit of a shove. Sheffer still able to maintain P4, but back markers are always going to be an issue, aren't they? Uh, not always. Yes, I mean, are. look, I mean, these guys do the best they can, but traffic is traffic, right? So... Jump down to P7. Warwick now just ahead of G. Steven. Huff, I'm going to leave this battle on right here as I take a step away. I'm going to talk to my wife for a few minutes. Yeah, man. For my dinner, but we will keep it right here. Again, Warwick Veach ahead of G. Steven right now. Steven looking to make up the position he lost just a lap or two ago. I wonder if he caught any damage in that uh, incident. Josh, did it look bad or was it just like a spinner? No, nah, it looked like he just caught his uh, left rear quarter and just spun nice. him. Yeah. Don't do that again. Watch out, watch out. You know, Josh is it. after me because Josh, I think Josh and I would race very well together because we do talk to ourselves, I think, more than we talk to other people. This is probably a mistake. God, it is. I'm so sorry. I thought I had more time. Thomas, All right. you okay, Josh? Yeah. So I, know you're, I know you're struggling. Yeah, I'm exhausted, man. That's all. Here, I, I'm, I'm willing to offer up a triple stint if you want to come in. I thought uh, Rob was supposed to be next. Well, no, I'm next. Oh, you are? Okay. If you want to do one more lap, I'll give you tire pressures. I'll do a triple. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, 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 I'm plenty awake, believe me. And there's a madman. What time is it now? 6.45. Okay, yeah, I've been up for 14 hours now. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you out of there. Give me a second. Well, I got another one tonight anyway, but I think a little nap might do me well. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, just rest yourself up. Because I'm on... Almost five hours of driving already. Patrick Kerr. You doing any more stints throughout the night? Yeah, I have a. a There's one 20, more. Twenty-three hundred. Cool. I did that on purpose, huh? What's that? Oh, it's I said twenty-three hundred. I, 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 I know. But you know, the thing is, I, I know military time. It's just like sometimes I do have to think about it because it's not something sure. I use every day. I come from a pretty big military family, so definitely. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to split these tire pressures down the middle between the 25 and the 20. Let me yeah. know when you want to edit. We'll keep complete silence in here while you guys uh, do your stint, so this will be some cool thing to uh, to listen to. Okay. Uh, which, which pit strat? Three, and we're going down. Uh, yeah, start at whatever the 25C one is. I forget the numbering. Three. So, go down two clicks. All the way around? Yeah, pretty much down two clicks all the way around. Okay, got it. And I have 45 liters. Get me to 117 total. Okay, so 72... I'll take care of all the electronics. Don't even worry about anything. I got it. It's a uh, three, 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 sixty point four, right? Put it on fifty nine eight. Fifty nine eight. Okay. Yeah, sixty point right, four is now. a little too much. All right, we got thirty three seconds. Stop. All right, setting the electronics. Fifty nine eight. Yeah, fifty nine eight's fine. Three three. Fifty nine eight three three. You're in first gear. Twenty six seconds. 
All right, thank you. We only had six tenths from that bump in the rear. Not bad. Fifteen seconds. That was my goal. Was bringing home unbroken. So, uh, Zap ran again. What did the GTR say to the Porsche? I don't know, Zap. What is it? Nine, eight, seven. Cars yours in five, four, three, two, one. Go. All right, got it. Thank you. What? Oh um, no! Oh no! I forgot to. Oh dear. All right, I'll go around. Go oh, around I... one lap and hand it back to you. You never said it, did you? <laughs> I didn't say it. Yeah, I was doing everything else. All right, one quick careful lap. Oh, that's Dang a shame. it, Josh. Dang it. I was going to say, like, the wheel felt heavy. <laughs> like, I didn't have yeah. it. Self imposed stop go 30 for no reason. Ah, I'm so sorry, man. I'll make up for it. I gotta go in and untick everything. All right, no tires. You're not Rob Keyser. Just be careful with the TC at three. You'll get a little bit of slip. Oh, yeah. Good call. Especially Aqua, be careful. It's still going to be a 30 second stop. Yeah, driver. it's just a default. Yeah. Sucks, man. I'm sorry. You're right, fine. I'll make up for it. To be fair, you only lose about 40 seconds in the drive through. Because I was really starting to feel it at the end of uh, my last stint, so I hope I can carry it over. Okay, driver swap only 59.833. Correct. And then, so shift into second and gun it right here, right? And screw everything else up. All right, engine off. Thirty seconds. I stopped too short and they had to move me. Zap's not going to tell me the punchline to this joke, is he? They sent that message a while ago. I won't lie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Checking up, All catching right. up on everything as we watch the driver 15. swap here from the pits. We'll let these guys talk. 10 seconds. Cars yours in nine, eight, seven, six, five, <laughs> three, two, one. It's yours. All right, Indo. Thank you, man. Go kick yeah, some no ass. Problem. Justin Wichman now leading this race and we have we are just about to cross the halfway point of this 24-hour race at Imola hey do good luck man have a good stint um Josh good yeah, drive good. you kept it out it's of trouble good. man it's gonna be a yeah. long time but I'm I'm ready good job guys Anderson good luck I will drop out of here and head back down good to go. our commentary channel leave you guys alone good luck to both of you though and get some rest Butler, uh, before you go, he doesn't know. Uh, he doesn't get said enough, Molson. Uh, as somebody that broadcasts elsewhere, um, what you do is amazing. It's fantastic, ah. and it helps really make this league. You you are the face of the league as far as uh, Twitch, and uh, it's a big deal. And I think it goes underappreciated most of the time. And uh, I want I just want to let you know how much I appreciate it. Dude, I appreciate that very much from you. I thank you for it. Yep, no problem, and, buddy. Uh, appreciate I, it. And hope we put appreciate the focus you organizing on you guys. this. Yes, sir, man. Hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Man. Yes, sir. Are they leaving? We no, left. Just... We left at the perfect time. You know why? Why is that? Because Blue just joined back in. 
And now he thinks we don't want to talk to him. It's perfect. Yeah. God, the timing is impeccable. It's, That's it's awesome. awesome. I mean, it was just perfect. That was awesome. Where's Huff's team? Si Remco Otten's asking, so... <laughs> Huff's team had a connection issue. Could not join back in properly. Not because of them not doing it, but because of the server not allowing them back in. They kept coming in as Car 1000. And uh, eventually ended up having to just drop. So... Now we get Huff all night long. A little bit of a break coming up, but he'll be with us during the overnight. Gonna hang with the old man tonight, I guess, right? We are the old. You got me by a bit, but I'm an old soul. <laughs> also, my body's old. I'm 35 going on 72, I feel. Yeah, that'll do it to you, yeah. 100%. I feel that one. Justine Schaeffer still sitting in fourth right now. Again, Justin Wickman leading this race, about a 46 second gap back to Julian Guerin. We've seen those close up very quickly with the way these pit stops have to run though. So still many, many hours of racing to go. And right there it is, as we watch this session timer count down 10 seconds and we are at the halfway point of today's race. You know, it's crazy because the, the previous longest race we've done was the, you know, the six hour Silverstone. Mm -hmm. We're already double what double you know, that. our previous, yeah. previous length was. Unbelievable, isn't it? And I was wrong. I was, I was a little bit off, not looking at the times right. So at about 20 seconds left, we're going to hit that halfway point. A little bit of a halfway celebration. <laughs> Otten says his hands are numb after all that driving. But a good stint from him did really well through there. Yeah, Remco, great drive, man. You mm -hmm. you uh, caught some interesting battles, very good battles. You uh, seemed, you know, from what we caught, clean drive. Good job, man. And there we go. As my dogs start to bark, that is the halfway point they celebrated for us. Nice. <laughs> the celebration. We have hit the halfway point now. Old Gress now in that Remco Otten's team six, number 64 car. Guys sitting in eighth, they're doing a great job today. Again, very consistent. And like I said, you know, they got hung up at the at the beginning in incidents right before T1, even even before T1 got hung up uh, and have spent the rest of this race making up positions and have done a great job. They're back to P8 after dropping all the way at around P18 or 19. So to say that team hasn't done well today would be a lie just because they're in the same position they started in. They've done a fantastic job with their consistency and moving forward. Yeah, most definitely. Remco Otten's heading to bed for the night. Remco, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate everybody being in the chat today. Yeah, and Remco, you know, he he's kind of behind the scenes here. You know, the the mod team, uh, mm -hmm. admin team, whatever you want to call it. Remco does a lot for the server, and I know, you know, uh, Josh showed his gratitude towards you and myself. Uh, Remco, like seriously, man, we appreciate you and everything you do. You do one hundred percent, man box is a team effort and i think you touched on it a little bit earlier while i was away we really have built a great team uh well, we, have, you know, we all I... have our strengths and you know what we're good at it what we're willing to put time into mm -hmm. uh, great team and Super i think it comes down like you said what we've done too, for sure oh, absolutely and i think like you said it comes down to knowing your strengths right we all have something different that we bring to the table and the part that I think I'm proudest of, though, is not just, you know, we can talk about admins all day, but at the end of the day, we, we always say we're a community first. I mean, this Xbox season that I, I want to talk about here in a minute as we go through some of the leagues we're running right now, um, this Xbox season wasn't built by me or by Fife or by Namaste. This, it was built by, it was built by the drivers. Yeah. You know, they picked... Hey, we want to still run on Saturdays. Um, hey, can we shorten the races? Because last season was fun. We, you know, we tried to, we tried to follow last season more of the SRO, uh, real season, right? Um, with yeah. one-hour yeah. sprint races, two-hour endurance races. Not going to the full three, uh, but yeah. two-hour endurances. And they asked for shorter, shorter races for season three. So we did that. We knocked it back. Um, we do have a ninety-minute endurance and then a two-hour endurance at the end of the season. Uh, and they wanted to mix up the tracks and get some of the ones we haven't run yet. So 
again, it comes down to wanting to build that community and let the community pick and choose what they want for the most part, right? Like there has to still be some organization there, but at least taking people's input and listening to what they want to do, I think is important. And I think we've done a very good job of that thus far. And I certainly hope going forward, you know, whether we talk about six months, a year, whatever, 10 years from now, that we're still holding on to that as, as one of our core tenants to involve the community in what we do. Yes, yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, and that, like, like you said, we are community first, as always, sim racing second. You know, we're a group of friends and, you know, we, we play video games and have a good time. I mean, mm -hmm. dude, there's going to be several nights where you'll catch us in, in VC playing, you know, golf or something. You know, I know, you know, DJ and I, you know, we we're old men, so we like to take a chill night here and there and just, uh, you know, play some golf and just, you know, we're in there with the guys sim racing and DJ and I are playing golf or making a livery or doing admin work and, you know, we're just hanging out yep 100 percent. and well that's part of what happens with us uh, you know those of us who run i racing we rarely mm -hmm. if ever are on track together yeah just because of how i racing works you end up in different uh uh stints that you're not driving together but we're in vc we're shooting the shit we're having fun and everybody's driving what they want to drive you know chief famously loves his circle racing right so he can yeah. go do that, but we've met a group, a group of people now who he can be doing that while I'm doing road racing or, or Dunn is working on a livery. We're all watching each other and having fun together. And that's really what it's about. It's I, I don't drive for this league, right? For sure. Uh, I'm yeah. one of those people. I just, I know my place. I know what I'm good at and I'm better at this than I am at driving. So, well, if this is how I can contribute, then I should do that, I guess. Yeah, and I kind of did the same thing, you know, whenever we really first started coming in, you know, season one came along, I chose not to drive, you know, I was managing the server, you know, we didn't have quite the team we have now, mm -hmm. you know, we were still pretty young and fresh and new, and I chose just to sit back and, you know, click screens and, you know, admin commands and this and that, just make sure it got off with, you know, <laughs> what, what did we say when we first, uh, when the first, league, what, excuse me, when the league first popped off, uh, compared to something like an airplane or something like that uh, I, I don't i think it was done that came up with the reference or something mm -hmm. i don't remember but you know like we we, we hit the <laughs> ground and we just like completely blew up out of nowhere and it's like uh i don't know if we were ready for it or I, we were to a sense but i wasn't <laughs> expecting it you know what i mean yeah i'll say that i i don't think any of us expected the growth that we've seen there done said it building the plane as we're flying it right yes, there that is it that's job, and that's exactly what happened and i don't think yep. any of us expected the growth that we've seen and and it's not so much like growth is not a bad thing right we want as many drivers as possible yeah uh, you're good buddy we want as many drivers as possible we want as many members as possible because not everybody can make every week Right. Sure. And so you end up with, you know, if you end up with a hundred members on the PC side, let's say just using round numbers, maybe only 30 per week can show up and there'll be, and there'll be different, a different 30 people every week, but it means you've got 30 people on track every week. These guys can get a good race. Right. Um, so the growth is a good thing, but I don't think any of us expected of it. Any of us expected it as quickly as it happened. And suddenly it's like, okay, we got to step up our game quick here or people are going to get frust you know, frustrated and, and end up leaving, which is what we didn't want. And we all came together, put the work in, and, and you know, you and, and Red and uh, I want to say Remco as well now, uh, especially, worked the PC side, myself and Namaste uh, and, and a little bit Red there helping with Xbox, and we just continued to grow as much as possible. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, like like he said, you know, we're we're building the plane as we're flying it. Well, we got a, we got a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid plane now. We do, we do, and I think it's only up from here, right? The wings are attached and the engines are running, so uh, we'll continue to keep bringing it to you right here as well. I mean, this is my favorite part: is streaming these races. To the point yeah. I've I gave up my own stream for now. I I don't even stream on my channel anymore. <laughs> it's just like, well. I'm worried about the race this week. Uh, let me let me focus on that and get ready. It's a 48-hour race win. Announcement will come later on stream tonight. Well, wait, Just Remco's the isn't Remco going to sleep? Like, how are you calling? How are you calling for a 48-hour race when you're headed to bed? Only 12 hours like into this one. It, 
it's pretty dumb late for him there, so <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess without doing <laughs> conversions or anything, it's probably like three or four a.m. for him. Yeah. One a.m. I, I was close. Dude, it's only one a.m. Suck it up. Drink Very a Red sick. Bull or something. <laughs> or do what I did and switch to whisk, switch to Scotch. I mean, you'll be fine. <laughs> I'm sure I'll have no problem staying up all night. Yeah, same here. Um, actually, I would hate to count the uh, the amount of hours I've been up so far. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it's it's funny. You made the comment earlier, Huff, about you know we get a couple of us every night. We're in the voice chats. I'm like every night. I get up for work in the morning and Huff and these guys are still in VC driving or golf, whatever. Like, like it's five o'clock in the morning. What are y'all doing? Go to bed. <laughs> well, like we were touching on a little bit earlier, you know, I, I kind of run like a different little shift. I'm, I'm an East coast boy on a West coast time schedule. Pretty yeah. much. I'm, I'm East coast on a almost European schedule. It drives yeah. my boss. It you drives my boss are. nuts, but he, it's like, well, what do you want me to tell you? Like Half usually, usually in the mornings, whenever you and you and Will typically awake at the same time, and you're having your mm -hmm. coffee and stuff, and you know, I will see the couple little messages pop through in Discord. I'm like, <laughs> I need to go to bed. Yeah, we're we're talking. It's like we're running the we run the league in shifts. Will and I are up early morning East Coast time doing stuff, and everybody else kind of joins in. And uh, throughout the day, right, as their as their time zone hits properly and they finish work or what have you. Yeah. But it's like you and I, you know, <laughs> Dunn's talking about shifts and, you know, having it covered and he goes to bed. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you, dude. Like you and I tried to set up that software uh, mm -hmm. for the past two weeks, but we just couldn't link up. You know, same thing with me. You know, I, I don't get home from work sometimes till, you know, eight, nine, ten o'clock. So at which point I'm here. headed to bed. So, yeah, for sure. <laughs> And Dunn's right. I mean, I I love racing with Dunn and those guys. Dunn and Chief, especially those guys, you know. But Chief's on the West Coast. Dunn's mm -hmm. out in Colorado. So being that far behind, there's just very little opportunity for us to, to actually get together. Because by the time they get on, we get about an hour to drive together or what have you, whether it's ACC or iRacing. And then I'm off to bed. Like, I'm ready to crash. And these guys are kind of just getting started with their evenings. So it does make yeah. it hard. Zap, I got to run Donington practice with Molson this season. One of my favorite practice sessions I had so far. That's because Zap is Zap is a smooth operator. Let me tell you what. Oh, for Ma sure. Makes me feel nervous, right? Because it's me, and I'm like, just go around, just go around, just go. Around. I don't care, just go around. We're, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not racing. I, I'm just here to drive with you guys. And nope, Zap's like, no, I'm just gonna park my bu my bumper under your wing, and I'm gonna keep it here for as long as possible. Until I eventually Dude, screw you, up and then that's I've over. spent so much time around track with Zap. Me and him met on stream. I don't I don't recall mm -hmm. who was streaming. I think maybe I popped into his or vice versa. But you know, we we've known each other for well over a year now. Almost two probably at this point. So <laughs> he and I's sweaty public Monza lobby <laughs> nights are quite infamous on either his or my stream and you know, I, I've actually, like I said, dude, we're pretty close in pace, so we spend a lot of track time uh, near each other. Such yep. a respectful driver to be around. Oh, Me absolutely. Me and him can read each other's lines like the back of our hands. You know, two wide through Monza T1, like no problem. I mean, it's it's he's a good driver. He is very good, and and you know, he said it as we were practicing Donington that night, that evening. Um, you know, he said it. He's like, no, nope, it's my job to back off, and that's that's the kind of. That's the kind of attitude I like to hear, you know, not just from someone like Zap, but I'd love to hear that from all of our drivers, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whether And it doesn't mean you're not competitive. It means you understand, you know what, there's a move to be made here, but it's not here and it's not now. I'll bide my yep. time because I know that move's going to... I'm going to find the right place to make that play. It just isn't here. Uh, and that was what made it so enjoyable for me with, with racing on track with them. And again, I'd love to see that through from everybody. And I think we get that for the most part, right? Again, mistakes are made. Mistakes are always made. Uh, sure. And, and this is what I've always said. You know, the goal is zero incidents every race. The problem with that goal is it's it's unobtainable because in sim racing with people driving who are amateur drivers, because even in real world racing, you're not getting zero. 
right? Yeah. Incidents happen yeah. in the real world, whether it's uh, 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 F1, whether it's GT3. It could be karting, and incidents happen there, you know, with carts that'll only do 50 mile an hour. So to say you're always you're ever going to get zero, that's not going to happen. Um, what it's about is the reaction to those incidents, is, is how people react to them. Both those who are the victim of the incident and those who are at fault. And I think all we ask of our drivers who are at fault for an incident is, is own it, right? Take that responsibility. Yeah, and, learn and, from it. You know, learn from it, do better. Um, no one's going to yell at you. Yeah, somebody might yell at you in Discord, and then that message is going to get deleted because we don't tolerate it. You know, nope. because, and again, it's that reaction from the victim of saying, you know what, that sucks. My race was ruined, but they didn't do it on purpose. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't done out of spite. It wasn't done to ruin my race on purpose. And you know what? Two weeks ago, I was the one that caused the incident. Yeah. And recognize yeah. that. So. And a lot of times if you're coming out fresh off a stint or, you know, fresh out of a race, whatever it may be, and you were just in an incident, you're reacting off emotion, not logic. Mm -hmm. And emotions make horrible decisions. Sometimes. Absolutely. Oh, and Rob Stemple running off into. Whoa! What was that? What was that? That was odd. No, we got to go back. I don't think there was contact there. No, that, that did was not. The net code. It looked like. Yeah, yeah, he just whipped straight to the right and into the wall. So no, definitely a gap in those cars. No, uh, no contact on our end whatsoever, but that was crazy. Oof. Dane Markey now, E19, possibly going to lose some time. He's back on track. Patrick Kerr's heading out of the pits now, but Zydane Markey back on track. We'll see if he ends up in the pits. The front end of that car not looking healthy as done in the, the chat. Mod. Yeah, as done in chat <laughs> mentions net code. I know, right? Possible example of it right there i caught the tail end of it but I, I to me that just looked like a snap oversteer and he lost it yeah now i've heard a commentator curse curse but done are you uh stream chat curse is that a new thing that could very well be we should <laughs> you know here's the thing i don't understand why dunn is not in here commentating with us he climbed a mountain yesterday says he can't get out of bed what else do you have to do but come in here and talk to us but it's done, so he's probably going to go boxing after climbing the mountain. I know, right? The guy's a beast. I'm doing laundry. Dude, are you hand washing him? Because the last time I checked, you put him in a machine, hit a button, and I was going to say, walk, walk to away. Be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And there you go, Zidane Markey coming into the pits, going to get some damage repair done after holding it straight into a wall. What time is it in the race at the moment? You mean uh, race time? It was 18.20. We are heading into evening. The sun is starting to come down. Track temperatures down from a high of 29 back down to 20 C. We started this morning, I want to say right around 14 C. So we'll see what kind of temperatures we get overnight as the sun starts to set shadows from the trees just now starting to reach the track and will start to cool some of that pavement yeah shadows can can really mess with your your braking references and stuff mm -hmm. man like earlier when i was running some practice uh turn one you know my typical brake marker is the exit curb there just after the marshal on the right and there was a huge shadow at one point i, just, I found it tough just to like visualize that brake marker for myself uh, spa. Spa. Yeah. yeah. Coming out of Blanchemont there as you're coming towards in, into the bus stop. My brake mm -hmm. marker there is that white line that runs across the track. And as soon as the shadows start to cross that white line, it disappears. You can't see it anymore. Yeah. Um, it's hard enough in the dark, but at least then your headlights hit it just in time for you to see it and then and, and, and jump on the brakes. But the shadow makes it your headlights aren't on yet. And, but yet that line is in the dark, makes it very, very difficult for myself to find that line. And checking in, still in P10, George Bratzos. These guys are still out in this number 11 BMW that looks like they picked it up off the side of the road somewhere where it had been abandoned for approximately three weeks. 
<laughs> and the neighborhood kids simply took a baseball bat to it because nobody was watching. No more, no less. Three and, weeks. But again, holding P10, they're still <laughs> running 43s. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely unexplainable to me. Crow, I think Crow earlier in the chat said it's the worst he's ever seen a car in ACC that has actually stayed on track. Like, normally, if they're that bad, people roll them into the pits. Yeah, you're getting meatballed. One of the two. <laughs> yeah, like, don't, I can't understand it. And the, ins the incident that caused this was brutal. I mean, directly head-on into a wall with a Ferrari and just came out looking like this, and it's been that way ever since. Okay, now, is this that same car that we were talking about quite some time ago? Do you reckon it's a, a These guys were in bug, first. a glitch? Yeah, this uh, is the same one as before. I mean, I guess it's entirely possible that we're we're seeing a glitch here. Uh, we'd have to get, get in with the team and see if they ever repaired it, I guess. Interesting. That or they're just digging the downforce so they never repaired it. Maybe they like the setup now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to worry about tire pressures anymore. The whole car forces it itself down onto the pavement. There you go. That diffuser dragon tends to uh, provide some aerodynamics <laughs> we weren't aware of. It's literally <laughs> just flopping around. <laughs> oh, my. But Anderson now looking to jump in. We heard earlier for Butler. Probably going to run a triple stint in that Nissan. Yeah, but it was actually kind of cool being in there. Um, you know, listen to the, the strategy that goes into these pit stops, man. You know, that's why, like, there was a point in time where it's just like, all right, guys, I'm going to beat my mic. Y'all do what you got to do. Because, you know, yeah. I know what it's like as a, a driver. You know, you're communicating your numbers. You know, like, don't talk to me in the corners. You know, clicking. You're trying to, there's so many things going on in the pit stop. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Alex Ackerall sliding it off track right there. Um, yeah, that's why I got quiet all of a sudden, too, when I realized what was going on. I, I shut up real quick and let those guys talk because I wanted to not only let them talk, but I wanted to hear what they were doing and sure. listen to them, setting these numbers and everything that they're looking to do. Yep. And if I do the math right, you know, we're a 24-hour race. It's 1,440 minutes, uh, 70 minutes then, so the drivers are going to be making approximately 21 different pit stops, you know, depending on fuel, incidents, drive throughs yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to do that 20 times, give or take, throughout the course of a race. Oh. Now, uh, help me understand, because myself, I've never done, you know, my only... Uh experience with a team driving was on xbox xbox there are no driver swaps it's finish the race start a new race people join in the right order that's the only way to do it on console right yeah, yeah. when you do a driver swap here now i know this you know these guys were talking about pressures where to set mm -hmm. things and all of this so what's the order of operations as you come into the pits to do a stop if you're also going to do fuel and tires is it yep. the is it the exiting driver does the fuel and tires needs to have that set up ready or yes. does the new driver get in the vehicle and then, you know, so they're able to dial in a setup prior to the start of the pit stop and then the tires and, and fuel are added? Well, you know, I don't I don't know how much of you that conversation that you heard, but, you know, some teams will go all out and set up all of their different uh, pit stop strategies you can see in your MFD menu. Mm -hmm. And they'll have a few laid out for, you know, X temperature change variable. You know, they'll have some in there for for wet setups for you know medium setups uh but typically you know what is done is you know you'll you'll go through your tire pressures uh take note of the, the track temperature and ambient temperature and record those you know like we do it in a, a different chat over in my discord we have like a race notes channel is typically what i do it in okay and each pit stop we record uh current pit stop strategy tire pressure is what we plugged in will go where the tires are running at at the end of a stint say your right front's running at you know 28 psi you're going to want that you know ideally around the 27.5 mm -hmm. so you're going to take your weather and variable and do the math and you know it's about a click per temperature uh yeah there, there's a lot of work into it man it's not just like yeah hey, my, my tires are too hot let's you know let's okay. bump them down a couple so clicks, i guess you know. but, I, but i guess what i'm asking is so when during that swap right Mm -hmm. um, Anderson gets in the vehicle. Anderson now needs to know what he's going to set his tires to before anything's done, or is that is he able to set that up in game before he's actually in the car, so that once he takes over, it just happens? 
No. Uh, the the driver who is currently driving the car, getting ready to enter the pits, it is their responsibility to set everything. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, the you know the co-driver, teammates, whatever, they have no control over that, which is a, a horrible idea. I mean, well, it uh, really is because now you're trying to you're having to drive and dial that in at the same time. Yes. Versus just driving while your yep. partner, your teammate, dials that in and sets it up before. Uh, before the pit stop, and even if that, even if, to me, even if that means it adds two seconds to the pit stop because they they have to enter it, but it's better to me better to do that in the pit stop than it is out on track where, dude, I can't yeah. pay attention to the MFD. I, 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 yep. I've tried a hundred times, and every as soon as I glance over there, forget about it. I'm into a wall or another car. Yep. Yeah, I just i can't do it that's why it's key to keep track of your temperatures your previous lap you know your not previous lap but your previous inputs for your pit stop and just mm -hmm. change from there with the you know, change of conditions and what i like to do is about you know 30 minutes in you know whenever i have about 30 minutes remaining in my stint is go ahead and start working on that to where i'm not trying to do everything last minute yeah. you know because i if i got some clean air i want to be able to play with that because you're gonna lose some time you know i'm, I'm not good enough to where I can focus fully on track and click here and click there. No. I, so, I mean, no. you're, you're going to lose a few tents, you know, fiddling with that. Yeah, I just see it being very difficult to do those things. I mean, I've tried, you know, especially somewhere like Spa, you know, I've gone out, I'm driving, I want to do a pit stop, and this could be in an offline race, so I'm, I'm going to come into the pits, you know, maybe I set myself up for a 45-minute a race offline. Mm hmm I go to come into the pits and I'm trying to dial in my MFD because the way I have mine set up is I can flip through my screens and then tick, 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 tick. And, you know, with the, using the, uh, the funky switch on my, uh, on my wheel. And even just in the pit lane, if I'm not being careful and trying to dial in my pressures and I focus on that too much, I'll bounce off the pit wall. And that's at pit speeds. Like, that's how bad yeah. I am. I can't imagine trying to do this while out on track. Giggity giggity asks, is there a fixed TC limit in this league? No. We are accepting of all drivers. You're like me that needed all the assists save for the driving line. It's about the only thing I don't use. Uh, or if you are uh, someone who can drive full pro with zero TC and, and be successful, we want you here too. Oh, it's looking like my man Kurtz in the Lexus is all the way down to P20. What happened with him? Yeah, well, he had to make another pit stop, and he was in there for quite a while and lost some positions there. So, uh, I, in fact, I think he may have made two at one point. Hey, he's still in there, though. He is. He's still driving. Kudos to him for sticking with it. Doing a great job. Again, I think we really... And I'm sure that the, the guys who are in teams are probably like, eh, we don't want to hear about this, but Joris, Joris Mentink, Thomas mm -hmm. Jenks, I know I'm screwing that up, I feel terrible, Nicholas Webfar, and Patrick Kurz, all individual solo drivers in this event today, going a full 24 hours by themselves. What Apex Sim Racing just got dumped. Who's who's what Apex? It's uh, my teammate actually. It's got dumped by who? What? Someone did. Uh, no, we're still oh. at twenty-two drivers. I don't see anyone out. Usually, yeah, I can tell because like... everybody moves up a place or down a place, right? It's, yeah. That's usually the easiest way to tell, and I didn't have that happen on my end, so. A lot of close driving continues. Julian Guerin hold up in traffic right now. Looking to find some clean air. Currently running P2. He has very slowly been reeling in Justin Wickman in P1. Um, you know, when these guys got in the vehicles, when they pitted, when they pitted, it was about a 42 second gap. Now this was half an hour or more ago. That gap now down to about 33 and a half seconds. So Julian moving up slowly but surely to where next pit stop's coming around. He may, you know, even if he can't get up to get the pass on Justin now, he may get close enough to when Justin heads in, he's able to, to jump ahead of him on track. Yeah, yeah.
Oh, you're talking about somebody had contact. Okay, I got you. Yeah, that's entirely possible. I thought when you said someone got dumped, I thought you said some. I thought you meant somebody left the server. Sorry. Joris Mentink against solo driver today, doing very well, still in P5. We look at it, eight positions gained during today's race so far. If I'm Joris, I have to be happy with that. If the race ended right now, I would have to be happy with that result. Yeah. Yeah, he went on a hell of a drive, you know, roughly an hour ago. Mm hmm. Running about his best is a 143.4 so far, currently running about a 144 flat. Again, not the fastest driver on track, but then again, in, in, in these conditions, do you need to be the fastest driver out there? I'd be content with the you know, flat 44s every time out. Well, I'm just thinking if you're consistent, you're staying out of trouble. You know, yeah. you're going to do better than the guy that gets walloped or does the walloping at some point, which is going to allow you to get ahead. Cole Gress now moving up into P7 with Warwick Beach in the pits. Got John Treacy back in the car right now. Oh, that, yeah, just about Steve to Steve fresh off his stand. Good run, buddy. John Tracy as well, able to get around that, putting that Audi back up into P8. That's about where they've been hanging all day. Yeah. And again, such a strong team, but you know, we I think we know this. I mean, not to take anything against away from any of these guys, but Brian Canepin, esports legend, leading that team, got them up into P8, uh, lost two positions during the pit stop and the driver change. But oh. since then, the other drivers have gotten themselves back up into P8. So really doing a great job. It's looking like Vike, uh, P, uh, P9, car 25, pulled a stop go 30 in his pit. So. A oh, little bit of speeding, little bit of speeding. in the, speeding in the pit bit. lane. So that should definitely free up uh, car 808, Tracy's team. Yeah, even now, 31 seconds ahead, that stop go 30 going to give them over a minute. Mm -hmm. lead on p9 depending on where uh bratzos comes out bratzos of course in the jag and wagon back here i'm waiting for that hood to fly up over the windshield and not let him see anymore i wish that were a feature in this game that would be very cool <laughs> <laughs> whips up slams into the windshield and sits there it, it absolutely flabbergasts me again 143.9 on the last lap 143.2 fastest during George's stint here today. As we settle in for the long night. Mike Mamenga out of the pits now in the car 313 BMW. I guess next hunt we got to look out for and see see what kind of time can be cut if any is uh you know p p8 and p7 john treacy and cole gross both uh very very mm -hmm. talented drivers same lap looking like john's about 28 seconds back yeah holding 28 now let's take a look cole gress and john tracy four tenths off the pace but john tracy the faster driver right now so cole gress Lacking just a tad. We'll see if Tracy can close that gap. Again, both very strong drivers, as you said. And I would love to see these teams battle each other. I would too. Once again, big thank I you love to... That, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yep. No, no, you go ahead, because I'm about to go on a rant, so... I was just going to say I love <laughs> the software, the way it shows their sector times, their last lap time. That's. What are you using? What are you looking at? I'm looking at your stream, dude. That, it's beautiful. Things feature full. Oh, yeah, down there in the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, yeah, I am loving it. Resume rant. <laughs> <laughs> Just GC in the chat. The car's wrap is on tight. Brother, we are full send in every entry point. Let's go. Let's go and see if John Tracy is able to close that gap. Already a second gone down to 27.5 now. 
And John, with clean air in front of him, says that he may have plenty of opportunity here during this stint to catch up with Cole Gress. And again, running about a second faster on that last lap. That's a fast way to catch up. One second per lap is going to tighten things down very quickly because again, at a minute, at a minute 43, these are fast laps, right? This, this is not a, this is not a spa at a 220 race pace. Mm -hmm. So those are going to, that's, we're going to watch that tighten down, I think very quickly. Um, but as I was saying before, I just want to take a moment and thank our, our sponsor for today's race, Apex Sim Racing. Uh, Huff, I know you have been able to hold on to that vertical mount V2 button box. And you were saying earlier how, you know, buttons are tactile, very rigid faceplate. I mean, does it feel, does it got some heft to it? Does it feel like it's all there? Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's, it's mostly uh, 3D printed housing, but the front plate is carbon fiber and it's real carbon fiber. It's not mm -hmm. some plastic with a vinyl sticker, you know. It's a quality piece of kit, man, and it's well made, uh, fully function. I mean, there's everything there. Awesome. It lights up to the little the button for your push button. You know, like I had I had it mapped to my my starter button. Lights okay. up when it's active. Uh, plug and play, simple. You know, literally you plug it in. It shows up in your your settings menu to map it as Apex button box. Really? Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So nice. very easy. One of our drivers today, tomorrow morning. I keep saying today, but that's not true because tomorrow morning, Cole Grass now. Uh-oh, and that time is about to get close. Cole Grass spinning off in the grass. So now that time down to 18 seconds. John Tracy closing it up quickly. Uh, but no, one of our drivers tomorrow morning will be winning that random draw of all the teams that are still on track. All those drivers. Someone's going to provide me a list, and I'm going to quickly type them in to the Wheel of Fate, and we are going to spin that wheel before this stream ends. Yep. A little over, or a little under 12 hours from now. So all the drivers are going to want to stick around for that. Make sure you come to the live stream. You'll be able to know live who wins it. Listen, you're sitting there, right? people, are, people are watching. You know, we got, what do we got right now? Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? We're sitting at 47 viewers right now, and I don't know that they're all drivers with Box 3 already. Well, if you're not, you're sitting here watching going, holy shit, 24 hours? How do they do it? I, there's no way I could want to do this, but I want a sim race. Well, guess what? You don't have to do a 24-hour race. Season 2, three races left in PCACC race Season 2. We're back next Sunday at this track again. I might fall asleep during that one if I don't tonight. Uh, Imola, 90-minute <laughs> endurance race. So all the drivers, all the regular season drivers who skipped out today and said, ah, I don't want to drive Imola, guess what? It's coming back to bite you on April 24th, 7 p.m. UTC, 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And you can watch that right here at Box 3 Motorsports. That is our regular season. We want to thank Next Level Racing, providing an, F an FGT light race seat to our pro class champ, Silver Class, and most improved driver's prizes provided by Coach Dave Academy, our sponsors for season two. We want to thank them so much for that. But let's say again, you're sitting there going, but I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started in sim racing. I don't, man, I, these guys, what they're doing, like they're driving so close, I'm scared. Okay. Why don't you join Huff? along with the guys from Trackalicious 949 on Tuesday nights, the Beer Cup, Porsche Cup cars, BMW M2s out there. They're coming back this week at Laguna Seca, 10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Okay? Ton of this, fun. These guys are having a ton of fun. I wish I could join them. It's, it's again, it's past my bedtime. They have so much fun. I hear about it all the next day. It's Beer Cup. What do you think's going it's, on? Yeah. I can't believe, I cannot believe y'all take incident reports. We don't. I mean, we do, but like, it's been a gentleman's league so far. Like, you know, we, we do driver's briefings because, you know, we do like yeah. keep high driving standards. That's just, it's how we do. You well, know, I think it, mistakes, it, we talk about it, but it sets the standard, you know, it, it tells you what to expect. Exactly. I mean, uh, you know, it's like I told the Xbox guys, I, I told the Xbox guys, like, they want to start some casual during the week stuff. And I'm like, listen, we'll do this, but I don't want to put any extra load on the stewarding team. So everybody has to be on the lookout. If, if a mistake yeah. happens, a mistake happens, but. I don't want to hear about it unless it is egregious. Like it's it's sure. on it's on purpose. Then we got to have a conversation. Until then, no, don't. I like so like I see the stewarding. They're like ah, turning your stewarding reports for beer cup, and I'm like, stewarding reports. I can't even see the screen by the end of the race. 
It would drive it's pretty like... much a gentleman's <laughs> agreement. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, That's I go over in the driver's chat, you know, if you mess up, give it the position back. If it's egregious, yeah, report it so we can, you know, just kind of talking to her, coach him up, or, you know, see what happened, or, you know, yeah. just, just let him know that, dude, we, you know, we don't tolerate, you know, malicious driving. 100%. We make Thomas. mistakes, it happens, blah, 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 but, you know, it's a fun league. Come out and drive with us. Absolutely. So again, casual racing at its finest. And if you're still into it, but you don't in, you're not into the beer cup, maybe that's a little too late for you. Euro trip back Monday. I'm already thinking it's Sunday, but no, they're back Monday, April 18th at Spa. 30 minute racing, 7 p.m. UTC, 3 p.m. Eastern. And as we said earlier, Xbox. We are continuing with our Xbox racing. That season just started today. The Hungara Ring race is over, but still plenty of time to come in. And hang out with the guys. We have reserve slots open. We had 25 drivers on track in the Xbox race today. Huff. That's cap, right? F that's awesome. That's fantastic. 25 drivers started, 22 finished the race. Heavy, heavy rain at Hungara Ring. The weather changed on these guys earlier in the week, and I felt bad. I kind of felt bad for him, but then I didn't feel bad as I punched in the numbers to the server and said, muha ha ha ha, because uh, I didn't have to drive <laughs> well, in it. <laughs> but <laughs> back next Saturday for a one hour race at the Nurburgring. On our xbox league so again please come by box motorsports discord and join us as we jump back to our race here thomas janch and solo racer currently hanging p11 john chase now cole grass has stretched it back out we saw that we saw that lead shrink as uh, Gress went off track, pulled it back to about 17 seconds. It's now opened back up to 21 as we wait for John Tracy to cross the line, get a hand of Mortz Husser here, who is in the pits. So both these drivers, Cole Gress moving up to P6, P8. John Tracy moving into P7 now. Looks like we will soon be greeted and uh, soon be able to hang with Mr. Dunn. He's going to reboot his PC and come in here and join us in just a few moments, which would be great because I can let you two talk while I go take a little bit of a break. Well, it's about my time for my break, unfortunately. I'll be around for about another 15 or so. Oh, don't worry about it, man. If you got to go, you got to go. I can talk to Dunn on the other headset and we watch yeah, these guys. We're, we're pretty well spread out right now. So, yep, About yep. what time are you looking to come back? Uh, I'll be probably a couple hours at most and then I'm locked no in for the night. So, you'll Not a problem, me. my dude. You are good. I was just curious, so I know when to look for you, so you don't scare the shit out of me if I fall asleep. <laughs> I'll be sure and set an alarm. <laughs> but no, there'll be no sleep in here. Ottens, you're supposed to be sleeping right now, getting your rest for your next stint, sir. Thank you, I appreciate the compliment, but get your ass to bed, because I don't want to hear you crying later. I had an accident because I was tired. Nicholas, way far. So now we see Nick Nicholas looking for a re-entry point. He finds one, gets himself off to the left side of the track, let traffic pass. Didn't lose any position. But again, Nicholas, one of our, our solo drivers, and this is where we have to start to watch, you know, especially uh, myself being here on the stream, um, anybody who's around, huff yourself overnight. These solo drivers are going to start to to wear out, right? So at what point do we, you know, we got to keep an eye on these guys, not for not just for their own safety. I think that's paramount. These guys are trying to roll 24 hours straight in these in these setups um but also for the other drivers we we don't want them to start causing incidents right sure, sure so we have to obviously continually watch for those mistakes and again it can happen to anybody even the guys that are on teams but these guys running 24 straight especially i think we we need to keep special eye on uh again for the other drivers but also for their safety to say hey man did you fall asleep somebody's just spinning the tires in the gravel against the wall for 15 minutes straight yeah, yeah. It's like the movie <laughs> Cool Running Sink, you dead. Nah, I'm on. <laughs> George Bratzlis back out on track. And again, no repairs completed. I think the car looks worse now than it did last time. I'll be very curious to find out at the end of the race if that was a visual glitch on our end or if they actually never repaired the car. Yeah. I, I cannot wait to find out. Julian Guerin, P2, now heading into the pits at AMG. Um, Sheffer's team's nearly caught themselves back up to the lead lap. They're sitting two yeah. back, two nearly three. Yep, 103 back off Robert Stemple now. Getting in P4. But making a push, getting themselves back up there. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Welp Cakes want to know if I'm all right with 11 hours and 20 minutes left. Sir, I am cruising. I don't know how long I got left. I'm going to get weird with it. Anybody in the chat hey, tells me what show that is from, and I will gift you either an AC or an ACC license on Steam. Oh, no Googling. Honor nope. system. Honor system. You got to hit it quick. A Assetto Corsa Ultimate Edition or Assetto Corsa Competizione can be yours if you can tell me what show that is from. I don't Ten know how seconds. long I got left, so I'm going to get weird with it. Five. Time's up. Yeah, time's up. Yeah, Get off they're, McDonald's they're, Wi-Fi. They're, they're trying to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> so again, Julian Guerin into the pits. Still sitting. We'll wait and see if a driver swap happens there. Justin Wichman now pulling away with it. But we'll soon be into the pits as well. P5 is alone too. Yes, P5 is alone too. Joris Mentink has been driving alone. Near as we know, <clears throat> again, you know, our understanding is that one of these teams was going to be in real life swapping. Unfortunately, we don't know which one it is. So we're assuming they're all alone. Um, at this point in time, we may find out later that's not true. But either way, uh, you know, you guys doing a great job. Patrick Kurz was not supposed to be alone today, was actually supposed to have a partner. His partner unable to join and Patrick decided to run alone anyway. Legend as Robert Stemple E3 now heads into the pits and will be more than likely. I think he's been out long enough to make a driver swap. Justin Sheffer, E4, that number 31 BMW. What's up, boys? Mr. Dunn, how are you, sir? Feeling like garbage, but we're here. It's all good. <laughs> Why are you feeling like garbage? I figure you would. You climbed a mountain yesterday. Don't you feel good about yourself? I feel good about myself. My body doesn't agree, so. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. I've been sick for which, a week, so. Which oh. mountain did you climb? Um, it's not actually it's not the mountain, but um, right by I think it's by Pikes Peak. No, Mount Evans in Colorado. There's a basically a three thousand step hike. It's like a giant staircase called the Manitou Incline. Yeah. And so I did that. Awesome, dude. So he's Have talking about time. how he can't get out of bed. He said there were two old guys there that walk it twice a day. Yeah. So like, what's your excuse? I thought, like, uh, my mountain's getting out of bed. Like, that is my mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Justin Sheffer now back up into third, getting ahead of Robert Stemple just coming out of the pits. So, again, these guys, after a disconnect, really pushing to climb themselves back to the top. Uh, I think we will see... I think we'll see Kurtz in the car next if they're maintaining their rotation, so... We'll see when they come in. Jiri Valak now driving that number 70 Porsche. Which I think Kurtz has got just a, a, a touch more pace on Sheffer, but I mean, that's uh, yeah, splitting those guys atoms are, at that point. Yeah, so really, those guys are so close. 100%. And both of them really fun to watch too, right? It's, it's not just, um, hey, look, they're fast. These guys, they, again, they know when to make those moves. It's like you take... You take Zap and that attitude and you put it in these in these guys that are wicked fast. Yeah. And it's just so much fun to watch when they get into a battle. You're watching that rubber banding between a second and a half down to half a second. A second and a half. And, and you can tell they're just gauging and waiting for that right opportunity to jump out and really make a move that's not just one that gets them alongside and maybe lets them hold a corner. They want the move that's going to put them ahead and keep them there. Right? They want to come out yeah. clean so that they're, they don't have to worry so much about getting jumped on again right away and having to trade position back and forth for a while. Definitely. That move earlier with um, Brian and the Porsche, like we should uh, I clip that and show that to people when they start racing. Yeah, yeah. Like, he can get really ahead. put on a clinic, man. Brian's a, yeah. a heck of a driver. Um, fun fact about uh, Sheffer and... Yannick Kurtz is they're actually friends in real life and they do karting together. Love that. So no wonder the chemistry and, and just the pace is there with them. I'm sure they practice a lot and you know the, the skills obviously translate over. So. Yeah, these guys are throwing down together quite often. I'm sh I'm sure trying to help yeah. each other, right? So sure. 
And with Dunn joining us, I know uh, Huff is going to have to leave. Dunn, I hope you're able to hang out for a while. Yeah, uh, I can be here all night. Oh, it's going to turn into a party. Um, <laughs> already. Oh, no. Oh, it's going to get mad. <laughs> one, one quick chat, though. Um, I'm going to check with Will before he signs off for the night, because I'm sure it's getting pretty late for him. He, he's mm -hmm. still up and active up in stewarding BC, but... Um, I'll clear it with him, but we need to maintain at least one server admin in here in case somebody would happen to get a uh, disqualif disqualification. We need to go ahead and clear that and give them a stop go 30. You're talking to the wrong guy, I'll tell you that. Cause I will, I'll, I will I'll break give that. you some, I'll give you some copy, <laughs> copy pasta commands, literally. Okay. It's easy peasy. Um, even signed in just as a spectator, I should still be able to do that, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good, sir. I'm happy to do that. Yep. I'm um, going to go ahead and step thing... away now um, once we get things wrapped up and sorted here. Okay, go Dunn, ahead. The only thing I'll ask you real quick, Dunn, are you spectating the race on your own? No, I'm or... walking on uh, Discord. Not Discord, Twitch, sorry. Okay. Um, if Are you able to, to get into the game and actually spectate? Because here's the only reason I ask is because from the software yep. I'm using, I can't see the penalties. Yep. Uh, so I won't, know, uh, I won't know if someone gets a DQ watching on my end. There you go, Gosa. Yeah. Sorry about that exclamation point. I'll DM you everything you need to know uh, done for the, the password and stuff. Okay. Sounds good. All right, Huff. We'll be here when you get back, Huff. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. Like I said, I'll, I'll make sure I'm going to go check in with Will, make sure everything's covered, and, you know, give him the all clear to get the hell out of here because, you know, he, he's been hard out of dude. There's been a lot of incidents, and you know, the team's really banged it out and been on top really, of it. So. Yeah, really cranking on him and, and doing a good job, too, with live stewarding. So, for sure. excellent job on them. Yep. Uh, I'll chat with you guys in a bit, though. Sounds good, man. We'll talk to you in just a bit. Yep, see ya. I'll hop in in probably 10 minutes or so. Um, for some reason, I've decided to try Grid Legends. It's on Game Pass for 10 hours. Oh, perfect. Um, and so I'm going to give it a try. Keeping it's going to be awful. occupied. But, yeah. Well, good to talk to you, Dunn. Thank you for joining me tonight. Oh, and yeah. Hang out with us here. race has been going really well there have been a good number of incidents but at, at the same time given the length of the race i don't think it's been overly aggressive good or that we've seen a ton of uh really egregious things this guy's missing points which happens mm -hmm. losing a little bit of control you know throwing a curb uh and spinning themselves and unfortunately <laughs> unable to get it slowed down quickly enough that someone else couldn't get tangled up with them you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah and hopefully that's where it stays. We've only lost, what, two or three teams? Mm-hmm. Nice. And honestly, most of those, I believe, have been connection issues where, you know, it's what ha like what happened to Huff's team. Right. Uh, they got dropped. When they came back, it wouldn't give them their car back. It was giving them a different <laughs> car. None of their laps were counted. Same thing happened with the 949 team that was in. Uh, they, they came back in and just simply could not get back in the right car. It, it gives you the same vehicle, but your livery's wrong and your car number is wrong. Mm. And so all of a sudden now you can't race. Yeah. Uh, they, they started out with only, with somebody jumped back in with negative two laps at one point. That's how far down they were. So really hard Great. to get motivated when you're 350 laps behind. At that I've never point, been you're gonna there. Like, Am I really going to do this for 12 hours? Uh, no, absolutely At this not. point. <laughs> uh, Gosa, are you planning on doing any other 24 hour endurances? Uh, maybe. Probably, yeah, at some point. Um, I'll tell you, we, I, I think they're going to be very few and far between. I think these are special events. You're talking maybe one or two a year. I hope, um, yeah. But one Don't of the things, that. and I'll throw it up when I sit back down, I'm not in there right now as we talk here and, and everything's on autopilot but uh we do have a summer endurance series coming six hour races in conjunction with track and 949 sim racing uh you'll be able to watch those on one of the three channels and we'll have those announcements out on the discords uh you know a week before as to who's covering each race i know the one in august uh i believe is bathurst i'll be looking to cover that i told those guys i wanted to cover the bathurst race because it's one of my favorite tracks to cover i like watching people pinball down the hill you're it's, good it's at managing hobby. cameras and stuff, so. Well, I try, and I love Bathurst as a track. It's it's right up there for me with Spa. So, but other than that, we're we're gonna kind of split the uh, the commentating duties across all three leagues. Uh, wow. But if you're interested in endurance racing, those six hours are coming. 
I know as box three, we're planning, you know, I'm sure there'll be some more 12 hour races during, you know, throughout the rest of the year that we'll do. Uh, we did the 12 hour at Silverstone. So there'll be more, there'll be more coming for sure. You can bet that there'll be some endurance races on top of the regular season that we run all the time. Just be in the Discord. Mm -hmm. That's part of what I love about having so many events that we run, the casual, the regular season, and these endurance mm -hmm. events with the other leagues is you don't have to run everything. I don't think any of our drivers run everything, right? Absolutely um, not. I hope not, at least. Yeah, no. Like, I mean, if you're down with it, go for it. We'll, we'll absolutely love to see you at every race. But nobody's really running everything. Um, you get to pick and choose what it is you want to do. Uh, the Xbox side, as I said earlier, I think we're going to, on the Xbox side, the guys talked a little bit about wanting some of the casual events that the PC drivers are doing. So we'll set up during the week to do maybe a GT4 uh, series for three or four weeks. Yeah. Um, and also talking about doing spec races. Picking a car, standard setup, and everybody gets on track. Done. You That's know? the good thing about having, like, I didn't, one thing I didn't realize about the team we had at Box when we first started was that we were doing so much good like just league prep work like hey we're gonna have a discord we're gonna have servers set up we're gonna have all these things so if anybody wants to come in and just host stuff mm -hmm. they don't have to do all the background work all the time because some of it's already done for them we have a community to help make it happen absolutely and i think you know as we grow as we continue to grow if there are people that want to run their own thing that want to do the things they want to do um, you know, I don't see why we wouldn't be open to saying, hey, here's a channel. Go for it, right? Yeah. If people want to come join you, run it. We'll help you. I mean, all we were doing when we got started was filling a gap that we saw. And so really that's all we do kind of month by month is what, what, what gap do we see? How do we fill it? If we can, we will. If we can't, hopefully it's not actually a gap. <laughs> mm -hmm. So Bill Savitis now under attack by Thomas Janch. A little bit of a spread there. 1.4 seconds with a back marker in between. But looking at that car, I cannot imagine that they have the arrow they need. The car looks worse every time we focus on it. Did we settle no. whether that was a glitch or if that was we like don't everyone know. saying that same thing? Yeah, no, we don't know yet. And so we're kind of waiting. I think we're going to have... These guys are not in a VC on the server, so I think we're going to have to wait until the end of the race to find out. <laughs> If that's a, a visual glitch or if that car is actually being driven in that condition the whole time. Yikes. It's impressive. I mean, either way, to keep it together like that, that means there was at some point a wreck. Oh, yeah, it was very, very the top brutal half. wreck, actually. Uh, they got tangled up with a Ferrari in T1. Oh, great. And as you go through T1, you know, you're going down along the wall, but then there's that kick out mm -hmm. along the wall, and they both went head first into that kick out. <laughs> So, yeah, that got very brutal very quickly. Um, I think, you know, he had to drag that car around the track to get back to the pits, uh, basically staying off track as much as possible. Uh, did not teleport, got it back, made the necessary repairs, but I think just left the bodywork and said, eh, we're not worried about it. I mean, they've done, what, 20, 10 stops since then? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, and we've got hmm. cars off track again. Both oh. Jimmy Lynn and Jordan Strode struggling. In the gravel, Jimmy Lynn getting back up to speed. Let me get this game going. Excuse me, simulator. You know, I feel like this 507, this Jordan Strode, I really feel as though his teammates have not yet driven. I don't know why. You just love the name. Maybe, maybe we are not seeing it, but uh, I don't recall seeing Lucas Hanselman or Jonah Rinky. Nah, Jonah Rinky, I remember seeing drive. I don't recall seeing Lucas Hanselman yet in that car, though. Whole grass now into the pits. John Tracy able to get up into P6. This team making solid gains so far. Very slowly moving up through as we watch John dip into the gravel a little bit. Nicholas Vifar now off the track, looking to get himself turned back around. Again, another solo driver. Now, that's the second time, and it looks like he shut his TC off. Struggling to get pointed in the right direction again.
as I was saying, John Tracy and team. He's Steven, Timothy Flander, and Brian Canapin. These guys making really steady gains to get ahead. Jimmy Lynn able to get around Cole Gress as well. That number 67 Porsche moving back up into P7. Meanwhile, number 70 Porsche has worked its way up to P4. Things start to spread out a little bit again. Occasional battles, but this is we are settling in now for the long overnight. Now 19.03 time of day on server. The sun continues to set. So Julian Guerin, Mathis Wass, and Benjamin Astley able to get themselves into P1 over Theo Overhaus, Rayberg, Wichman, and Leon Lang with the pit changes. Happening some time ago, probably while I had stepped away. I apologize for missing that. Again, Justin Scheffer and team getting back up into third after a disconnect. Vanderhoek and Yannick Kurtz, the other team members there, will be waiting for that swap out soon. Again, as I said, I believe Kurtz is who will be taking over during that driver swap. And Kurtz, very stable, did excellent for his team during the last stint. A little bit of traffic bunching up here on the back side of the track right now. Got a Porsche going for a move here soon. going for it on outside what number there but because nobody's uh, near each other 67. 67 just took a pass just passing back markers oh clearing back markers gotcha yeah just jumped the curve to go through the pass <laughs> all these guys looking to clear those back markers any way possible that's for sure I think the Aston in this pack is a slower of the cars, and so we're going to see some interesting choices from those other two going for the pass. <laughs> Lucas Hanselman now coming out on track. Leaving the pits, and a little bit of a bump there on number 67, Jimmy Lin. It looked like he took a little bit of a push. Just looking to get himself clear of the back marker traffic. Car 96 with Kurtz, they were up at the top of the field for a while, weren't they? Uh, yeah. Earlier? Yeah. Hmm. You mean 36? Uh, 96 on my screen. Oh, Kurz. So, yeah, yeah Patrick Kurz. Sorry, Kurtz. When, when I hear Kurtz with the T, that's uh, Yannick Kurtz. Uh, Patrick Kurz is one of our solo drivers. Had a some sort of hardware issue. Uh, went through uh -huh. went through the carousel at the bottom of the hill there and ended up cruising off track and just kind of drifting to a stop. Seemed like a, almost like a pedal issue. Still had steering, mm -hmm. was able to get himself off track. 
ended up having to looks like he got it going again went to the pits disconnected came back in ended up disconnecting again i mean this guy was running Yikes. yeah in like third second and third doing a fantastic having just a fantastic race over the course of now what 13 hours uh and just doing fantastic and connection issues and seemed like hardware issues uh ended up costing wow. him and knocking him back there yeah it was really heartbreaking 19 laps behind which is what uh 24 minute delay then yeah he lost a lot wow. i mean it was yeah it was pretty brutal We can look now at Justin Sheffer look to see when those guys come back in. Make that swap. John Tracy again doing a great job for his team. Up into P6, G. Steven, Timothy Flanger, and Brian Canepin. As he now heads into the pits, we'll see if John is swapping out. Jimmy Lynn... Not too far back, I don't think. They might be able to pick that spot back up in that Porsche. Car 22 just unlapped itself against uh, car 614. Some gentlemanly driving, but... Sorry, don't I miss what you said there? No, we just had some unlapping of uh, P19 and P18. Oh, perfect. Uh, so P19 will be about just over two laps down instead of three from the next nearest place. Anthony Anderson continuing to run. And our only Nissan on track today. Jimmy Lynn able to make that pass on... John Tracy, Cole Gress getting back ahead as well. So Tracy now back down into eighth as they sit in the pits in their Audi. Cole Gress back up into P7. You got to wonder, with P1, how do you maintain focus being an entire lap ahead? Just for me, it would be harder to maintain focus being that far ahead than just cruising. Kind of being in the, in the, in the well, traffic. Yeah, and we see, you know, coming into traffic now, as we see Julian is, um, other than those traffic moments, I mean, basically at that point, you're hot lapping, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're not necessarily even, maybe you're not even pushing for that fastest lap. You're, you're trying to maintain as much control as possible while still being fast. So, I don't know. I can see what you mean, though. You're, you, and, you know, I talked about this earlier about this is why it's, you know, endurance racing is so hard for me because it's almost this it's this you have to split your brain in two to do this really well i feel especially on an endurance race like this or just the two hour stint that you're in because you're driving the same track over and over and over and over so at some point once you've locked in that muscle memory it almost becomes boring right yep. but at the same time you've got to stay on your game because all it takes is one little slip and you, you miss that break point or, you know, you, you miss that apex or whatever it is that ends up sending you off track. And then things get really exciting really fast, <laughs> right? But, but it's, it's so hard to maintain that divergence of thought between, okay, this is a little boring, but if I don't pay enough attention, it's not going to be boring anymore. And that's, that's usually a bad thing unless it means right. I'm catching everyone. Are, are, do you listen to music when you do endurance races or any like longer uh, type race? Probably. Yeah, I usually, I'll usually have some on in the background. I'm jamming like loud as I can get it. <laughs> Just music the entire time. <laughs> but you know what? That can help you too. I mean, if that's your hook and that's what lets you concentrate, then 100%, right? Um, usually I'll have something on light in the background. The problem is when I'm racing, I'm usually talking to you guys. Yeah. So I can't. I can't be putting music up loud, right? I'm not driving by myself, mm -hmm. so. Tanner Rogers asks, who talked Cole into racing this bimmer? Uh, <laughs> well, 
Cole is doing quite well for himself, though. P7, only nine seconds off Jimmy Lynn right now, that number 67 Porsche we've been following. Lynn doing very well today. Dimitri Athwal now into the pits. I'm gonna wait for Cole Gress, see if he's able to close down any on Jimmy Lin. Currently, again, nine, about nine seconds back. Don Tracy currently sitting in eighth with Warwick Beach, about 10 back from them. Check in with Thomas Jantz, one of our solo drivers today. This gentleman has been now driving over 13 hours. Just under 11 left to go. Sitting in P11 right now, doing a great job for being all by himself. Joris Mentik, another one. Mentink. Another one of our solo drivers, currently sitting P5. Make somebody special to throw down on 24 hours all by yourself. That is for sure. How are you going to keep yourself busy for the next 12 hours, Molson? Drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. How else would anybody do it? <laughs> There's a, we can do haikus. We can do some trivia. Oh, uh, I will do whatever I need to to keep awake. That's for sure. I'm making this whole race. That's what I know. I will be stepping out more during the night. I mean, as things spread out, as, as you know, during the night racing, I think especially, um, I think we're going to see some spread a little bit more than there is now. As Thomas Jantz heads back out from the pits. Uh, and as that happens, I will step away. Autopilot is a good you. thing to have. We need you like a get a guitar, plug it into your computer. I can't play, play guitar. Jazz. Figure it out. <laughs> Let me, you know what, guys? Quickly, I'm going to teach myself guitar in the next 30 minutes. So I can you entertain you for the next 10 hours. Uh, you got plenty of time to figure this out. Learn some smooth jazz and get it done. Smooth jazz guitar? That's not my hook, though. Come on now. No, I couldn't do that. Give me so a way. Have... Give me, I'll tell you what, Dunn. I have a task for you. Give me a way okay. right now in chat to give away a key for a Seto Corsa Competizione or a Seto Corsa Ultimate Edition. We tried earlier. Nobody got the line from the show I brought up, so nobody won. Um, oh, I'm give me saying. some time to think. So make, this is going to be good. All right. You could always see, you know, ask the question who called first. No, we're going to make it more interesting than that. Best haiku. There we go. Best haiku. Best haiku with, you, have, you have 54 minutes at the top of the hour. We're doing best haiku. <laughs> you got a thing for Japanese poetry, huh? I don't, but I do now. I, <laughs> it's because you made me do them on stream one night while rather inebriated. Should we I mean, make it what? like midnight thing? 
We so we, I, we can six hours from now. <laughs> Plenty of time. That's only four hours till midnight. Got to remember, wrong by my time here. Right. Always your time. Well, not always. It's just your rule. We're living in it. Listen, 10 hours and 47 <laughs> minutes left to go. Don't harass me. Actually, closer to 11 hours because it's going to take a little bit of time to put the driver list together so we can spin for who wins that Apex button box. Best thing I ever did, though, was get a standing desk so I can move it up and down. Yo, I, I can vouch for that a million percent. Well, just because... I've had mine for about a year now. After sitting for so long that, uh, you know, your back's going to hurt no matter how good your chair is. Not that mine's that great, but, in, in, you know, no matter what, you're going to start to feel it. So it feels good to stand up. Walk us through your setup. What's going on in front of you right now? What's going on in front of me right now? Yeah, I've, I've got no battles going on. Um, tell you what, let me do this. Throw this up. I don't have a light on. So I said I would show this earlier, so we'll go ahead and show it. I'll throw this on. I got three screens in front of me. I got a tablet over here so I can monitor the stream, make sure it's staying on. And I'll just grab this. Whoops. And we'll bring this over here. Whoops. That wasn't supposed to happen. So this is the software I'm using now. Let me go ahead and turn off my camera. And let me turn off the logo. So this is what I'm seeing on one of my screens during the race, right? So we've got the bar over here for the lap. We've got all the drivers here listed you can see here the uh the splits all the times are here number of laps current race time this is their delta to their best lap we can pull camera on any single driver plus cameras here the best part is i love is autopilot right so this is going to use all cameras i can set this to roll position gains everything's here this is this software that i found acc tv that is just absolutely fantastic with everything you could want. Spotter guide with team names, their stints, their pit stops, everything they've done. Speeds right now, did as far as this? where we're going. I did, yeah. Track map, full track map. And we can speed trap any corner, right? So we can speed trap tr turn one right there. And as we come back over to speed, it's gonna trap these guys and grab their average through turn one. and it'll lock in an average speed for each driver as they come through T1. Do that with any corner we want. Right, so, and this is the worst part is, I haven't even figured all this out yet, so all this stuff under here, under each driver's name, not a clue yet. I have to read up on it. <laughs> I, I do, I'm not lying. Pit times, we've got, pit times are here. Fine. I'll just say that, <laughs> but we've got it. <laughs> well, I'll get there though. Give me, give me a minute, I'll get there, don't you worry. Um, we've got penalties listed right here. Right, we've got everything. So again, I just worked with the dev to get this all taken care of. Now it's ours, we own it. And this software also provides all of the overlays that everyone's seeing on the broadcast. Yeah, incredible. And with, with the software now being ours, we can actually customize the overlays to match, uh, to match what we want as far as matching the, the logos of box three and everything right it'll put all that together so we just need to get into the files and figure out their uh their xaml files just need to take some time and play with them and figure out exactly what we want right. to do they're what files <laughs> X -X xaml it's basically it's just a markup language sure. we just need Great. to get in there and figure out exactly what it is we need to do so um but yeah it is well on in detail I mean, you guys can see the kind of information that's there um now a race like this there's no set uh, pit stops but with our our weekly races with set pit stops you can set each driver to have you know to say everybody has to take one pit stop right once you do that there's actually a tab for predictions and using pit stop times and everything else it will predict who who should win the race ah uh, with no so pit stops like the hypothetical time thing it, it is now right now with no with no pit stop set because there's no set number of pit stops that we have to do, um, we really, it's not predicting, all it's predicting is the race order right now, right? So Julian Jaren is in first, right. it's saying he's gonna win the race. Uh, you know, Overhouse is in second. But once we can set pit stop, once I can get in there and set pit stops and everything, uh, we should be good to go ahead 
and make predictions. So, so we got another ask about what happened to the um, 96 Lexus, <laughs> the solo driver. Oh, yeah, Scarenon was in earlier. Yeah, Scarenon. Uh, so what happened was it looked, well, look, this is all, uh, he's still with us, sitting back in P19. Um, what appears to have happened is a some type of hardware connection issue. Uh, he came through carousel at the bottom of the hill, slowed way down, was able to steer himself off track, and then sat alongside track for probably a full minute or more. Uh, so it almost looks like maybe his pedals disconnected. From there, drove back to the pits, disconnected from the server, came back in, uh, then drove a lap or two, and then disconnected again. So obviously, some sort of hardware and or network issue on that end. So and every time you come in and out, do you get the was it two minute controller lock? I think you lock? do, yeah, because the guys that have been that it's happened to have had to sit in the pits for a long time. And I think somebody in the chat mentioned that yeah, it locks the controls uh for for the two minutes. So Mikhail Korniv now moving up over Alex Ackerall into the pits. And Skarenon, good morning to you. Not quite morning for me yet, but good morning to you. Well, it'll be good morning for you at what, about 2 a.m.? Uh, what do you mean? No, morning's midnight. That's, I thought that's when you usually wake up. Mm. 4.30. God. I was up at 4.30 this morning, too. Well, I mean, it makes sense because the race was started yeah. at... <laughs> what time for you this morning? Uh, 6 o'clock. Yikes. Yeah, I, I made the choice to turn off my alarm last night because I was like, I'm not going to go boxing this morning. But I made the mistake of not turning off all like sounds, to in, like in total. So I was getting mm -hmm. pings from our Discord at like 2:30 a.m. my time. <laughs> well, yeah. Like, what am I, What have I done? What, what have I chosen? <laughs> <laughs> Is there some? <laughs> uh oh, somebody got a DQ. Did you get messages uh, from Huff? Um. No. Uh-oh. Hold on. Is he still... Uh, you might want to... You might want to jump into the Steward VC. Uh, Will is still up there. He can probably help. Yeah, Will. I think he's also listening. He was in the chat a couple minutes ago. Um, okay. I'll be back. Yep, no problem. Again, we don't want anybody getting disqualified for speeding in the pits. It seems excessive. I don't understand why they're not getting stop goes, so... Will Will Green still around? We'll be able to help out with that. Am I not able to join this channel? Yes, yeah, locked. It locked me out. I think. Hold on, I can send you there. I don't. That doesn't make sense, but. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, move to there. You go. Mikhail Korniv now off track. Not going to lose any time or position for it. Well, he's going to lose time. Not going to lose any position for it. Yeah, so as Will was saying, average speed is pretty cool. It's uh, stuff I really haven't played with yet. Again, one of the things I want to talk to the developer about is you saw at the top of this software, everything is tabbed, right? Um, so with everything tabbed, you have to click through to do different things. What I'd like to be able to do is I, I have a fourth screen available. I want to move the game off to that because I can see the race in, in OBS. I don't need the game screen right in front of me. What I'd really like to be able to do is get the game out of my way and be able to split those tabs up into multiple screens so I can see everything at once. We'll see if that's possible or not. And for all I know, it's possible now, but uh, I just haven't figured out how to do it yet, so... Did you get her figured out there, Dunn? Just rocking and rolling here. We got awesome. that first go. Undisqualified. They still get slapped in the head by somebody at the end, but. Uh, they still get a stop go 30 for it, so. Just not, we just don't want to lose people for no reason. That seems a little ridiculous. So right now, if we if we take a look at it, and I wish I could put it on screen for everybody, but we did that a little bit of that speed trap right there up front. 
uh, as we were showing that software. So Julian Guerin right now averaged through turn one, 166.95. Theo Overhouse, 163.15. And it just drops right back from there with Justin Sheffer to 158.65. I'm going to go grab another corner and see if we can't see something else, especially through the chicane. I'm going to see if I can pick that one up. Yep, heading right into the chicane. We'll, we'll let that gather data for just a little bit and see what we find out. Curious to see the average speed as people come to it. Like this software was originally built for F1, where the person who built it loves F1. Couldn't Just tell you his name is his name is Mr. Pig. Mr. Pig, on, hello, Mr. On Pig. Discord. On Discord. And again, the you know what made me so happy was the, that the guy is so responsive. I had questions. I'm like, hey, I can't get this working, dude. We know I don't know what I'm doing. We know. Yeah, he's, I'm like, I can't get this working. I don't understand. He's like, did you go here? And I'm like, oh, there's that button. I'm an idiot. Thank you. You know, but he was like, he answers so fast. I mean, obviously he sleeps at some point, but beyond that, no. um, yeah, I don't know if he was into F1 or not, but I know he has built some crazy software that just gives us a ton of data we're going to be able to use in the future. Yeah, because just the the whole corner tracking for speed and all, even the, the way that... Uh, overlay looks it's very f1-esque and the mm -hmm. fonts are f1 f1 fonts yeah um those I are the did things notice i that. notice i don't know anything about back-end coding i can just the visual stuff i get <laughs> well and you know in prepping for this race the reason the real reason i bought the software when i did was because i was afraid my license was going to run out in the middle of this race i'm oh, like no. last night i'm like oh i better do that uh, so i talked to him last night got it all set up but with access to those files, my hope is, you know, we use a certain font for the Box 3 logo. And I'm oh, really know. hoping that we can kind of match that. I don't think we could use the bold like we do for the no, logo itself. But no. but you get what I'm saying, right? Get yep. it more to it looks like it is a Box 3 overlay. Yeah. If I was actually a professional graphic designer, I would have thought through a bit more, like the the fonts we were using, the colors we were using, and made. I them, love like, them, dude. I don't care. Why do you say that? <laughs> Just so like, because the fonts are basically only the, the fonts that I chose were only available on that website that I was using, not mm -hmm. even Photoshop. And mm -hmm. so you have to like download and find the custom fonts. Do we have them? Have we paid for them? I doubt it. Are they available for free? Hopefully legally. Um, who knows? And then the colors, like yeah, I could have used Pantone colors or colors that have some sort of like ability to be consistent across platforms. We're close enough. We do our best. Zap's the greatest. So Zap is fantastic. Love working with that. Do you need something? He's on it. On it. Ask me. It'll be about seventy-five business days. <laughs> but I see, and and that's again is what part of what I love. So much about what we do and how this came mm -hmm. together is we all have times in our lives look when box three first started myself right i was probably putting three to four hours a day into the league oh it was more than that okay it might have been i don't know it was but, an absolute, you know i was putting in more than that you were putting in more than that well but but my point being is at the time i could do that right yeah now i can't as much you know since the beginning especially since the beginning of the year my job mm -hmm. changed a little bit, how we do things, our processes and procedures changed. So really it took away a lot of that time that I had. Plus I got to the point of burnout, I'll be honest, right? It was kind of a combination of the both. So I step back a little bit and I stream and it's, it's you know, I stream the races and it's what I enjoy and it's it's what I can contribute. Um, again, up front, you worked on graphics, everything else. And now same thing for you, I think. Your job changed at some point to where you were, you've been traveling a ton lately been <laughs> wickedly busy so you had to take that step back and zap is there to kind of fill that void while you're not okay. available and so that's yeah. it's it's the way these things come together that we're able to to work together and make it work that i think is fantastic yeah i, I think this is racing related but um something that I've, i think i spent a lot of time thinking about and trying to like understand for myself is so much of what my so much of my dive into sim racing was a response to covid Mm -hmm. in a response to being home all the time and being bored by just like the average video game and yeah having extra money sitting around the privilege of that being my experience right um and so i was like okay racing looks fun acc was coming out i was playing forza for a couple of months but here we are 
And then as soon as like COVID restrictions started loosening up, I've had to do a lot more thinking about like, what am I actually going to do? Mm-hmm. What can I actually promise to people? What will my relationship to this hobby be? Because I've had to stop some racing so much. I, when we were racing the league before this, I was putting in probably 15 hours of practice a week. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Now I, I race probably five hours a week. Lucky you. Maybe. <laughs> I haven't I raced right? in three weeks. Now that's a lot of that's my choice, but um, sure, yeah, totally. You know, I haven't I raced in three or four, three or four weeks. And the sad part is, is you talk about I racing, and then people will make fun, call it I renting. Wow. You and I, you know, I saw your list. I made my own for for season two. Mm-hmm. I've raced like three races in season two. Same. Well, it's the thing is, I'm you know I'm just so and good I'm at like, racing. Just oh. everybody knows I'm so good at racing. You're fantastic. Um, you know I'm just so good. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but. Um, like some of the things I was running, I actually don't have to run them as much because I've gotten the I rating that I wanted or whatever. My actual mm-hmm. goal, I thought it would take 12 weeks or whatever. It's only taking me like three. Yeah. So, okay. I don't have to spend that much time every week and I can actually just have fun doing it instead of making it into another job I have to do, another thing I have to follow through on. You don't need to just grind let it. let it be fun. Yeah, yeah. Just let it be fun. And like that wasn't what I wasn't sim racing for fun over COVID. Mm-hmm. I was sim racing because I needed something to do. Otherwise, I would go absolutely insane. Yeah. And so since COVID has lifted, I started, you all have, we've already talked about it. Started working out again. Started mm-hmm. hanging out with friends again. X, Y, you and Z. Shut the fuck up. No, I wasn't making fun. I'm asking a serious question because I just don't have any yeah. friends. That's why I'm always in my house. That's well, And I'm okay family. with that. It's not, yeah, I have family. But my point being is it's just like, I don't want to leave my house still. Yeah. Um, COVID and, restrictions and started like, lifting. And yeah. I said, why? Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to go back out in the world. Um, real quick, just to, leadership. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> just to interrupt you real quick, Jiri Valik in that number 70 portion now taking up P3 over Yannick Kurtz. And I was right, Kurtz oh. back into that number 31 BMW. And we will see what kind of time he can set. Now 33 seconds back from Jiri Valik. I want you to remember that number as we watch Kurtz start his stint because we watched him close gaps very quickly the last time he was driving. And we'll see if it happens again this time. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was just, I'm looking at the rankings now. I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Um, but no, it was the question of that you asked is a good one. Uh, because, so I had moved to Denver eight months before COVID. Mm-hmm. And then COVID hit. This is a new city, new people. And so I've actually had to spend a lot more time being purposeful over the next, or the last like three, four months. And for the foreseeable future, figuring out how do we life again? Not, not how do we live and survive, but how do we like actually live lives again? And so for me, part of that has been stepping away from sim racing as much and figuring out, hey, if I was putting, if I got good at sim racing, let's pretend I got good at sim racing by putting in 15 hours a week into that, what mm-hmm. could I get good at instead for the foreseeable future by putting that much time into it? Yeah. So and for I me, think it's been boxing. For me, I mean, but, look, in the previous league we were all involved in, I think yeah. the flip for me was I did race there. And then, you know, they wanted somebody to broadcast. And I had already been considering. So for you, sim racing was the COVID answer, right? Oh, yeah. Um, For me, it was streaming. I started streaming on my own channel. And I found I enjoyed it. I ended up burning myself out on my own channel because I have hyperfixation. So when I find something, I do it. And I do. do it into <laughs> overload and then decide I'm done doing this now. Shut up somewhere. Um... And that's why I like, you know, just covering one race a week and, and, and yep. hosting these races. I don't even stream, again, as I said earlier, I don't even stream on my own channel anymore because I enjoy covering the races so much more. It's I found yep. my niche. Um, but anyway, I, I did race one season over there at that previous league and then decided I like racing, but I want to do it on my own terms, Right. And yep. what I mean by that is, I, I don't want to be competitive in a league. I just want to shoot shit with people and have fun. And I didn't feel like I could do that in league races. Um, and I'm so it's, glad that some people yeah. enjoy that competition. Like, like if you talk about Brian Canepin, esports legend, I mean, the guy, he loves that stuff, right? <laughs> he, he eats up that competition. And so something like this for him is just fantastic to have these leagues out there and SRO mm-hmm. esports um, that he can join into and really sink his teeth into it and dedicate time and energy. 
Where me, I just want to feel the force feedback and drive. And I don't care if I'm good at it or not. I don't care if I ever win a race. Um, I just want to have fun. And I'll be so, real with you. I, I won one race, and that was the end of it for me. Yeah, <laughs> you were done. I I tried so hard for so long. I went from AM, and then one I got like second or third place in an AM season, and then moved up to pro, and finally won a pro race. And I was like, "This is it. That's what I've been working for." Mm-hmm. Like, oh wow, that was really cool. And then just stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, cool guys. No, and as I said, for me, I mean, I did. I never won a race. I did get better though. I will say that league racing will make you get better. Oh yeah. Um, and again, I'm not a super competitive person. Never been big into sports. You know, I played sports in high school, but never super competitive about it. Um, league racing, just by default, it seems, will make you get better because you want to improve because you're racing right. against real people. You know, the AI races are fun. They can be fun when you want to practice uh, driving in traffic, things of that nature. But you can game the AI, right? You can turn them down, turn them up, uh, change the aggressiveness, all these things. Make You can make it so you can win every race. So there's no real competition there. Because if I get yep. frustrated, I just turn them down to 80 and win all the time. Um, you can't do that in online. There's all skill levels. Um, there's all abilities of drivers out there. So you actually have to get better if you want to get better. You can't game the system. Yeah. And there's, I think, part of what, um, yeah, B5 saying you learned time from other people is I think part of what our group, like the core group that started all of this, was kind of the idea that if you love something, give it away. Mm-hmm. And so, like, for me, like, I, I've i worked really hard in my life to figure out where that time is to give something away. Yeah. Because if you hold on, for, hold on to it for too long or keep it just for you for too long, it sours and it gets worse and it just, like you'll lose whatever that was. And so even for our team, like to find projects that maybe some of the original founders were doing to be able to give those away. And even for B5, to see B5 start to kind of take a real strong force in the Xbox league. Oh dude, I love it. Exactly what we're looking for. And I love it. Fife is the most fantastic thing we ever found for the the Xbox league. Because, you know, I've always liked racing with him. Again, somebody who came from a previous league. Um, We all left for our own reasons, but Fife moved over and joined us, raced Xbox with us throughout season one and two. A really good driver, but always someone who, when you spoke to him, if you go watch his streams, so level-headed, he gets frustrated like anybody else, but it doesn't seem to jive him up. You know what I mean? Like, he just, yeah, that just happened. Kind of sucked. All right, moving on. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's what he's like. Yeah. And so when we were looking for someone to step into that managerial role of the Xbox League... He was instantly my first suggestion. And I'm like, let me go talk to Fife. Mm-hmm. And it worked out perfectly. It, it just worked out swimmingly that this guy was able to jump in. And yeah. it's it's very hard for me, even though in my real life work, I'm a manager. And five years ago, I had to make that transition. And if for anybody who hasn't done that, going from a doer to a manager is a very, very difficult transition. Um, mentally, right? because you go from doing and being responsible for X and I'm going to do X and because I'm doing it, I know for a fact it's getting done right to saying I have to trust somebody else to do X and their method of doing it may not be the same as mine. What matters is the result, not the how, right? And so it took me, I want to say, you know, moving again in my real life work, moving into that position to really feel comfortable even though i knew the guys working for me even though i trusted them it still took me probably close to two years yep to pull myself back and say okay that's not my job anymore i have to let them do it um it's a really hard transition to make and and i'm finding i'm i'm having the same issue here i want to let fife go and say run it but one it's walking that line of i don't want to leave him hanging feeling like he has no support and two i don't want to step on his toes right yep and so far he's he's doing a fantastic job and i'm doing all i can to pull back and say dude you're in charge roll with it you ain't need me if you do need me tell me i'll be happy to help you know so yeah. delegation is one, one of like the coolest things i like to see people learn is how to delegate because mm-hmm. i work with all day long i work with people who are in leadership positions or their job is to lead other people 
and getting them to let go of things mm -hmm. and just like realize that like the world isn't it's not not the world is not as small as you think it is meaning that like if someone makes a mistake cool life goes on but also you are not as big as you think you are and like your yeah. ego doesn't have to be as big as it is yeah. and that's very personal and it feels like it's who we are at the core and you're allowed to yeah things get better when we share them or when we again give them away when the time is right um, and also sometimes like and this is not me uh predicting anything about Fife, but the conversation I've been having with a lot of the folks I work with recently is also being willing to take it back if you need to. And not just like throwing things away and running away from them because mm -hmm. eh, I don't know what to do. But like, okay, maybe this needs my help again, stepping back in. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But yeah. But yeah, delegation is absolutely one of the hardest things you could ever learn to do. It's it's not easy at all. So it's so uh, much fun when Fife, you get Fife in the chat I didn't even realize. Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> And this point is so, like, it's so, for me, it's been the most obvious part of all of this is that, like, we're not getting paid for this. And no. so there is a limit to me of how much effort and time and seriousness I'll put into it. And so, like, I mean, the, the moment we kind of cross the threshold of, like, sponsors and awards and things mm -hmm. like that, I was like, honestly, like, I'm not the right person for a lot of these things. Well, and that's because, why, and, and yeah. you know, and, and Wolf in the chat says, loves the late night podcast. We're going to keep this going because Dunn said he's here for the night. We're going to, I, I'm loving these conversations, but, and, and I think, I think Dunn will tell you because he's probably one of the ones who I have hooked a chain to his ankle and am <laughs> trying to drag him kicking and screaming into this idea of, again, you know, Huff and I talked about it earlier before you had joined us. I don't think any of us expected this league to jump the, as fast as it did. We all had those <laughs> hopes and dreams, saying, right? I was saying, please stop. I was yeah, like, saying, please stop. <laughs> like, we all, we all had these hopes and dreams that we're just going to smoke the world and we're going to own ACC Sim Racing. <laughs> Forget about it. It's no. ours now. Everybody else might as well give up, right? But none of, nobody expected it to grow the way it did. No. And my, my thing is, and what I've learned in my career, again, if we talk about real-world career is that so fi, fi, let's let's set the wayback machine my company does a merger six years ago and before the merger there was very little organization if i wanted to go and do a task as an engineer i went and did it i didn't have to tell anybody my boss didn't care whatever i do whatever i want take customers offline in the middle of the night boop boop make the change done the new company comes in we merge and suddenly there are processes and procedures and at first every one of us hated them right they were at mm -hmm. i hate this you're making me go slow i got work to do you're slowing me down stop it yep what i learned was these processes and these procedures and these rules are put in place for a reason because it it what it does is it adds organization and says you're responsible for this you're responsible for that you're responsible for this and the great part about that is is if you don't follow the process I get to tell you to pound sand, right? That's what I love about it. Yep. And so I bring that experience now over to the league to say, guys, look right now, it's a hobby. It's small. It's going to grow. For that to happen, we need to be prepared. In my mind, for us to be prepared, we need this organization set, right? And that's why, like, when it comes to... When it comes to the graphic side, um, or let, let's use a better example. When it comes to the, to, because he's in the chat now, Will Green is in there. I see he's chatting. If Will Green, who is who's our head steward, who's our chief steward, decides he wants to bring someone on as a steward, okay, what are you asking me for? You're in charge of that. Go. Right. Yep. Because I'm not I'm not involved with stewarding. I I keep my nose out of it, and so I sit back and go, Will, if you want to. You want to grab a steward? Grab a steward, dude. If you think he's going to be a good fit for your team. In other words, my, you know, a, a person in my company in another department, they don't get a word in who I hire. Why would I get a word in what Will hires, right? Yep. And so, yeah, we all work together, and I'm, and I, and I'm appreciative of Will wanting my opinion and your opinion before we bring people in to make sure they're going to be a great fit for the team. I absolutely appreciate that. At the same time, I don't, I don't need to check up on him. Right, he runs that mm -hmm. group. I'm gonna let him do that. And there is that busted ass car again. I can't handle this anymore. <laughs> I, I, I gotta know if this car is destroyed, 
or if it's just a visual glitch. It's, it's oh, wait, so really what, what number is it again? For, uh, 313? Uh, no, hold on. No. Hold on, I gotta find them, because uh, they've changed drivers now. Give me a second. I can because I'm also in the uh, I'll lobby now, so I can tell you. Uh, number 11, car 11. Nope, it's, uh, it's uh, fixed on mine. Is it really? It's just covered in uh, rubber. Yeah. So it's a visual really? glitch in my game? Yeah. Oh, well, that sucks. I wanted to know that that car was busted to hell this whole <laughs> race. <laughs> um, no, but so... I remember when we first started like considering, hey, do we want to do sponsors, X, Y, and Z? Mm -hmm. My answer was, let's not. Let's really be slow and get the... The actual, the heart and soul of this right first. And then we go into things like money, because we all know what happens when money gets involved. Luckily, money is, it's not, it's never been about money now. It's about let's get things to give away as motivation, more so than let's make any money off of this. Um, yeah, and I, so I was like, hey, like when we first started this whole thing, I was like, let's just make it a bunch of, a, a spot where we can have fun, where we can do what has happened before, but do it better because we're just a bunch of people who are, Oh gosh, how do I explain this? I think the the example that always comes to mind for me is um, the Pixar folks. So, and this is a story that I'll tell quickly, but um, The Incredibles was the first movie that I think Pixar had done that include hum included like, actual humans as the main characters. I think that's right. Okay. But the folks at their animation department said, no, we can't do humans as main characters because the way we do animations doesn't support that. And so what they did was one of their main leaders at Pixar said, okay, I'm either going to quit or you can give me the latitude to do this the way I want to do it because I believe in our team. And so in our, in our case, we quit and we started our own team. Mm -hmm. Where at Pixar, they said, okay, we're going to give you the latitude, start your own team in-house and try to make these movies. And what the, the leader of that team, what he did was he took, just as we did, took the group of what he called the pirates of Pixar, people who just wanted to get shit done. They wanted to do it the right way because it was the right thing to do, not because it was the easiest or because it was the most um, agreeable thing to do. They were like, hey, if it's a challenge, we're going to tackle it. Yeah. And so I think that's what we've done. That's what we did very quickly at Box was we found the people who were like, you know what? If there's a problem, fine whatever a problem is just a problem it's just another task mm -hmm. and we're gonna go after it and rather than say okay the system doesn't allow this or i don't know if i agree with that like it's more of if you if you agree with that go for it chase it make it happen if you fail that's fine failure is less tragic than not trying something so i think that's what we've really allowed ourselves to do and i even myself like i said before i was not always down for every decision we've made and that's the point because mm -hmm. we're supposed to disagree we're supposed to like be kind of just close enough to the edge <laughs> where Absolutely. things could go wrong. And I think we've done a really good job of widening ourselves where we're still over the edge, but we're not going to go away anytime soon. Exactly. And I, what I love is, again, that how we involve... And I think this is a reaction to our previous league, right? I really believe... And Dunn, you were there, right? You were, you were right on... You were right there with me, my, you know, with myself, Red, and, and several others, where in that previous league, there was no... Hey, run with it. Mm -hmm. Right. It was no. We're in charge. Pound sand. Yep. We're not doing that. We don't care what you think. And so our reaction has been almost the polar opposite of, you know, hey, no, this Lee, we're as we come up, you know, and I know Huff, Huff, and Will, and those guys that run the PC side, will be doing it with only three weeks left in in season two of the PC uh, PC season. There, mm -hmm. you're going to start seeing on the Discord. You're going to start seeing those polls. You're going to start yep. seeing those questions, those threads spin up of, hey, what do you guys want to see this season? What do you want to do different? What worked? What didn't? Let's have that conversation. It's the same thing that I did for season three on Xbox, and I'm sure Fife will do continue moving forward as we'll work together on that. But it's really this matter of, what do you, you guys are the ones driving. Yep. <laughs> what do you want to do? What? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what I want to do because why would I do that? I'm, I'm just here to support it. I'm not here to tell you what to do. And I, and again, I treat my, my employees at work the same way. It's, it's, you know, we get a project. I need you to go do this. I need you to go build this for me yep. in one of my hubs. 
Okay, what do you want to do? And I sit back and I go, oh no. What do you want to do? Let's talk about it together. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to, you know, that's my job as that leader is to guide it forward. But I'm not here to tell you what to do. One of the things I learned yeah. as a leader, everybody thinks a lot of people who, who fall into leadership positions sit there and go, I now have all the answers. Or they think they have to have all the answers. Yep. And I will bring one of my employees on this on this uh, stream right now and ask them <laughs> straight up, do I have all the answers? And they're going to go, nope. I said, and I'll say, but what do I do when I don't have the answer? You go find it. I go, exactly. That's my job. <laughs> That's my job. Here's a and, question. I mean, I, yeah, I'm I around. Really, I don't have the really, answer. Let me go find it for you. Yeah, I'm around really, really intelligent people all day long. But again, I work in like the addiction space, so there are no answers. Mm -hmm. If we had the answers, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't have jobs. Yeah. And so there's this always this learning point when we hire somebody new to like my actual outside of some racing stuff. We hire them to that job. There's this learning period of yeah, you don't need to have the answer. Mm -hmm. You need to have an openness to whatever the answer could be. As soon as you just think you have the answer, we're losing a lot. We're yeah. losing people. We're losing lives. We're losing money. Um, and so there's a lot of like really cool things come out of that flexibility. And I always people always ask me, okay, well, what do you do? Like, what do you do for a living, Don? And I say, well, every day I wake up in the morning, and I have to ask myself, what is most important and what is most possible today? And I do those things. That's it. That's as, that's as far as the guidance for my job goes. I don't have a job mm. description. I don't have a to-do list by the day. I choose every day what is the most important and what is the most doable. And I try to find a balance there. Yeah. And, and I got to say, I'm a little disappointed, just to interrupt you real quick, because I thought we were about to get a battle between Cole Grass and Jimmy Lynn, oh. and Jimmy Lynn decides to head into the pits. But now we've got one rocking between right. Riot Hackley and Gasolina heading into T1. Ferrari just there to watch? What's going on here? <laughs> it's getting in the way. Yeah, that's going to happen when you're a backmarker. But the Gasolina now in that number 555 Bentley. No, the Ferrari is that dirty, Crow. That Ferrari yeah. has spent a good amount of time in the uh, gravel today. That dirt is not washing off anytime soon. That car's going to need a whole new Beach. wrap by the time this race is over. Yikes. But and so Gasolina, Crow had mentioned in the chat. Go Gasolina. I look, first of all, I love the name Gasolina. Second of all, Wyatt Hackley under attack. Getting a battle here as we head into the nighttime. 1955 time of day on track. You can see those shadows extending. Our track temperature now down to 16C. We're almost down to where we started at 14 this morning. Pressures are going to start to change as the dusk settles in. And no rain in the forecast, Crow. Not yet. We're waiting for it. Though. Hell of a, uh, just a bunch up here, which is a good way to get some action going. Is you get three separate races all colliding at once. Yeah, right for the well, and that red Ferrari, I believe, is that number forty-two? Yes, number forty-two. Funny, yeah. Andrew Jackson right now holding up the line, playing back marker to all these guys, and Wyatt Hackley and Gasolina in a in a uh, an attack formation together. All right, we have one to pit out of that. If so I'm smart. Andrew Jackson right now, I am I am moving so far to the left on this straight and getting out of the way, which I guess to the right now and <laughs> let them by. But I would have slid outside to the left and said, go for it. Get I don't know what y'all are but... doing playing with me. And we're going to go side by side go. in the T1 instead. And he's going to continue to hold that line. Yeah, and see, yeah, this is what we talk <laughs> about when we talk about blue flags. That opening, that front straight, right? was the perfect opportunity for the Ferrari currently running in 20th to get out of the way of Wyatt Hackley, Gasolina, all, you know, both these guys running uh, uh, 14 and 15. Gasolina able to make the move on the outside. We'll see if he can hold on. Oh, we got a, a little bumping. A little bang, a little door banging going on. Also, we've got P5 in front of these two. Um, oh, oh, and a push right no. there, and the Ferrari is off into the dirt. Gasolina spun. Wyatt Hackley as well. Anthony Anderson coming up on him. Oh, no, he's ahead of him. Okay, sorry. I saw a yellow flag there. Oh, and a, ooh, and a bit of a nasty rejoin by Wyatt Hackley pushing everybody to the outside. So Gasolina going to hold on to that position now. Wyatt Hackley about 2.1 back. Wow. It's a long race, folks. It is a long race. We got lots of time. Will. Hey, Will. 
Take a breath, my dude. <laughs> Take Everyone a breath, seemed to be dude. pretty respectful. Even once, like, no, I didn't see any ramming after the no. incident happened. Slowing I've down, seen, letting it. You know, I've seen happening. what I thought were one or two of those today. Um, where it looked like somebody was frustrated. They were they were stopped. One yeah. sit, you know, kind of like in a T formation. One one nose pushed mm-hmm. against the door, and you saw the guy just goose the gas real quick no. to, to give him a tap and let him know I did not like what you just did, sir. Uh, but some action there. Wyatt Gasolina able to move up into P14. Wyatt Hackley now about 2.8 back. That incident, I think, a little more understandable than some of the others we've seen. A lot of of tie up there with Andrew Jackson in the mix holding up traffic. P5, Joris Mentink in there as well. Now finally getting around the Ferrari and going to get some clean air. But, th- and, and again, this is what we talk about, like I said, with, with the back markers. I mean, that start finish straight was the perfect place for Jackson to slide to the side, let this whole crew through, yep. and let them have their battle. And You're not fighting it, for yeah. position. I mentioned it in chat earlier, is you've got to be thinking, how do I keep all of us going the quickest as we can? And that mm-hmm. does not always mean you're in the front of the line. If Crow approaches me from behind, me trying to just even stay on my line, knowing he's there, will slow me down. So if yeah. I let him go, maybe I can get some tow from him. Maybe we can hang out and just be at peace with one another. But it's not going to happen if I'm in front of Crow. Exactly. Sorry, I had to take a quick step away. It appears as though there is more snow falling outside. Not good. My wife is very upset about it. Done. Done had to step away a quick moment. We will get the conversation flowing again, folks. Yeah, Will, snow. There were four inches of snow this morning. It all melted, and now it's snowing again. Welcome to my life. I wanted to bring up, because somebody in the chat had asked earlier, and I forgot to show this one, in conjunction with 949 and Trackalicious Sim Racing, summer six-hour endurance series, GT3, GT4 multi-class, kicking off May 14th, 8 p.m. UTC. Take a look down there at the bottom with all those Twitch channels because these races will be spread. All three leagues will be hosting these. You'll be able to watch them live if you're not participating. Great partnership we're setting up with Trackalicious and 949. Those guys are just fantastic. Same kind of attitude we have at Box 3. It's about the community. It's about clean racing. It's about people having fun. Now, one thing I got to wonder, though, as we wait for Dunn's return, Anthony Anderson back here in this Nissan, these guys have gotten themselves up into P17. I keep seeing yellow flags. Now, yellow flags mean in the soft that the software is catching you running off track. Now, one drive through so far, I'm really curious, and maybe we should drag him down here if we have a minute to see if Anderson is getting any track warnings. I'd be very curious to know if he is swiping some track warnings because, wow, I- I'm seeing yellow every lap. With Anderson, he's pushing hard. He's making up positions, and I'd hate to see him get another drive through. They've had one so far. I would hate to see him grab a second for not watching those track limits. How long is the drive through on this track? How, how far does that set you back? Um, I think Huff figured it out. 30, 30 seconds, maybe. Okay. Gasolina now into the pits. Wyatt Hackley taking up P fourteen from that after what was looking to be a fun battle, but Andrew Jackson gumming, gumming up the works. If you these can guys save down. those battles until the last maybe two hours, maybe 30 minutes if you can, Well, do and, it. Yeah, I brought this up before. <laughs> I'm waiting, right? We're in a 24-hour endurance race. At some point, there's only 30 minutes left. Yep. Send so, you know, what? where does, where does that... Where does that switch flip? When do we get that switch flip over to sprint racing? Because we know it's going to happen at some point. It's just a matter of when that jump happens. And, I mean, that that brings up an interesting 
problem we have with sim racing, I, I'll call it a problem, some people might not agree with me, is that even in real life GT, we're seeing this, even endurance races are just a prolonged sprint, mm -hmm. right? We hear that all the time. Well, well, this used to be an endurance race, now it's just a 24 hour sprint. Um, well, in sim, who just went off track? Uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Wavar. Gasolina coming out of the pits now. Nicholas Wefar, Wefar coming out P16 sure. was off track. Okay. But um, now, even with some of these drivers, we've seen it where or we've talked about it. I mean, until we're blue in the face at this point of people who were just hot lapping mm -hmm. all the time. And that's the difference between really these pro drivers where they know they have enough pace that they can kind of pull back and, go, and push forward, depending on the situation. Where I don't know if all these drivers that are here today are that kind of driver with that, mu that much patience, that much... Mm -hmm. uh, thoughtfulness of their driving or if they're just hot lapping for 24 <laughs> hours and when shit hits the fan so are they yeah um and so yeah wefar just went off again yeah wefar off again so again nicholas one of our our solo drivers out there today uh I, you know i talked done i don't know if you were here or not but i talked to huff about it a little bit um you know these these solo drivers we have out on track we do want to keep an eye on them for their safety yeah. as well as the other drivers on track I don't want these guys pushing themselves to make the 24 hours if they don't feel like they can. Right. Um, it doesn't it's... make any sense to me, <laughs> just physically. Listen. I understand that the challenge, I get it. I'm like, yes, I, I again, I just did a 3,000 step staircase yesterday. Why? Because it's challenging. Does it make any sense? No, no. That's, no get, sorry, but that's because you have some kind of instability <laughs> that you need to handle in your life that you got to walk up 3,000 stairs. And is that any different than doing a 24 hour endurance race in your no, bedroom? Not even a bit. Right? <laughs> not even a little bit. It is, it, is, it is the exact same thing, and I would never see myself trying it. Luckily, I could get 90 minutes into my situation and go, wow, cool, that was fun. I'm done now. Yeah. Right? Which, to <laughs> like, be granted, I mean, so can these guys, right? They, I mean, any could, of these yeah, guys yeah. can decide they're done anytime they want. As we watch Jamie O'Connor now taking up that number 42 Ferrari coming out on track hopefully maybe a little more responsible as a back marker we'll see and clearing space a little more quickly as the sparks start to show up darkness is falling now eight o'clock 8 p.m track time 2004 track temps holding at 16 c we'll see how quickly it loses temperature as that sun continues to set Buell Overhouse now out of the pits, coming out in second. Benjamin Astley as well, taking over that AMG in the number one position in the 488. Yeah, P1 and 2 are a lot closer than they were about 15, 20 minutes ago. They're about a half, half a lap off from each other. Oh, Patty Productions, the 96 Lexus we lost. Is that, uh, is that Kurz? Kurz, is that you? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Kurz is gone. We have lost Kurz. That is a shame, man. Kurz, awesome driving from you today. I mean, you made it, what, 14 hours? Seriously, wow. take a break, my man. Get some rest. Absolutely fantastic. And I get it. ACC crash. I can understand losing your motivation, especially with the trouble we saw earlier. Let me ask you, Kurz, if, if you're in the chat still, um, was, that a, was that like a pedal disconnect we saw earlier in the race? Because you were running great, and then you just kind of drifted off the side of the track and sat out there it looked like possibly a a, a pedal disconnection so we're, we were all just curious about that to see if that's what had happened and also what was in that candy you were eating no that wasn't him it's, it wasn't who was no, it who was that the candy? was thomas that was thomas janched i believe we spoke with. is he gone uh, oh he's still no, he's actually, actually 11 actually, hold on, no, oh no. my god he's still here <laughs> he's killing it he said acc just froze wow that's yeah. a shame making that run uh really really good on you though for seriously for sticking with it for as long as you did 14 hours that is a fantastic run get some rest so happy you joined us i wish you would have been able to finish out but i get it and uh hopefully you're able to join for another endurance race soon that actually was nicholas wevar we were speaking to talking about the candy are they oh and he's in 16th okay Oh, he's a Ferrari guy. No wonder that Ferrari spent so much time in the sand. <laughs> no, it's not the same Ferrari. They're both they're both sandy. I'll tell you that much. He just yeah, has half 40... his car is white, and so you 40... can't notice it as much. <laughs> uh, Joris Mentink, another one of our our solo drivers, currently sitting P five, doing quite well, very steady. 
Uh, after I rejoined the server, my pedals were bugged, could only do 98% full throttle, need to restart again, and yeah, that ruined my fourth place completely. Yeah, and, and that's what it, okay, so that was the second restart, okay, when you came back in. Gotcha. That is, as we discussed earlier, the curse of the sim racer. We don't have clutches mm -hmm. go bad or, you know, need to duct tape things onto the front of the car. Instead, we have network, PC, and server issues. But again, great driving today, sir. I understand the frustration and, and being done for today. Uh, excellent work by yourself to make 14 hours solo in a 24 hour race. No one is gonna hold it against you. That frustration sets in after that many disconnects and seeing your E4 go down to P20. Alexander Memenga now off track looking to get himself reset checking out the beach making sure all the rocks are the same size yeah yeah we're all good but that's given wyatt hackley a chance to catch up now only about eight eh, nine ten seconds back we'll see those times shift as alexander gets back up to speed what's the current um seconds back between uh p1 and p2 52 52 okay Let's keep an and eye that, on that, because I don't think it was that, that wide before. Uh, we'll see. Later, Rayburg pretty fast. Uh, Benjamin As uh, um, Asili is... I don't... He's run one previous stint, so we'll have to... Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that. 52 seconds right now. Julian Rayburg has been relatively quick today. So we'll have to see if these, if these guys tighten it up or if it starts to extend. But that 52 seconds doesn't scare me. Um, we're still going to see a play for P1 before the end of this race. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So when I first jumped into the commentary, there was there was only one car on the lead lap. And that's, mm -hmm. okay, that's back to being the case, it looks. Uh, uh, yeah, 52 three, seconds back. Running. I mean, he's 480 yeah. to 479 laps, but 52 seconds yeah. isn't quite a full yeah. lap, so... I still need to figure out actually what we're going to do with that code, that giveaway code. And we got to do, we could, yeah. We could do haikus. We could really well, get we could, but I'd really like to give it to somebody who's not a sim racer who'd maybe like to start sim racing mm. on PC. Even if they're on a controller. We, guys, oh. we have guys that drive on a controller. There's nothing wrong with that. If, if you're just getting started and want to see if you're into it, obviously completely different than driving on a wheel. A hundred percent. But... You know, mm. if that's how you have to start because you don't have hardware, that's okay. I would just love to give these keys away sometime during this race. I just don't know how to do it. So what keys do you have? Uh, we've got Assetto Corsa Competizione, what we're watching right now. I also have a an Assetto Corsa Ultimate Edition key, Steam key to give away. Okay. Hmm. So we want to get people who don't race already. Mm-hmm. I bet you there's maybe one of them in the, in the chat right now. I know. That's the thing, right? It's like this is the wrong stream to try to if, give this away no, on. Because... If that, per that person's already here, put your damn name in the chat. Say hello. Quit lurking, you lurker. <laughs> Lurkers are okay. Listen. Hey, listen, man. Some people don't like They're okay until something. we have free stuff to give away and they don't name themselves. That's true. They should speak up. If you're in the chat right now and you do not currently race... You're not currently a sim racer, but you think that you would love to try it. This looks like a lot of fun PC. to you. And you're on PC. Put your name out. Let us know. If one of you in the chat knows somebody who you think, who's, who's seen what you do, who's seen your rig, has come to your house mm -hmm. and said, yeah. what's that about? And you showed it and they're like, wow, that's really cool. I wonder if Steven's hey. awake. I wonder if his sister wants to race. That would be fantastic. Did you hear me earlier, though? Yes, <laughs> I heard the whole thing. I was here for that. <laughs> it kills me because I went in the driver's meeting before the race today, done, and I told these guys, I go, hey, by hitting you guys up on the stream, do me a favor. Just remember, we keep the stream PG-13. Not even okay? close. Not even close. <laughs> he blew that rating out in the first <laughs> sentence. It was unbelievable. And absolutely I, I, I fantastic, because Steven's such ability. a great dude. Like, I couldn't even yeah. say anything, because he's such a great guy. I'm just like, whatever, roll with it, man. It just seems to work when it comes off from you. Yep. Igor now uh. going to play defense. Bill 
Savitis in the janky looking BMW, which is only janky looking on your screen and mine. About to tighten up here. We're going to get a run. And drive through P5. And a drive through for P5? Yes, we did. Joris Mentink pulling in the drive through penalty. Ooh, and oh, and Bill backing out at just the last minute. It looked like he was going to try and take him on the outside. Oh. Yep. He's already in the pits. Okay, P5 is going to clear that right now. Excellent. Joris with plenty with of John time. John Tracy I think. coming up from behind from P6. So this is going to get real spicy. How far back are they showing? I don't care. That is not a man I went behind me if I'm coming in through a drive-thru. <laughs> The Audi just screaming downshift and the engine brake. John Tracy in the 808 Audi, but right now we're keeping our eyes right here on Igor, Igor and Bill Davidis. Bill taking his time. Uh, Patty, I've been here. I should say Kurz. I've been here uh, the whole time. Yep. Mr. Dunn joined maybe an hour, hour and a half ago. He's looking to roll all night with me, so he will be here for the rest of this, I hope. Not the. I will be very clear here. I what? do have you to go. You said all night. I did night. No, no, yes. no, no, no. Stop. I, you said, "Oh no, I'm here for the night." That's yeah, what you I mean, said. I, I said those words. Those words came out of my mouth. Okay. And so then, then you're I here went for the go, night. You don't get to now say, "No, I got to work out tomorrow." No, <laughs> you climbed have. three thousand stairs. That was your workout for the weekend. You got. Listen, you did more leg day than Red did this week. I mean, I've done more leg day than Red's done in about his whole life. So. <laughs> I don't, that may not may or may not be true, but it's worth a bit. That's all I gotta say. It is absolutely worth a bit. I don't think he's watching though. Um, yeah, so I, I will have to. It'll be probably maybe two hours left in the race. I'll have to go. Unbelievable. Um, so I'll miss the the real fun part actually, which makes me sad. That is. Um, Why would you have to go? Where are you gonna go? What do you have to do? I gotta go box them. Sunday is the no, day I cannot don't. miss. Unboxing. You cannot. Yes, Wait, That's honestly, wait, 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 there's like, why would you have to leave? Because, excuse me, hold on, hold on, hear me out. This I'm race trying. will be over about 7 a.m. my time. That's 5 a.m. your time. Whoa, we got some uh -huh. spinning going, though. Uh -oh. oh, and right there, Igor tossing it out on his own, letting Bill just smoke right through. Shouldn't have done that. So Igor oh, dropping down back to P10, Bill Savitis. That was a wicked slide, but able Igor able to get it back under control and not cause a bigger incident there. Good on him for that. Able to lock it down, but the pressure got to him. Bill Savitis now back up into P9. And my point being is, hold on. What? This race is going to end at about 7 a.m. my time, which means 5 uh -huh. a.m. your time. Are you telling me you go boxing yep. at 5 a.m.? I'm going to go boxing at, uh, I leave here at like 8.30 in the morning. I, okay. I got to sleep. I'm going to go box. Why? Excuse me? <laughs> Why? A lot of brain going so on. So maybe you'll get your bell rung a few more times right. than you normally do. You'll be fine. <laughs> I cannot believe you want to dunk out at the end of this race. This bullshit. Either dunk out of the race or dunk out of a healthy brain. I don't know. You'll be fine. You wear headgear. Don't lie. It's not like you're bare knuckle <laughs> boxing in an alley, Dunn. Uh, what, how do you know? <laughs> I know because I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> the lack of commitment that I have I do I will apologize for that <laughs> that I have committed to my health look at, physical will. Health look at, look at will will is like it's like 2 a.m. for will right now the poor yeah. guy he's still up writing stewarding reports yep <laughs> I think what he told me was he's sleeping on the couch listening to the race and so he's kind of going in and out in and out but a little bit that's right. the out has he not deserves, happened yet it's he deserves a little a little sleep. It's fine. Jimmy Lynn now closing in on Sebastian Lucasen. Lynn previously as up as high as P6, lost two positions. Now we're going to see if he can take one of those back in that number 64, excuse me, BMW. Give me an update on P1, P2, the gap. 57. So it's opening up right now. Uh oh. Yeah. Womp, womp. Right now, Benjamin Asaeli stripping that out and uh, opened it up by about five seconds, four seconds since the last time we checked. Okay. 
and then yeah john tracy was about half a lap back on p5 and that is mm -hmm. not changing much no so. no about 50 yeah about 45 seconds there as well okay the seven eight battle though looking spicy getting ready listen these porsche drivers have been very very consistent today robert stemple sitting sitting right now that number 70 porsche mp4 as we said, Jimmy Lynn coming up on the back end of a Sebastian Lucasen, looking to close that gap up. <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know whose livery I actually. I don't have anybody's liveries, and so I'm looking at like, for example, P. Listen. Nope. Never make, mind. One listen. of these Aspens is green. Make yourself the commentator because then you get everybody. No. You can, you can drive us whoever you want. I drive yours. Because they say box uh, that's great. It's I drive that's pros great. when I'm on single player because it just looks great. Basically, I have every Audi livery ever invented, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, I on my screen, P12, that Aston is just a, a plain green Aston. Looks like a lizard. Do not make your Astons plain like not like racing green's fine, but just like regular old flat green. Is awful. it like a puke green you're talking about? No, I it's just like green light green. Like whatever, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Like. The green and the crayon box. I don't. Yeah, I don't have that Aston. I don't think. Because for me, it's yeah, it's P12. But I'm guessing they have a livery because most people wouldn't just run a plain green. Oh yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. We'll take a look here in a minute. But right now, we got a spicy. You like you, to use your words, done spicy into Oh, he's T1. over it. He's said it. No, he's not. No, he's not thinking quite. about it. I'm telling. Ooh, we've baby. watched that P1 pass, but 90% of those P1 pass or uh, those T1 passes today have come from the outside. These guys setting themselves up on the outside of T1 to have the inside oh. on T2. And it's worked out yeah. very well, but you've got to about be alongside, it seems, or at least within that one-tenth of a second, oh. or you're not going to make it. They Give me seem Lynn really looking for that opening. Yeah. It seems like their braking markers are just different enough that, that Porsche can't get a good run. Because you see him brake and then realize he's too close and then back out for a second. Mm -hmm. Got the inside run the here, smart though. Thing, yeah. Back and back out, though. This is one of those tracks where you have to make, you have to kind of predict your pass two, three, four corners ahead, and really place yourself so that you have the momentum going into one of these turns rather than having to try to jut out and dive mm -hmm. in or um, outbreak somebody. Especially in a race this long, you don't need to risk yourself. And they're pretty good pace together. They don't sound like they need to make this pass now. Yeah, no, he's got and plenty of time. They're to still back. racing drivers. They want to do this. So, Petrol A racing in the chat says, looks like our DRS is broken. Can't overtake. No DRS here, sir. You have to drive. That's why I'm terrible at it. <laughs> Speaking of, isn't the F1, the new F1 games usually come out like midsummer? They haven't announced it yet. <laughs> For this year, I'm kind of like, I've been looking forward to it. Weird. No, all... Do they come out midsummer? Yeah. I thought one one year came out in like October, but I was trying to figure out what what it was and I couldn't find it. I thought um, last year was out pretty late. I can't remember. I don't, yeah. Chat will know. We have oh, no, F1 no it wasn't out that late because 2021. Do I, did I buy 2021 to cover for the previous league? Or was it 2020 I had? I can't remember now. Doesn't matter. Owned it on Xbox. Xbox is gone. Oh, late June says Will. What? So today is April sixteenth. Oh, so we're yeah. a day later than the usual. Ooh, baby. Again, at this point, I'm just. They're used not to making games one this delayed. year due to lack of interest. As Jimmy Lynn looks to the inside. Oh damn. Savage says Molson. Molson says, "Shut it down." <laughs> well, the F1 people figured they could just use like, you know, those Telltale games. Mm -hmm. They could just do one of those. It's all made up anyway. So oh, they're, they're releasing just going to do one of those instead of this year too. There you so. go. Which Motorsport Manager's been out on Steam for a couple years now. I tried it, nearly fell asleep. So I'm hoping the F1 game is good, <laughs> and that if I want to try F uh, F1 Manager, I also enjoy that. But it's Porsche. I think he's just giving it up for now. He does seem to be backing out real easy on these, Which right? It's not but a bad move, Sebastian. Yeah, and that's the thing is. Why do I need to why do I need to play that hard right now? There's a there's ten more pit stops coming up possibly. 
right, through throughout the rest of this race. It's getting dark. Headlights are coming on. Do I really need to push this right now? And again, this team, this 67 Porsche has been very consistent today. This is, other than the start of this race, this is about the lowest we've seen them. Plenty of time for them to make up space. Again, Speaking same with Robert Spicy. Stemple. I mean, I PA love the right action. Now. What's that? Um, uh, P8 just pitted, right? Uh, Tim Flanger in now? Yeah, so they yeah. would have pitted not too long ago. So they pitted, uh, hold on came out, and are just behind this fight. I can tell you, yeah, because he has been... His stint because started Tracy. two minutes and, a, and uh, 14 seconds ago. Yeah, so Tracy went in, Flanger came out. We have a battle on our hands here in a second, and where that portion needs to make a decision, are they going to really go for the pass, which is fine. It's a little early in the race to start really attacking, but do what you got to do. If that Audi is trying to come back through, do you use the Audi for the pass? Like we saw Crow do earlier, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or do you just let the Audi go through and hope that carnage happens in front of you? Well, here's the question, because Crow is not driving right now. Crow, Crow did his stints earlier. Mm -hmm. Crow esports legend, Brian Canapin, <laughs> is <laughs> in... <laughs> is in that voice chat right now with that team so mm. you mentioned it well right that we watched what crow did he let that he let that back marker through or he has the back marker let the faster yeah. driver through and then absolutely used it you called it in the chat use that to make that pass he knew that driver was gonna have to open the door as the back marker and when he did right. he kept he stuck his toe in it and made sure he made it through as well That's so maybe like we get the same move here out of Tim Flanger with Jimmy Let Lynn, you know, Jimmy Lynn really putting pressure on Sebastian Lu Lucas and making him slow down, giving Flan Flanger time to catch up. The the really genius part of the like almost like the dummy move of letting like pat following someone through a pass is there's no way to defend it. Mm -hmm. If the one guy's going through, both are as long as that guy that's trying to pass along pass with the other person who's passing keeps their bumper real close to that initially passing car. Yeah. How do you block it? Yeah, there's no way to shut that down. You cut them off and you kill you kill both of your cars. Mm -hmm. Is the only way to stop it. There, so, well, there's there's only two ways to stop it, right? There's there's that, or there is, I'm gonna defend against a faster slow driver. All of us. Down. In which case, in which case, technically you're wrong, but at the same time, you're in the middle of a battle. Right? Uh -huh. Like, yep. so you tell me I have to give up the space? I don't, yeah, I don't know. No. That one's a little rougher than your standard back marker defended the mm -hmm. position incident, right? And this is even trickier because there are no back markers in this conversation right now. There's three guys who are mm -hmm. all fighting for P7. No, P6. P6, and right? So, now. Sebastian, Sebastian Lucasen holding that spot. Jimmy Lynn keeping it tight. Tim Flanger not really tightening up yet. Still around 2.3 seconds back. But to your point, Jimmy Lynn needs to decide, are you going to send it or not? Down this hill might be the place to do it if he can cut inside. So if you, on your screen, if you bring up the delta as well between 7 and 8, we mm -hmm. can see how much of an accordion effect we're going to have here. Well, yeah, it's starting to tighten up. Every time Jim Lynn gets close to Sebastian Lucas and... Uh, it gives Tim Flanger an opportunity to move up. He's down, down to, now down to 1.8 seconds. Oh, wow. That's over three tenths a single lap. Mm -hmm. 1.5 now. It's a half a second cut off in a lap. But to be fair, Sebastian Lucas is playing great defense here. He has made sure that that BMW is as wide as possible, not going to give Lynn any sort of opportunity. I want to watch a little more closer on Lucasen because I don't even know if he's defending or if he's just because it seems to be taking each apex, going side to side, using the whole track, not leaving his line. That there he did there, but oh and oh Lynn that was it. In, and a push you right there see. side by side, and here comes Timothy Flamger now going to join the party. It's one way to get the party started. <laughs> Jimmy Lynn pushes and gives the position up, so now Tim Flanger able to get mm. around and Jimmy Lynn now taking up position. We got a three-way battle. Yikes. Sebastian Lucas and holding on Jim Lynn back into P7. But now Flamger right there. And, and we also have P9 has looking to lap themselves. Right? Oh no. Yeah. Down a lap. Padiddle. Looking for a free piece of candy on the side of the road is what he's looking for right now. 
Looking for some carnage. Looking to pick them up. Will says we need an incident report email. There it is. We have one. Yeah, one here too. It's not ours, <laughs> but... It's from Mooncar, if anybody wants to <laughs> pay for that one. So not much changed after that bump and grind through that carousel down there. Sebastian uh, Lucas still sitting in P6. Jimmy Lin right there and Timothy Flamger bringing up P8. And now, as you said, Bill Savite is sitting in P9 wanting to unlap. Bill, a very speedy driver. This team was up near the top until some incidents crushed them back. These guys are quick. I guess I good on the the Porsche to let everything resettle back in and mm -hmm. we didn't see any more damage than was needed, but it's a long race, folks. Track temps holding at 16C right now as the sun continues to set. Now 8.30 track time. Lights are on. Turn them off. Everybody, turn them off all night long. <laughs> Another drive-through P2. Oh, no. Uh-oh. That's going to give Yannick, oh, a chance here. 81 back. He's going to lose about, I want to say, 35 to 40 seconds on that drive-through. So Yannick Kurt's able to going to be able to close down about half the gap awesome. during that time. <laughs> a lot of time left. Sebastian Lucasen, Jimmy Lin, and Tim Flamger all battling right now. And again, Bill Savitis right back there as well. It's a lap down, but wanting to get some clean air to see if he can unlap himself. Yeah, that Porsche breaking the toe. And now Tim Flamger meant. pulling ahead. Ooh, Let's watch the move through, yeah. through T2. And ooh, Jim Lin's going to be able to stretch it out just a little bit heading into T3 to hold that position, but just barely. See, here's a bit of the challenge here is they, again, if they all are being kind and working together, Jimmy Lin doesn't need to break the toe on the, on the front straight. He can just stay there, keep it nice, keep it mm -hmm. fine. Instead, chose to break the toe, then had to defend harder into T1. And then here we have a bigger gap for the guy in the front. Yeah, Sebastian Lucas is able to pull out now a little bit, opening that gap to one second. So now we have uh, John Tracy in the chat. You got to wonder, what are they talking about in their team chat right now? Because do you, yeah, just tell P8, sit there. Sit there all night long. Just wait until they pit, because I think they're in different pit cadences here. Mm -hmm. Let it happen. Let the game play out. Or do they absolutely send it? Send it. Isn't that the answer every time? Yeah. If we I've get watched a, a Monza races on in T1. It is, I'm pretty sure send it is the answer every time. <laughs> If you can get a cockpit view on 808 on the stream, um, I'd love to see what this looks like square in the middle from an attacking car's point of view. Who's the thing squares itself away there? We go. Gotcha. Yeah, they're looking. They're they're talking brake strategy <laughs> in the Audi right now. Which you, you never like. There becomes a whole problem of not only does that change their the length of their pit stop. Mm -hmm. has also changed their braking ability. The Audi is a monster on the brakes. That thing can downshift itself feet, meters later than everybody else. Do you send it and risk it? Or do you, again, wait for them to change their brakes? Certainly tight back through here. And you're right, the downshift on the Audi I do love. But this now... Hold on a second, because that is e the this is the Evo two they're driving, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know that. So I haven't driven it. You haven't driven that yet. It is, it is definitely different. Um, you know, again, Ooh, I'm, I'm not one of those people that is a car guy and can understand everything. Again, push pedal, car go vroom. But <laughs> what I've noticed is the the Evo one, the Evo one, I can keep under control, right? Coach Dave setups, uh -huh. the, even the aggressive setup, gotten to the point where very 
very easily keep it. I'm not fast, but I can keep it under control. This Evo 2, well, let me tell you something. The back end on this thing loves to kick if you're not careful. Yeah. At least for me, I have a hard time controlling the back end of this car. So I wonder if those brakes are as tight and if they're able to get on them just as hard and brake later. Now, I've been told this that the Porsche is able to brake a lot later than most. Hmm. Here we go. Oh, is Flamger going to send it? Off. Looking to send it on the straight. He's got the little bit of oh, sand and holding the position. Oh my! I'll back off just a little bit. Did not sign up for this. I thought we were just going to be able to talk about theories of leadership for a while. I know, folks. man. We're it was a, a race. We're having such a good on? time, and this is ridiculous. Now we actually have to watch a race. If you want done, we can just turn this. We can flip over to iRacing and start doing IRX. You want to just flip over to iRacing? We'll start doing IRX races for everybody. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> it's you and I on we'll just practice right IRX races practice it doesn't matter I'll drive that little VW Beetle around yeah show off some box liveries you made right that you made I didn't make anything that's fine Sebastian Lucasen after about four or five laps here continues to lead this pack for P6 Jimmy Lynn BMW. right there behind him P9's <laughs> looking He's pissed. He's he, looking to make a yeah, move. Yeah, he is. I, I mean, Bill Savitas has got to be just uh, cranking right now to get around these guys. Again, Rally Daily's team had this pace locked. These guys led this race for no, for a non insignificant portion up front. So now sitting P9, he's got drivers in front of him. He wants to get around, unable to do so because these guys are battling hard. And they, it, it's hard to tell, even when we were in first person um, from the Audi, is are they even battling it anymore? I think the Porsche might just be having uh, tire life and brake life issues mm -hmm. more so than actually battling. Because they dipped a tire on the sand, the braking's not always straight, a little bit of a contact from the front. Right, I don't know how much of that is actually defense. There's a little bit of braking of the till on the straights just because you can, but mm -hmm. who knows right now? Oh. There it is. There's a pass. Taking it too wide. And Flanger going way oh. wide. Oh, he got Looking it. to grab That's it. He's successful. got it into T. He's got the inside and able to make the cut back in T1. And, ooh, I thought Done. that was going to get real close. There we go. We get the pass from Tim Flanger. Able to oh. bring that team up into P7. But things still tight here. Now Sebastian Lucas is going to deal with that Audi behind him with Jimmy Lynn sitting in eighth. So if he just had the run and took it a little too wide into the gravel. We go back and on Steven's, board with Tim Steven Flamber. mentioned a, a German manufacturer battle. You know, we all know the Audi is the best. We don't really have to worry about that. We're fine. Drive a Porsche. Maybe Porsche is the one that's best at killing people. I mean, Drivers, going, going sideways, going in circles, uh, losing control. There's a reason why. Through, there's a know. reason why we say port. The, oh, the Porsche is doing Porsche things. Oh, right. Okay. Go on board with Jimmy Lynn. Speaking of Porsche, real quick. Ooh. We spoke five minutes ago about the Porsche using the Audi as a pass. Mm -hmm. They had a chance. If the Audi would have went for the pass into the chicane, it's ballsy. But the BMW would have had to kind of just let it happen. <laughs> Porsche could have went. Probably would have died if they could have went. Just kind of let it happen. Late on a Saturday night, you know. G. Steven in chat says, wait till our boy gets to the right fuel level to go engine map one. Uh oh, and here we go, Bill Savitas. Bill Savitas oh, looking to the outside. And he got it, he owned right that there, Able to take it, that's the move we've watched Beautiful. several times today, just an excellent pass. See if we can catch it real quick on a replay. Again, outside into T1, giving the inside shot in through T2. And now Jimmy Lin not losing a position yet, but certainly certainly letting bill savitas start to unlap that team but bill making the able, able to make the first step getting himself back up there and now though the battle becomes down between sebastian lukeson and that 64 
excuse me, BMW. And Tim Flanders, 808 Audi. Revis, luckily the car is not damaged anymore. It's just a visual yeah, glitch. On visual Wilson glitch. Street. We're going to get to watch it uh, padiddle around the track during the night tonight. Without headlights? <laughs> oh, there's one. No, there's one working. It's fine. There's one, there's okay. one, there's okay. one working. Perfect. We'll at least be able to identify where it is on track. I got to imagine the only way to fix it is for me to back out of the race and come back yeah. in, and I'm simply not going to do yeah. that. So. No, not interested. So, uh... The team from the Audi had mentioned that they are in provisional P6. So there's also some pit difference, mm -hmm. uh, maybe some brake differences between this Audi and the BMW leading this pack. Again, do you attack? Do you send it? John Tracy in the chat is saying send it. But <laughs> John Tracy lead? will always, I think, say send it, won't he? We've, we've all felt what the send from John Tracy feels like. And here it goes right here. You want to talk about a send? He We're getting a send right down does to he the have T1. The does he have the turn? He does. Okay, it's a good pass. He's got it Solid. right there. Tim Flanger able to pull up into P6. Smooth, beautiful, keeping it clean. Very much Nine so. Nine and a half hours left. Tim Flanger able to hold down with John Tracy and esports legend Brian Canavan. <laughs> Every time you say the phrase esports legend, I just laugh. It's not because I like I have anything you know, that's crow. literally just... his name on the Discord now, right? <laughs> It just makes me laugh every time, B, especially because the 808 is already gapping this whole pack. Yeah. Absolutely. No, no, look, like Tim did very well during his stint earlier today, and I had a feeling once some, once he was able to get clean air, he was going to start to open this up over these guys a little bit, right? So it, that's not about the Audi. That's, that's having watched Tim earlier today. He didn't gain a ton of position during his stint, but... What he did do was hold his own and maintain. And once that was done, Brian Canepikin's in, gets very lucky, able to gain five positions for this team. And now the rest of them are stepping up. Uh, uh, whether we talk about Tim, who's in the car now. John Tracy had an excellent stint last time, right? Steven, excellent stint both times. Steven, uh, again, holding his own and maintaining position. These guys lost position during their pit stop and then gained them back during that stint. So... You know, it really is not surprising me that, that he's going to be able to open up over these guys a little bit. Even over this, you know, Sebastian Lukasen, who seemed to do good things today, and Jimmy Lin as well. Jimmy Lin now falling way back. But that Porsche has been very steady today. So I'm kind of surprised that Jimmy Lin has dropped back this far off this group. But well, now have, a 1.3 second let gap. let it be steady. You have to let mm -hmm. it be steady sometimes. And if you're pushing and pushing and pushing this battle, that Porsche is not a car. I want tires that are aging on. Let it be steady. <laughs> <laughs> let it live its life. Let it happen. Meanwhile, 100%. Timmy passes the pack and says, see ya. Second ahead already. Gone. Gap it. Absolutely opening it up. With that little battle over, I'm going to take a minute. Unbelievable. To get a drink. Continue to watch. Oop, I'm banging the mic around. I'm gonna continue to watch, but we'll keep eyes on here. And we have the Audi approaching a back marker. O'Connor getting nervous for sure. Oh no! Watching is this it that angry Ferrari Audi again. Yes, it is. It's the red Ferrari. Lordy the Louis beached Louis Ferrari Louis. getting angry from behind. Oh no! <laughs> the Ferrari took a little trip to. The nearest beach saw some whales and takes the oh takes the gravel to allow him to pass. Don't know if that was on purpose or not, but it I happened. I hope not, my lord. I've had this conversation twice today already. I do not want to have it again. <laughs> he 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 dipped. He, I think he just dipped some tires and got stuck. But either way, are you able to hear me all right? Not though? great. Yeah, I can hear you. Is Chad, able to hear me okay? Yeah. And this mic's a little quieter, so it's it is. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. I mean. I can bump it a little bit. I just don't want to overdrive the thing. Let's see where we're at. Because we had some more fun happening. Savitas is making yeah, moves. Savitas passed the Audi. So, unlapped himself from the whole pack. Making moves. Making money. 
So yeah, Bill got a lot of work to do to get back. Bill Savitas now able to jump up there. So yeah, like you said, gets out of that pack. So I've got no doubt that we're going to see them continue to move up today throughout the evening as this race continues. Almost 9 p.m. race time. Crack down to 15 C. Temperatures are dropping. The darkness is setting in. It does make you wonder because we that pack everyone was sent was within maybe three tenths for it was maybe 10 laps. Now mm -hmm. they're giving each other space. I'm wondering how much of that is, first of all, the faster drivers having passed and the change in temperatures. You don't know how different they were set up in terms of tire pressures, if the dropping temperatures have affected them differently. That's the fun of endurance racing. You never know. You never know. We won't find out, though. Absolute blast today covering this race. I have had so much fun. It's been all right. <laughs> you know what, dude? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the gap between one and two has gotten way bigger. They're about to get uh, P1's about to lap again. Yeah, I P2. saw that. I mean, that opened while we were watching that battle the whole time. I, I glanced at that earlier. Now up to almost a hundred seconds. Um, Benjamin S. 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 Silly. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, just banging out there. I don't know if you know if Raber got held up at some point or something happened, but. A big old hold up. It's a 50 second hold up. Yeah, but hold on. But here's the thing. You know, I've got to mention this because we've seen a gap this large already twice today. Mm -hmm. Yep. And somehow, I don't know if it's the specific driver. Um, I haven't seen a pattern as far as that goes, but somehow these guys will bring it back down and catch up, and we will get a battle for P1 again. 500 laps in, folks. Five. Hundred laps. If this were NASCAR, everybody would be stopping right now. Uh, yeah, maybe. Isn't that what they do? They only do 500 laps, or is it 500 miles? Depends. No, yeah. they'd be stopping. It's 500 right mile now. race at a mile long track. That's a, there you go. Okay. That's how the math works. Yeah, that's okay. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a chief answer done you, you snuck that in there don't on me compare you, you me channeled don't chief that. that was a chief answer right there and you don't know compare that me to chief. <laughs> why not he's a good dude wait for him to pop up right i've only seen one message from him today i haven't heard from him i thought uh -huh. we were gonna i see think it was him just there. him telling me to shut up mm -hmm. <laughs> i thought we were gonna really see him message. in the chat today i thought he was gonna join us for a little commentating but i haven't seen him maybe he found something better to do it could very well be Savitas is, again, also now gapped the Audi. So the Audi is uh, significantly in front of where the b b battle was before. But again, Savitas today was an absolute legend on his previous stint. So that doesn't surprise me. He needed clean air, and he found it, and now is going to start closing in as quickly as possible. So I'll be curious to see how quickly number nine catches up to number 10. Hmm. Red mentions that we've used hundreds of gallons of pretend fuel. I wonder if there's a way to calculate how much energy has been used by the just... Carbon load? You, yeah, but you'd have to know what video rate. card these guys are running, how yeah. many screens each driver has, power supply. Somebody, power somebody supply box is smart enough for that. Somebody can, I'm figure not. somebody can do the math. One of you engineer people can figure it out. So not Formula E of us. Right. That, right. That's the problem. <laughs> well, we are using electricity. I mean, is, that is true. Yeah. Steven, you do that math of the how much fuel have we not used by not doing this in real life. And somebody else do the math of how much money did we not spend? Right. Someone's like, well, you're not driving a real car. It's like, well, I also don't have millions of dollars. So... You know, that's a that's an interesting thing you bring up because I always thought the same thing of, you know, when I when I wanted to sim race, for years I drove on a controller. Mm -hmm. I did not believe it was worth the money to buy a wheel and pedals and all these things for something. The chat time. right now I'm sorry, the chat right now is busting me up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we are such saints, truly, such saints. by doing Absolutely. this online. Public service, Huff says. He's not wrong. Let's Huff, I thought you were taking a nap. Get, a, get some nap, my dude. <laughs> but you know, it's funny you, you bring that up, Dunn, because you talk about the money we spend on these wheels and pedals and these setups and, and the monitors and everything else that, that all these guys put together for this hobby. And a lot of people would sit there and say, what's well, a waste of time? It's a waste of money. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? And I had that same attitude for a long time. Even though I enjoyed sim racing, I was doing it on controllers and, and it was more simcade and not not what I would right. call quote unquote serious sim racing, right? Um, but what I came to realize, and I, I realized it when actually playing something completely different, uh, which was Train Simulator. Mm. If you go to Steam right now... Oh, wait a minute. We got P7 is in the wall. Oh, perfect. Can we get a replay on that? Because it looks like Lynn was going for, maybe going for a pass, or somebody was. No, I have I'm no idea have what to happened. Have to run because it didn't pick it up. Yeah, P7 Lucasen, wall or P8? P8 still uh, yellow P flag Lucas, right Lucas now. Lucasen was in the wall about 20 seconds ago. So let's jump over to Sebastian Lucasen and get this started. Still sitting. Yeah, no, it was more than 30 seconds ago. He's still sitting over there. So oh, now we no. get a 30-second replay of that. So my, this is what happened, folks. For a while, we had Lucas in on just Molson's screen, had a, absolutely scuffed BMW. Now it's also scuffed on my screen. So we're just <laughs> evening it up. That's right. Yikes. The Wii Remote. Molson didn't need a wheel. You're right, I didn't. At the time. I mean, yeah. But as I was saying, what I realized, what I came to realize was that, you know, if you if you go on Steam right now and you look at, at Train Simulator, to buy every piece of DLC for Train Simulator, running about thirty five hundred dollars. Oh okay. my God! But hold on a second. Let's think about that. If you're if that's your hobby, if that's what you're in, if you're really into trains, okay. Oh, and our Bentley is off track. Gasolina throws himself into the wall now, getting spun around. Um, you have no as idea, I was saying, Steven. if you're if you're really into trains, right? Yep. If that's if that's your thing, same with flight simulator and beef. I've just said it, right? Flight sim with DLC. It's going to be about the same thing. If you're really into that, well, what if if you can build something that puts you in that world and allows you to mm -hmm. get as close of an experience to that that real world experience as possible let me ask you a question where are you going to buy a train <laughs> where are you going to lay the track where are you going to buy all the different cars and, and a yard to do the switching and things? same with flight sim right can you buy a 747 oh, no. right now and go fly it no but with triple screens in VR and a flight yoke and some pedals mm -hmm. you're kind of there right and if that costs you $2,000, $3,000 if that's your hook there is not a thing wrong with that as far as I'm concerned. I, so when I stopped, I, I was in school, as many of us were. For We go to school for at least 12 years of our life. It is a huge part of who we are, whether it's because you hate it or you love it or somewhere in between. And when you start, when you leave school, whether that's after college, after high school, whenever you stopped, I was always told, well, someday you're going to have to figure out what your hobbies are. Mm -hmm. Because your hobbies aren't going to be organized sports for most people. They're not going to be school forever. And I was like, oh, okay, well, if you say so. And then I had to find a hobby. And I realized how expensive hobbies are. And so even people like, just the idea of how much time we spend wasting time. And I don't mean that in a negative way. Just we got to waste time. We got to spend time. Um, spend it however the hell you want. Exactly. Like, it's your money. As long, like, I, w I can't tell you. I can't make you spend within your means. But if you have... The ability to pursue the hobby that you want, do it. You know, Enjoy it's, it's, yourself. I think it's one of those things, and I see, and again, it's this internet, this connected world we live in. As as I was younger, uh, and again, being 44 now, I was there when the internet started. I remember life before an internet. <laughs> um, and it's and it sounds weird to say that, and it's weird flex, bro. Just the way you say it is the but funny it's, part. It, but it's true. <laughs> and the thing is, is for Ooh, a long time, P1. because I was younger. Yikes. You, I see these things, and it used to be as a younger person, you would look and go, that's stupid. Why do you spend money on that? What are you, an idiot? Mm -hmm. 
But now, as as you grow and you expand and you have your own hobbies and things, you look at someone and it's like, why would I ever tell someone that they're wrong to yeah. throw down on what they like just because it's not what I like, right? I and remember it's so going hard. It takes a lot of growth yeah. to wrap your head around that sometimes because you yep. you don't necessarily think that way when you're younger. I remember going into someone's um, one of my dad's friends' basements. I think no, my friend's dad had a what were they called? Like when you build like a basically a train set in your basement. Yeah. Like model trains. Yeah. The, like not just like and again not just the trains themselves but like also the the environment through which the trains the buildings will, the tunnels yes, the mountains all of yeah 100 percent. i've seen these man they're fantastic models I yeah love and like in my basement as a kid we had a pool table and in this dude's this my friend in his basement his dad had like three pool tables of a train set and mm-hmm. i was like this is absolutely obnoxious but also i don't know what that dude did for a living i don't know why he found that so much fun or why he decided to spend that much time and or money on it was he? Was his name Gomez Adams? <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Might okay, have been, just actually. making sure. You never know. <laughs> Steven, I had a pager back in the day. I had a pager. Yeah, I had a pager. Why wouldn't I have a pager? Of course Steven, I had a, I had a job in which I had to have a pager, and I'm 27. Oh, and by the way, lemon lids, lemon lids. Uh, Tracy, you're right. Train go choo choo. It does, unless it, unless it doesn't. Push the lever. Train go choo choo. Yeah. Push the pedal, cargo vroom. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Again, if it doesn't, it's, it's less of a, it does Unless it. apparently it's, you're driving a red Ferrari from time to time. Right, <laughs> and then you drive in the ocean or on the beach. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Comparing a pixel to a pager, that's hilarious. Yeah, I remember when I say I had a pager for work, I remember having a pager for a job that I had, and I was so confused on how to use it. It's like, what does this mean? And they had to, like, literally walk a bunch of 17, 18-year-olds through how to use a pager in 2012. Wild time. Good Lord. How, how, why would you have to walk someone through how to use a pager? There's literally two buttons on a pager. Because it was a bunch of 18-year-olds who had never seen a pager before. <laughs> It was like, wait, you want me to do what with this? So, like, we're literally, all you have to look at the screen. It'll tell you four numbers. Those four numbers mean X, Y, and Z. Press the other button. Thank you. So, I'm going to correct something real, real quick here. I got to do this before I even switch mics back. You know what? No. Give me a second, because I'm going to switch mics back over, because I'm going to make a correction for somebody in the chat. Uh Uh-oh. Real fast, and they're about (laughs) to get bathed. Okay. So, lateral, I'm going to explain something to you real quick. My father, oh, Mr. No. Thursby, is a boomer. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, sir, am a part of Gen X. Sarcasm and passive aggressiveness are my life, my love languages. Do not play games with me. I will tear you down verbally. <laughs> You're going to need therapy when I'm done because we just don't care. We're the forgotten generation. Nobody remembers us. We're the stepchildren of history right now and it's fantastic i love it <laughs> so no i'm not a what? boomer don't insult me like my kids call me a boomer i'm like you don't even know what you're talking about then again my kids are goofy as expected <laughs> oh oh lemon it's lids message birthday, had to be actually. deleted what did you do i deleted what it you... just just random oh, letters i deleted it. Li- <laughs> red rider <laughs> I got a birthday coming up here soon. What am I going to do? I might go uh, go-karting. How old are you going to be? 28. Didn't you do what most 28-year-olds do? Go out and party and drink? That's the problem. And there we come to problem number one. Your boy lives in a beer state, and your boy don't drink. Hmm. So I go go-karting instead. Or I hang right. with my other friends well, there you go have at it um, we'll, we gotta figure it out but I think I gotta buy new boxing gloves and then I'm probably gonna go karting I think is the plan why would you need new boxing gloves uh cause when you box like 10 hours a week for an entire year your boxing gloves start to get a little worn out and you start to hurt yourself hmm Yeah. 
Maybe stop hitting people so hard. I do it's, like Boston. I'd I'm a pacifist, buy a but I love I love watching the sweet science. I used to go to watch uh, with a buddy of mine in Florida when the pay-per-views were on. Fantastic well, if, sport to watch. If things go as planned, um, next July, next June is my first fight, which will be televised, <laughs> and will also be for charity. And so we will have something else to raise money for. Hey, box. Wait, stand by. Did you just say you're going to have a televised fight? Correct. Where would I be able to watch this? I don't know, but they find a, a state. They find someone to pick it up every year. It's called Haymakers for Hope. Please let us know where we can find. Oh, this I when, absolutely when the time will. comes. Because I. What, the thing is, if if I still live where I live and I'm still eligible for the fight, then I need basically to tell as many people that I can that I'm doing it, so that I can't back out. Perfect. That's how I work. That's how my I peer pressure myself into things. I peer pressure myself. <laughs> into things that is fantastic yes. sir uh we got p12 on the on the gravel yep p12 just uh coming out of the gravel now but again i mean look, look it's still a lap ahead of uh, gasolina and p13 our drivers a lot of these drivers are so spread out right now that uh yeah. a single mistake is not going to cost them now where that's not true is if we look at again up at timothy langer and that audi that 808 audi jimmy lynn only six seconds back Really? I hate to break it to you, Stephen, running, but I'm not going to be I'm not going to be a UFC champion. I just want to be very clear. <laughs> um, no, and so. this is the thing that happened to me is, again, back in the early 2000s, boxing was an event, right? Uh -huh. uh, you had the HBO events, you had the pay-per-view events. Now it's all UFC, yep. and UFC is just not my hook. I've lost, uh, I've lost that outlet as far yep. as boxing goes. You just don't see those big fights anymore unless it's some who fast YouTuber thinking he's a boxer. Yeah. And I just, well, I can't handle now that stuff I, like that. Now that I'm surrounded by boxers like all day long, I have become more interested in the current like boxing and MMA scene. So there's definitely still some stuff going on, but it's not, yeah. I remember it being absolutely obnoxious. Like even like when Brock Lesnar was doing MMA, it was like, oh God, everyone stop and watch. But um, two questions. One, for Coach Carson, Iowa State, are you actually a coach at Iowa State? If you are, let me know. I work with people at Iowa State. I'm glad you were able Number to read two. that. I was trying to figure out what it was before, um, <laughs> and I could not put those letters together in my head. So thank you, Dunn. Excellent job. Um, second question is for us, which is what is our favorite movie of all time? Favorite Wilson, movie of first. all time. No, go ahead. I want to hear yours. So I have, I, I, this is okay. I'm not even going to go to the background of this, but I've had to answer this question a lot recently. Um, I always have two answers which is if I want to just watch a movie that I could recite every word to and absolutely pass all of the time, Jim Carrey's The Grinch, no question about it. Every time. If really? I want to, yes, Jim Carrey's The Grinch over and over and over again. I would say like 80% of my family dynamic is simply that movie. Um, and that is the relationship we have, both what is in the movie and our relationship around that movie. Okay. Um, the other part is in terms of like movies as art, like movies that I actually enjoy because they are good movies. There are two. One is uh, Django Unchained. Oh, big fan of that movie. Big, okay, hold on. I'm going to stop movie. you right there real quick because I'm just going to say anything Blue that fight. Tarantino's done. For, of course. I have, knowing you, I have, I have zero surprise in my body at that. All statement. the way back to Reservoir Dogs, which I know you young bucks in the chat won't understand what Reservoir I've Dogs is about. Seen but exactly 27 years old not, hasn't seen reservoir dogs i've not seen the whole thing Unbelievable. um the uh other one that comes to mind often is there will be, there will be blood i do not think i've ever watched that whole movie either i love that movie i don't know why i love it so much but there will be blood hell of a movie anyway Excellent. that is me Chat goes so, wild because I'm the I'm the greatest movie critic of all time. Clearly, thank you. Oh well, they're gonna go wild for done anyway. <laughs> and the real Moons has just shown up. Moons, welcome yes. in, my man. Listen, um, we don't shout people out here at Box Three Motorsports. The focus is on the driving, and you know, with everybody spread out, we are having our conversations tonight. But I will tell you all, the real Moons is the man, the myth, the legend. I love that man. man. He is a fantastic. Great. I haven't talked to him recently because we kind of. Kind of gone different different directions and i am going to answer the movie question in just a second but moons is here 
we kind of you know gone different directions he's very big into tarkov he isn't streaming anymore right now but i love that man he is a fantastic human being overall and i will tell him that every time he comes into chat now to answer that movie question um much like yourself it's it's really hard to answer uh what is the your favorite movie of all time because really it depends on the mood i'm in right my job yep. that i do during the day allows me to have movies on in the background so i'm typically while i'm working Ooh. watching movies at the same time and i just am i in the mood for a comedy or science fiction or whatever um but i will tell you one of my absolute favorite movies of all time serious drama and i know it did not get highly rated at the time and it should have been because it, it was very topical at the time it came out uh was the samuel l jackson movie unthinkable huh you ever see that movie done no so basically this movie's about a terrorist attack in the united states this guy has planted nuclear n dirty bombs around the country let me it guess is, it, was, is, it was released in like 98 uh no i'd have to go back i want to say more like 2010 2012 somewhere in there i'd okay. have to go look Never mind. um but very basically the guy gets gets captured right um and they're holding him and samuel l jackson is a special kind of operator for the united states uh government and is allowed to do things that other people aren't allowed to do naturally of course and i don't care no 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 and this this all takes place within the confines of a high school they've commandeered as a headquarters what? as they solve this crisis um and we're talking about torture Oh. It's basically about torture, trying to locate these bombs and make this man give up the, the location of these bombs. And oh, no. what is, you know, really what I love about it is it doesn't matter what side of that equation you land on in your life. Whatever your opinion is, are you okay with torturing people or are you not okay with torturing people? That movie is set up in such a way as it will make you question whether or not it's okay. Or not okay good old-fashioned moral psychological drama absolutely 100 100 percent, and that's why i can always go back to that movie if i want something that wants to make me think and i want to engage with uh i will watch unthinkable it is absolutely fantastic beyond wow. that i gotta say uh inglorious bastards i'm gonna go with another tarantino mm. movie mm. that's a good one definitely a good one yeah, if you so, have not and, seen and, there will be but blood. Here's, but here's the up. thing. Watch but here's the thing. And I have it. It's probably on my Plex server. I could go and watch that. Um, Inglorious Bastards. And and I would say that this is shared in common with uh, with what you mentioned. Uh, Django Unchained. And we got bumping and banging right there. Do Sebastian, it. right there. Gazolina knocking Sebastian Lucan off track. Ooh, what baby. a door bang there. Sent him right the off the track run. into the grass. My goodness. White the bang down that straight. Very little call for that. That's interesting. Uh, and that number 64 BMW is not looking healthy anymore. We'll have to see if that team's going to have to make seems. repairs. <laughs> What's that? That BMW seems to never look good. No, I don't care what BMW it is in this track. Like, they just seem to never look good. Livery is beautiful. Physical damage, absolute garbage. <laughs> That's terrible. You should say, but I'm just saying. I'm talking about the dents on it now. Right, right, right. It looks awful, and that was really there was no need for that. Gasolina sitting in 15th right now. Yikes. Sebastian Lucasen sitting up in P7, just looking to clear back markers. Uh, no real call for that, but it looks like they're going to have to deal with it again as Gasolina is sitting out just ahead of him. Can I give a quick shout out to one Will Green having to make another incident report? <laughs> <laughs> Will Green. <laughs> um, as I was saying, though, along with your mention of uh, Django Unchained, it's all about Christoph Volz in both those movies. Yeah, he's so good. He's so good, especially when handed a director like Tarantino that really just yep. lets him run the show when he's on camera. It is fantastic. Yeah, for sure. Answer that um, question. Daniel Day Lewis is the main actor in There Will Be Blood. I could watch him act in oh. probably anything. So, all so day, every then day. let me ask you because you just mentioned another one of my favorites, uh, Gangs of New York. Love it. So that was actually a. I watched that movie for the first time when I was in college, I think, as a, part of a criminology class. Okay. And we had to like both the history of that is actually really accurate and we had to mm -hmm. break down like different theories of crime and the american approach to crime through that movie 
it was an amazing assignment. It was actually a lot of fun. You won but yeah, oh, it's also Paul. So Paul Dano in that movie is also wait no Paul Dano is or is not in Gangs of New York. Mm, DiCaprio. I don't think he is. Um. You're right. Yeah, I don't think he is. Um, okay. Paul Dano is like the secondary actor in There Will Be Blood. Gotcha. No, um, very and, you bring up, and you bring up the history of Gangs of New York. I actually, after, you know, I'd seen the movie several times. Again, one of my favorites. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis is fantastic in that movie. And even DiCaprio pulls off a great performance. The man's no slouch as an actor. Uh, but I've read a book about the five points, and I was very yeah. surprised the accuracy of, of parts of that movie. Yeah. That I did not think were, were actually true, turned out were very yeah. true. So interesting yeah. to see. The P1 into the pits now, and this just goes a run. to show you, Ooh, baby. Julian Rayberg in P2, now only 19 seconds back. We saw that gap open so far. 100 seconds. Up to P1, up, up to 100 seconds, and now down to just 19 seconds back, and it shows you how quickly things can change here during a 24-hour endurance race. Just under nine hours left to go. Darkness setting in Imola now just after 9 p.m. track time again we, we said this earlier we have 62 people in the Twitch chat right now if any of you are interested in racing and like to race for the first time maybe you think this game looks beautiful because it does but you don't have it and you want to try it we have codes we have a code for our ACC ACC and a set of Corsic not Competizione Ultimate Edition Ultimate Edition, the original Assetto like Corsa. Which somehow is still a living game. We don't know how. Because the mods, mods are interesting. Because yeah, of mods. Mo the modding community, genius people, let the game die. Let it die so they can f hurry up and release the next one. ACC <laughs> AC2 is supposed to be coming. We'll have to see what they develop. Hurry up. I'll be very anyway. curious to see if... Well, and, 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 you know, we talk about that, but I'll be interested to see if, if we ever get an ACC2 moving to Unreal Engine uh, 5. That's a good question. I don't think they're using uh, Unreal Engine for AC2. No, um, but ACC is Unreal Engine. Totally. And so I think, I yeah, I don't know. Um, my, my guess is that if AC2's engine works the way it's supposed to and is modern enough, they just kind of poured it into this. Because I don't know if it would make, like, they seem to want this game to be like a live service esports game, somewhere like Overwatch, mm -hmm. where they really only made Overwatch 2 because they had to. And they haven't even released it yet. And that game is going to live on forever <laughs> until like yeah. they finally decide to release Overwatch 2. And that's basically mostly just for the single player stuff. And so will they just keep updating this game and keep releasing these quarterly $10 DLCs? And then we're good to go. And yeah, that, like in the chat, I, I'm pretty sure they're making a new engine for AC2. And hopefully that is at least somewhat informed by all the tons and tons of data oh. they have from GT3 cars. From Whole um, Grass now Nintendo. off track. This car looking to have trouble after the bang up before. Oh, baby. So Cole sliding off. Hot. Let's see if that tightens up a little bit, but these guys are deep into their stints at this point. Cole Grass having just gotten in the car. So again, either another, either another visual glitch or we're seeing that no rip, no body repairs were made, and we'll be able to talk to Ons about that. Joris Mentink off track as well, one of our solo drivers today. Jimmy Lin looking to unlap around Joris Mentink. Joris currently in P5, P7 getting around. Oh, and look who's here, it's your boy Blue. I, I honestly hope AC, AC2 is as solid as it needs to be on console, that it can be kind of the console version of iRacing. I would love that. Um, you should, the hard part is getting a big enough audience where you can have enough consistency of audience that you can run something like uh, an iRacing on I console. think the important... Yeah, but I think AC fills a different niche, right? I don't know that the people who run AC to this day want that iRacing model. Right, number one, 
Number two, I hope they learn their lesson from the you know, from from Aceto Corsa and ensure that that modding community can be as successful with AC2 as they were with mm. AC. Because if they don't, if they shut that down, if they lock that down, that is going to kill AC2. No one's going to want it. 90% of the people that mm. run AC right now run it because of the mods. They can have any car yeah. they want, any track they want, any uh, add-on they want. It, it, it's unbelievable. Go, just going to race department and looking at the number of add-ons mm -hmm. for AC right now. It's flabbergasting. My, I'm trying my to figure out console, what you want to do. Like for console, though, like because that is not going to happen, period, on console. And it could. Like they, they mm -hmm. did mod support on Skyrim and they kind of let it go. Or it was Skyrim or Fallout, one or the other, um, from Bethesda. And so they could do that technic technically on console, just is really hard to um, manage. But even like having a, a community on console that is structured and open enough, finding that balance that does not kind of cater too hard in either direction um in terms of structure so like even i think a lot of the um grand not grand Turismo, yeah grand turismo idea of like daily races that you just it's the same track there's three options same track car combo pick one of the three and so it keeps all the uh, lobbies decently full i have i don't think we have an xbox game that does that um and i think that needs to change because it we get games like ACC where great game, great, decent community, right? But we have to put so much work into getting enough people to come together at the same time to have a race worth having. Yeah. So. Who was flashing blue? Who'd you find flashing? <laughs> Good Lord. I didn't catch it on stream. I didn't catch it on stream. <laughs> we are currently watching our race leader, Benjamin Asaley. And he was flashing as he... I mean, he was already... There was nobody in front of him, though. So I don't know what Blue's yelling about. He's just saying hi. <laughs> that gap now opened back up to 79 seconds between P1 and P2 as Julian Rayberg falls into the pits oh. and now heads <laughs> back out on track. It, it was pointed out that we, I didn't finish the rant about codes. If okay. you are someone watching this and you this intrigues you and maybe I might want to try a sim racing title, I want to drive, maybe you even already have a wheel, but you're like, what am I going to do with it? How do I get this $1,000 piece of equipment? And I'm just flubbing around with it. We have codes for, we have one code for ACC and one code for a set of Corsa Ultimate Edition. Dif very different games. Um, if you are in the in the the bucket of I want to play but I don't know how or I don't know what game I would play and you're on and you're on PC, let us know in the chat. We have codes. We may make you do something for it if we feel mean. Well, I but, don't. I don't make me do anything for it. You probably have to join I mean, the I, Discord so I can, or at least I message have, yeah. me on Discord so I can send it to you. Might have to join the Discord. Might have to write a haiku. Might have to. Send me a picture of your dog. Got it. See, dog. so, See? okay, let's have a conversation right now because <laughs> Advaita in the chat is getting me tweaked up. About the flash? About the flashing. If the flashing bothers you, the flashing is working, you have lost. If you have to use flashing to get around somebody, you shouldn't be driving. That's one, that's one take. That is a take. I'm sorry, but Our, if, if, so if your only tool... <laughs> To get around someone is to annoy them with your headlights yeah. which let's face it even on normal roads that we all drive every day never it is you're right it stop, is in the stop, rules stop. yeah stop for a second. hold on Who you're right the it rules. is in the rules i wrote the rules it is in the rules <laughs> you're allowed to hit that button three times per lap any more than that and you're gonna get hammered with a penalty so come at me bro just want to be very clear who wrote so, the rules the person you're talking to <laughs> you might want to be careful about bringing up the rules for box three motorsports right now just the, the hard assery in the chat needs to take a real hard chill because <laughs> who the hell are you talking to? No, seriously, I, I that's how I see it, and that's why that rule is in the rule book. I get that using the lights can be a tactic. I understand that. But if your only tactic is to hammer someone and try to blind them with distracting lights. I really believe that that is a piss poor way to win a, to win a race. I do. Yeah. 
I, and that's why it's in the rules. Yes, can you let someone know you're there? Absolutely. Hit that thing three times every lap, you're good. You're never gonna get in trouble. But if someone comes and says, hey, look at my, look at my replay, this guy flashed me from the from T1 all the way to T14 and never let up every time he was directly behind me. Something's probably going to be said. Yeah. You know, I, I just think it's a dirty way to play. Yeah, I mean, it, the. Yeah, I get it. There's, we have like a boundary around it. Three is still a number that you can use. And like if our actual goal is to race a safe race, if you're distracting someone from behind, I get it. You're racing. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if you need to distract them to pass them, there's a higher chance of there being an incident. Um, I would rather the person who I am trying to pass be looking mostly forward than be looking more often backwards at me as we approach turns or corners yeah. or other <laughs> traffic. Well, I think that rule is important specifically for our league because we have so many drivers of so many different abilities on track at the same time. You know, the guy you're trying to pass, maybe that's a maybe that's a back marker. And this is their third race ever. And now all of a sudden they don't know how to maybe it's their first night race ever and they don't know how to deal with this. And you just blew them out. And to your point, are going to end up causing an incident without without reason you were going to get around them anyway they were going to let you by at some point there's no reason to just hammer down on them with the lights and just and and use those as a weapon to distract them they are a I tool feel like I paid. use them as a tool <laughs> i feel like i paid bad moses in chat to type this but he says all about sports sportsmanship being a knucklehead with the light flashes is pointless flash me more than once and you're not going past without losing some paint thank you that's all i gotta say Oh, uh oh, Igor off track. Thomas Jantz able to take up position now, moving into P10. Thomas, one of our solo drivers today, doing a great job. Now moving into the top 10 as Igor loses position. You're my boy Blue, but it's got me to spit water everywhere. <laughs> Chad is taking off. We are heading for box three after dark right now. After dark, boys. Let's go. We are going to end up turning it up here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And again, I want to take a moment and thank our sponsor for today's race, Apex Sim Racing. One of our drivers who finishes today's race, meaning any member of that team who is still on track at the end of today's race has a chance to win right there on your screen random driver we're going to choose live on stream apex button box vertical mount v2 kevin huffman had a chance to put hands on this thing really felt it really felt solid we want to thank them for their sponsorship of today's 24 hour race at emila eight hours 44 minutes left to go we are 15 hours and 15 minutes into this did somebody say after dark? Oh, we might be rolling to after dark and finer in the right chat gonna get me rolling if he doesn't settle down <laughs> with light flashing and it's gonna go after it's gonna get real dark Just real do quick. Do us all a favor. Somebody <laughs> mentioned blue flags. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't do it. No. We'll have a wild chief appearance if that happens. I know. <laughs> he might need to make a guest appearance on the stream again. Right? <laughs> Oh my god. Huff, what's your favorite movie of all time? Uh, favorite movie. I was actually uh, kind of commenting on chat a little bit in stream yeah. while I was away. Uh, I would probably... I'm kind of a sci-fi nerd. Uh, get out. All right. Get him out of there. Yeah. Get out of the chat. That's it. I really like the Matrix trilogy, and the original one was, uh, I think, the best out of all, there you go. all okay. four, I okay. reckon. That's a solid-ass movie. Um, I really like the movie Artificial Intelligence. I don't know if you've ever seen or heard of it, but uh, mm -hmm. I think it was mid 2000s, mid early 2000s. Mm. Excellent. And I'm I'm with you on the Matrix. Off that actually mm -hmm. crossed my mind as we were talking about it earlier. Let me ask you: Did you see the new one? I did, and like, and? I, 
it, it was solid. I mean, it, it wasn't crap, but it, it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the original Matrix. So mm -hmm. it, it was a good movie, for what it's worth. What, yeah, I think they did all right with it. 25 years later, whatever you know. Exactly. I'm waiting for John Wick 4 to see where that goes now. I love Keanu. All right, I, I got to admit something. I do, too. I like Keanu. Um, I haven't seen any of the Wick films. You, can you have not watched the John fine. Wick movies? I haven't either. Yeah. yeah. Wait, neither of you have watched the John Wick films? Dude, I don't watch a lot of movies, to be fair. I really don't. Oh, my God. I don't either. <laughs> you need to make time to watch John Wick. I'm, a, I'm even trying to get my wife to watch it. Now, she refuses because the whole impetus of this story is that a certain animal is brutally murdered. Okay. And that's what kicks this off as our race leader now, yellow flag with a hood standing up. Oh, whoops. Speaking of that, go. let's you know, jump back uh, 30 seconds real quick. We're going to watch this go down. And a curse oh, team no. back on the, back on the lead lab nearly. They are. Yeah. They're catching back. up. This is the second time I've this. seen P1 go off in the past like three or four minutes. Right there sliding so. deep into the gravel yeah. and bouncing the wall. Hood popping up. These guys are going to have to make repairs at some point. But yeah, Yannick Kurtz's team back on that lead lap. Ben, Oof. I'll tell you what. Benjamin Astilli has got some serious pace, though, up until this point. He keeps it on the limit, clearly, because he's won a, he stepped over a couple times in the past <laughs> five, ten minutes. He, yeah, he's been... Those tires aren't super excited anymore. No, and there we go into the pits. They P1 now uh, into the pits. This is going to give Yannick Kurtz... should have a chance to get him. Oh, man. And, Yep, an absolute oh, opportunity to step this up. They'll still have... Oh, I don't know how much damage they're going to have to repair, though. Probably at least It's significant, dude. Yeah, it's pretty tough. That hood is expensive. <laughs> We're going to keep an eye on Yannick Kurtz here. Uh, but as I was saying about John Wick, she won't watch it because it starts off with the brutal slaying of, a, of an animal. Um, yeah. But it's the entire impetus of this trilogy. You don't watch John Wick because you want... The, fan, the most fantastic storytelling, storytelling, and the most fantastic drama you've ever heard in your life. You yeah, watch yeah. it for kick-ass action because this yep. boy lays it down. Yep. And the entire movie, from start to finish, is him laying it down once it starts. I yeah, can I watch John Wick. Badass it, it's just like action awesome. shooting scenes. Uh, I, I gotta watch it, dude. I gotta. Make yeah, time. The, the, it's just the precision of which this is filmed and and the way this character is and and how precise he is. Is absolutely fantastic. It makes those Yannick movies Kurtz fantastic. In first place. And there we go. Yep, Yannick Kurtz able to make the move up into first. I'm so happy for them. I hate and to see it happen on something like that, but after the disconnect, they too. were all the way down there. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, these guys, these guys sheesh. disconnected at one point, and have now been able to, you know, no fault of their own, nothing anybody can do, but able to bring it all the way out. And now, Benjamin Asseli, I mean. Still sitting in the pits. Repairs not yet completed in P3. Before it's going to unlat themselves. But P4 coming past the pits now. And again, not going to pick up that position, I don't believe, but going to be able to they get back get onto uh. the lead lap with these guys. They might get close. Yeah, Silly's still sitting on the jack stands. Drop now. Down now. Down now. He's on his way out now, going to come out in P3. So Yannick Kurtz and team, Justin Schaeffer and Vanderhoek, take up position in P1 with a 10 second advantage over Justin Wichman, Theo Overhaus, Julian Rayberg, and Leon Lange. Those guys have led a lot of this race too, so we'll have to see how this plays out. 10 seconds back, but we got to see who's going to hit the pits first here, right? Yeah. Um, hey, you know what I want, Adam? I want that car 36 and car 31 battle we saw, oh, what was it, six hours ago? Yeah. Oh, gosh, that was amazing. Absolutely. And looking at it now, you know, Yannick Kurtz, 44 minutes into his stint. Justin Wichman in P2, only 12 minutes in. Oh, no. Right? So we're going to, Kurtz is going to need to take that pit stop before Wichman does, allowing them with only a nine second, 10 second gap, going to allow them to catch up and put them back into P1. We're going to see action all the way until the end of this race for P1, 2, and 3. These guys are going to continue to trade blows until we get down to that last hour. And I'll be very curious to see how close they are in that last hour 
to where we can get some real action and this turns into a sprint race. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it coming up on a pack of back markers. Then after that, he's got quite a bit of free air. So see if he can stretch it out a bit to, to cut, uh, you know, his pits. It'll be very close. We have Liss in the chat. Are you commentating all the way until the end of the race? Absolutely. I will be here 100%. Dunn has decided he's going to leave us, however. Two hours like Two early. hours hey. left to go because uh, I need sleep like I'm not 27 years old and can go on zero. How many times I stayed up 48 hours straight when I was 27 years old, dude? Yeah. Great. Awesome. Like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dunn, go back to our private chat a little bit earlier today. Um, and if you scroll up just a little bit, you'll see okay. the, uh, the okay. gift that I sent you. Okay. <laughs> you can just keep looking at that. You'll be fine. Oh, God. <laughs> but yeah, I got my new gloves, by the way. Just random. List. I got... Oh, did you? It's some dope-ass new gloves. I'm going to put the link in the chat. Oh, those ones you sent me before. The, the picture you sent me? Uh-huh. Very fancy. Those things are insane. Life, to your point, yeah, uh, John Wick is shot very well. If you take a look at John Wick, uh, and, and, and we're doing movie night here now all of a sudden, but... Uh, if you take a look at John Wick compared to something like The Bourne Identity, um, I like The Bourne movies. Unfortunately, the cinematographer decided to take the camera and jam it directly into <laughs> Jason Bourne's ass. Um, and so those movies are, I like them. I like the storytelling there, but it's very, very hard to watch because the action is so fast and so close. Where with, with Wick, stinky. they pulled that camera back. It smells. <laughs> no. With Wick, they pulled the camera back, and you can actually see what's going on. Very, in, very much more enjoyable in the action scenes. Similar films, but again, shot so differently that it makes Wick much more enjoyable. We got Cole Gress picking up a drive-through in position eight, car six four there. That's Perfect. not what you want. Gress womp heading womp. in now. They've been locked in P eight this entire race, it seems. <laughs> They have and struggling that car a little, still a little busted up. Again, from an incident that really did not need to happen. Trying to clear back markers. Getting pushed off track. Molson, what are you eating? Sorry, I had a cookie. No, I want to know. I'm curious. Oh boy. Ooh, what the good flavor? part is stream shouldn't be able to hear me. There's just no filters on, on Discord. No, I so. can't hear the food, but I can hear your mouth has food in it. <laughs> Oh, apologies. Then. What, sure what that flavor is the here. cookie? I don't like, I don't care. Chips Ahoy. I my wife, my wife brought them down Which to ones? me because the the mini chips Ahoy's, They she couldn't finish them, so she brought them down to me. So I. Okay, you're not answering my question. Are they what? plain chocolate chip? Yeah, they're just chips Ahoy. They... That's what chips Ahoy's no, that's... are. Okay, you don't. There, there's a whole universe. I need to die. Uh, don't yeah, but I didn't say right? chips Ahoy with the little M and M's in them. I said just chips Ahoy. Well, because there's also chewy chips Ahoy. This no, crunchy chips. I didn't chips say chew, chew, chewy chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy. Wow. I'm just saying. This it's... hour of the Apex Sim Racing, Emma, <laughs> uh, brought you by Diabetes. Chips Ahoy. <laughs> Got him. What do I have? To... I've been munched on Swedish fish. Ooh, That'll do you. Bacon. But many Swedish fish. But Rob Keysar now Swedish taking over in the, in the 614. <laughs> Sorry. Nissan. <laughs> I haven't seen a lot of Sweet. Rob today. Rob starting an yeah. early stint this morning. Now back out. Yeah, I think if if I remember correctly, I think him and Ando were covering most of the graveyard shift. Gotcha, okay. Is Blue supporting this team at all or just running one stint and done? And I only ask because I know he's in the chat listening right now. Y'all know Blue. He he's there for moral support. Is that what it is? <laughs> No, the I word think he's actually blue? coming up next, I believe. <laughs> the word blue and moral in the same sentence just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know why. It makes sense, does it? Something just feels wrong. Huh. The thing's getting yeah. dark now as we run towards 9.30 at night at Imola track time. Timothy Flanger in that 808 Audi. Currently running by himself about 10 seconds up on Jimmy Lynn, currently holding P6. Um, Moon's asked about like the that. format. Um, so there's a timer. They, we race until the time runs out. But once they cross the finish line, 
there will likely be time left and then that creates the last lap. Um, so basically yes to your question to both parts, but mostly the first part of your question. Moons is here it's for whoever, the get. Yeah, it's whoever finishes the race at first after time runs out. Oh, so this just in from the pit wall. Blue said he's having some technical difficulties. He had to restart his PC and his uh, internet. Uh oh, Blue said that. Yeah. How do you restart the internet? I know how to restart right. the internet, but I don't That's think a good plug, plug it, to plug it back in. That's well, a good segue. Um, ask Bill Gates. Uh, <laughs> I just so... go turn the breakers off on your CMTS, and I guarantee your internet restarts. <laughs> I lose my so job, I have a list of... but you know. I have a list of questions up. The first question that drew my eye is what is a common myth about your job of field or expertise? Job or field of expertise? Okay. What is it asking, about yours? Are you asking I'm me? I'm asking you. Yeah, Mr. Internet. Um, that people believe that your internet should work flawlessly 24-7, 365 and never break down, not realizing that most of the time it's delivered to your house on something thinner than a human hair. Also, but, that when your internet does go out, it might not be your cable provider's fault. Could be power. So, so when my dad says things. that a squirrel farted and that put our internet out, is that possible? <laughs> no, but a squirrel could chew the line oh. and chew through the fiber. Armored or not, they'll yeah. get through it. They're little bastards. Um, a, a squirrel could chew through the line. You know what else happens a lot of times, especially in, in rural areas like where I live and probably where Huff is? My folks live. that live out in the country see a squirrel walking along a wire between telephone poles and decide you know what be good thing to do shoot it oh, with no. a shotgun <laughs> so let me put pellets through the fiber that's now feeding internet to the entire area and probably shut it down so, no um you know most people know i work for an isp i will not say which one um they are not all evil people i promise I think everybody hates their ISP. Most of the people coming to your home to fix things, the misconception is they don't know what they're doing. It's, I would say a lot of them do. However, when it comes <laughs> to cable, them. a lot, no, they do. I mean, look, I don't care what industry you talk about. There's bad employees, right? Um, there's people There's people that are bad at, at your job, what you do or what Huff does or what Red. Um, so yeah, of course there are bad techs out there. Uh, but what I would say is most of them are doing the best job they can. The problem is with cable, and a lot of people don't realize when you're dealing with RF, very finicky. Um, the problem you're seeing might not exist when I show up because it's intermittent. And so, it, you know, I show up and I look at things and I check everything I'm supposed to and uh, I see no problem. So I sign it off and I go away. Turns out you're still having a problem, but it can be very, very difficult to track. So... Cut them some mm -hmm. slack. They're going into people's homes, and uh, it's not always fun because not everybody is nice to them and understand that the folks that you actually see, those frontline people, are doing the best they can for you 99% of the time. So, Huff, what do you do for a living, and what do people misunderstand about your field of work? Oh, uh, let's see. I currently work for the world's largest fleet as a, uh, a mechanic, technician, whatever you want to call it. I fix trucks. Um... One of the biggest misconceptions, I would say, is that, uh, I don't know, maybe a little inside info here, like, you know, we hook the scan tools up, you know, to the computer, to the truck and everything, and it just seems like everybody, you know, I deal with the, the dealership side too, it just seems like everybody thinks, well, what's the machine tell you is wrong with it? The machine doesn't tell you what's wrong with it, it gives you a ballpark, then you actually have to diagnose it. Well, that Does that make sense to you? <laughs> well, it'll just tell you, you know, component B, I'm not going to go into technical mumbo jumbo, mm -hmm. but, you know, component B has failed. Well, why did it fail? What what part of the circuit, what part of the system failed? You know, is something ahead of it that took it down? Is mm -hmm. is there something, you know, what, it, you know, it's, it, it's a bit complicated. Sure, yeah. I've been doing it for, you know, I'm, I'm 35 now. I've been doing it for uh, nearly 20 years professionally. So it, it's a bit easier for me because I've done it for so long. Wow. wow. And right now my job is cake because I work fleet. Like I came from dealers where I was slaving away in a dealership for flat rate. You know, that's like where you mm. make, uh, 
each job has a set time that it pays. And if it takes you an hour or two days, you still get paid for that set time. So you can either big win or big lose. But, uh, you know, it's a hustle. It's a young man's game. I'm 35. I'm not young anymore. So I've got a fleet job now, and I just, dude, I cruise control. Easy. Make my own schedule. Come and go as I please. It's a lot more relaxed for my old ass, so... Did you enjoy that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you're saying when... is, Huff, is that the truck goes vroom, right? Yeah, That's yeah. what I understood out of that conversation. You plug Basically, in the machine yeah, to the big machine. The little machine goes bing, bing, bong. It tells mm -hmm. Huff what to do. Huff does the thing. Press the pedal, truck over him. But truck over yep. him. Okay. That's and it. you know or what? One of the biggest very, things. In all seriousness, what you just described yeah. sounds very similar to, mm -hmm. to the misconception of what, what I have in my job which i don't see day to day anymore right we're mm -hmm. you know where i work and, and the team i manage is isolated from customers so we don't see it as much um but it's it's very similar in that there's a misunderstanding of how complex the system is oh yeah, right? yeah. because i i yeah. read on reddit and i read across all these different places on the internet where i don't understand where my provide why my provider can't give me solid service well, did you call in and tell him? Well, no, I haven't called. Well, <laughs> what? Like, they don't automatically know you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And even once they do, it's not just a simple band-aid that fixes it. It's it's a lot more complicated. RF is is very complicated. I don't even understand it all. I've been doing this for eleven. What years. What does RF mean? Radio frequency. Radio frequency. Sure. Hey, look great. At me. Do you want to have the conversation because we can talk about six megahertz qualms and how digital TV gets to your house and how the internet flows? Oh, and then we can go into OFDM carriers. Those are only kilohertz wide. I mean, we Wait, can what? do that if you want to. I don't think we want to do that on this stream. Qualm? I don't know what you just said. Did you speak English? Exactly. Qualm again? Uh, quad? <laughs> oh, I can't even say the words at this point. <laughs> it's It's been a while today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> amplitude, amplitude module. It, 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 look. The point being is it's not as simple as people assume it is. And I'm, and again, from what Huff described, it's a similar situation. You know, people come mm -hmm. in, they have this problem, and they think it's this simple solution, and it's not. And I think... Y'all are going to flip the fuck out in a second. <laughs> Go ahead. But again, this job has taught me, and this is why when I call places, like, we have to deal with certain things for my son's, uh, my son's medical issues. He has, he has diabetes, and we have to deal, like anyone else, with customer service with Verizon or... Uh, anybody because we have Verizon as a cell phone, cell phone provider and it's this job that has allowed me to call those places even when I'm having a problem mm -hmm. and dealing very kindly with those customer service people because again those yep. front service line people are not the ones that are necessarily the ones that fix your problem they're there to try they're there to engage the right people but they don't deserve to be beat up because you're having a problem today and yeah. I think that's the biggest problem right mm -hmm. It's, it's the reason I said you're gonna flip out is because one of you does cable, one of you does mechanic stuff. I work in the addiction field, and we all have the same exact answer, <laughs> which is that like, so I work in the addiction field, but I would say, meh, ten percent of my job is about people about actual drugs. Forty-five percent of my job is about what happens before someone uses drugs. And 45% of my job is what happens after someone uses drugs. But people are so convinced that, like, if I just focused more on people using drugs, yeah, the act sure. of using drugs, yep. everything would be better. And so it's like, it's either upstream or downstream, and you interact with people when they're the most concerned about the active moment that they're most freaking out about, which is rarely ever the actual problem. Yeah. I guess kind the of the common solver, theme so is every yeah, problem solver, you know, every problem has a root cause and it's not just surface. And so we went, because we got bored doing that, we started a league. Yeah. As if we had <laughs> nothing better to do. Having these deep conversations <laughs> tonight. You guys are, you guys, <laughs> blue in the chat. My God. I work in the addiction field explaining a dealer in more than one word. <laughs> <laughs> I do work with a lot of people who have dealt drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Blue. Um, my favorite Blue moment of today, though, is when I went to talk to his team, and he was actually <laughs> yes. in, in the chat room and tells me how he <laughs> hired engineers and pit crew for today, and not realizing an hour before that or two hours before that, I had talked to his team who told me, Blue is taking a nap. 
<laughs> so again, as I think Huff said it sounded earlier, good. as Huff said and earlier, then, uh, Blue is there more for moral support than anything else. As we watch Igor support. now sliding off right. track into the gravel. So nighttime setting in. It is getting dark in Imola. A little oh, bit of no, light still left through. on track. Yeah, P18, car 22. Yikes. That's Shouldn't not how you make back much. with 20 laps. That's not how 20 yeah. laps come back. It's by getting more drive throughs You know, what do you do if you're those guys? You know, we got P16, uh, 15 laps up. P19, 19, 21, 25, etc. And then we got the Athol there parked with uh, 526 laps up. <laughs> do you yeah, push? Do you try to maintain? Because you're not making up two laps. And you know what I mean? So, what's y'all's play there? What do you do? Well, well uh, if you're a Ferrari, you drive in the gravel for a while. Yeah. <laughs> particularly a red Ferrari, but no, I think, but there is opportunity to make up two laps, right? We've still got eight hours and 21 minutes to left to go in this race. We have seen a lot of changes so far. We've seen yeah. a lot of people lose position, gain position, trade back and forth. Huff, you and I talked about it earlier. I've never seen in any of our league races, 90 minutes, two hours. I've never seen this many trades back and forth of P1. It's not no. happened. So that's yeah. going to continue for the next eight hours as well. Yep. Do you have any battles right now going on? <sighs> Lynn, Lynn, of course, it was within 10 seconds of somebody, because that's, of course, all that Lynn has been doing. Right? Yeah. But other than that, I think all of our battles are pretty much currently settled. Yeah. A little bit spaced out. Um, P9 and P8 are kind of close. Looking at the, the splits here. So I have a list in front of me that I used to use all the time of 365 questions. Uh, a huff? Figure we out got what. Eight hours and 20 minutes, dude. Figure out what num of 365, what number would your birthday be? Figure oh, that Lord. Out. 107. Oh, that was quick. Um, oh, nope. Missing that. that nope. Not for that one. Oh. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not worth it for a... Yeah. Um, if your life was a novel, what would be the title and how would your story end? Oh. Huh. And he simply gave up. Yeah. That's how. That's the ending. Okay. That's the ending. Yeah. Title is "Ha," huh, and he simply gave up. That it is. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> he just decided it wasn't worth it anymore. Yep. <laughs> Blue said these are security questions, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know if you both were in chat it's, it, earlier. Listen, he already asked that the other day. That was or so earlier funny. today. Only 21 seconds now between Yannick Kurtz and Justin Wichman again up front. So we're going to see the flip here, as we talked about earlier. Uh, stint times for these guys. An hour three for Kurtz. He's going to have to come in soon. Justin Wichman only 31 minutes in. This is what I was talking about. We're going to see these flips again up at the front of this race today. And I apologize for my audio quality, guys. I am leaving my wireless headset on right now uh, for a little bit. Uh, my wife started a pot of coffee for me, so I'll be going up to grab some here in just a few minutes. Nice. nice. Hey, I just actually cracked one open a bit ago. Yeah, she's heading to bed. Cracked open a hot uh, one with the boys. A monster bed, right French vanilla java. Oh, God. Oh, good Lord. These are actually Brave. pretty good. Yeah. Oh, my God. Blue is the most... I, I don't even... I can't even anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or somehow, yeah. well, hold, hold on. Here's the thing. Somehow, somehow, it is both too early and too <laughs> late for a comment like that right now, right? I mean, we're uh... we're 15 hours and 41 minutes into this race. The sun has set. It's getting dark on track. It's somehow too early and still too late. For, for Blue's comment. I cannot wait till he's back on track. Well, it's another question for you. Sure, sir. Anything. What is your biggest pet peeve? Ooh. That's a good one. Uh, back markers who drive into the gravel? No. Um, 
<laughs> you know what, Blue? You're not you're not far off. Loud eating. Um, I worked with a gentleman. I used to work with yeah. him. Uh, who then he moved to another position. He was a supervisor while I was managing another department. But we were we worked out of the same office a lot of times and would end up in the break room for lunch. And this guy had no clue how to chew with his mouth closed. Uh, to the point where people would leave the room because of uh, because of him. So uh, yeah, it, it uh, loud eating is definitely one of them. If you don't know how to chew with your mouth closed, it's right up there. Honestly, though, my my main pet peeve would probably be people being late really um you yeah and, here, and here's you would hate me dude <laughs> but here's why but here's why i have a guy that on my team who feels he can be two three four minutes late for conference calls things like that here's why it bothers me so much when you are late for a meeting or an appointment or anything like that it tells me that you think your time's more valuable than mine that might not be your intention, but that's what it says to everyone around you. Can't right? relate. Yeah. That's what you so, mean. so when you're late, it tells me that you believe that your time is more valuable than mine is, and therefore hmm. you can show up whenever you want. I could agree with that. So it's one of those things. That that would probably be my biggest is people that uh, that can't show up on time. And and again, don't misunderstand. Things happen, right? I get that. Uh, it's it's when it's consistent that the same person is late all the time, I think is my biggest problem. Yeah, I would agree with that, and like to an extent, like I said, you would you would hate me because I, <laughs> I I'm chronically late for everything. Right, I, I guess that's just kind of due to the nature of my job because mm -hmm. I do have that freedom, you know. Especially now, it's like you know, I go in 10, 11, 12 o'clock, you know, nine o'clock sometimes. You know, it, it varies so much, and even when I was in the dealership with that that set structure. You know, as long as it wasn't anything important, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna like flake out on a, like a serious meeting or something like that. But like, they knew not to like book appointments for me, you know, from the hours of about seven o'clock until nine o'clock, because I was rolling whenever the hell I felt like it. <laughs> I'd come in, you know, because I was, dude. I, I, I'm not like trying to talk myself up or anything. But I was a damn good mechanic in the dealer, and I put in work, and you know, I made them a shit ton of money, and I came in and did what I did. And, I went home you know what i mean so like yeah. i had a lot of freedom with that uh with my performance in the job you know what i mean yeah, but i think so that comes down i think that a lot of right times up. comes down to the people right everybody's different and mm -hmm. i think there are places you can be where it, it it's okay because sure the team understands that the manager you know whoever's in charge the leader understands and is making that accommodation because they know if you're not there, there's probably a good reason behind it. It's not because you just didn't feel like showing up, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, one of the guys that works for me, it's just because he doesn't feel like showing up. It's not because he's busy. It's not because he's actually doing anything. It's just he loses track of time and do do do. I'll show up whenever, right? So, yep. it. I think there's a big difference there. And once you're established in that organization, then there's an, it's an easy way to tell that difference, right? Sure. Here we go, Yannick Kurtz. As expected, Yannick Kurtz needing to pit. So Justin Wichman, not that far back now, going to have opportunity to take back into P1. Set about 24 seconds back right now, so he's definitely going to clear him. And what do we calculate? About 40 seconds for a drive-through, plus you're, you know, getting the tires yep. uh, 30 seconds. So Round about he's going to drop at least 75, 80 seconds or so. Yep, there he goes, clearing pit entrance now. So that's going to bring... Team Wichman, which we'll call it right now, made up of Theo Overhouse, Rayberg, Leon Lange, and again, Justin Wichman in the car right now, into P1. We see these openings. It's amazing to me how these, these endurance races change what we know. We're so used to watching these 45-minute, 60-minute, maybe 90-minute races. Mm -hmm. P1 is established during qualification. The race starts maybe p2 gets that quicker jump off the line and is able to secure pole position going into t1 right gets the inside line for whatever reason 45 minute race that's set because they've got open air and unless they screw their own race their whole they're going to be the race winner right yeah for sure in an endurance race like this it is fantastic to see we have had at least five p1 changes during the course of the last uh, what are we in 15 16 hours 
it's just fantastic to see and something that we don't get to see every day and that's why i was so excited about this race and we're getting that now that 31 car is now half a lap down and they did a driver change mm -hmm. so vander hooked back in the vehicle in that number 31 bmw and now benjo nasley back in that 488 merc only 11 seconds off pace benjamin very fast this stint so Taking a look here as far as stint time, he's only been in the car 26 minutes. Uh, so actually it would have been his last stint where very, very fast. We'll have to see if he is able to close that gap. Uh, again, only 11 seconds up to P2. You know what this has got me thinking about, though? Uh, you know, you, you touched on it a bit earlier. Our, our season two race resumes next weekend, you know, taking the weekend off for Easter. Mm -hmm. Um if I'm a box three driver that didn't do this race, I'm scared. Hey, <laughs> uh, these guys just, got 24 hours worth of practice, dude. Just a quick question. I'm expecting though. nothing but 38s from Yannick and his team. Yeah, but I just have a quick question for you that you said that we were supposed to have this sure. weekend off. Well, yeah, I, 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 I thought okay, about it as soon as I said it. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Red Rider in the chat says Molson FL shows up to work every day and plays video games. Well, sir, when you start your day at 4.30, you can play video games at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And when your boss calls, you go and says, what are you doing? You go, play a video game. He says, really? I was like, yep. You going to make the call at 3? Yep. I will tell anything the same thing I told my son. My sons, because I work out of the house about two or three days a week. Uh, we'll come down at 2 or 3 in the afternoon going, well, you're not working. Yeah, well, I've been working for four, for 30 years to get here, so I think I've earned it. I'm good. I love my job. I lose you guys somewhere? No, we're just letting it, letting the engines breathe a little bit. Uh, you got very yeah, it's actually uh, kind of replying to some messages you in see chat helping here. Out in chat right there. Yep. So as you said, back next weekend here at Imola for a 90-minute race. That's a great way to bring up the fact that let's talk about. We've touched a little bit on it. Uh, you know, we're going to take a brief intermission. We're not going to slam back to back, you know, kind of what do we take like a week or two off in between season one or two? I mean, it was, it was cocked and ready to roll, but, you know, I guess uh, we're going to take a brief little intermission while maintaining some fun races in between. You know, we got a lot of things going on with the six hour endurance pilot on Saturdays. Uh, it's starting here in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, we, we've got some things planned. You know, we're, we're nearly there. The foundation has been laid. Yeah, we got three races left in the season, so that's anybody's game right now. Yannick sitting with 77 points, Tom Foos at 68, uh, Christoph at 58, and Will's actually creeped up there with his mega run lately, 57, and then Lee King McGee at 55 points. So it, it's, you know, anybody's ball game really. It's a fun-ass track with those M2s. It really is. 
Yep. Uh, oh, we're back. Need to be good on my screen again. Yeah, I'm. Uh... That was absolutely. Nope, we're back ludicrous. again. We're off again. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it too. Uh, the map is looking neato, right? Oh, wait, nope. Oh, God. Oh, no. The server numbers look okay. That was very weird. Is a spectator-only thing? Maybe a spectator-only thing. Let's hold on and see what happens. So one driver to driver, and they seem mostly Gazzle. good. So John, Justin Wichman still leading our race. Benjamin is sailing in second, but I think we might have lost Kurtz. We did, yeah. That team's we lost. Won. We lost, lost two Kurtz teams. Again. So we've lost a total of two teams. Yeah, somehow Athwal is still sitting there, not moving. Five hundred thirty-five laps down. Perfect. Absolutely golden. <laughs> in the pits. Well, that yeah, but no. P18 this entire race has has been down hundreds of uh -huh. laps and we don't know why uh, according to my reporting but I don't think that's it's true not because moving. their lap count that's is fine. Oh no, David Athwell only has 3 laps recorded yeah. in the software. Yep. Oh great. So, obviously they're having an issue. <laughs> Kyle Corny back out on track now. I'm imagining those cars are not coming back. Uh, we will Unless see. Unless they what just really happened. want that button box. That was really weird, though, because the. <laughs> There's Josine coming back in now. Sorry right, to cut yep. you off there. No, nope, yeah. you're good because, um, yeah, Josine Sheffer showing back up, but showing minus two laps as well, Huff. Okay. That's and a good thing. And we just got yellow right? flags again for a bunch of drivers. It was very different than the last, you know, the couple of errors we've had in the past where people got disconnected. You'll see Sheffer now showing minus two laps sitting in the pits, number 82. Honestly, at this point, these guys, if they want to finish out, I have no problem with that. They should continue to drive. That one was that a little brutal. Yeah. Uh, very different than what we saw before. Will Green now jumping into the chat with us. We have one team that disappeared. I don't know which one it was. Uh, the solo driver had to back out. He, he said okay. uh, after what do, you, what do you say, 16 hours, he had to he had to yeah. stop. He's had uh, enough. It, shame. Yeah, one of the one of the Ferraris is gone now. Yeah. Um. Forget the lad's name. Um. Who was the guy with the special candy? Because I want to know what the kind of candy he was eating. Well, your Mentink is still with us. Uh, P4, uh, Thomas P4 Jank right and the, the Mercedes. Sure. Uh, he was the fellow with the the Swedish uh, minnows, I believe. Yep, Thomas Jank driving out there still by himself. We're down to 19 drivers. Yosin Sheffer, however, sitting in the pits. These guys in P19. They didn't join back right, Huff, again. Uh, much like we talked about, about that 50% shot that you're not going to be able to make it back into the server if you're part of a team. Yeah. So unfortunately, um, those guys may 
may not finish out. That's going to be a shame. Team Sheffer, and as I said, uh, made up of I hate that for him. Yannick Kurtz. These guys doing fantastic during this race. He's out on the track. We're good. Well, yeah, he's but out the on thing track. is, man, he's he's yes, he down. He's on track. Five forty-three laps. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, oh. they're they're not gonna. And again, they're pulling off in the pits now. We'll have to see if uh, they try and correct this. So, is it taking him back to the previous stint, basically? It's taking him back to the beginning. They're they're showing it's saying they're coming two. in as a new car, essentially. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. I thought they're it's showing up at, uh, with minus two. Minus two laps completed at this point. So. Uh. Really a shame. And, and, you know, Crow, Brian, esports legend, Brian Canapin, is just <laughs> one of my favorites because the guy thinks about this stuff and it just, the things he says when we have him here on stream are fantastic. And he said it. In real life racing, you have mechanical yes. issues. You have these things on the car that break that, that sim drivers don't need to deal with. A clutch goes out. You know, again, we watch SRO races and uh, you see a driver go into the pits. Next thing you know, again, the jack stands come out and they're rolling it into the garage. And you know that driver's race is either over or they're going to lose four or five laps depending on the race, you know, whatever's going on. Yeah. In sim racing, we have network and software and, com and, and computer hardware issues to deal with. And that's what's happening here. Jostin Schaeffer and team made up of Vanderhoek and Yannick Kurtz. Uh, unfortunately, it looks as though their race might be over. I can, I hope they continue to stick with it and continue to drive. It's just a shame that they're not going to be able to finish where they were. They were so near the top and going to end up coming at the end of this race now because of this. Yeah, I really feel like they had a, a solid shot, and honestly, uh, they were they were my favorites to win it. They were. They were really them. pushing, doing a great job. Gasolina now off track, getting that Bentley spun around. Leaves Justin Wichman up front. Team made up of Theo Overhouse, Ray, Julian Rayberg, Leon Lange, and Justin Wichman currently leading out. Benjamin Asali in P2 right now. Team Julian Guerin and Mathis Wass. So again, just a shame to see that when uh, these guys have worked so hard over the course of 16 hours now to hold on. No! Wow. Ooh. Huff, your kid is really <laughs> upset. He is uh, a bit perturbed. Some big feelings. <laughs> perturbed. Large is, emotions. Perturbed is the word. Yeah. Red Rider blaming me in the chat for network issues. That's a first. <laughs> yeah. I literally control Molson, the internet. why is our internet broken? Small section of northern <laughs> New York. I cannot help people in Europe and California. It's just not. Hey, man, it's, it's outside my purview. All right. To be fair, Red, and I, I'm siding with you on this. Our server is based in New York. Ooh. New York where? New um, York City? New York City? Yeah. yeah. I think I don't, okay, I don't run New York but... City. And if you let me know who their third-party provider is that gets the fiber out of that building, then we can have that conversation. Maybe I go look for him. Go see a man about a horse and take care of some business there one day. Go. We got some <laughs> phone calls to make. Thomas, All of my people call your people. So Thomas right. Jank now moving up into P9 as Igor heads into the pits. Thomas, again, our, one of our solo drivers, and at this point, one of the few left. Joris Mentink still holding on, however. Up in P4 at this point. We're down to 17 drivers left. It's an endurance race for a reason. Looking yeah. like our, our guys, I'm sorry, 18 drivers left, but Dimitri Athwal sitting in the pits. Let's 17 drivers and one spectator. One spectator. It's looking like Joe's team pulled his team out, so I don't know if they're going to try to re enter in a, in a different order. Yeah. Um, tough scenes for them. Really a Go shame. I, I mean, and again, whether we're talking about you know, sim racing or in real life, it, it, it sucks to watch folks put it so much work in 16 hours worth of work into a drive like this and, and and it is work right it's a lot of driving it's a lot of team management it's a lot of working together 
and to see that now taken away because of a connection issue is just uh, disappointing to say the least yeah yeah i'm gonna go back to you know our our very own esports legend brian canapan uh <laughs> You can't not lead with it, though. I mean, like, to be fair, it's became a meme. You know, Brian's an excellent, fantastic driver, and he's a great guy. And I'm sure it bugs um, the living shit out of him that we say that. To- it probably does. <laughs> and, and thanks, Blue, for making that a thing. Honestly, like, dude, we owe you. Yeah, and that it, was Blue great. Uh, on stream. Esports yeah, it, it was. Brian yep. Given one of the little fake interviews that he did. Absolutely. <laughs> Same style as we chimed in with him earlier. No, but it, like seriously, I mean, there is a lot of work that goes into these faster drivers, and you know, uh, you know, when they were qualifying for the SRO, and he was just talking about the amount of practice. I'm like, dude, I, I don't like to hotline. I don't like to just get in there and drive, you know, mm-hmm. cut deltas. I mean, sure, if you're at that level, that's what you do, and to them, that's fun. It's it's a lot of work, setup work, you know. Uh, yeah. I think for my for someone like myself, I do enjoy it uh, to a point, mm-hmm. though, right? Like these guys are pushing for competitive, and and we talked about it earlier this evening about if that's what your hook is, more power to you. Awesome that you can drive yourself to that level and continually get better. I enjoy hot lapping to a point, meaning once I see that I've reached my level, I'm good. Time to move on, right? New yeah. track, new car, maybe whatever. Um, maybe tweak the setup a little bit, but I'm not one of those setup guys. So, but I, I, I am astounded by the concentration required by some of these esports drivers. Mm-hmm. And, and again, you know, we make light of it saying esports legend Brian Canepa, but the guy has run for SRO. He's put yes. the time in. And again, as much as we might make light of it, 100% credit to him for being able to to reach that level. Yes. I think we have other guys in our leagues who who maybe have not yet had that opportunity but absolutely mm-hmm. could compete at that level and that's where it gets disappointing to see a drop like that for folks like uh Sheffer, kurtz you know when those hardware and those networking issues crop up to to shut them down in a race like this yeah where where's my fordzilla merch i've been waiting for fordzilla merch in the mail for like i don't know six months i thought you were supposed to send some to all of us i didn't know you were getting any or anybody well, I, thought, I thought the fact that Crow was even part of Box meant that he was giving us all Fordzilla merch. No, I'm pretty sure that's not what that meant. Oh, well, then can we kick him out then? Why is he here? <laughs> I think they they disbanded the team as well. I could, don't don't quote me oh, on that. Then that means I, they have some they free did. merch sitting around they need to get rid of. <laughs> there you go. I, the name Fordzilla, for some reason, is the coolest thing to me. It confuses the hell out of me. To me, I I hear Godzilla in cars. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Guys, See, where does our mind I, go? We're all gearheads. Where do we go? Godzilla. When I hear is... Fordzilla, my thought yeah. is, oh, so they're going against Gravedigger in the next monster truck rally? Like, <laughs> like that's exactly. my thought though, because I'm like, I'm looking for a monster truck at that point. Ford, Ford is so protect. My dad worked at a Ford dealership for a while, and they're so protective of their brand, and they're so particular about everything. The fact that Fordzilla ever existed as a name, I immediately was like, I need all their merch. I need every shirt I can get a hold of. They don't sell anything, which is the problem. But I want like anything I can get my hands on that's Fordzilla, I need it. <laughs> I, like I need it now, because it's so like it's so cool that it's kind of silly. <laughs> Will set an esports team in Forza. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Imagine driving esports in Forza. I'm down. We had we we know a guy, don't we? <laughs> 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 um, with the kind of esports conversation, what is a lesson that made you like a much better driver? Like, what was one of those things you learned that sticks to your brain as incredibly Im- improved your abilities to drive? Um, Honestly, and I'm I, hold on. Let me go first here, and I'm going to yeah, say this yep. because he's in the chat right now. He hasn't been able to be here all day or most of the day, and I want to call him out. Um, one of the things that made me better as a driver, first of all, was joining a league in the first place. And again, it's the league that shall not be named, but still helped me get better. The second thing that Fordzilla is it is it league Fordzilla? It's not Fordzilla, no. Okay. Um, but the other thing that made me get better was a man who's in the chat right now, and that's Red Rider. Uh, we were talking about Spa. We were talking about Longchamp, 
in that particular corner where you can take that corner flat if you turn in soon enough, right? Is this a bit right? Are you gonna make a no, joke no, no. right I'm, now? No, 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 no. I'm being 100 percent serious. Okay. What I found <laughs> out from listening to Red on that particular corner was that I was turning in late on every corner. Okay. Right. I was missing my apexes because I was turning in late, not just there, but on a ton of corners. And once I started concentrating on that, once I started making that the focus, I got faster. Not just at Spa, but on every track. So I'm not doing a bit. It's it's 100%. I was waiting for you to say never lift, and I was going to throw no, my camera. I, <laughs> no, that's on El Rouge and Radeon. That's you, as we have proven on this stream directly, that you do, li in fact, lift through those corners listening to okay. your engine the, the bit you is not through. important right now let's um, move on from that no but no seriously that that was what helped me it was red and and red again not running with us today not even running this season right now but someone it, it, as as he said that and i was able to make that connection through blanchement coming out of that corner i started to realize wait a minute this isn't just this corner this is happening to me on every corner yeah. Right. So that being the case, it made me a better driver because I was able to tighten down my driving overall, recognizing that fact. Mm. So what about you? Go ahead. I'm going to say uh, I will agree with you. Join a league. You know, don't just bash around public lobbies and avoid, uh, you know, red badge Ferraris. <laughs> um, trying to to be like a, it's not about lines or you know brake markers for me to me it's about just racecraft i mean I, I think that's just kind of been my biggest improvement just maintaining and keeping it together and, and consistency is kind of my my goals i can agree with that too huff i think um my concentration has not been in hot lapping as i practice mm -hmm. it has been in even if it's offline it's it's not doing hot laps it's doing ai races and concentrating on not making contact. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I I tried to practice a bit for um you know, Bathurst race a couple couple weeks ago, and I, I don't race against AI very much. I really don't. I would much rather go into a public lobby and watch the shenanigans and react to those random drivers around me, because to me that's part of the learning experience too, is having that track awareness and just being like situational awareness too. Um. So I try to race against the AI, crank the uh, difficulty, and uh, what's the other one? The aggressiveness to 95 and 95. And dude, those guys could not do a complete lap around Bathurst without pinging it off the wall, hitting each other, slowing me down. I lost like 5 SA just trying to run a freaking race. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm done with this. Back to pubs, I go. <laughs> <laughs> I think every time I, because I, I have friends and roommates that enjoy racing games but don't understand racing games. I'm sure you'll know what I mean by that. Like, they just mm -hmm. Mario Kart style everything. Um, and, like, every time I walk someone else through racing lines, I learn something. And so even, like, backing up a corner or, like, taking a different approach based on what the following section is. Um, but, like, the stupidest silly thing that made me... I think a much safer driver is lifting before, like way before braking when you're following somebody. Before, before radio? Is that what you're saying? Yes. <laughs> before you lift before um, radio, that's where you're going with that. Okay. Um, but yeah, like when you're following somebody, like I was always so concerned about like just being as close as I could. And the moment they break, I would finally like give a shit about the corner and I would finally break. But now, like, especially now that I'm trying to, I've been trying to be clean for, because we're in leagues. It's like lift before the corner so you can anticipate their breaking and then break when they break and then make your way through rather than constantly trying to shove your nose somewhere in between their cheeks. Um, yeah. <laughs> Keeps things on track. Yeah. Or you just full send and dive bomb them into T1. Every time. Every time. Yep. Pro strat. Oh, yeah. Win every race that way. 100%. Blue woke up again because he's blowing up the chat right now. 
And no, Attaboy. Spa is not the only track I've driven. I just have to really <laughs> like it, so it's probably the one I've driven the most. And Red Rider is not wrong in the chat. You have to, so you can't give Blue a fillet of fish. You have to give him a fillet of fish with a burger on top, and then probably wrapped in a taco and I was some sort say of taco. KFC chicken sandwich. <laughs> yep. So this is not original to my small hometown in Ohio, but I've always found it hilarious that people would take a McChicken, a McDouble, and a filet of fish and stack them together. No, no, no. Stop right, stop right now. Stop right now. Yeah. People, oh. hold on. Uh, that was odd. People Sorry. do not do that. Oh. Your, boy, your boy Blue does that. People do not do that. They eat a okay. filet of fish, or they eat a McDouble, <laughs> or they eat a chicken sandwich. Okay? Blue... We'll go ahead and put those things all in between two pieces of bread and say that's a sandwich. He'll call it a grilled cheese and pay thirty-five dollars for it. That too, they might do that as well. Wyatt Hackley now was gaining on P13 Gasolina, but unable to close it up. Now stretching back to two point six seconds. Our leaders now fifty-two seconds apart. An unbelievable shame that we lost Kurtz and team. Um, I'm still flabbergasted by that. Just out of nowhere, a yeah. dump. And those guys running for P1. It would have been fantastic to watch the end of this race as the sun comes up in the morning. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, what we're going to do on that. You know, Will and I spoke a little bit outside of this chat about it. Um, the guys that got disconnected due to server issues, we're going to go ahead and throw your name in the proverbial hat to be in the you know in the winning for this uh for this uh button box coming up you know it's not their fault they didn't finish yeah so how about we add all of those names into a single slice if it falls on that slice they then have to fight to the death they for have it. to fight for okay it? why hot lap competition there you go <laughs> with knives yeah yes with knives um dimitri slow I'm, now pulling into p7 around cole grass sitting in the pits Gress heading back out now. So again, Dimitri slow. This team earlier, right up there in contention, now sitting in P7. We'll have to see if they're able to bring that back up by morning. You know what would be cool right now? Coffee. If I was driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the thing, though. You know, we talk about these other teams that have been dropped out, but we're forgetting that one of the guys sitting here talking to us right now also got dropped out. His entire team, right? Huff, yeah. Uh, yep. Kevin Huffman's entire team getting shut down during the course of this. To race. be fair, I'm glad it happened early. I would have been uh, gutted if it happened. You know, this deep end, I would have raged. Yeah, I can understand that. Again, it wasn't again. that big a deal. I mean, sure, I was upset, but yeah, I, you know, it is what it is. We were a few hours in at that point. I think we were six hours in. Yeah, again, about about five, we were in. taking. For sure. I'll be honest, I didn't really practice much for this race. Other than going out in the server and verifying the server or the setup and temperatures for the, for the start. That's about it. So as we continue to talk here, drivers relatively well spread out. As I said, I've left my wireless headset on for now as I'm going to step away, grab a cup of coffee. We'll continue to keep an eye on things as the darkness has set in. Dimitri Slow, again on our screen, lights blinking because this is the car that, according to my stream, has never been repaired but done seeing it perfectly clear. <laughs> yes. I fine. cannot figure it out for the life of me how a car just remains damaged forever. Hopefully other drivers <laughs> not seeing that blinking single headlight as we head around track. From the hood view, it, it just looks like he had like a stream light taped to his fender. Oh, it's it's <laughs> brutal. And the worst is like it not only did it not get repaired on stream, it continually got worse as the stream went on. Uh, more damage being added to the car as other incidents occurred. 
<laughs> they're just vibing, dude. It's it's it, dark. It's in, you're at Imola. They're just vibing. They are. Yeah. Everybody just had a little rave outside. in the middle of the track. <laughs> Again, thank you. you. Thank you. You know what? I want to say thank you to Kevin Hoffman for organizing this. I want to thank you to both of you guys for joining me in here today because I, I'm not sure how far I would have made it all by myself. I know I'm pretty sure at this point I'd be awake, but there'd be very little talking on this stream, very little commentating. As mm. uh, I mean, there's still a lot of commentating going on. But... Well, drivers are spread <laughs> out. That's my point. But I can't sit and talk to myself. At least with you guys here, we can have interesting conversations about the league and about life and movies and every other thing our job deep philosophical questions Super that i answer deep. huh, <laughs> <laughs> huh. <laughs> i quit there's, there's the book. okay i give up as you see the further we get into the 24 hours the more it turns into the 90s hip-hop song things that make you go hmm. um, <laughs> uh blue you're still in chat write me a haiku write me a nice haiku do i have to read it uh maybe do you have confidence that blue can write a haiku though it's it's gonna take a little bit of time five seven I five have, i mean it's got to follow the pattern right? give it away like, give it, i was gonna make it a whole a whole thing first he's gonna google what the hell a haiku even is yes that's, that's exactly it <laughs> <laughs> that's not a haiku blue sorry next you yeah, know I do want to thank everybody for sticking with us as we head into the evening. Still 50 people watching this stream. Thank you guys so much for being here. 53 sticking with us throughout the night. We are going to be here again. Seven hours and 41 minutes left to go in tonight's race. Huff, when you were like 15, what did you want to do with your life? What was your goal? Um, job. the 15 round about that time, I was pretty heavy into basketball. Um, I was a tall you? white Harlem Globetrotter. Five? Harlem Globetrotter. I'm like, to be I'm like six five. I guarantee it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of where I was at, dude. Actually, at 15, I was, you know, you were talking about my book and my life, but I don't, I don't want to get that deep. Uh, at 15, that's actually when my pops passed away. Hmm. So I probably was just lucky to be, you know, alive at that point in time and to, you know, to to be surviving and, you know. Um, let me think, though. 15. Originally, like, whenever I was a bit younger, before I was super tall, I wanted to get into uh, flying. But then I found that I was too tall to go into the program that I wanted to in the military. So I was like, well, shit, there is an idea. Hmm. Um... And then I actually went to uh, college for business management. Ended up dropping out because I was at a stupid, dumb, private uh, school that was very expensive. I actually Where, got in. What state was this in? Uh, West Virginia. I went to University of Charleston. Okay. But I went on a collaborative program. Whatever I was, yeah, I was a pretty bright kid, but I just stopped giving a fuck in high school. <laughs> Um, I actually went uh, and took college classes in high school together uh, I was 16, 17. Mm. Ended up dropping out of college and uh, went to school shortly after that for automotive. Hmm. I've always been a car guy. You know, I, I was raised around cars, you know, gearhead growing up. You know, my pops was a, uh, a car salesman. We rented cars and stuff, you know, race cars, show cars, all all kinds of stuff. So, and Dom, it's after hours. We're allowed one f bomb per hour. Per hour. <laughs> Steven, oh God. Steven took that away from us a long. Time ago. <laughs> Son yeah. of a bitch. <laughs> uh, huh. Just, I'm pretty sure in saying that he was very appreciative of his sister coming into chat having a twitch yeah <laughs> i remember it. that <laughs> i'm pretty yeah. sure he blew out every hour for the entire 24 hours so 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. So, so were you not a like i have this specific thing in my brain that i want to be huh? 
No, dude. My parents were <sighs> shitty, and they didn't, like, really set me up in life. So, like, dude, mm -hmm. I, honestly, I've been just trying to figure this shit out my whole life. You know, like, gotcha. my dad died when I was 15. My mom was uh, a legend. <laughs> so, I mean, basically, you know, I, I've raised myself from 15 on, dude. So. Yeah. To be at the point where I'm at now, you know, like I said, we're not we're not digging deep into my past or my history, but I'm I'm blessed to be where I'm at right now. Yeah. Because I, every time, so my great grandma somehow is still alive. She's yeah. alive and kicking. Um. And she every time anything like cool happens in my career, she always says, "I'm so glad to see that you're living your dreams." I don't know how to tell her that <laughs> these aren't my dreams. Dream. <laughs> Like, look, look, these aren't my dreams. Not because what I'm doing is bad or awful or I sure. hate it. I love my job. Yeah. But it's like, my job did not exist when I was a yep. kid or when I was of the dreaming age. And that kind of way we talk about dreaming. Um, and so I'm like, I know it's just me being, oh, the server fucked up again. Oh, yep, yeah. Sure we did. just lost somebody again. Yep. We're back. We got Rob Keysar back on track. We were following him and yeah. Uh... He pulled okay. a blue and flew off into the distance, but now Druss dropped below the track. Oh, I flamed her sideways in the wall. Oh, he's back uh, on track. Okay. I think it's just because we are um, spectating. I'm, I'm hoping so. it's just the We're spectating. We're not tied to a car. P2's uh, gone. Dimitri Slow did drop into the into the gravel. Uh, we lost P1. We lost well, Cecilia. We lost P1, but they didn't get replaced. And there we go, everybody jumping up. So we did lose P1. We are dropping that, drivers. The strat right now is to not be in P1. He's still showing for me, Spectator. Okay. Uh, car he, 36 in the S and Overhaus. Yeah, no, they were not P1. We lost P1. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well. Down to 16 cars and one Spectator. Yeah. I'll call that the blue shell effect. Do not be in P1 if you want to stay in the race. My God. No, but like done to kind of go back to where you were at before, you know, we had yeah. spaceships for cars. Uh, you know, <laughs> no, you don't, you don't have a dream job or anything, but I mean like, yeah, you do an important role in society today. And it's a shame that that even has to be a thing. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, and it's weird. Cause I would say there's a difference. So now I have a purpose. Yes. And like, that's cool. Right. That's, that's a cool place to be. But, like, yeah, it's, like, the weird way that we think about things. And, like, we think about those as different as, like, what was your dream? Which is often this, like, platform that you place for yourself that you don't even understand. Yeah, or you don't, yeah. like, what does that even mean? Other than, like, I, I, when I was 12, 13, 14, 15, I wanted to be, I think I wanted to be an engineer, a lawyer, an artist, and a doctor. Yeah, I definitely so floated I, engineer around a lot, too. So I just feel like the, the following, like, Oh, a sophomore in college but when they told me you can either drop out or pick a major. That was still he's in... back in. Sorry to cut you off, but was it he was P one, right? Yeah, and he's still he's okay, back in he the came, he's P two yep, on my screen. P two, yes sir. Okay. Resume. So that's good. At least he's back. Hopefully that's a yeah, good yeah. sign. Um, I know. So um yeah, so like I, I, I spent from like basically almost a decade trying to figure out like how do I become all of those things at the same time <laughs> which yeah. shows you just even more of how little I understood them and it's like I don't know I'm glad that I do I, again I, I love what I do and I'm glad I found something that's really useful I think hopefully mm -hmm. the people I work with um, but yeah like how different would my life be right now if I had become a doctor or an artist um, I have to be, now, I what kind of artist are we born. talking about? You know, artists artists can be pretty broad. We talking music artists, you painting no. artists, yeah. So, um, much Done of my full, like full Banksy destroying his things as people buy them. Yeah, right. <laughs> <It's>, I, <laughs> I mean, just honestly. see that kind of trolling going on, hundred yep, percent yep, yep. from him. <laughs> um, so, when I was like, growing up, like before I really actually got into like having resources to do art, I was a drawing kid, a lot uh -huh. of drawing, a lot of like, I, ha I hated cartoons in terms of like artist style, like where a lot of kids like leaning into drawing cartoons because they're like what they're used to. I would get, I was very young getting into like realistic drawing. Um, sure. 
and then I was part of a program that they were basically like, if you want to do a, a piece of art, no matter what it is, we'll fund it. And so I got to do um, some like really big murals that was, that was obviously painting. I got to do some really big sculptures and just like, it was less about the type of art and more about the size of the art, which is actually a pretty cool thing to be able to do is like, just do it and we'll find someone to pay for it. Um, so yeah, my parents still have these like oddly large sculptures that I've created in their basement. And I'm like, could you please just throw those away? Like we don't, no one needs to move those ever again. Just like move them into the trash. <laughs> um, and like there are murals in my hometown that I painted. And, but I mean, even today, like I spend probably 20% of my job creating slideshows and visual elements for people to use for trainings. And like they can then use like how important visual aids are to then talk about really difficult topics. And so I still like what I found is that all these things I wanted to be, I guess there were parts of those things that I wanted to be. It wasn't the career I wanted. It was I want to be creative. I want to be analytical or I want to help people or things like that. Um, so moral of the story really is if if slash when I have children, I think I would like to talk about future more as like, what is the impact you want to have? Not what title do you want? Yeah, that's, that a, sounds that's cool. a good way of looking at it, for sure. Meanwhile, according to Blue, um, I film adult uh, adult films. So I think he's talking about, you know, oh, what is he on about? I'm not even looking at the chat right now. I can't, I can't <laughs> with Blue anymore tonight, I think. I thought he was talking about like a shrink, you know, have a seat on the couch and tell me about your life no. story. But I uh, missed the camera part. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, it is definitely box three after dark, ladies and gentlemen. We have we got point seven hours to carry in a bucket with like thirty second gap. So that's right. Don't don't mind us. <laughs> we're here, we're here to watch racing and entertain at the same time. And we're gonna pull it off somehow. You watch us. Molson, who's your favorite Disney character? Go. Well, I mean, look, if you're going to say anybody except Robin Williams as the genie, you're, oh, man. you're wrong. You're just wrong. The bold, huh. the boldness here. Huh. I give an open-ended question, and Molson says, that's a close-ended question. Thank yeah, you. We're, <laughs> we're shutting that down real quick, because if, if your answer is anybody except... Robin wow. Williams as the genie in Aladdin, you're you're a hundred percent wrong. Wow. I guarantee it. Incredible. Robin Williams. Uh you remember him uh Miss Doubtfire? That's one of my favorite movies of his. Hundred percent. Mm. Love love that movie. <laughs> if you want to see Robin Williams really good though, Death to Smoochie. Revis, get out of the chat. Oh, You're those done. are those are We're fighting words. <laughs> yeah, he We're said done. literally fight me. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, if you want to see Robin Williams, and I think, I believe, one of his best, it's going to be uh, in Death to Smoochie. If you've never seen that film, I encourage you to do so. <laughs> very, very dark comedy. <laughs> and I don't, know what, <laughs> I don't know what is, oh my god, 13 messages <laughs> deleted. Timed Revis out for five minutes. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, no, uh, we talk about Robin Williams, though. Again, I'm going to say it. Death to Smoochie. Go watch it. Dark comedy with, uh, uh, what's his name? Edward Norton. Fantastic film. To see Robin Williams huh. go over the edge. As Rainbow Randolph. Oh, can I undo it? Nope, you can't undo it. It's already been done. Sorry. No, it's already done. There it is. Um, <laughs> oh, I, I asked that question. I don't even know the answer. I don't know my own answer. I'm going to have to go with the classic on that, OG Mickey Mouse. Wow. Now, what I do you mean by OG? Are you talking Mickey. about, like, black white, black and white Mickey Mouse back in the well, day? Well, when I was a kid, like, I, I was hard on, say, some Mickey Mouse. I remember this little doll I used to carry around as a kid, and, you know, it's, like, it's something that I kept for a very long time. But it's mm. awesome. <laughs> See, when I go back to, when I go back to, if you talk about characters as, as we're young, cartoon characters, I grew up mm -hmm. my, with my dad uh, Saturdays watching Looney Tunes. Yeah. Like the, old school, here, dude. the old school yep. Looney Tunes yes. came on at about a 10 o'clock every Saturday. was just fantastic. Roadrunner, Bugs Bunny, all of them. So One thing that I, I regret 
so blue you're, you're here you're in columbus um there is a movie theater by so I went to ohio state by campus there was a movie theater that every saturday morning they would do like old school cartoons and cereal oh for like God. five dollars you could watch like like three hours for five dollars it was like three hours of yeah all you can eat cereal and um like looney tunes that would be fantastic all right speaking of cereal favorite cereal and go oh uh right. count chocula and if you answer anything else you're wrong <laughs> oh it's a legit problem sorry here. i'm shutting these is... questions down very quickly because you guys are throwing softballs what do you want me to tell you legit question here though like there's a difference between like the cereal that i will eat today and what is my favorite cereal today and what is a cereal that i adore to eat that is basically candy with milk on it cow chocula full stop either one molson's an adult child confirmed 100 percent <laughs> <laughs> comes out like for one month a year, dude. How can you lock not lock down? Is it really? Is it kind? Oh yeah, dude. I'm a blueberry fan myself. Most oh, blueberry, my God. you're some kind of savage. <laughs> I don't even want to talk. I to you. I told you bro, earlier, like twenty some hours ago. I don't, I don't him. really mess I'm with a, chocolate. I'm gonna boot him out of this chat right now. <laughs> Do it. On. I'm, I'm, I'm getting. I'm timing people out. You can boot out Huff. That's <laughs> asking. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Just absolutely no holds barred. We're after hours, folks. Hundred uh, percent. Raisin Bran Crunch. Raisin oh, go wow, okay. Yeah, that's it. That. You're not. It's a banger. So, so I'm going to say this. League. Hold on. I got to interrupt you guys real quick. I'm going to tell Revis right now because he's he's blowing up on Discord. Is he? I and Huff did not ban you from the chat for saying that the Will Smith <laughs> genie was better. That was done. So you needed to tag done on yeah, discord well, you know, not us Huff and i did not do Fine. that to you i am somehow okay. so good at making people mad and then never getting blamed for it <laughs> how am i that i am gifted at that in this league the amount of people i have banned and then red gets like flack for it or chief gets flack for it and i'm just sitting it's here a like, skill, like in the back. it's it so is. good he hides in plain sight it's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> teach, teach oh, me and will God. how you do that please uh, you know, it's something I, I can't... I, I don't know if I can teach it. I don't understand it enough to teach it. <laughs> oh, my God. And whoever Will Campbell is, your uh, avatar on Discord is so good. It is. It's the uh, Ric Flair, J Lethal, Woo back and forth. It's just so good. Speaking of, my favorite uh, Disney character is Scar from Lion King. Solid. And why because i'm a psychopath i don't know um but so neither of you watch professional wrestling i don't believe i used to i was okay. big in wrestling i don't watch it now because it's it's a men's soap opera i mean it always has been it's just about yeah. how old we are um I guess, yeah. <laughs> there is a current character named roman reigns and he was like basically being pushed as this like really really obvious good guy for like six years Everyone hated it. They all thought it was stupid that they were. This guy was being shoved down their throats as a good guy. Immediately, like six, like six or seven years ago, I was telling my friends like he just needs to turn to a bad guy, and just be Scar from The Lion King. It's all he needs to be, and he will be incredible. He is now a Scar from Lion King, and is possibly one of the best wrestlers of all time. One of the best characters of all time. I don't even know and what you're talking about right now. I'm honest. just going to say that out loud so that the world can hear me say it. I called it. All right. I am the greatest. I just want to let you all know that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I remember the Lion King takes me back to, you know, when I was a young lad, uh, when drive-in movie theaters were a thing. Are there still a thing in my hometown? Uh, really? Yeah, oh, we yeah. Have one up, uh, we have one up this way, too. That is unfortunate. I'm moving. No, but that, that was like one of the go-tos that was like, it seemed like it was on continuous play at the drive-in. The the Lion King and uh, a Little Mermaid were the jams back in the day. See, I grew up on um, this stuff. I can get down with some Little Mermaid in that, too. Those were the classic, for me, the classic Disney movies, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, so my hometown in Ohio has a drive-in that they're actually renovating right now. And then somehow, I think it's like one or one of a couple that are in the state of Ohio. And then I somehow moved to like the only college town that also has a drive-in movie theater for grad school. Um, and so I just can't, they can't leave me alone. 
They're just too good. <laughs> Reva still has thirty min three minutes and thirty seconds remaining in his timeout. So if y'all want to put it, some F's in chat for Revis, maybe three minutes and thirty seconds worth of F's in chat. Um, Let's see. Uh, Colgress was team. Where are they at currently? All right, Red Rider's giving me junk in chat. Yeah, he just made Little Mermaid into LMM. What kind of life are you living that you're using acronyms to describe Little Mermaid? He said he would get down with that list. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world? Blue's tell me I'm creepy because I'm down with Little Mermaid. It's fine. It's a decent flick, right? As far as an animated film the goes music. from Disney. I mean, we Incredible. were talking about Disney movies. I'm, I'm down with it. It's okay. Tarzan. That soundtrack, ooh, baby. I did want to take a quick look it. here, though. G. Steven, Team Crow, John Tracy, Tim Flamager, now up into P5 as we've lost a few drivers up front. Theo Overhouse still leading with Robert Stemple now. That Porsche, this number 70 Porsche has been more steady throughout this race than I think any other team we've seen on this track today. These guys have cons and I grant I look granted we we've lost some drivers through disconnect yep. issues and, and other problems, but overall even taking that into account, this Porsche has been really pushing all day today and put themselves in a P2 position down a lap right now, but plenty of time to make that up throughout the course of this race. Absolute random question that Molson can't say no to. Or you can't say this is the answer and nothing else. Okay. Um, you're like you walk your childhood self and sh into your room and show them your rig right now. What is their response? Probably fuck is all that. My childhood self grew up in the '80s, dude. They wouldn't even know what a wheel is. There were no computers. <laughs> they didn't have wheels in the '80s. <laughs> they didn't have computers. They had computers in their houses. They're gonna look at what I have now and go, "What are you, you talking just, about?" I need what someone is to clip that out. I need someone to clip what out the fact that wheel. most of them just said the words, "We didn't have wheels in the '80s." I don't care what the context was. I just love it that we just said out loud. What? What? Dude, you forget? Do you forget how old I am? I mean, how my childhood self is gonna walk into this room right now, see an 85-inch TV. A 7.1 sound system, three monitors up to a computer, and go, what? I have a Mac 2E. What is going on in this world? Where am I? Like, Most how far in the future this, is this? Out of context, the wheel was invented in fourth millennium BC. But you understand what I was says, saying. Don't even I'm play like, that game out with Out of me. context, that is so <laughs> funny. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh, Lateral in the chat says about to reminisce about portable cassette players and Betamax. First of all, VHS oh. was the way to go. Everybody knows that because the porn oh, yeah. industry choose, chose VHS. So that's where the market went. Same thing happened with Blu ray. It's okay. You don't get that. Same thing happened with DVD. Second of all, I did have a portable cassette player used to record songs off the radio on it. You had to be very quick on that record button to make sure you didn't get all the DJ talking over it if you wanted to capture the whole song. You guys don't know the struggle. Uh. Yeah, all you guys sitting in chat right now don't know the struggle <laughs> that folks my age went through. You get Anderson down here, he would understand. He would get it. Oh my god, that, I laughed way too hard at that. No, cause the reason I ask is like, so I, I'm just young enough that I think I had one of the first quote unquote sim wheels, like basically steering wheels for a console. Mm -hmm. um, we had a steering wheel for the N64, and I think we also had one for the NES. Um, but the N64 one, you would sit on it. So like you would sit on it in a way that like you're basically sitting crisscross applesauce with your legs around the base of it. Did you just literally say oh, crisscross I, I gotta, applesauce? I was about to stop him. <laughs> I'm talking about child things, so yes. But Indian style, my G. Yeah, just Indian style. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't gotta go into the whole crisscross applesauce deal. We're doing crisscross. As a child, it was crisscross applesauce. <laughs> did you, did, all right, how old are you again, Dunn? 27. 
Okay, did did they teach that shit to y'all when you were in school? Indian yeah, style yeah, yeah. was that was that offensive? It was both. Like, it was it was it both it? at that point. But <sighs> the change was happening. Wow. Um, <laughs> shit really got bad. <laughs> but um so it's it's just cross legged is what it is. You're sitting cross legged. Um around the base of the steering wheel. And so basically if you were an adult, you would have to basically sit on the couch and like put it under your thighs and then you were just basically grabbing at your crotch where the wheel was. And that's where and you would like turn this little wheel. But I was small enough as a kid that I could basically sit on the floor and it would be at my chest. Okay. Um and that was for the N64 and it had no force feedback, no rubber bands in it. It was just basically a loose wheel. And so now to have a DD1 in my office slash bedroom slash everything room would cause a moment. Well, again, particularly when, when, again, you're talking about your childhood self, I mean, at least there was a sim... There's a, there's a point of reference there as we watch right now. Uh, Omega going to defend against Gasolina back here for P12 as we catch up there. But at least you had that point of reference. My point being is when oh, I yeah, was yeah. that child, there were no sim racing wheels. It didn't exist. But you would see what you have and go, hmm, is that a steering wheel? Are those Well, pedals? of course you would know that it was a Smart. steering wheel. That's not that's not what I'm getting. I wasn't saying there were no wheels. Uh, yeah, my uncle Ugabuga invented fire while I was 12 years old. Done. That's Literally, not what I was saying. Ugabuga invented what fire. And then Boogity Boogity invented were... fucking wheels three hours later. <laughs> My point being, there were no there were no sim racing wheels that that simply didn't exist in 1982. If it did, nobody had any, right? Well, there's, I there's guess they were around like when I was a ones. kid, but I, I was a controller, uh, you know, Forza and Gran Turismo player growing up. Yeah. There's a, a video Something you guys need to remember. A, a I mean, I think there's a disconnect here because my first gaming system was an Atari 2600. It had a joystick they, and oh, one button. Oh, did it have button. wheels in it? Were there no, wheels in that? it had a that? joystick and one button. That was the control. Were wheels invented at that point? Did wheels exist on the earth? Yes, wheels themselves. <laughs> Sim racing wheels? More than likely not. Segway. To the, the question that was happening like a month ago are there more wheels on earth or doors on earth wheels and do you know who the pr the biggest producer of tires is in the world who lego that makes i've heard that before yeah oh. lego produces more tires to go than there. anywhere yeah. else in the world i have heard that yeah see look revis is going to jump in join us for old timer talk after his next stint what a school. Does he need to be timed out until that next stint, or what? Yeah, we got Cole trying to jump in the booth. Y'all cool with that? Absolutely. Bring Cole Gress on in. Let's have a talk. Here. Should Big I time out Revis? Is that what we want? No, do not time out Revis again. He's fine. Okay. Okay, great. See, Zap with Sega Genesis. He was in there early. But again, Atari 2600. Old school. Let's rock it. Commodores, right? That was the console war back in the day. That's why I love a movie like um, Ready Player One, or the book. Oh, dude, mm. such a good movie. Such a good flick, right? But you really have to be in... You, you had to come up in the 80s, early 90s to get a lot of the references dumped into that movie, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you're not you're not getting that for if you are if you started playing on a, on an Xbox, on the even on the OG Xbox. You're not understanding a lot of those references there. One Crazy rule. thing with that movie is it's been out for a while now, right? Mm -hmm. Ready Player One. How old is it? Uh, what was that? 2016, 2018, somewhere in there. If you could fit me in a movie and like a movie that I would really enjoy, like I, it is that exactly technology, futuristic, you know, you're living in VR. I just think that's fantastic. Yeah. And all that speaks to me is great. And I just saw the movie a few months back. Really? Yeah. Such a good movie. It was an excellent thing. It's funny because I used to title my streams a lot, uh, like Parsable, but my rig is way cooler. Mm -hmm. 
My rig's gotten a lot fucking cooler. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's two f bombs in I think less than an hour, Huff. You got to slow down because again, yeah. Steven used up all of them earlier. Oh, the Steve, entire no, two no, hours. So, no. I think I dropped one when he first joined, and I was like, oh, I hate to see that. <laughs> What's up, Grass? How was that stint? Or, vi or vibing, dude. Like I've, I was. If you looked at my average time for the three stints, I think it's mid 43s, and I'm pretty pumped on that. You were mobbing, dude. Yeah. You're doing a great job today, seriously. I mean, again, looking at just the position gains, and, and, and I hate to say this because of there's two drivers left, uh, Overhouse right now, or two teams, I should say, Overhouse in the car, P1, number 36 car, and you guys sitting in the number 64 right there in that BMW who have stayed even in this entire race. But I think that's such an unfair assessment when we talk about your team specifically because... Can we... Sorry to cut you one, off, but can we talk about... Go, finish. Finish your thought. Well, I was going to say, lap one, you guys got blasted down to, like, P18. And you spent the entirety of the rest of this race getting yourselves back up to P8. And I think that's, that's absolutely that's fantastic. That's all that's right there. Yeah. But let's talk about coming out of the pits... Sixth, seventh, and eighth, less than three seconds. Incredible. Like, 14 hours into the race, too. Like, I was so... I felt bad, dude. I felt bad for my teammate. Fucking, he was iced. First time driving of this the whole race, and he got thrown into that. So, it was a tough scene there, but, you know, we had fun. He's, he's doing well right now. He's cruising. He's going to do one more stint after this, and I think I'm going to hop back into the car. But it's a good time out there. Everyone seems to be very respectful, and it's a good race. Absolutely. This has been a fantastic race. And again, we've had our share of incidents. But overall, I think this has remained very clean. We've seen a lot of action, a lot of great battles during the course of this race. And, and, and like yep. any 24-hour endurance, things are spread out right now. Things slow down. I think SRO during their broadcast at this point, they don't even have commentators overnight. They're just like, meh, nope. back it off. Cowards. And they just show, <laughs> they just show the race, right? They don't even commentate anything. So, oh, that's I'm that's why Box Three is different. <laughs> Listen, you come here for the hard hitting truth yeah. of why I gotta Dunn say that... does what he does. Yeah. Wow. I gotta say the booth is a lot Simmers. cooler than the car for sure. What's that? Say that again. <laughs> it's, the booth is a lot cooler than the car. You guys are enjoying Listen, it up here. We are having a blast <laughs> up in here. It is Box Three after dark. We have now hit 11 44 at night for me we are about to cross that midnight line and that's when after dark can really kick off we might get a little blue with it and that doesn't mean your boy blue we don't want him around he's a yeah. troublemaker um but i think we're having a great time this 24-hour race has been absolutely fantastic you and again you guys are doing a great job great to have you down yeah. here with us Every, uh, everyone top eight i really believe they're, they're all pushing they're all driving really respectful and it's nice to see mm -hmm. I am annoyed, though, that uh, we lost uh, Crow's team. You know, I really wanted to go to the end with those guys, you know, just to brag and rights. But, uh, you know, that's how the crookie crumbles, and I'm excited to see where we finish. We didn't lose Crow's team. He meant, I mean, like, gap two. Yeah. Right? Oh, you're yeah. talking about yeah. gapped up. Okay, yeah. It, it yeah. Been we're nice. up right now. You guys were running close, and I did want to see you guys make that race. I mean, I think... Looking at the drivers on the team between yourself, John Tracy, Flamger, and Brian Canepin on your team, uh, or I'm sorry, on uh, on the other team, and then we have, excuse me, Ottens, Garten, Lucas, and driving right now, and yourself. I think that would have been a great battle, but you guys spread yeah. out pretty good at this point. It doesn't mean we won't get it though. Um, no, well, we've been staying next to each other, even though we're a lap down. It's still gonna, we're still going to make it interesting. Absolutely. And, I, and again, there's so much race left, just over yeah. seven hours left to go. We've seen a lot of flips and a lot of people catching up to each other during the course of this yeah. so far 16, 17 hours. You know, uh, there's a, there's opportunity there to still see that come together. Uh, D's slow in the 11 Beamer. You know, he's surprisingly not slow, uh, contrary to belief. Yeah. I was uh, really hoping the name was going to be true. And I was trying to catch him, but it just wouldn't budge. Yeah, but you're only, uh, let's see, 16 back right now? Yeah. And I th he's that's got. A, that's a small gap with the pit stops and the driver changes needing to take yeah. place. You guys have plenty of opportunity to push up and yeah. get ahead of Dimitri and his team. 
Yeah, I'm finding more pace every time I get in the car, which is always a, uh, which is always nice. Like last stint, I got my fast lap of 42.6, with like 80 liters of fuel, which I was p very pumped on. So let me ask you, how would you compare yourself to esports legend? Whoa, when we've got ah, a slide right it. there, oh. P2 off track. Oh no! Pushing that Porsche just a little hard, but I mean, it? it's tough to compare yourself to greatness, my I man. I was gonna say, like, how I do you can't... compare yourself being on this team with esports legend Brian Canepa? I mean, he's looking so to much. jump in here soon. I think he said just a little while ago, about two hours, he'll be back on track. This guy picked up five spots for you during his stint. And listen, I'm not com I'm not trying to compare each of you against each other. Uh, again, Brian's driven for SRO, obviously a very fast guy. The rest of you have pushed this team as well and kept yourselves in the running, currently running high. But Yeah, yeah I remember, I'm not on Crow's team, sadly. I'm against him. It's a pain. That's right. I'm sorry. I'm getting people confused. Hey, hey, hey. But, uh, on Ramco's team, but again, you guys are doing a fantastic job. I, I, and this is why, and I think the reason I got confused is the way you, uh, the way you, you brought it up about wanting to battle those guys because I wanted to see that so badly myself. But Brian yeah. Canepin is going to be back on track. He's going to be coming. And in I think we're at the same time, and I, I, you know, we're going to make it exciting for the broadcast. That's what I want to see. Now, are yeah. you? You're not done though. You're going to be running another one, right? Now, I'm gonna do. I wanna. After he's done with his last stint, I'm definitely gonna try to do like three more hours. Okay, so who's next in your yeah. ride? Who, who's jumping in? Me. There uh, he's. I think he's got like five more minutes on this stint. He's gonna do one more, and then I'm in for like three hours. Okay, so you'll be jumping in after Lucas. Yeah. Excellent. You'll Me and Lucas are gonna be finishing off because uh, the other boys are passed out. Man, they they did a long they did a long couple of hours of driving. Yes, they did, but uh, I think, you know, looking at who's ahead of you, now the only concern I would have is P7 right now. Bill Sadovis has been wickedly fast today. Yeah. That guy's been really pushing hard, right? So is Lynn a solo driver? Because I haven't seen him switch, or is he just carrying the team right now? Right now, I believe Lynn is carrying the team. Um, we have seen Husser in that car along with Nikos. Fernando Martinez, another teammate, I believe... Huff, correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the driver that had problems joining. And yeah, therefore, I believe so. He, he's still listed, but he has not taken any stints because he wasn't able to get into the server. Will was trying to help him earlier. But yeah. we have seen uh, Nikos Hanke oh, and Sorry. Moritz Husser in that car. So, Okay. You've got some tough competition ahead of you, especially, again, Dimitri Slow, that whole team, very strong. This portion no of the them, but, you know, we, we got to grind. I think, we, I think it's going to be a good battle for P7. I think so. I think you guys can bring it in. You're only 16. Yeah. Back. That's not a lot yeah. when you're talking about seven no. hours left in this race. Yeah. You know, and most of remember in the beginning of the race, I really thought I was going to get that 42 on in the booth, but couldn't make it happen. But we did get it. We did get it going. You didn't get the 42? Uh, I, I finally got a 42, like, right. like three stints in. But uh, are we uh, sir? I did notice while I was on the track that we were having a little server side issues. Is that that's even yeah. out right now? Uh, just everything's fine, like main server wise, but just some some random teams having some issues. But all right, dropped sure. a couple due to that, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, and guys, team Justine and uh, I forget their third. Uh, they were running P one, P two. Yeah, I noticed race. that. They just got disconnected roughly an hour ago. Uh, that's pain. It is. We feel terrible for them guys. Yeah. Looking back right now, P13, Wyatt Hackley pulling up on Stefan Reisgast. And Wyatt Hackley able to get around very easily. <laughs> that 313 BMW sitting in P14 now. So that team able to pick up one more position. Wyatt has I'll tell you what I'm looking at here, though, is uh, the 808 car uh, sitting in P5 right now. Mm -hmm. 
we got the man, the myth, the legend himself coming up on a stand. We've seen the work he's put in already, gaining a couple positions. So. Oh no, commentator! Oh, no, curse. right there, and commentator curse hammers him down as G. Steven yeah. slides off into the dirt. Good job, up. Break it down. down me. Wow. <laughs> but plenty of time to make up as well. Forty-eight <laughs> seconds now over Jimmy Lynn. That time coming down, obviously with the spin. Right on cue. But good, good job, job Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you don't have a spin, a stint, like you're not racing. You know what I mean? You're not pushing. Yeah. It's been funny if you joined our chart. Like we've been talking, like it's F1. I'm like going mode zero. You know, switching to different modes. You know, we're we're grinding out here. How's your teammate we're, though? We we know the other guys on your team, but how how's the random guy? He a good lad? He, nice guy. You know, he's got a little pace to find, but you know, we're, we're never gonna harp on someone for that. They're, we're all having a fun time. It really, at the end of the day, that's all that matters. You know, hey, we're enjoying hey, it. Hey. Sorry. So yeah, man, at the end of the day, like he found some more pace. Like he uh he uh, did one stint. Uh, like at the end of the day, like he didn't race all the way till with eight hours to go, so we were like he. Uh, well, I was doing my stint, he hopped in and did some practice laps, so he he's warmed up, getting better at it. So uh, we're cruising. It'll be all, it'll be a good it'll be a good final seven. And that's what good we're watching now, Sebastian Lucasen. Yeah. yeah. Very good. It's about keeping it together. If you have a you know. Yeah. A, I'm not, I'm not calling him slow because by any means. I mean, he did a three fly right now. Like work. he's cruising. Yeah, but if he could just keep it together, you know, while the, while the faster guys on your team can get yeah. some time, that you've done your job. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've talked and about that's that not again. A knock to him. You know, <laughs> yeah, and not at all because we've talked about that same sort of call it strategy, if you will, with that 808 yeah. Audi. Uh, Brian Canepin, esports legend, able to to gain those guys a bunch of spots, but the rest of that team was just as integral as, as in holding on to them, right? John Tracy, Stephen, and Flamger, he got them up in the P8. Those guys were able to hold it and then actually make some gains yeah. throughout the rest of the night. Again, never mind uh, uh, drivers losing the connection issues, um, and these guys now finding themselves in P5. Yeah, you know, I gotta give it to John. You know. You gotta give respect. Respects due. He's a, he's a quick bugger, man. It gets annoying sometimes just seeing that uh, Delta just drop. Yeah. Crazy thing about him is he he's been back in the rig for what guys a month maybe. Yeah, month. Been away. I mean, months, so. talent doesn't Natural leave, talent. you know. No, yeah. It doesn't. But again, overall, your entire team, like I said, it, it, we can sit here and we can look at it and say, <laughs> well, you know, they qualified eighth. They're in eighth now. How, yeah. how did they really perform? Well, again, we look back to that first lap before T1. Remco Ottens getting hammered off track, losing eight, nine positions, putting you guys back down into P17, yeah. P18. You've spent the rest of this race climbing your way back up. So obviously very consistent, very steady to be able to recover that many positions. Um, you know, I would say you're performing better than a lot of the other teams out here who have lost have lost four, five, six positions throughout the course of this race, right? Even yeah, if they're still you know, ahead of you right now, you've performed better as a team with that consistency, being able to bring that back from that initial yeah. incident in, in lap one. Yeah, like, my, my whole team's been well, because this is my first ever endurance race, you know, like, just everyone helping out each other, you know, just reminding them, hey, like, there's still seven hours to go, you know, like, we don't have to worry about it. I would start pushing, you know, but when you push, make a mistake, and then you push more, to more mistakes, it hurts you more than anything. So, you know, like one of the crazy things is, is trying to find pace in a different map, you know, like we we have to go between map two and one throughout the whole race. Almost uh, maybe like every lap's a mixed lap. I'm switching between one and two every lap. So it just adds to other, other things you got to do besides a sprint race that you usually do on a weekend. Exactly. There's so many different things about this 24-hour endurance that we that we are not used to seeing in our typical league races. Again, yep. the play for, for P1 and 2, um, normally, uh, except at the very beginning of, the, of a race, you don't really see that change hands other nope. than through pit stops. And you know through those pit stops, you know, whoever was P1 before is going to come back out ahead. Um, yep. It's a very rare to see that. And, and again, we've seen at least four or five flips of P1 today during the course of this endurance and, and like I said yeah. still just under seven hours left to go 
And that's so much fun to see. I've been waiting for this race for so long. But, Gress, while we have you here, I have a question for you. Hit me. Do you, do you have a friend? Do you have a family member? Do you have someone in your life who has been interested in sim racing but has never made that jump? Uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, no one else in my family plays video games. Uh, okay. my, dad tr my dad tried my sim when I first built it. That was about it. I mean, he he's a retired pro dirt bike racer, so he he loves racing and anything, you know. I'm I don't even ride anymore, and that dude still rides. But I mean, I can always try to get him on if there's something you guys are trying to tee up. Well, what I'm asking you is basically, we have available a key, a Steam key for a set of Corsa Competizione, as well as a key for a uh, a set of Corsa Ultimate Edition. Is there someone mm -hmm. in your life you know who would be able to make use of one of those? I it's want okay, to say sadly not. not, man. It's okay. Sadly it's okay. not, man. That's all right. My friends that ra play ACC are in this Discord, you know. So I got to say, this, that's all I got to say. Gotcha. Not a problem, man. But we're gonna ask. We're trying to get more people involved in sim racing. Obviously, a lot of people in the chat uh, that are watching this right now, they are sim racers. They're either members of the league already, or they've come in and yeah. found it because on Twitch we're uh, set up as what you know as as streaming acc so they're in here to watch so it's hard yep. to give away a key for a game that or a sim that, that most people already have so that said while you were here just thought i'd ask that question yep. dunn is hyper to give this away yeah hopefully oh, uh, in the chat right now look at it look at him in the chat right now dunn trying to hammer on blue going convince me that you know someone that could use this let's go don't make it don't don't <laughs> don't play your game dunn's gonna hammer blue every chance he gets i think uh -huh. Yeah, you know, maybe uh, maybe instead of me taking that, you know, we uh we wait my name in the apex to give away, you know, we got you never know. <laughs> there will be no wait. Everyone will see that wheel. It will be hundred percent. I'll bring it up right now. Y'all can see it. I got a whole list here waiting. Actually, I have to refresh the page now. We'll see if it comes up. <laughs> like now, like <laughs> everyone's gonna be sus. But no, no, I know you guys won't do it. I'm excited. I'm a gambling man, so you know, anytime there's little chance, I always go for it. Yeah, Huff is going to have to be Jimmy on the spot to get me that list in the morning so we can run this through. Because i got to type them all into the to the wheel yep. of spinning. I'm Mr. Mountain P4, dude. 15 seconds back here. Like you know, that's like you said, that's a close number for six hours left to go. And probably mm -hmm. for a podium position, they're going to probably strive for that. I'm excited to see that battle. 100%. Um, this race is still he not by any means won by yeah. anyone yet. Well, P3 yeah. is pitting, so that's a P3 for them now. Yep. And car 14 yeah, solo like driver, that. just throwing it out there. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow, man. Nice yeah. Entic making it through now. 17 hours. Just Jeez. absolutely killing it. 17 hours you deep. You know, man's downfall, but that'd be a nice position to have. So we started out with yeah. four solo drivers. Now two left. Joris Mentink Ooh. and Thomas Jank as well now coming into the pits himself. What? They, what they kind of award? Trophy. What kind of award yeah. can we get for the, the last remaining solo driver? Extra weight in the in the wheel. Two <laughs> <Yeah>. percent <laughs> <laughs> extra. You know, do we have a Coach Dave Academy moment of the race yet, or are we gonna wait till the end of that end of the race? I know I just made that up, but you know it would be cool. You did just make that up, and I yeah, you win a ballast. For I haven't been race. clipping highlights, so that's going to get a little difficult to do. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that that three way battle. I think is just like watch that back for fifteen minutes. Enjoy yourself. Let that be. Which done. one? We had a good the number battle, of battles you, the, today. Your team came out of the pits. And it was three way, oh, three or four people, yeah. just all neck and neck, trying to do all sorts of stuff. Yeah, no offense, my teammate. I wanted to push him out of the car and hop in so fast but it couldn't happen because I would love to be in that situation but fuck <laughs> he did a good job handling himself it got a little chaotic but uh, we're, we uh, we stabilized so Mathias Mathis yeah. was taking over that 488 Mercedes now Overhouse continues to lead this race in the ass, and this team has done a fantastic job today as well. We don't want to discount these guys. The Overhouse. Yeah, Rader, um, Witchman and my Rader. moment of the race so far, um, probably Brian's drive. What did he come in E12 and make his way up to eight in one stint? 
13 what? up to 8, yeah. 13 up to 8. Really I mean, hammered uh, down. Sheesh. Is, uh... Oh, yeah, P9's on our same lap. Oh, shit, okay. Revis. Hey, bl hey, uh, Dunn? <laughs> I know. Blue I ham see it. I'm like... <laughs> How about you, Scott? <laughs> I was going to hold it in the chat, in the mod chat, till one of you mentioned it. <laughs> oh, no, we're good, we're good. I just turned around and see it. I just wanted to see if uh, if you were going to hammer Revis again. I thought about it. That's what I was waiting for. Oh, man. <laughs> Here's the problem I face right now with, you know, my current setup that I'm sitting at. I got, I got the race, center mm -hmm. view, you know, like in-game spectator watching for stewarding, you know, clearing penalties and blah 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 i've got the stream pulled up on my right screen discord on my left I, my head is constantly on a swivel <laughs> trying to read discord chat stream chat you know like i said keep an eye on incidents and stuff i happen to look over and see that <laughs> the d word darn <sighs> Yeah, that's the one. Burn it. You know, I missed my break. Sorry to gas up my own teammate here, but consistent 43, low 43s too. So I'm, I'm happy to see that. He's, you know, man, like, I really can't put a finger on who's the fastest on our team. I think we've all been running the same consistent 40, 43, low 43s, touching the 42s. You know, it's been nice to see. Well, that's what we talked about. I mean, you guys have been wickedly consistent throughout this entire race. We've held on the whole time. Vibe. So. You said we won't, Josh. Well, they did it. Look at you, fellas. Like I challenged you, and you Butler. ripped it out on the table. Who pulled Butler into the chat? That's what I. Mean. <laughs> I done muted him. This <laughs> <laughs> is Poor Blue boys in the is chat. Just in the booth, but uh, I definitely got to go. Uh, Give my teammates some motivational speeches here on his last stint. Poor, poor Blue sitting in the chat going, they stole, they stole Revis. <laughs> yeah, Cole, um, excellent drive so far, man. Keep it up. You guys have fun. Just oh, we will, seven hours remaining. I'm sure we'll, we'll pop back in in the meantime. But you mind dragging me back because you know how my game freaks out. I got you, fam. I got, you got, Thanks, you. Yeah. You got him. Yeah, man. I don't know which one's <laughs> going back to. You're good. The comedic timing oh. is too good. Finally, I'm not being talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> oh, I think Dunn's doing it power. just for pure entertainment at this point. You're giving me too much power. <laughs> oh. Talk <laughs> blocked again. Poor Josh. Uh, this is too much, man. <laughs> so Josh, so, you are yeah. you are done driving for the for the, I, for the I rest am. of the race? Yeah, I am done for the rest of the race because I wanted to really uh, represent uh, everything that Oklahoma's bat uh, uh, is all about and be really freaking. <laughs> oh my God, done! You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Poor guy. Let him talk. He was actually behaving himself for a minute. Allegedly, I was leading to something there. <laughs> then was the curve. He saw it coming. He tell it. I, I may have telegraphed that a little too much. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Yeah, nuts as we continue to watch this race. P17 oh. pulling the drive through. P17 thice pain. T pain. T pain. He's trying to buy somebody a drink. Look at that Nissan. Love it. It's a damn what? good car. Oh, what a reference. <laughs> so, Josh, Thank I got to ask, how do you feel about your stints today? How do you feel you I, did? I, I, I mean, I performed about how I normally do. I'm not happy with it. Uh, I'm working on getting better. I've been sim racing less than a year, and uh, it's not something that comes natural to me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm happy that, you know, in my second or my last stint, I didn't just totally demolish the car or ruin anybody else's race. So that's good. Uh, but pace wise, like you know, it's just not there and it's not gonna be and that's fine. Uh, I had a good time hanging out with the guys um, And that's the majority of my day. That's what this day was built around was was hanging out with those guys and making sure that They have a nice easy time and that I'm not impeding them or anyone else from having a good time Awesome, that's actually I mean honestly, that's what we like to that 
that to me means more than um, than straight up winning or especially winning by any means, right? You you push it, you push somebody off track, you tap them and take that position, and it happens two or three times throughout a race. I'd much rather somebody come in here and have a ton of fun, enjoy what they're doing with their team, and uh, get it done. So I think that I think that's a great great thing a great outlook on on your race today i want to get better but at a great time today right but but at, at the same time what i what i can do for the team is i can optimize what i'm good at right i'm going to set up all the strategy i'm going to make sure the setup is good i'm going to make sure we're communicating together like what are we all going through feeling with the car uh how do i set up all the pit strategies as well and then how do we communicate and make sure the timing all works out so like i'm i'm handling more logistics than i am driving and the more i i take that off of their plates the better we work you know organically uh zap got a question for you real quick uh do you know when a regular joke becomes a dad joke oh gosh when it becomes apparent oh jeez that's definitely one of them so thank you for that so Butler, I'm going to ask you to call out your team here today. Who is your anchor? Who, who, who do you feel on your team between Keystar, yourself, Blue, and Anderson? Who do you feel really pulled? You know, again, it's, it seems like from what you're describing that you, you know, you had a task. And again, not the best. You, you feel as though for yourself, not the best driver on the team. Right. But you contributed in the way that you could. So when it comes to the driving, who do you feel pulled the team today that that kept you guys moving forward? Uh, it kept us moving forward. It was definitely Blue and his uh, nonstop leaving the chat every time you guys popped in. That really motivated us to, to do better. And uh, Obviously, you know, I hate to say it, but Anderson sucked today. Like, this dude is supposed to be running, like, 41s. Like, I feel like I was lied to and misled. Oh, wow. When you, um, when you no. can just hop in here, that's what. <laughs> oh, that's power. Oh, wow. Uh, but, no, yeah, no, Ando did a great job. Uh, Keyser switching up his schedule. Mm-hmm. Uh, to come in and uh, uh, he's done a great job. Blue's only had one stint so far, but uh, I tried to sleep. I oh, know I was doing the, uh, another race during that, and so uh, from what I heard, it went well. Uh, so Blue's really got to show you know what he's made of you know at the very end here, where he's going to be the most tired because he's been on for most of the broadcast and most of the race, and so we've all been up and on, but we've had little breaks. Uh, but Blue's going to have to bring it home. So we're going to go Blue and Do Blue to finish, and uh, just kind of see what happens. Now, do you feel that's a safe strategy to use, given that I have determined myself to commentator curse him until the car explodes? Look, it is a strategy, and that's all we needed. I got you. Okay. We don't even need a good one now. <laughs> no, and again, I think you guys have been very consistent today uh, running where you've run. I think you, at last I looked, you've made up four positions from qualifying. Uh, we started in P22, so P15, yeah, uh, so, but with all the disconnects, yeah, I get what you're saying. With well, a few disconnects, but it, even without those, I think the last time I looked, you guys had made up four positions today. That's nothing to that's nothing to balk at, right? Uh, even, right. And you did that yourself without disconnects, without anything else. You guys pulled those four positions out. So obviously having a successful day as far as that goes, I think that's a great run. Yeah, and uh, for me, it's the uh, this is my second time racing Imola. First time driving the Nissan, so it's a little bit different. It's got some quirks to it. Uh, the setup was a little weird, and we decided to go with Pad Three over Pad Two. Uh, I've been practicing with Pad Two for you know twenty dozen laps or whatever. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot of little, little weird stuff. And then uh, Ando specifically mentioned he was in a practice session, and then he jumped over into the uh, server. And he said just automatically everything felt weird and slow. So I don't know if maybe it was because it was more overcast. There's higher humidity, something like that, uh, compared to the practice session he was running. But, uh, yeah, we've been fighting the car a little bit. Uh, but a lot of that, I think, is, is in our heads as well. Excellent. Well, again, I think you guys have done a great job today. Obviously, we're sure. together as a team, which is, is, I think, what is most important in one of these endurance races, especially a 24-hour. Mm -hmm. Plenty of time left to make up more positions. So where do you guys hope to finish? You, you're looking to hold steady right now, or do you think you're going to be able to make up some time? Yeah, so I think legitimately where we're sitting is probably as good as it gets, unless uh, P14 or somebody else, like uh, Givens, has a has a real bad stint here and has to visit the pits a couple times, because we're three or four laps down from those guys. But yeah, if we can just hold position, that's good. If we gain another one or two, man, that's a, that's a victory. That's a solid win. Excellent. And you're not going to let Dunn pick on you in the chat anymore? 
Oh, Dunn can do whatever he wants. It rolls off me like water off a duck. That's pretty true. I mean, not that it rolls off you more that Dunn can do whatever he wants at this point. <laughs> yeah. We are box three after dark. After, uh, Ooh. <laughs> box three after dark after all, so. And here I am with pants on. <laughs> we got two drive throughs uh, Steve car 808, and then uh, Veitch to car 25, sending Pete's end. Wow. Pulled a drive through at literally the same time. So 808 pulling a drive through Gonna slow them back a little bit. Yeah, they were they were right up there, kind of uh, kind of pretty close to P4. So I assume Zap's still watching. Uh, Zap, do you know what uh, racers eat for breakfast? Nothing. They fast. <laughs> And 808 in to serve that drive through now with Steven pulling that. We'll have to see where Jimmy Lynn sits in this and whether or not that's going to give him opportunity to move up. I don't know quite how far back he was. He's on the lead. He's on the same lap as them, roughly 28 seconds back, so he could pick it up. Come out about 15 or so seconds ahead, actually. So we'll see if G. Steven about to drop a position. But Jim Lynn heading into the pits as well. Ooh. Going to give Steven the opportunity to stay out and hold on to P5. Something's not right with how this is reading. There's no way Matthias Wass is down 45 laps from P3. Um, what are you showing on your end, Huff? Car number... Uh. Wasp. Uh, he's sitting uh, in P4 and 585 lap. He's, yeah, he's, he's four off down, the leader. Uh, four off the leader, but I'm only showing one down from P3. Uh, but my, um, my tracking what shows I'm seeing, 45 laps down. That's what I'm saying is is the tracking's off, so we'll have to keep an eye on that as well. Right, so P4's completed 585 laps. Leader's done 589. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Four off the leader, Josh. You, you got you got five. Hey, look, I'm, one, I'm, you know, but. Oklahoma, it's like it's like uh, Western West Virginia. You know what I'm talking about, right? Math oh. is not our strong suit. Shit, that's where I live. Dimitri Slow and you know. Jimmy Lynn both so sorry. <laughs> position now to Sebastian Lucasen. Sebastian moving up into P6 with those guys in the pits. If we take a look at stint times, Sebastian's going to have to be heading in soon. All every all these guys. Uh, P6, 7, and 8, all running a little over one hour stint time. So everybody's going to be coming in. Sebastian Lucas and able to stay out for one more lap at least. We are 18 hours into this stream, 6 hours and 40 minutes left to go in today's race. And we have officially, at least for myself and Kevin Huffman, crossed into Sunday. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, this has been a long one, guys. This is a... Uh, I was telling you guys earlier, this is my second 24-hour race in as many weekends, and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I think I'm getting too old for this. I don't think I can do this quite as often as I'd like to. What 24 did you run last weekend? Uh, I racing. We did the uh, Nurburgring. Oh, gotcha. That was, uh, yeah, I had never, I, I think a month ago was the first time I ever drove Nurburgring. Like I said, I haven't been racing that long. Um, and it's never been in any game that I played. And so I had to learn it and try to set a competitive time uh, in less a, than a did month. Did you make a full lap without crashing? I did. I actually made four in a row. Um, I did have three crashes, though, over the course of my uh, two two-hour stints. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, not not real proud of that. But it's a really it's a tough track. It's very technical, and by the time you get to you know turn number ninety-eight, you kind of forget where you are. It starts okay, to look the so, same. And that's what I was about to ask because you said Nurburgring, but this was the. I'm four sorry, Nord Yeah, this was yeah. the four Nord the, the full Nord Schleife. Okay. Yep, all one hundred and seventy turns and what sixteen miles. Yeah, it's such like a that. great track. It is. What it were is. your lap times looking track. like over that? Okay, so that was the cool thing. Yeah. Is when I very first started, my goal was to get under a 10-minute lap. 
And so after about a week, I was down to a, a 930. And I was like, that's good enough for race pace for me. Uh, so then the guys that I uh, was racing with challenged me to get below an 840. And so in race, I hit an 834 and an 836. And so I was wow. very, I was very happy. That yeah. was a good time for me. Solid times, dude. Now here's, you know, I drive around Nords every now and then in ACC, just kind of messing around. Um, but as far as like racing the track, dude, how in the heck do you remember that many turns and apexes? Is it more about feel at that point, or yeah, I think it, memorize a lot of it. You know what I mean? Uh, so I I memorize chunks. So I will remember a four turn complex. And then as soon as I leave that complex, it is out of my mind. And I'm just thinking, okay, I know that now it's it's third gear left, second gear right, third gear left. And that's all oh, I know. No. One second, guys. Hussar oh. pulling donuts now, P7. Now losing position as he drops back behind Dimitri Slow. Very sketchy coming back on track, though, as he rips a donut across the middle of the track as a pack of four cars catches up. Hey, hey. Very scary. Sketchy, but safe, I reckon. I mean, uh, he made it out. Let's put it that way. Ish, right? yeah. Uh, <laughs> Portion of its natural habitat. Sorry. That is uh, a <laughs> one way to get heat back in the tires. Yeah, orange Porsches in the grass are great friends here at Box Three. Zap, is that your man? Come get him. Yeah. Uh, Zap, pick up your kid. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm no expert at geology. Uh, what is Dimitri's flag there with the the blue and the white? I'm not familiar with that flag. Uh, I believe that's Greek. <laughs> No. Greek. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not in my computer right now, so. Yes, that is the Greek. It is Greece. Okay, cool. Cool. Well, that's why he's been so slick here lately. That was a grease joke. Zap. I, 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 yeah, hence that. the long pause. We just we had to soak <laughs> that one in, Josh. Peace after all. What did I say? It's been eighteen hours, Josh. You cannot. You, you got to slow down a little bit for us here. And now I I'm going for all the cheap laughs I can get right now. I see that. That's everybody's awesome. tired and they will giggle at foolishness. I wonder if Blue's gonna hit him up for some heroes in, in his in his virtual booth that he was referring to earlier what he said his little paddock set up <laughs> what was that chat about is that where he he's hiring weird. engineers and and pit crew and everything yeah. else while he's napping yeah. <laughs> yes <laughs> done asking in the chat right now whether or not he should ban revis i don't know why josh at this point i mean you're, you're not doing anything to upset done so he'll be fine he'll sleep it off he's, he gets cranky this time and i just needs a snack and a little little pat on the head send him to bed he's a youngster <laughs> that's what it is right <laughs> yeah these young bucks can't hang with us you know what I'm saying? Millennials get all upset. back in yeah. my day yeah. we take two white crosses and just get it done oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good lord. That's, that's an old guy reference. I don't, I don't know if these young kids know about the White Crosses. They probably, they probably don't know. <laughs> One rule for myself says, rumor has it that Blue is eating a gyro right now to prepare for the next stint. That would not surprise me. Dimitri Slow now back into P6 with Sebastian Lucasen in the pits coming back out now. We'll see if we've got a driver change. It usually takes just a second to update as drivers come out of those pits so actually done a uh, funny inside story i guess it's right around the corner for him actually he knows the owner so he well never mind yeah it's around the corner he's he's too lazy to go get it yeah it was delivered yes oh, God. I, I was getting ready to make a comment on that because usually <laughs> if if blue and iron voice chat this late at night he and his girlfriend are ordering food about this time is that <laughs> is that what's going on that's a thing yeah <laughs> <laughs> so Sebastian Lucasen comes back out on track right in front of Hussar in that 67 Porsche. Just under a two second gap between them. We'll see if Hussar, Hussar is able to tighten that up a little bit as we continue through the night now. 
So my curiosity, and because I've just never asked the question before, is there any of the cars on track that cannot go the full 70 minutes on a full tank? Is there anyone that's having to short stint at all? Um, uh, I know us and the Lexus way back, you know, 20 hours ago. Um, we could make it. It was very close. Like we were on the last lap, so we we may have missed it by like uh, a minute or two, maybe. You know what I mean? No, Tracy says the Audi can't make it. So with the uh, with the uh, the GTR, and I don't know if this was by design or just luck. Uh, it holds 132 liters, and we were going uh, 117. Pulling out of the pits was our number uh, for refueling. So as long as we had 117 liters, based on everybody's lap time and fuel consumption, uh, we could make it the full 70 minutes. So had there not been stint timers, we actually could have extended a lot of the stints. But you know, you gotta you gotta balance everything somehow. Oh, Lucas then going for a little uh, off-track venture. It's like he was stopping to pick up his dry cleaning. Speaking of dry cleaning, I never put my laundry in the dryer. I'll be back. Oh, <laughs> there I go, saving the day. I didn't even know he was still here. <laughs> oh, here we go again, Lucas. And uh, wonder what's going on there. I saw him swerving a little bit back there. I don't know if that was cleaning the tires or trying to get some temp into him, but. Uh, on track temps down to 12 C, so we're fully, you know, two and a half, three degrees below starting temps, and it's just going to get cooler through the next several hours. So something drivers need to really be aware of, making sure that they're, uh, you know, dropping the ABS to get a little extra heat in the brakes and making sure their pressures are right. Because, uh, man, cold tires, when it's this cold, it takes forever to get any kind of temp back into them if you let them drop. Yeah, trying, them, trying to drag them back up in temperature is never going to be a fun adventure. Mm-mm. Lucas and just coming out of the pits. Uh, let's take a look here. How? Oh, yeah, just three minutes into the stint, so still on second lap at this point. Coming out of the pit, out of the pit stop is is gonna have those cold tires. So we'll be curious to see if he can warm them up. Yeah, we were what's pushing them off into the gravel. We were struggling so much with temp when I think it got down to 17 C, something like that. We had almost 28 psi in the tire to start just to keep it up to the 27.7. So we're actually over-pressuring because we knew we would have temperature and pressure loss over the course of the stint. Speaking of Lucas and now, these guys catching up. I'm going to go back on on the back end of number 67, Mortz Husser in that Porsche. Yeah, Gasolina was in the chat earlier. Joris Mantic losing position while well in the pit. Our leader, our race leader now into the pit as well. Teal Overhouse. We'll see if they make a driver change, but right now Sebastian Lucasen looking for P7 for Moritz Husser. Yeah, if all these uh, Mercedes and BMWs weren't out there uh, cheating, you know, all these German brands, we knocked them off, knocked the Porsches off. I'd be putting us in about P3, P4 right now. Oh, wow. So and I'm Luke, just. Sorry to interrupt oh. you there, John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lucasen taking position up through the chicane. A very slick move, and Husser letting a back marker through as well. So now a little bit of a gap between these guys, giving him opportunity, you know, giving uh, Lucas an opportunity to open it up, not feel quite so much pressure from Husser in that Porsche. These Porsches have been doing very well throughout the course of this race today. Number 70. And I wonder how much that is just down to the fatigue of having to run uh, three people when they thought they were going to have four for the whole race. Uh, Fernando Martinez uh, wasn't able to join or was able to join but couldn't get in the car. It was a really strange situation for Leaf, but uh, it's got to be super disappointing when you have everything all scheduled out. And it's like the opposite of us where we can release someone to not have to drive the whole time. Uh, but then they're having to pick up stints. It's like, dude, I'm supposed to be asleep now, but I have to drive. And maybe that's playing into it some. Absolutely, I can see that being a, a factor. Um, managing expectations, right, coming into it. Hey, this is yeah. all planned out, we're all set. And then suddenly there's a, a technical issue that prevents one of your drivers from joining 
Uh, it's going to make things frustrating no matter what. And now I add to extra stints on top of that. Can't drive as a team. And now other people having to pick up the slack. A random question for you boys. What you got? 17. And uh, we might need some chat participation for this one. If Box had a mascot, what would it be? There's going to be a lot of inappropriate answers on this one. Uh, yeah, I, I asked it. Really knowing full, a, I know full well what I just very asked. Open-ended question to be asking right now. Done. That's that's scary. One rule by myself in the chat says zap. Good call, Ando. Tracy says spaghetti. I'm not. Is that spaghetti? Is that supposed to be like the Charlie Day no. version of spaghetti or? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Or is that we we baguette? baguette? Is that we we baguette? We we baguette. Yeah. <laughs> if Box Three had a mascot, what would it be? I just. A lot of unbridled rage right after an incident. How do you draw that as a as a mascot? A blue flag with flashing lights behind it. Right. And then just everything on fire. <laughs> um, I, I'll throw one out there, and this is for uh, is that if you're still in the chat, which you are, a dick butt. <laughs> Only because he keeps hiding them in everything he designs for us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with that one. Uh, he does tend to throw up a lot of little hidden Easter eggs in our posters and stuff. And you, know, you guys oh, yeah. in chat, feel free to, to scroll through our SimGrid feed and have a look. There's some There's some jewels in there. He's I basically a Disney art. Favorites, right. For sure. One of my favorite, yeah, you're right. Um, one of my favorite ones was a McLaren sign. I forget the map. Uh, Zap, you're probably going to correct me here and do it if you can think of it. The McLaren white sign that said Molson Mom with the right? M. Yeah. McLaren. Oh, that was lovely. I just, it's fantastic. <laughs> Zap. All caps, yes, in the chat. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, Molson's mom's already our uh, mascot, so I think we're good on that one. I think so, yeah. Probably. Yeah, Hop, it looks like uh, Gasolina is there in the Dirt Rally chat. Yeah, um, I was just having a chat with him, kind of waiting for a little pause. Uh, Molson, you want to bring in this? Uh, he he is new to us, but he's uh, he's with Matt Gibbons and that team, I do believe. Uh, we'll let, uh, let the man speak. Absolutely, bring him Drag in. him down, yeah. 100%. Let's try so I shouldn't down. mute him periodically? No, yes, please. should not just randomly No, reserve him. that for me, no. you son He's of a... He's new. Let's be welcoming <laughs> to the, to please the tell new me, guy here. Please tell me you you muted him before he finished that. No, you didn't. Okay. I muted himself. Yeah, I just oh, okay. did that nice okay. joke for him. I was hoping... Because he's such a lazy it. piece of shit. <laughs> Gasolina, welcome into the commentator's booth. How are you this evening? Uh... I am exhausted at this You are time. exhausted? I can imagine, man. You, uh, quite a few stints today. Did you run the majority for your team? Uh, right now, I ran four stints in a row. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, the plan was two stints, but then in the third stint, I forgot to request my teammate. And then I had to go to the third stint. Oh, and then after I, finished, I, after I finished, after I finished the third stint, the the four the, the other driver didn't join in time, so I had to start the fourth stint. Holy um, cow! So Matthew Givens in that five 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 Bentley right now. So quick question, I mean, Gasoline, let me ask you this: You guys are in the only Bentley on track today, so why the Bentley? Is this something you're used to, or did you just all agree on this vehicle uh, specifically for Imola, or specifically because it's it's of its general capabilities? Okay, for me personally, uh, it's it was my main car for the last one year and a half. Okay. Before I switched off to the BMW, and for my teams, uh, they said they are a safe car to drive. It was a little bit easy to understand. That's why they pick her. Gotcha. Uh, 
That's understandable, though. Yeah. All right. Now, here's a question I have for you. Um, you know, Matthew Givens, he he's been around our server. He's done our races, our league races for a while. Um, you know, so we've known him for roughly a year. Uh, do you know him, or did you just meet him during this race? I just met him in this race. Cool. He's a great uh, guy. You know, Matt's. Uh, you know, we're we're in he... different time zones, but we get the get the chance to have a chat every now and then. He's a great guy and and a very good driver at that. Yeah, I can confirm he's a great guy. Yeah. That is absolutely right. Um, can I s say sorry to the guy I pushed? It was a BMW. Oh, uh, you can. I I'd no. love to hear that, man. Yeah, I don't like, know you, which You're number. new to us, you come in, and just that, that attitude right there is much appreciated. 100%. Yeah, I was side by side with him, and my car went into the grass, and it was uncontrollable. These things happen, man. You know, I'm yeah. sure you did the best you could do to whoever, avoid it. And... Whoever you are, I am so sorry, man. I am so sorry. And that's and, and again, like like Huff said, that is absolutely excellent to hear. It's it's not about, um, it's not even necessarily about the apology. It's about the responsibility. You you know that your your car dipped into the grass. You know you had little control. It caused you to have a collision with another driver, and you you honestly feel bad about it, right? Like, and I think that's the attitude that we foster here. And it's great to, to have you come on here and hear that. And I think other drivers should hear that because so many of them. Uh, obvious incidents where again they do something similar they dip into the grass and then suddenly they're sitting there going well you saw i was in the grass you should have never tried to pass me or or what have you right whatever the situation may be um and i would call it making excuses right not owning it so to hear you say that i think is fantastic so hopefully that driver gets to hear it as we as they watch the race back and knows uh knows who they're talking to yeah so um, I got a question for you, man. Um, you know, you're new to us. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you from? How long you been racing? Uh, yeah, let's get to know um, Gasolina. I am from a country called Algeria, located in North Africa. Not sure if you hear about it or not. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I I started my career as a sim racer on uh, Gran Turismo Sports on the PS4. Yeah and then switched off to ACC about two years ago in the lockdown of COVID. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I start. Uh, most of the time, like one year and a half, I spent on the competition server that Kuno provide in their games. Yeah, yeah, those, those provide some pretty good, pretty good yeah. opportunities for some decent racing. I had some decent races until they changed the, the timing, I mean, Yes. Before it was one hour race, yes. and now it's 30 minute race only, and that's what upset me and make me leave that uh, competition server. Um, I wanted to join leagues, but unfortunately my work doesn't allow me to do that because I am working four weeks and resting four weeks. So I have only four weeks to participate, then I will be off. Uh, the game for like four weeks. That's why I didn't join any league in any server right now. That's, oh. that's, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, yeah, that's very understandable. You're not, you know, when you know you're not going to be around, uh, you don't want to get yeah. locked in. And I can totally relate to that, uh, to the CP races getting changed and pushed back in time a little bit because, you know, myself, uh, you know, same thing with work and stuff. There's usually only one race uh, that I'm ever able to participate in, and for my time zone, it's uh, it used to be 10, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, which is kind of like my prime time. You know, whenever I'm in the rig, usually. Um, so I, I only get one a day. You know, some of these you know guys that are, you know, the European time zones are earlier in the day. You know, they've they've got them all day long, and there's guys that you know literally run them back to back to back. Well, I will take this opportunity to thank you guys for hosting this event, the 24 hours. It's my first time on the 24 hours. I did an eight hour before, but the 24 hours is just amazing. It's just making you push yourself to the limit. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah thank it's, you for it's hosting that event. 
you're very welcome man. It, it's a pleasure to have you um you're more than welcome keep an eye peeled in discord you know many more events to come in we've got a lot yeah. of things going on so i was gonna I say i would make sure to join any event i can i was gonna say Fantastic. yeah given given your schedule like you mentioned about your work where you're four weeks on four weeks off that's part of why i think we run these casual series right um, sure. There's no real championship involved. It's not, you know, there's no, and, and again, you know, we talk about season two being a real, you know, quote unquote, real championship. Um, no one's spending millions of dollars to drive with Box Three. But the point being is, these casual events, you don't have to worry about points. You go in, you have fun. So when you can join, absolutely hang out with us, man. You guys have done great tonight. Uh, it'd be good to see you joining the league and, and sticking with us for as long as you, yes. uh, as long as you want. Sure, we'll do it, mate. I didn't know there is a casual league, it's like you can join whenever you can. But now hearing that from you, yeah, I will join any event I will seek. Thanks for the invite. Absolutely. And definitely. Yeah, I'm having fun around uh, this server. It looks friendly. I like it already. What? And I hope to see you in the race. Yeah, most definitely, man. Um, you know, like you said, these races, you know, especially these long races, it's it's more the experience than it is a race, in my opinion. I've, I've done one. You know, I tried to take part in this one, but unfortunately, my team got an early disconnect. But it, it's a great experience, man. You guys are going to have stories to tell. And, you know, hey, Matthew, hey, Christoph, you remember that? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's going to be a thing you guys are going to share. And it's awesome. Yeah, it was memorable. Also, I sure. did uh, break my record of consecutive hours. There you Excellent. go. Excellent. Yeah, it was 4 hours and 40 minutes right now. Maybe in the future I will do like the crazy guys that wanted to oh, try gosh. the event solo. <laughs> yeah, the guys, yeah doing, maybe. the guys doing the 24 hours by themselves. I mean, we take a look at Joris. Joris Mentink up here, uh, currently running P4. Still chugging along, 600 just laps in. Tearing it, my up man. 500. Yeah, I was, uh, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, we have 18 hours limit time to drive. How he will finish? Um, it's scaled per team. So if you have a team of three, they get a little bit more drive time. Um, a team of two gets a little bit more, etc. So. Oh, in theory, I he I, I, I'm not in his car, but actually Will did the solo testing on it. But he, he has ample time to finish by himself. So it does scale it for how many teammates you have on your team. Okay, thanks for clearing that. Yes, sir. Excellent. And I'm just going to jump in real quick. And Bear Necessities in the chat. What he's doing up at 1 o'clock in the morning, I don't even understand. But thank you so much for jumping in here, my dude. As G. Stevens heads into the pits, it's going to let Dimitri Slow pick up P5. We will look and see who's coming into that 808 Audi now. We've been watching them for some time. Got to be Tracy, right? We're going to have to see. i got to wait for an update because uh, my software delays a little bit. But I'm thinking, Brian Canepin, I'm thinking, is going to finish out this race for these guys. So yeah, um, I hate to cut in. you off, but um, mm -hmm. I've got to jump in and take care of a report. I'm going to see which other stewards are available. But um, Gasolina, man, I appreciate you coming by. You know, thanks for coming in here and chatting with us, and uh, good luck in the rest of your stint, man. Have fun. Yeah, thank you for having for having me, guys. Yes, and sir. Good luck in the next events. Yep. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, man. Matthew That's one thing I know. Sorry to interrupt you, man, but we got a battle between Matthew Givens and Wyatt Hackley back here, lining up very quickly out of nowhere. We've also got to keep an eye on Steven. He stayed in the vehicle, but Sebastian Lucasen right there behind him. That's Go one of the things that I really like about Box is uh, it seems like most of the folks I interact with are North American, but we have so many people from so many cool places like When's the last time you talked to somebody from Algeria? I don't know that I ever have. I, I don't uh, think I ever have, and that's what I love. Not never mind box three. Let's let's take that out of the equation for a minute. Sure, sure. I yeah, love yeah. about sim racing in general, like this sure. opportunity that even again previous leagues was was talking to people from all all kinds of European countries. We had folks from Singapore in that league, Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. and now we have that here at box, and I, I absolutely love it. You get that different perspective, and yes, it's very difficult at times. 
Uh, we spoke to one of our solo drivers earlier. Very hard to understand with that accent, right? Not mm -hmm. his fault. Nothing, nothing against that person. That happens. Um, so sometimes things get difficult, but I feel like I, I would rather have that difficulty than just have it be this North American only centric league. Right. And, and just that, homologated. It, it, yeah, and I, that's part of what I love about these 24 hour events. A lot of these teams have lined themselves up. As we watch Wyatt Hackley now rolls wide into the grass and going to open that back up. So we'll jump back up here to G. Steven and Sebastian Lucasen now. Um, but as I was saying, like, I would rather have that difficulty of understanding and try to take the time to make sure I understand what folks are saying than to just have it this, be this North American centric thing. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's why I love that our races, you know, the the Euro trip is running a little earlier in the day to pick up the European folks. But the beer cup running on Tuesdays runs at 10 p.m. Eastern time so that, you know, not as many Europeans involved, but we're trying to set things up for everybody to be able to join in. And it's not always easy, right? And that's uh, I think that's a big push. Uh, one of the reasons Hoff and everyone else has pushed towards the uh, the new endurance series that uh, has just recently been announced. That's something that's just like this, like this event right here, is friendly for almost every time zone because it's on the weekend when you know most folks have the weekend off. You know, we understand there's a lot of people in different uh, sectors of the economy that don't get to have weekends off, and so they can only play on like a Monday afternoon. And so Euro Trip works for them. Uh, they can only play on you know uh, you know Tuesdays. And so cool. Here's here's the beer cup. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's really neat to have uh, you know these once a month six hour races where you get to have the a miniature version of this experience and, and get to find out if that's something you really like to do and you don't have to worry about a four-man team you can two-man it or you can three-man it mm -hmm. uh, well three driver it let's don't restrict it that much but um you get my point no absolutely and I, I i think we all get what you're saying as we keep an eye again sebastian lucasen continuing to apply pressure to g steven in that 808 audi um this is just fantastic. We're getting battles this late into the race. Mm -hmm. Again, still six hours and 11 minutes to go. We have been here almost 18 hours at this point. These guys continuing to drive. Some of our solo drivers, uh, Joris Mentink, one of them currently sitting in P4. We've got also got Thomas Jansch still on track. Out of four solo drivers that started, two of them still with us and both doing very well. But I'm curious to watch Steven here, and if he's able to hold on to P6. We don't know when esports legend Brian Canepin will be joining in again and taking over in this vehicle. Uh, but all, this whole team has done a superb job of holding any gains they've gotten, right? It doesn't matter who brought the gains. Uh, they've worked together to make sure that they're able to hold on to them afterwards. What's nice about it is seeing them have so much success and they don't seem to struggle on any part of the track. I was watching Tracy the other night at uh, Nürburgring and uh, yeah, the car was just everywhere. He was uh, he was really having to fight it. He said it was just a, a real handful, didn't handle curbs very well. And part of that may just be the setup they were running right there. And like now I think they're running a more esports HIMO type mm -hmm. setup. Um, can't verify that. I mean, it's on the front of the car, so you got to assume it's a HIMO setup. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he just he was just all over the place. He just did not have a good time with it. Uh, but then they come out here, and it seems like the car just wherever they want to put it, it's where it's going to go. You know, that's one of the things I've I've recognized about this Audi so far. The limited amount of time that I've driven it. Again, these guys driving the Evo 2, uh, the new car that was just released into ACC. What about a month ago? Maybe roundabout, right? It was in March, like, yeah. right? Yeah, so somewhere in there. Um, number one. For myself, and this is only talking about myself, and again, the slow driver that I am, the inexperienced driver that I am. Number one, this car, I I will spin the rear end out on this car much more easily than the Evo one. Uh, every time, I don't know what it is. I don't know if I haven't. I don't know if it's that I haven't found a setup that works for me yet. It doesn't seem to matter the track, uh, but I can very easily turn the back end of this corner out, and I was struggling with it a lot there. The other part, though, as you know, you talked about the curbs specifically here at Imola, and we're about to see these guys go through it. Uh, the Evo 1 Audi, as we come up into this chicane, there's every track guide you watch, everybody will tell you, and he just did it right there. Take those curbs, full send. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's Any car can eat them, you're fine. 
I'll tell you right now, the evil one did not eat those curves. Um, the two, however, that we see these guys driving right now, that's a little different. I was able to eat a lot more of those sausage curves through that chicane in the Evo 2 than I ever was in the Evo 1. And I really think if I took the time, I could make the two perform a lot better for myself with the proper setup and everything else. Uh, and like you said, though, these guys are, are really making use of it today. And I'm really impressed, again, not just by the gains they've made, but by the fact that the entire team is able to then hold on to them throughout this race. Right. And so there's no big drop off, no, no big fall off. So I, I tend to get a little too nerdy at times. And so I started doing some reading about what the actual differences are between this car and the real life cars, not the, mm -hmm. the digital model of the car. Uh, but one of the things I found, and this may play into what you're saying about the curbs, is the uh, Evo 2 is not relying on the floor and the underbody for the aero. It's actually more wing reliant. And so you're not needing that Venturi effect keeping it sucked closer to the ground so you can actually play with the rake and the ride height a little bit. And so that and a combination of, you know, better springs and better damping, uh, the real car and the, the digital version, uh, it just being maybe more compliant and more uh, more happy to, to eat a little bit of curve. Gotcha. I'll be, you know, when we saw the M for the BMW release, that car was absolutely dominating for the first few weeks that it was uh, available. I'll be curious to see if, you know, then uh, I should step back a minute. Uh, Again, the M4, the BMW M4, absolutely dominating. I'll be curious to see if, you know, the Audi hasn't done that. We haven't seen that same domination through, you know, in league races that we did with the M4. So I'll be curious to see if further updates come out to either nerf or strengthen the Audi in some way as we start getting a BOP for that. So far, I think it sits right where it needs to. It's competitive, but not overly so. Uh, it's nothing like we saw again with that M4 uh, uh, upon first release with 1.8. And the uh, same to be said for uh, Nugget's favorite ride is the uh, the Honda, the the Evo 22 stuffed into the Evo 19 body. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody really seems to be driving it. I haven't seen an uptick in the Honda. It has all new electronics, all new suspension, and uh, people they can't even use their old setups anymore. They're just you gotta just delete them. They don't do anything anymore. Well, let um, me ask you because you said that. Let me ask you this: Is that because all their setups are gone and no new setups have been released yet? So yeah, I think there's gonna be some to that. But there there are always guys uh, like Piner, for instance, uh, like Zap, for instance, that can take a car and they don't. It, I love Coach Dave. I live and breathe by Coach Dave setups. I'm a moderator in their Discord. But there's some of these guys that are like, I don't need a Coach Dave in my life. I'll just figure it out. Uh, Chris yeah. Moses is another one. He doesn't he doesn't pay for setups. He figures it out on his own. Um, so some of these guys just can intuitively get through it, muddle through it. They may not know exactly what this click and that click does, but they know what the car feels like. Gotcha. And so I would think that there's there's got to be at least a handful of guys out there that are diehard VTech guys that are like, no, I know what to do with this car. And I, I, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, we certainly didn't see an uptick in Box 3. Nobody looking to change cars to the Honda after all the updates. That's for sure. Um, again, I think Nugget, the only one really running the Honda at this point through our races. Even, with that, even as excited as I was about that update, I've turned maybe six laps in that car at Suzuka, and it felt nice as Blue gets in the car. Um, I guess I missed that. Yeah, I was going to say we see Blue in the car now, currently sitting off in the dirt. I'd like to say, I, I would love to take uh, credit for that because we did say we were going to commentator curse Blue until the car exploded. Uh, that hasn't happened yet, and he spun before we could get on to him, so. He didn't need your help. He blew it on his own. He figured it out all by himself. That's what you get when you mix seven different kinds of sandwiches from seven different <laughs> fast food restaurants. I think you kind of deserve it. Oh. Again, I'm not, not wanting to, and, and everybody watching right now knows what an Audi fan I am. I'm not looking to try and put focus here, but this is where the battle is. We've got another one going on as well back here between Matthew Givens and Wyatt Hackley. As these guys tighten up, again, that 5-5-5 five, five, five Bentley just spoke to Gasolina regarding their driving today. Matthew Givens under pressure now from Wyatt Hackley in the number 24 Aston Martin. Gasolina in their chat saying, for me, I was always slow in CDA setup by like half a second compared to my own made setups. Um, 
I can't relate to that because I'm one of those people I need somebody to set I need somebody to dial it in and get it close right um, like I said I, I you know I've got coach Dave setups for the Audi the the Evo one and they weren't perfect there were things I had to make adjustments to by doing some research to get my you know to get myself dialed in a little better uh, the Audi with their setups I always felt was very understeery and yeah. once I made adjustments for that I was able to to correct it and make that or feel like I wanted uh, I think people like myself are basically what do I want to say Stefan Ricegas joining back in now looks like pushing people out these guys must have gotten bopped off the server now jumping back in but sitting in the pits uh, sorry but as I was saying I need I, I'm not a car setup guy the people in the chat will so, joke. They've heard me say it before. Car Grove Room. That's what I know. That's fine. <laughs> I can make it do that. Uh, so the Coach Dave gets me close. That's what I need. From there, yep. I need to adjust it. And what I was able to do with the Evo 1, and I'm hoping it's the same with the Evo 2 setups once they're released, is, again, it got me close. I had to make some tweaks on my own. But then I knew when I made a mistake, if I, if I did something, it was me. It was not the car. Right. And I think that's what's important is that when you get to a point where that setup is set up right, that you know when a mistake is made, it wasn't the setup, it wasn't the car, it was because you did something. All right. So I'll, I'll say this in closing. I need to step over into uh, uh, our, our chat for our team real quick. But uh, with the CDA, uh, I've gotten a little bit of insight and uh, this coming Wednesday, they're actually going to have a live video on the Coach Dave Academy uh, YouTube and they're going to be going through the setup process for ACC. So you'll actually be able to see one of their professional drivers and one of their engineers working together through the process. So you get an idea of it. So yeah, Gasolina in the chat, uh, Haimo, Haimo setups, that's uh, Derry McCormick. Oh, it's uh, Steven goes off and hits the wall. There's a little bit of a spin man, there. Man. No good. And see if he comes into the pits to fix that. And now he's going to stay out. But the Hymos, they're, they're more esports, pointy type setups, like something that somebody like a crow would want to drive, mm -hmm. where it's going to put, go exactly where he points it. CDA is meant to be a balance between quick and safe. Uh, so, yeah, an alien can make it absolutely fly. But uh, the Coach Dave setup, somebody like me can just get in and drive. And a lot of people that want the more esports style setups will find the Coach Daves to be understeery. And the good thing about Coach Dave, and I, I, you know, I'm not paid by them. I don't work for them, but you know, we Box Three, we're partnered with Coach Dave. We're partnered with SimGrid, so we'll give him a couple minutes here. Um, James Parker is really great, and that Discord's really great about helping folks try to understand, you know, try these little tweaks to make the car do what you want it to do. So mm -hmm. that's that's my little spiel for them. No, and that's actually, I mean, and and again, not to to pump them up. I mean, we are partnered up with them, but. Um, that was actually where I found the solution to that Audi Evo 1 uh, understeer was was back at Coach Dave to say, you know, they have a, a full post written that says, hey, if your car is understeery, do this. But someone like myself, I have to go look that up, right? Um, yeah. But they're they're helpful. They're, they're able to do that over there. Uh, looking in the chat now, these guys talk about the HIMO setups, expensive setup for aliens, okay. <laughs> one rule says. Uh, I, I don't know. I that. I've never back. driven those. I know Crow drives Hymo setups. I'm thinking maybe they wouldn't be for someone like myself. And Revis had to I've, jump on us. Got a bunch of stuff going on. You and I have talked about on. this before. Um, but for me, it's more like the mental move of I trust that the Coach Dave folks are smarter than I am when it comes mm -hmm. to setups. Yeah. And so as soon as I get a Coach Dave setup, it's a lot harder for me to say this car is messed up. And it's easier for me to say I am the problem. Mm-hmm. And that helps me personally be a better driver because I take more responsibility for my own mistakes and learn from those rather than saying, what is wrong with this car? See, and again, though, I found, and I, and I think every setup is different for every driver, right? Um, you know, these Coach Daves are set, it's a blanket statement for that vehicle and that track, mm -hmm. right? I don't know that that necessarily works because as I said, I, I purchased the Audi setups from Coach Dave I used them, I set them up, and every track I went to, I felt like the car would just not turn in. And that that's not me, right? I'm even going slower and, and backing down to make sure that I'm hitting my apexes and all these things. 
I was still feeling like this every time I turned the wheel. It's just not cutting over like I expect the car to cut, right? Yeah. And once I went and did a search, I said, okay, I, I've got wicked understeer. How do I fix this? Because again, not a car guy. Got to go look it up. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a Coach Dave article, not in the setups, but but they write articles as well on how to how to adjust certain things and what every setting does when you're trying to set up the vehicle. Found uh, what they wrote, said, hey, adjust these four things if you have understeer. Do them one at a time, but mm -hmm. try adjusting these four different settings if you have understeer. And sure enough, once I did, guess what? Now the car is turning in. And once I felt comfortable and had it dialed, it took some tweaking because maybe maybe that flat coach coach Dave setup uh, right out of the box is perfect for some other people. For me, right. I could not defeat that understeer. Once I made those adjustments, now my setups are set and I no longer have that problem. Now I feel as though, okay, when now when I screw up, that's a hundred percent on me because I this feels mm -hmm. perfect if I drive it properly. Mm. Yeah, I, just, I went, especially newer drivers, I always try to discourage newer drivers from even touching setup. Mm -hmm. Like, just let the let yourself learn. And this is just, again, specifically about newer drivers or new people who are brand new to a car. Um, is like going from, for example, like the Audi to the Porsche. They should drive very, very differently. Yeah. Um, right? And so I just, I, with newer drivers who get very frustrated about that learning process i was just like really try to kind of grind into them like just think through what happened like do you need to break earlier do you need to turn in with less input you, because you're overturning or like kind of the conversations we've been having tonight all kind of combined into a who are you as a driver and then how do you navigate the track instead of skipping straight to setups as the quick and easy fix and because those can be expensive if you want to like really go like even the high mo stuff right um but we did see on the screen right now we got some new penalties and drive throughs we got a five second penalty for the 14 car in fourth place and then a drive through for the 808 car for track limits i believe oh wow so we'll see them clear i think the five I'm second penalty that. is from a incident yeah five second would have been assigned to buy uh huff if that's if he went out to yeah. uh take care of some stewarding so that's going to come from huff so that, yeah puts them now ele technically 11 seconds behind third um yeah we'll have to keep that in mind as we're talking through standings yep and and you said the 808 pulling a drive-through so g steven not only with the spin but now going to pull a drive-through well, obviously a little struggle for him and our leader, Leon Lange, goes off track. Obviously, plenty of lead there. He's got enough time to recover. But interesting to see. Those guys have been very steady up front. That entire team, uh, Justin Wichman, Julian Rayberg, and Theo Overhouse, along with Leo Lange, currently in the car, very steady throughout today's race. 17 drivers still on track. We wind down. Now under six hours, we are over two thirds of the way, actually three quarters of the way complete in this 24 hours race. Uh, much OPRD in the chat. Hymo or CDA both need adjust to your taste on some tracks is better Hymo on others CDA, but always anyway, they need to be tweaked. They are just yeah. a baseline. And I, I, you know what, I, again, after using mm -hmm. the CDA setups for both the Audi and the Merc, I would 100% agree with that. Yeah. It definitely helped me to watch the CDA like videos that they would do that they would attach to the setups. Because mm -hmm. um, if like again, like for me, it was always the last effort I would do was to start digging and setup, mostly because I think I was afraid of messing it up. And so to like be able to use the setup, try it out, make a mistake, and then refer to their video of them driving, I would be like, oh, maybe it's actually just my driving line, or maybe it's my inputs, mm -hmm. or X, Y, and Z. Um, I think I'm just afraid of messing up a setup. But the part, uh, we got 808 going into the pits now. If only they could fix the damage. They cannot. <laughs> but if only they could. I wonder how much how much damage he's carrying though. I mean, the, the vehicle doesn't look that horrible as they it's roll like, through oh, for their drive-through now. Yeah. Um. 
So it's gonna be oh, curious to know how much they have as far as whether or not they need to actually repair that damage. Yeah. Uh, we've seen several drivers today just stick with the damage they had. But there it is, Moritz Husser in that number 67 portion now able to get ahead of 808, of the 808 Audi. So right there, a drive through penalty will cost you as G. Steven rolls back out onto track. Huff, if you're back, does it make sense to walk through the penalty on the 14 car? Um, yeah, give me one second before I can give you full focus, so just wrapping it up, actually. Doris Mentink, that number 14 car, again, one of our solo drivers today. This cat rolling straight through now over 18 hours in wow. that vehicle. Unbelievable to think about. I, there's no way. And only a five second penalty. <laughs> yeah, only a five second penalty. <laughs> it's going to be very quick. <laughs> only a five second penalty. Uh, my wife would have found me in the morning swinging from a rafter if I had to sit in my <laughs> place seat challenge for that long. Not so much because my I hate my life for driving, but more because the place seat challenge is going to destroy my back. And I figure it's better to just get it over with than let this happen. It might be worth maybe worth asking what kind of seat that Mentink has. Right. Matthew Givens again in that 555 Bentley right now. Once again, I want to take a moment to thank everybody watching right now. We have some great visitors tonight. A lot of folks from the league. I'm, I'm going to forget people, so I don't, want to forget, I don't want to thank everyone by name. But I do want to thank everybody for coming in and watching. It's not just drivers watching tonight. We've had some visitors, Moons, Bear, a few others. G. Steven, who's driving right now. G, G. Steven's sister into the chat to tell him that she <laughs> loves him. That was fantastic. We're bringing families together here at Box 3. That We're was just saving wonderful. the environment. We're saving families. We are we saving the really... environment. We had that conversation earlier. We are saving the environment. <laughs> right? We're building oh. bridges here, Dunn. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and while you were... I don't know if you were still in here or not, but as uh, as Rebus and I were talking, you know, we, we discussed... Uh, you know, we had a, a gentleman from Algeria in here, uh, Gasoline, mm -hmm. yep. coming in here to talk with us. And, and yep. again, the opportunity to be able to just talk to people from all over the world. And it's so weird because there's so, I, you know, I love this community that, we, that we're building. And I love the way people are coming together. At the same time, it's so difficult sometimes. And, and, and I'll admit that it's really hard. Uh, as someone who's done a job in the past where their, their job was literally uh, talking to people from foreign nations... And, and that was it, literally mm -hmm. talking, because I was teaching English as a second language. It's very difficult sometimes because you, you start to realize and things start to click where the sense of humors aren't the same, right? Mm -hmm. um, the idioms and things of this are not the same. And so somebody will say something and all of a sudden another, another member of the community will come back and go on, what? Um, <laughs> so I'll give you a perfect, it just happened this week with Ottens and I love Ottens. Uh, <laughs> I was watching, you know, again, as I said earlier, because my job is basically computer based and I can sit on a laptop and have something on in the background. I, a lot of times I put movies on, um, always movies I've seen before, so I don't really have to pay attention, right? They're noise in the background. Mm -hmm. And, uh, this past week I watched the Austin Powers trilogy while work. Oh, oh, I love that. I haven't seen three, those in way right? too long. Uh, they're, just, they're just awesome. Right. So I watched the Austin Powers trilogy and, and. Austin Powers 3, gold, gold member. Mm -hmm. um, gold member is a Swedish guy and says, I have your faja, right? You, like mm -hmm. the, the whole accent and everything. <laughs> Giving Mike Myers a chance to just continually flex on how many accents he can do. But it remind every time now when I hear Ottens talk, whether we're, you know, when, whenever we're in oh, voice no. chat, I hear a gold member in my head. I have your faja, and so, so I oh, threw it no. up in the I threw it up in the Discord, and he had not a clue what I was talking mm. about, none whatsoever. Not his fault, right? But it's still one They're of those like, things. Oh my you gosh! It, you're like, really? You don't get this? Oh wait, never mind. I okay, it's fine. Like it was like a year ago where someone from another league was like messaging about something they used a gif from a country song in the u.s mm -hmm. it was like totally not helpful for what they were trying to say 
<laughs> it was like I was like, you, if you don't realize, if you don't know the context of that gif, you don't realize how bad that is that you just use that gif. Right. And it was like, whatever. <laughs> it's like, no, this matters. I promise you, the, the context of this gif actually matters. <laughs> so. Oh. And with that, I will go mobile again. Our driver's having spread out a little bit. Oh, I keep whacking that mic every time, like it's some kind of idiot. Apologies to everyone listening right now. As I swing it out of the way. Again, five now five hours and 48 minutes left, more than three quarters of the way through this 24 hour event. We can't even call this a race anymore. This is an event. And while yes, there are more there are more endurance races coming, I gotta tell you, this is not gonna happen more than once or twice a year on my end at least. I'm getting right. way too old for this. <laughs> so happy to have it. And, and Dunn, I, seriously, you and Huff both, i got to thank both you guys. And I know Huff had to step away. I'll have to thank him when he gets back. But I want to thank both you guys for, for being in here. I'm not sure, uh, being by myself, I would have made it. Or that our viewers would instead be watching racing. Uh, while I occasionally jump in when there's a battle to commentate. Uh, and the rest of the time keeping myself awake on coffee and nicotine. So... Well, I, th I honestly, when I first joined the call, I was like, okay, I'm going to play Grid Legends, which I know is a bad game, but I'll like ba basically play a crappy racing game on controller while just shooting the shit with you all. And then I got three minutes into that and I was like, no, I have to actually pay attention to do this. So kudos to you for actually doing this. <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, I'm just like, ah, it'll be fine. I'll just sit here and focus on something else, and then it'll be fine. Not happening. Yeah, it's not happening, sir. I hate to tell you. That's never how it works. Yeah, Stroth, we are in lap 620. Moving these cars. All around a minute 45 track. <laughs> over and over again. Having a blast. Yeah, Blue still in P15, just doing his darndest to get that Nissan around this track. Doing his darndest. 18 laps back. Can we Living ensure that we? Life. Can we make sure we talk about Blue as much as possible? We want a commentator curse him right into the ground. Yeah, I think I don't know if he's gonna make it to the end of this race. Five and a half hours is a long time. He's I not mean, finishing out for that team, is he? I mean, he just might. He might not make it to the end of this stint. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is he's not scheduled to run the next five and a half hours, is he? I don't think so. Well, I don't think they're going to make it a whole five and a half hours with him in the car. <laughs> he might end that real quick. Give, give everybody a nice little nap time. Revis, I miss my Molson and even a little done. Impossible. I think we should mute that message. I'm not sure that should be in the chat. I'm not sure how I'm about about time, about I feel about it. I would actually be okay with Revis saying I miss Molson. Um, my concern is him saying I miss my Molson. Oh, you've been claimed. That, like just that one word kind of pushes it over. How much the larger edge of than creepy, you? Creepy, doesn't it? Is. I think it's for every reason. I I picture Revis as like a six foot five like grizzly bear of a man. Just because of the name Revis, though. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's for whatever reason. And I've noticed this about myself, especially as you were talking about, like, different accents and nationalities and all, all, all that stuff, is I will, again, for un, with no understanding of why it, this these are happening, will create these, like, personas and physical understandings of who I assume someone is. Meanwhile, I am nearly spot on with Rebus <laughs> somehow. Oh, my gosh, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, but um, hold on. I, I mean, I think we all do that, right? Like, but here's the thing: reality and your perception are two different things. Like, I would have never, absolutely. like, I've seen Huff. I've seen Huff streams. I've watched. I've watched him broadcast. I knew he was mm -hmm. generally what I would call a quote unquote skinny guy, right? Um, but I yeah. never realized he was six foot five. Yeah, same. Yeah, six like, foot five as well. I'm like, he said that earlier today, and I'm like, what? Like you can't tell that watching a stream, so I never mm -hmm. would have guessed he was six foot five. Not 
Can we just start years. the rumor that I'm also six foot five? No, we know you're about. You're all about going to work for Willy Wonka very soon. Oh, that's not very kind of you to say, but I, I'll take it. It's not my fault. It's just like we all know, Red doesn't do leg day. True. You know. And Zap is very close to seven feet tall. No. Maybe minus no. four or five inches, but he's I would close. not believe that. You need to let us create some lore here. No, I'm going to create lore. Lore. I think I think you and Zap are about the same height, and that if given the choice, you guys would choose the same shift outside the Emerald Palace. Oh. <laughs> well, on that note, folks, this is the end of the race. Somebody hurry up, hurry up and hack this server. Let's <laughs> end this right now, everybody. I'm pretty sure you two would be standing guard duty right outside Willy Wonka's wow. Chocolate Factory. I need to get some orange makeup going here. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a guess, but that could be honest. I, I will say that could honestly be because of the camera angle during Zap's stream. Again, I would have never guessed that Huff ah. was six foot five. Ah. You know? I think Huff has rejoined us, hasn't he? Yes, yeah, he yeah, I'm back. So, Joris Mentink now up into. P3 after Mathis. What happened to P3? Was, Mathis was went into the pits. Got it. Opened that up. What? For two laps? No. No, 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 no. That 78 laps I'm showing is not correct, but uh, Joris Mentink able to move up. I saw that while we were talking. Okay. Gee, Steven, in that 808, we saw lose position to Moritz Husser earlier due to the drive through. William Campbell now, now off track. Were you guys asking about that incident that I was going oh, yeah, over? I was, I was, yeah, or was it in the it chat? Sense for, would it make sense for us to go and just give a quick overview of that? Sure. Um, if it was somebody in the chat, you know, I, I was going to say we're not going to address that here. But, you know, if we're just going over an incident, like the way we review it, uh -huh. you know, that's why I step away. We always have, you know, at least two stewards look at it. Uh, independent, of course, you know, actually grab cold grass. He's one of our stewards, you know. Uh, he knows the rule book. He knows the you know, how we do things. So, uh grabbed him for an opinion essentially what we saw is we saw um mentink uh, i'm horrible at these names but he was a lap down he was coming up on the uh, car number 90 in the porsche there said in p2 he was two laps down and he had a solid run there going into the the second to last corner and he kind of tapped him a little bit the first tap was okay you know we'll, we'll give him that but then he kind of takes a, an outside line and we were close to calling it a racing incident, but given that he was two laps down, it should have never been an attack that he would have, he should have done in that situation. Gotcha. Gotcha. Just curious. That is where the fun we're stewarding. Fun. We. It's been fantastic. You guys have been doing a great <laughs> job, though. I mean, Will, Will Green, Huff, you jumping in, Grass, I know Clueless Geezer was around earlier helping mm -hmm. with the stewarding. You guys have done a great job to lay out these penalties during the course of this race versus waiting for them all to come in at the end. Um, and we've seen the number of reports that you guys have had to handle, so I can imagine most of this week would have been taken up by you guys doing stewarding reports when you have... Uh, you most know, of this week, man, jobs. we've, uh, you know, mad props to Will. He's an uh, excellent member of the team. Uh, he does a heap here. Um, a we've got most of them banged out, and, you know, we got them. We actually had to take a little sidestep from our initial um, way that we were going to report incidents on this. We were meant to have the guys upload them to SimGrid, like we do on our, our league races. But evidently, come to find out, that that's a legacy feature that they don't really support anymore because nobody was really using it. Most people do it either this way that we're doing it currently, or like the old method that we had in place. Uh, but hey, we thought we'd try it out. You know, it's a step easier for our drivers. Honestly, it does make it a bit easier for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but come to find out, team, uh, team events are not... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for here? Supported. Uh, supported, yes, thank you. Gotcha. Okay. That's such a tough word to look for when you're like 40 hours deep right now. <laughs> <laughs> Zap Brannigan in the chat saying the RCMP is on the way to my house. I think because I called him a Noompa Loompa. Um, that's okay. You can send him down here, Zap. <laughs> because when I, when I think of RCMP, all I picture is, is Dan Ancroyd in the movie Canadian Bacon. So I'm not overly concerned. Thank you. We got ways of making you pronounce the letter O. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Tell me more about that. <laughs> you never saw it? You never watched that John Candy movie, Canadian Bacon? 
No. <laughs> oh. oh my god, that's another good one. When because John Candy died, what year was that? Oh, dude, that's been a while now. You'd have to say something like that. 1994. That was the year I was born. What? Wait, what? Yeah. Take that back. What'd you say? John Candy died the year, actually, two months before I was born. To the day. Wow. 94, you said? Uh huh. I didn't think it was that early, but it wouldn't surprise me either. Yeah, March 4th. Oh. But, Canadian Bacon, if you're married to a Canadian or if you are Canadian, you should definitely watch that movie. Excellent film. So, what do I, what have I seen? Home Alone, Cool Runnings. Um, Spaceballs. Oh, come on. Spaceballs. It's fantastic. Like, um, History of the World? I mean, not that John Candy was in it, but uh, if we're going to go the Mel, Bre the Mel Brooks tip, please tell me you've seen History of the World Part 1. I have not. <laughs> I know you are a huge movie guy. You are a I'm not in my life right now. Basically, then. my my experience with movies from any movie that came out before, like, 2010, it had to have been something my parents bought on VCR. And that I was bored enough to throw it in the VCR and start, start watching it. I start watching it. I probably watched it a hundred times over and over again. So just remember, um, we're on box three after dark, right? Uh huh. So all you need to know about History of the World Part One is two things. Number one, Mel Brooks movie. So right up there with Spaceballs. Number two, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, the servant waits uh, while the master baits. Ah. Uh, See, Madeline Kahn. Have you ever seen Blazing Saddles, Doug? No, you you get you get you get into this freaking mode where you start just naming off movies. And I'm like, there's not a chance I've seen any of these movies. So How big movies. is your Plex uh, server? Uh, um, right now, I'm sitting on uh, about 2,900 films and just under 30,000 episodes of television, and around 130,000 music tracks. Like, why? Because I but love content. Why? I love con I love being able to access the content I want. And th this is a weird uh, segue. We talked about this like a month ago, of like the whole i renting mm -hmm. phrase. Is I think maybe it's just like a generational thing. Is as a digital age has come, my feeling of ownership over any content that I did not create is zero. So yeah. Here, so so For here's sure. the problem. But here's the thing. With i racing. The content I've bought, as long as I maintain my subscription, that content is is basically mine. They can legacy it, but I can still use it on the service, right? Um, they can revoke that at any time, and I get that I don't truly own that. When it comes to content, again, I'm a TV and movies guy. I love movies. I love television shows. Quality content. So I'll give you a perfect example. One of my favorite shows of all time, Seinfeld. Okay? We great, great, show. great show. Great show. We could also talk about It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Again, one of my absolute favorite shows of all time. It's one I'll put on shuffle and watch any episode that pops up. I don't care. I love it. Shows like this, if you're subscribed to Netflix, Hulu, any of these services, they come and go whenever they want by licensing agreements. Oh, yeah. You know where they never disappear from? My Plex server. Yeah, and so, like, for me, it's like, okay, cool. And when it disappears from Netflix, I'm like, great, I can watch something different now. Mm -mm. But I don't want to. I want to watch Sunny. <laughs> or I want to watch like, Seinfeld. I, I don't, know like, what I want to watch. What I'm getting at is not, like, whether or not that is the best or the right righteous thing. It's more of just, like, whatever. That's just how I see the world now. It's like, yep, things come and go. Like, Man. if I, like, using iRacing as an example, if mm -hmm. I am paying, I'm paying for, to, I'm paying to spend my time on this thing, mm -hmm. not to own this thing. And I, like, in the way that my attention works is the moment I look away from this, the chance I go back to it is slim mm -hmm. because I'll move on to something else that I'm there for putting my money into. And so, okay. yeah, like, even like when, G, when ACC, even with all the DLC that ACC has, once ACC 2 comes out, my interest in ACC 1 and the, care I have that I bought the DLC, zero. It's dead to me. <laughs> so that's just the way like I don't know, that's the world I think we've created with the way we roll out and have with DMCA with all these things, like the ability for someone to create their own content that they own, um it's just odd compared to like, oh yeah, we own we buy a movie, we own it, we're good. 
But I guess maybe, and to your point, what you said at the, at the start of this was the generational divide. As I was coming up, you owned a VHS tape. You owned a DVD. Yeah. And today, you can own a Blu-ray. Now, technically, they will tell you, no, you don't. You bought a license. Just because yeah, it's a, a physical key. item, you still yeah. only bought a license. That's fine. And if you want to continue to collect physical media, I'm okay with that. That's, you know, I collect record albums uh, from time to time. Expanding my collection because I like vinyl and I like the way it sounds. When it, I also, in, I've enjoyed for a long time digital content. I've loved this. I've loved being able to see this progress from VHS to DVD to Blu-ray to now streaming. Even though with streaming the quality goes down slightly because anybody who thinks a 4K movie on Netflix looks the same as a 4K movie on a Blu-ray is sadly mistaken, and they need to have their eyes checked. But the point is it's the convenience of I can stream this I can take it anywhere with me on my phone on my computer on my TV so I love that aspect of it the part I don't like is the licensing that any moment this favorite content can go away mm -hmm. right and I, I absolutely despise that aspect of, of this digital world that we live in and so now you know I started with Windows Media Center and now, and now moved on to Plex, I've decided to build my own Netflix mm -hmm. and my own Spotify because I don't want my content to disappear. The things I enjoy, I don't want them to go away. Um, now, don't get me wrong. And what I'm, and what I, is what I'm doing wrong, quote unquote, probably. But I also <laughs> maintain a full cable subscription. I have a Netflix subscription. I have an Amazon Prime subscription. I have a Disney Plus subscription. I still subscribe to all these services. I still pay for this content. Um, I don't like their business model of taking it away whenever they want to. And I think that's my biggest problem, right? And I, I get why yeah, they I do think, it. I think, like, the... why Maybe why I'm like I have grown to be just like, yep, it comes, it goes, is I think because the amount of content we have available to us at any point now, like, because you said you have, what, like, this... Like 2,300 movies or something, right? Mm -hmm. The number you said. For me, there is a number that is far less than that that becomes my limit of how many movies I see even reasonable for my brain to say, even be able to like call off. Like, I, I probably listen to maybe 200 different songs a month because right. after that, I'm like, I it does not come to my mind to listen to that X, X Y, or Z song because there are hundreds of thousands of songs to listen to but i have to like keep my my attention so focused which then i think the generational conversation is oh my gosh no one in this generation has any has any attention span it's like but my focus is laser sharp if it's in front of me i am focused on it i might not be focused for very long <laughs> but i'm focused and like then i'm not distracted by ooh, i haven't watched or seen or heard x y and z in a long time mm -hmm. I, you would have to remind Seinfeld love Seinfeld watched it front to back multiple times the last time I did that was in college I had not thought about Seinfeld unless someone told me or like mentioned it to me since then we uh, my but wife I love and I spent half the year falling asleep to Seinfeld it's one yeah. of our it's one of our uh, going to bed put it on shows along with Golden Girls Roseanne mm, yep you know, we, we like what we like. And the problem is, again, those shows are not available all the time on streaming services. And so to have and, that taken uh, yeah. away when that, be, you know, when that's one of the things that, that is a staple in your life and to, to just have it taken away uh, like that, you know, is absolutely, it's, uh, I don't want to say devastating. That's, a, that's the wrong word to use, but it certainly is a, is first world problem minor inconvenience and one that I'm simply not willing to deal with and so it's easier to just run my own server and be done um, and I think where I am I'm just trying to like troubleshoot my own brain right now um, like YouTube I think has also kind of messed that up for me because there's always there will always be a new video mm -hmm. to watch and so like my need or want to return to something unless I see it as like a study of history mm -hmm. <laughs> or I am like looking back, looking to cite something or refer to something in a future conversation is next to none. 
See, I think I'm almost not a, nostal though, not a nostalgia person, though. You know, I think I think what we have now is wonderful with with all these platforms where people who and and don't misunderstand. I'm not saying they never should have occurred. You know, we've gotten things like YouTube, um, and even even more recently, we could say TikTok, right? With these short videos, these short form videos. There's mm -hmm. people doing some very creative, very funny things with these platforms that they've been given, right? I would never deny that there's some very creative people who otherwise would have possibly never been discovered if not for these platforms. At the same time, there is so much garbage out there, including, I'm sure, some of my own shit that I've posted on YouTube or whatever. Like, I'm, I, my stuff is nothing certainly special. That it's diluted what's actually good right hmm. um looking back again you mean in like an ob objective well, sense or just like like what do you mean when you say actually in that sentence what do you mean because you said you just diluted what is actually good i think well, like, well just, because it is I, because yeah. things become memes and I, I i don't you know specific scenes or something or or, or mm -hmm. let me put it this way going to the movies going to watch a film and it's not to say there were not garbage films back in the in the in the seventies. Because there absolutely Abs were. <laughs> oh, there absolutely were. There were some absolutely horrendous, horrendous yeah. movies. But because of the limited access, because I, I feel there were a lot fewer of them, because mm. studios had to pick and choose. They knew they had this one outlet, right? Um, mm. They had a limited budget. Now, anybody can get anything made. And again. Overall, I think that's a good thing. A lot of creators would never have been discovered. Without these digital platforms, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing right now. We wouldn't be having this conversation live on Twitch in front of 50 or 60 people, however many are watching, right? So again, overall, I believe that's a good thing. But I also believe it gave rise to a lot of absolute garbage. And not necessarily <laughs> that the content itself is garbage, but more that yeah. the fact that everybody suddenly thought that because the platform existed, that they had something to say that needed mm -hmm. to be heard. Right? Mm. And I think yeah. we all dabble in it. Again, I've uploaded videos to YouTube, whether reviews and things like that. Made no sense. Doesn't matter. I shouldn't have probably done it. Um, I think that infects all of us at some point or another. But I don't yeah, think so that's it, the good aspect of it. I think sometimes, and, and this is why, you know, I have a Twitter account. It's used to promote the league. We have a league Twitter account, but I also use my own to promote the league. Not that that's important, but because I re I came to realize that what I have to say, nobody wants to hear what I have to say. And I'm not talking about political discourse. I'm not talking about anything you know of merit in the world that we would have a conversation, a serious conversation around a table together. Um, some of the goofy shit that you find online, <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Like, stop it. Yeah. <laughs> Not every thought that comes in. I need into you to create an account that just is you telling people to stop it. Stop it. Because you know what? Here's the problem. Not every thought that comes into your head needs to be shared with the world. Yeah. Again, um, overall, a good thing because a lot of content creators were discovered because of these platforms. And we wouldn't have some of the things we have today without them. Yeah. But sometimes, and shut up. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. I. It's weird because like, I think... I am so, I don't know the right word to use, judicious with my time mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of like, I, and, and like my voice you know, on social media. I, I, Instagram, I'd say is probably my most commonly used uh, social media platform because like I can curate it in a way that makes sense to me where like Facebook, I saw, I got off of Facebook a couple years ago, which is weird to say now, but um, never did. just because like I felt so out of control of the content I was seeing and, and the way it made me feel. Not that I need to feel like the world is in my, my hands, but I need to know that I am not being told what to think or believe or feel based on an algorithm that I can't see mm -hmm. or can't interact with in a meaningful way. Instagram is owned by Meta. Same company, same thing. I just have the illusion of control on that. So I'm not <laughs> naive to that, but it feels differently to me and I can... Maybe it honestly it might be because I got on Facebook when I was like 12 or 13. And so the algorithm is informed by 10, 12, Jesus, 15 years of my life. Mm -hmm. 
where Instagram, I started it in college. And so the, that who I was then is who they're basing and are building the rest of me off of. So I think that's also important to acknowledge, but um, yeah, it's just interesting that I don't see, I never anymore on social media will just like post out of my own voice. I will reshare things on like my story or whatever, for example, of like, hey, I thought this, was a, this is something that I want to quote unquote retweet or like say I think is important to re say. Mm -hmm. um, but I am not someone who, even though I am pretty highly educated, like I do, I do engage in some real pretty, like I think interesting and important stuff on the day to day cycle. I also am not, my ego does not allow me to think that anything I'm doing is actually my idea, my idea alone. And therefore I should share it through my own voice. Gotcha. Because like I am, we are being flooded with content and knowledge and thoughts and opinions all day long. Like, Maybe it's like the the way that um, uh, like the, the stealing of ideas or plagiarism is like ground into us in school nowadays. But like I get maybe I'm so afraid of plagiarizing or like stealing someone else's idea that I don't want to claim anything as my own. Or like originally I don't know, mine. because I think your own opinions are your own. And I get what you're saying about right. being flooded with all this content and all this news and all these opinions, right? Yep. But I think as long as you are not uh, pigeonholing yourself to one source or to one mm -hmm. opinion and unwilling yep. to hear other things, you can hear both yep. sides and then form your own opinion coming out of that. I don't think your opinion is plagiarizing, right? Mm -hmm. I, no, you're I, right. You have I right. sourced yep. and, and I read about X, X and this person said A, B, and C about X. Right? And these people yeah. said DEF, whatever. And having read all that, you know what? I can sit back and go, well, I kind of get where this person's coming from. But I can also yeah. play devil's advocate, right? Um, and I think what that's I think that's important is that you're able to see the backside of that argument or or the opposite side, if we want to say that. So, how do we get from movies and? all the way to the content that's being produced in social media. I mean, it does come down to Beautiful. content, but this is what I'm talking about. Like, and, and, and part of what drives me nuts as we take a look here, though, Brian Canapin has joined uh -oh. the track again. It's on like Donkey Kong, ladies and gentlemen. Esports legend Brian Canapin now back behind the wheel. Can he make up a six lap? That, uh, oh, gosh, six laps. Can he do it? He might be able to. I would not listen. We don't know what's going to happen in the next five hours. And He's a true esports legend. I will officially only refer to him as the esports legend. That's if he can get on the podium. That's who he is. Even if he doesn't make podium, he's still an esports legend. Your boy blew off the track again. <laughs> I'm going to continue to commentate or curse him as much as possible. How long do you think his stint's supposed to be? Blue. Yeah. I wouldn't give more than 15 minutes behind the wheel, but apparently that team has made different choices than I would. <laughs> He's yellow flagged again, slowing down, now pulling off the side of the track, obviously having some trouble as he sits patiently waiting for people to go by. Uh oh, we got what is going on in there? Oh, he's in the chat asking to take a little bit of focus over here to Timothy Glendening. Timothy behind the wheel of that 555 five, five Bentley. Currently running in 13th. How old were you when you learned that we use 555 five, five numbers as like spoof numbers? Phone numbers. Um, they've been doing it since I was watching TV as a kid, so pretty early, I guess. It took me way too long to learn that. Really? To learn that any 555 five, five number was a spoof number? Yeah. I'm old enough to remember party lines and phone numbers that started with letters done. Um, I, I mean, I remember being, I remember when I was a kid, we moved towards like having to use area codes. Yeah, no, um, there were times when I was growing up, you would pick up the phone and somebody would already be talking because that line yeah. was already connected. Yeah. So. I'm not, I'm not there, but. It was really cool with landlines because I could screw with my dad when I was younger. Oh no. If you picked up the phone upstairs dialed your own phone number and then hung up before it could ring 
it would then ring the phone in the house. It would attempt to call itself back. Oh. And I would screw with my father by doing that and then hanging up and running off. He didn't like that. <laughs> Tend to get upset. Uh... Yeah, we are just about down to five hours left in this 24-hour race. I want to thank everybody for sticking with us. You guys are awesome to hang out with us this evening. Mr. Dylan Dunn in here with me, keeping me company. Oh we no, this. we got a speeding in pit lane from uh, Car 22, P16. Another one? Yeah, is that a, stop is that, a, um, uh, that a disco? Or did they, did they get a disqualification? Uh, I don't believe so, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say Huff is right up in the admin VC if we need to let him know. If you could be in any race series, like, obviously GT3 is great, mm -hmm. and you also do iRacing. If you could run one, if you could run one race series, whether it be real or imaginary, you get to kind of construct it yourself. What do you think that race series would, like, consist of? What would it be like? I don't know, man, because it, that's, because everything you want is already out there, isn't it? Yeah, Maybe. And I guess what well, I mean by even, that is even that if you were to choose of something that already exists, that's fine. That's a good, um, that's a fine answer. But honestly, GT3, I love the look of these sports cars. I, I you know, and it's the same with rally. These cars, you know, GT3 racing exists for one reason and one reason only: to sell these cars to rich people. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, rally is the same thing. Those are man, those are production cars, obviously edited for safety and everything else, but. Uh, there was a rule at one point in the WRC that a manufacturer yep. had to produce a certain number of those vehicles for sale in it's order for them to yeah. run in WRC, right? I don't know yep. if that rule still exists. I haven't watched uh, Rally for years. Uh, again, I really like the race series where these are vehicles that you could you could buy. If you, if you had the money and you wanted to, you could purchase any of these cars that are on the track today. I think that's what I enjoy about these, about GT3 and about about rally and things of that nature. Yeah. What about yourself? Um, you no, know, I, I ask because it's like a I, I love to ask questions I don't have the answer to for myself. Um, so I'm like, oh, maybe that I'll think of an answer. Um, <laughs> but I, one thing, so again, beginning of the iRacing season, this is not iRacing, but that's okay. Um, you and I traded like the calendars for the next 12 weeks of what cars we were going to buy, what tracks we were going to run, X, Y, and Z. I was like, this is perfect. This is what I'm going to do. I love this. Well, about four weeks into that, three weeks in, I'm already changing series and I'm already racing different things because I can't settle into a single thing. There's I will have... Like, either, is there? No, it's... I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's like, it's a great problem to have if you also want to pay for it. True. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I started the quarter saying I wanted to race Porsche Cup, GT4 and Brazilian stock cars. I have not raced Brazilian stock cars at all. Really? I have did it one race. And I was like, this is not what I want. Like this is the car is incredibly satisfying when you get it right. But because I don't have the time to get the car right all the like to get really dial myself into a car with no traction control, no ABS and a push, push to pass button. Mm -hmm. That just takes a lot of energy and a lot of practice. I just didn't have time for. Gotcha. And so I'm like, you know what? Moving on. <laughs> Porsche <laughs> Cup. First week was at Watkins Glen. I had a blast learning that car, getting used to it. Felt like you were driving on a razor's edge. Taught, teaches you a lot about braking. And then I it went to a bunch of tracks that I didn't feel like learning. Mm -hmm. um, so I stopped. And now, so now I'm racing mostly WRC or well. And not WRC, IR, IRX, so Rallycross. Rallycross, okay. And Mazdas and Ferraris. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like, what am I doing with but my life? there's nothing wrong Why? with that, right? And, I, and, you know, you and I took the same approach to Season 2. Um, again, me pulling back from driving right now kind of botched that for me. But again, I own that content now and, and we'll be able to use it in the future. Um, I think next season, if, if you know, which I, I, I'm... I'm thinking I'll be back by then to driving. And, and again, right now we're talking about iRacing. I think next season, I'm going to do it a little different. I, I think I'm just going to drive whatever. And if I have to buy something, I'll buy something. 
Yep. Instead of instead of doing it all up front, right? I tried to pick. Yeah. I tried to look at the series and say, okay, what do I want to drive? The problem with that with iRacing is my limited time to to get in there and drive means that I am beholden to what the schedule has going on at that time. Right. So if the Ferrari GT3 race isn't for another hour and a half, I'll I'll be in bed by then. I can't run Ferrari GT3 tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it makes it a little frustrating that that exists and I, and I purchased that content ready to drive and now it's not really lining up with my schedule. So mm. uh, it makes it just a little disappointing. Yeah. Mad, Mad Moses in the chat asking, how many cups of coffee are you up to? Um, are you talking about for the whole race? Is that is that the question? I want to know if that's the question or if I'm talking about just recently, how many cups of coffee? Because those are two different answers. Whole race. Whole race. We stopped counting cups uh, around 2 o'clock this afternoon. Um, we are up to pots now, so I am three pots deep in the last 18 hours. I, I, so, <laughs> because I'm okay. I work in the drug and alcohol uh, conversation, mm -hmm. I had a very weird relationship with, like, things I put in my body. Are you going to yell at me? Because I'm fitting to go back to scotch. So no, if you're going to no, yell at me, better no. do it now. I don't give I a damn to... what you do. Okay, it's, just making sure. It's the whole conversation. I don't give a damn what you I'm do. I'm trying to maintain but a like... level here. So I got to I gotta bring the uppers with the coffee and then I got to settle <laughs> it back down with the scotch. You see what I'm, you see what I got going on here? Um, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, coffee and um, alcohol, like most alcohol, I mean, that's a pretty decent thing you can do. But, um, I... <laughs> Don't with, lecture me about uh, my drugs, man. I know what no. I'm doing. <laughs> with caffeine, like, I will purposefully, like, not drink coffee for, like, four or five days. Mm -hmm. Just so that when I drink coffee again, it is... It works. ...what I want. Yeah. Not, like... I I would... I love... Co I, I, I hate coffee. Like, dad coffee is what I call it. Like, pots of coffee. Um... But, like, I'm a big fan of going to a coffee shop or, like, a cafe and, like, sitting there with a book and drinking, like, a latte or some basic, like, bougie, stupid coffee that mm -hmm. tastes mostly like sugar and milk. Um, oh, drive through for P1. Really? Pulling a drive through again for Julian and, they're and on, Rayburg? And they're both in the same lap, yeah? Uh, I'm showing Matthias, Matthias Heist back a lap right now. Okay. I don't know the actual time distance between them. You might be able to see that better than I can. I mine updates every sector, not. Yeah. yeah. Uh oh, blue D seed. Womp womp. Uh -oh. Called it. Called Is it. Is that any better than the fact that he couldn't stay on track, Revis? Because he kept yellow flagging on me over and over again. Granted, well, that was probably our fault. We did. I did say I was going to commentator curse him until the maybe instead oh, of the car uh, blowing uh, up, uh. his computer blew up instead. Ooh. Didn't want Maybe he dropped happen. a piece of Euro into the radiator. <laughs> into the fan blades on the GPU. Yep. The boy went for an eight sandwich combo and just could not hold it together. <laughs> but all, all of what I was saying to say is, like, I am decently thoughtful. I think I'm more thoughtful than most people when it comes to, like, the caffeine I put into my body. Mm -hmm. um, just because, like, I know... And I have so many conversations all day long about tolerance, independence, and caffeine is like the easiest drug to like control that with. And it's also such a good time to have a yeah. good ass like drink of coffee. I've gotten better. I used to drink about two pots a day, right? I'd have a pot in the morning to get mm -hmm. up and then, uh, and not the whole pot. Don't misunderstand when I say that. I, I'm meaning a pot would be brewed. Um, my wife would have a cup or two out of it and then I would end up drinking the rest. Uh, but then I also, um, I would also then about four or five o'clock in the afternoon make another pot of coffee every day. Mm. I've since backed that off. I mean, today today is the exception. We're on a 24-hour race. I've got five <laughs> hours left to go. So inexcusable, it, truly. Inexcusable. I mean, really, today is the exception. Uh, normally anymore, I have three cups in the morning uh, over over about three hours worth of time as I'm waking up and starting to work and then that's it I, I'm not doing any more caffeine for the rest of the day uh, mm -hmm. there's no soda in my life I gave that out years ago uh, so the rest of the day I drink water until it's time to switch over to alcohol so. 
Um, I the idea of drinking more than one cup of coffee mm-hmm. like blows my mind. Well, that's because I, I I drink espresso drinks instead well, of like. That's a little different coffee. though, then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely different. But like, I I think of coffee. I think just I have built this like castle around the way I consume coffee where it's like specifically it has to be from a coffee shop in a form that is mostly either milk that is hot or milk with ice and that is as far as we're going to go yeah, um, I'm one of those yeah I am one of those and I am like Hi, I have like no shame about like it a double soy latte and I want to make sure you, can you just put two shaves of cinnamon in it because if you go to three shaves of cinnamon I can't I, those people bother me like, why you like, sound like one my order, if I don't, if I don't, have, if I can't Ryan order my order from right off, and salad. yeah, if I'd I like can't a salad order my the dressing coffee on the side. <laughs> what? Exactly. If I can't order my drink directly from the menu, I'm not ordering it. <laughs> um, just because, again, I have enough respect for service workers that I'm like, no, like, no, you don't I would be up. so annoyed if someone did that to me. Um, but yeah, so like, I think I just I allowed myself to really th- oh there goes a Porsche in a circle there we have a Porsche in the grass Mattis Heiss as we're focused on him right now dipping off P2 that that 70 Porsche though sitting in P2 they have done a fantastic job today uh, just a steady climb if I go look at position gains they have made up nine positions during the course of this race uh, Joris and here's the thing the only other two drivers to do the same Joris Mentink, one of our solos, and actually there's three of them, as we talk about teams. Thomas Jenk, another solo, making up nine positions today, up into P10, along with Andrew Jackson. This team back here, sitting in P16, again, these guys have done a great job today. If we talk about Jackson, Tice Payne, Ashmore, and O'Connor. And I know everyone's sitting back going, well, they're sitting in P16. I mean, a lot of people have disconnected. Yeah, but not not that it counts for nine positions, right? Um, we have some breaking news from Revis, I think. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, so for somehow, I don't know how he did it because he hasn't left Broadcast Command Central. But somehow Molson uh, just, he couldn't broadcast Curse blew hard enough he actually sent somebody over and cut the internet at his house now i don't, I, don't I, I can't substantiate that rumor but that is, that is the story we're going with right now because blue has dc'd and internet is not coming back and so after uh, over 600 hey, do I need laps, to grab my like, work laptop right now and go find out why his internet isn't working i, I bet i'll he do would it really i'll dig it up right it. now he can hit me up privately and with his account number and i guarantee i will find out what's going on Okay, I'll let him know. But yeah, uh, it just uh, just sp- <laughs> his his it. car flip, flipped a 180 right for the first Ravazza and started heading back up the track, and then just froze, and the engine was revving, and that was it. Mm, so he went backwards, got disqualified, and wants to blame it on the internet. Exactly. Yes. Blame yeah. Internet. He, he hadn't been drinking. He hadn't been drinking, so he couldn't blame it on the uh, 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 alcohol. All right, we're done here. <laughs> 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 Oh man, Blue! If you are listening, he's not. He's on the internet. <laughs> send me. He, well, he might be. He's still online. He's typing in Discord. So. Yeah, on his phone. Yeah, he he on joined his on his phone real quick to let us know what happened. But yeah, he said he went and checked his uh his router and checked his switch and nothing. Does he even know the difference between a router and a switch? That's the question. I, I don't. Uh, one's upstairs. One's downstairs. That makes no sense whatsoever. It's definitely being done <laughs> wrong in that case. I mean, not necessarily, <laughs> but, you know. Uh, Blue, if you're listening, sir, hit me up with a DM with either your address or your DMs, account bro. number. I, I've booted my work laptop. I'm going to go dig it up right now and find out what's going on. We're going to see if it's an area problem. It sounds like an area problem. We're going to find out if it's an area problem or if it is just his problem. Luce would like to still be on the list for the button box. I would like. Somebody. No, you don't get to cheat and fu- mm. you don't get to cut out your internet. I don't like to. W- you don't get to say, walk over to your modem while you're in the pits and unplug it long enough to say, no, you know, that. No. I think that's what's going on here. How about all of your team except for you, Blue, get to be in the button box? 
<laughs> and also, he, he's the kind of dude that I think would be fine with that. And uh, so, little okay. insider secret information. If for some reason I was to win it, I was uh, very keen to just send it to Blue. Why? That's too bad, because you can't, because we'll ban you from the league if you do that. Yeah, if you do that, we can't have anybody uh, providing be nice to Blue. favors to nope, Blue. Nope, no one can be nice to Blue. No, he's he's one of the guys. So uh, it's it's basically it's ba- the the guys I've interacted with the most, of course, is Huff and Zap, and then uh, Molson and Blue and a little bit of James. Uh, I just seem to talk to those guys a lot, and uh, you know I haven't. Yeah, we uh, the my first interaction with Box was the uh, Silverstone race, oh, wow. and uh, I came in a little hot with some of the guys that were grabbing about blue flags. That's always a hot topic for me. And uh, I was like, man, I probably need to watch it here. And no, then Chief and I were just bragging about you after that. Oh, really? Okay. I'm well, loving that. Hey, uh, yeah, brother. Uh, yeah, I talked to talked to Red a little bit. I got to talk to Chief a little bit after that. And I was like, okay, cool, cool. These guys are backing me up. But I'm like, I'm a guest in their house. Like, so, you know, there's only so much I can say. And then, uh, you know, it's kind of like when you're going up. We don't care. Right. Exactly. So you, you have your friends, right? And they're guests in your house, but eventually they become family. And, and, and like in my family, my my friends that came over, they just walk in the door and be like, you know, Sherry, what's my, it's my mom's name, Sherry. Sherry, you got hey, any Sherry. food? What's for dinner? Yeah. Like, and she, you know, and eventually they get to the point where they just walk in the pantry and take stuff. And that's, that's kind of how it is over here. Like, everybody's just cool and welcoming unless you, you know, come in, you know, guns blazing like a jerk. Um, you know, you can find yourself banned in a hurry, but... Um, yeah, it's just real cool, man. It's I've, I've enjoyed being over here. I'm glad I stuck around and uh, finally got to race over here as well. How long ago was that Silverstone race, Josh? Oh, God. It feels like ages. Well, it really I does. Because you said you found us yeah, through that Silverstone race. And I feel like you've yeah. been around longer than that. Uh, I can actually tell you right now. Let me go find... I was talking Wait, to Blue about this the other day. I think. And then, actually, I'm going to read you a funny quote, too, when I find this. Um, this is real exciting. All of you in the chat can watch me scroll. Oh, wait, no, you can't see that. <laughs> We're not watching your screen right now. <laughs> You're uh, we can, yeah. you, I'm uh, watching him. Wait, what the hell? Oh, hi there. Hmm. I don't know what's in here somewhere. Anybody who's listening, if you want to become a real good, fine part of the box community... Defend blue flag rules for us in the chat. Go into the Discord and be very clear about your love for respect for blue flags, but in a way that promotes community and promotes driving standards, not fast people going fast because they're fast. Thank you. Have we used our F word for the hour yet? Yeah, no. I'm holding mine. No. You uh, mother- no, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Steven burned all of them. <laughs> okay. At the yeah, beginning I, of this stream, like literally two mm-hmm. hours in, he had hammered them all down. Wow! Congratulations, yeah, no, Steven. He, yeah, no, totally. Right. Blue in. He, he he set the pole for F words, huh? Yeah, it was brutal. So blue's now sent, now telling me his internet is back up. Sounds awfully suspicious. As soon as you ask, and as soon as you connect with him, oh, it's back. Sorry. Well, that's weird. Blue, I don't. I don't see an overall. Here's that attention you wanted. Note, although I do see a huge FEC blow up. A little after 6 p.m. though, so eh, that's way long ago. It just seems weird that you know I'm not seeing an issue on on this end, and, and Blue's having all kinds of problems. So I don't know. That's strange. Sounds like a skill issue. It, it does really. Sounds like too much euro. Too much ordered food, too much coffee, skillet. Mm-hmm. I know I did not make this uh, discussion up. <laughs> I mean, I guess it's also possible. What, is, what are you referring to? Uh, the Silverstone event. I was going to read something. All right, here we go. Yeah, but it was in January. So January 1st. Oh, God. Uh, so January 1st, uh, I was on here, and uh, Alejandro Aguilar uh, had uploaded just the decals and sponsors. Anyways, I was I, I just jumped in. I was like, hey, man, I saw some problems with deliveries. 
And so let me put all this in a zip. It makes it easier for me. I can distribute to my team and load, uploaded it there. So yeah, January 1st was one of the first times I interacted on this Discord. And here's Blue's response. My, I said, damn, even back in January, your boy was helpful AF. I said, this is for Silverstone Endurance, the whole reason I am here. And his response, not going to lie, Josh, 100% you are a try hard and going to be annoying. <laughs> Very glad I was wrong. I mean, was he wrong, though? No, that, and that's just Got it. He's trying to be sweet there, scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are brutal to each other, I swear. He's he's so so blue is like that friend you are always wishing that you can be glad you never had. <laughs> cut it oh, out. You meant that, I mean cut him out of your life. <laughs> <laughs> nah. So so blue gets disconnected. Um internet's back up. I'm saying it's back up. Doesn't try to rejoin. Hasn't tried to rejoin yet, but I will tell you this. His modem has been up for over two days. Creepy man Molson asking for my address <laughs> in the Discord. <laughs> trying to help the boy. I'm, I'm trying to help him. Um, all I'm saying is online. Up time. Actually, it's been up time. Ooh. It's been up for um... the uh, 42 car and the 11 car having a little bit of a contact there. A little kiss, kiss. A little smoochy, smoochy. 42 didn't like it too much. Started flashing his lights. Um, don't know that's the fight you want to get in right now. Yeah, uh, being 30 laps behind. I don't know if you yeah. any fight yeah, is a fight you want no, to get into right now. Fight. I, I think, think uh, I think your job at this point is just to basically slide out of the way of anybody gets behind just, you. Given that Dimitri Athwal has been sitting in the pits, uh, their car having problems, another disconnection issue. And I and, and again, I, you know, we picked on Athwal, saying they were sitting in the pits and and just basically hanging out, but they are only showing uh, three laps, meaning they got discoed and could not come back in correctly for that team. So, a little unfortunate. Yeah, I, I am. Oh no. Andrew Jackson now off of the, into oh, the dirt. No. But say what you want. At least he uh, gets to be on a bill. Sure, you make an excellent point. That was my one for the night. Good night, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I finally uh, did it. <laughs> But yeah, and I'll, I'll say this, like, uh, we like to kind of poke fun at people that are just collectively, we just kind of do it. We rib people, we, we joke, and we, we play about people that, you know, you're so far back, and, you know, why are you still going? They stuck with it, though. Like, a lot of us would have given up already. Like, it's an insurmountable task to, you know, to move up a position. Like, you, there's literally no way to do it. Like, they, they can't get P15. But they didn't quit. Exactly. And that's pretty awesome. Uh... <laughs> comment in the discord that just got deleted was quite funny yep. you're welcome you're welcome <laughs> i was gonna oh, i am not was, i am not i interested thought that was people. quite funny yeah but the problem is the person was not wrong and the guy is in the car why are you talking about, about it? someone who's in the but, car well, you know what again still not wrong absolutely and, uh I, I i get it i get what you're saying totally i, I do but they weren't wrong yeah, that's the thing is like you can you can like, this is a, there's a two double edged sword to the conversation we were having about like not everyone not everything you have to say yeah, is I important know. enough to say it. I know. This is just, I'm just just me saying this out loud. This isn't at you. No, I know. Is, but like, at the same time, some people need to be told. The 614 car is back on the track. Yes, he is. But again, like wow. some of our other team. Oh wait, 614. No, uh, literally on the track at the first uh -huh. Ravata. And P18 Anderson. Yeah, no, the, I'm showing Kisar in the car and car number 83. Yeah, same. And showing negative two laps. 
So much like Dimitri Athwal, honestly, you guys, whoever's in, I, I assume it's blue coming back, right? Um, really Sorry. should just stay there, sit in the pits for the rest of this race. We know oh, it was no, a connection I... issue. Um, I mean, unless you guys can get in and drive, but every time we've seen this where this negative lap count shows up, uh, it, it's it's meaning that the, the server is not allowing you to join back in in the proper order, no matter what you do. It's nothing that anybody on your team did. Uh, it's a server issue, it's a server side issue. No, I mean, yeah, no, I get that, but I'm I'm literally looking at Anderson and P18 in the 83 car and Blue in P15 in the 614 car. We don't have that now, huh? No. You don't Gion, see the 614 Gion is in P15 yeah. right now in the number 22. Yep. That's BMW. weird. Hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. And I'm sure he's saw in the number stuff. 83. So. Yeah, and so on my screen, Anderson's in the 80. Well, Anderson just dropped. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I mean, you might be. Just that camera behind you, it also shoots pills. Oh, does it? Yeah. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding out? None. You wizard. How did you do that? <laughs> I waited. I waited. It's very, very, very sneaky. Um, no, this is just a general like thought. Is like anybody who's racing, even if you're on a team and you want to like stand up for your guy, that's awesome. Is there a need to do it in the Discord while the person you're complaining about is still in the car? Again, not disagreeing with you at all. Just right. saying that the comment wasn't wrong. That's yeah, then message it to the guy. And I think, right. and and so, I think so that's, that's what, and I'll be honest, it's not just that that driver that's in there now. I have watched this throughout the entirety of this 24-hour race. They push, and at times when they should not be pushing, they should get out of the way because that's where they're sitting. And there's a penalty for that. It's called 30 laps down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're taking when you're taking risks you shouldn't take and are possibly going to cause a problem. Oh yeah. No. And I know but, everyone, yeah. everyone in the chat right now is like, well, they're talking inside baseball. We don't know what they're talking about. And that's on purpose. So, so I didn't I didn't see the comment, but but if we just isolate it to like a generality or a principle, uh, I don't often someone made a comment that said, hey, no, no, lift, that. lift up once in a while. You're not in right. every battle. Right, so not not even that, not even like the the what actually happened. What I'm saying that is, was the comment. Uh, I just right, won't okay, say okay. who it was directed. At. Perfect. Um, I don't often quote Colin Coward, but occasionally he says stuff that's it, that's witty and it, it's uh, it's poignant. And one of the things that he said is, too often when we get into an argument or we're trying to make a point, we are more worried about being right than getting it right. Because you can absolutely be 100% factually correct, but you look like oh. the biggest scumbag ever. It, meanwhile, because... he's, he's backwards. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, no. So basically what you're saying is is the line from Big Lebowski. You're not wrong, Donnie. You're just an asshole. An asshole. <laughs> yes, right? exactly. Thank you. <laughs> and, Perfect. And, yeah. I, yeah. and I can agree with that statement. A, a little tact goes a long way. But the problem is with the comment that, that, that was written, and again, what I quoted was almost word for word. Yeah, 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 yeah. You need to lift. You are not in every battle. That, to me, is not rude. It's it's no, not no. it's not doing that at all, and that's why I said I, I understand deleting it. I understand what Dunn's saying about the guys in the car. There's no sense in, in you know putting that there now because it's not going to help. But at the same time, that comment, it wasn't cussing him out. It wasn't yelling, swearing, no, yeah, yeah. all right. caps, anything like that. It was a very direct message as in stop doing what you're doing because all you're doing is impacting other people's races for no benefit to yourself. No. Um, I just, I, cause when we, back in the day when I was a racer, um, <laughs> so much just garbage would get thrown. And it was always about like, yeah, I am right. Like, you mm -hmm. are right. X, Y, and Z. Like, we are all right in some way and that we have these complaints. It's just that I don't remember ever getting out of a race and like thumbing back through all the comments to find and reading oh, no. through all of it, right? No. And so for me, like, I, this is a general rule of thumb for me for anybody on the Discord. I'm not even that active anymore. I think partly because of this, because I'm always, I've learned to become a less is more kind of guy, mm -hmm. where it's like, if everyone is just like throwing stones or throwing whatever into the Discord, no one's reading anything. 
Mm -hmm. And so like, again, that comment, totally appropriate, totally correct, time and place. If it's a direct mm -hmm. message, direct message the guy. If we want to have a larger conversation, oh, why is he? Oh my gosh, what in the world? I'm, I'm now watching the car that was being complained against, um, and it is a time. Um, but anyway, just like, yeah, less is more sometimes, and that's a great way to. It's a great communication tactic. I think a lot of times we get too uh, comfortable in our anonymity. Uh huh. Uh, like we all know, you, your your name's not actually Molson. Like, you know, I'm not actually Revis. That is that is a persona. It is an avatar. Um, because there's been things that have been said to me in the middle of a race. And, like, if we were face-to-face -face in an actual race out by our race trailers, <laughs> these dudes would never in That's... their life even think about saying it, let alone actually looking me in my oh. eyes, looking oh. me dead in my soul and saying those words. Because I man. promise you they would know it wouldn't end well. You know what I mean? I have this conversation every week, even if I'm not racing, because Chief and I both, like, Chief is, not, I have been around NASCAR since I was a kid. Chief is new, but very passionate about the NASCAR scene and the idea that people will approach each other and get in fights after races if things do not go well. Mm -hmm. and that is That's entertainment. That's entertainment, and that, but that is also real. And so we will often, like, just joke back and forth, like, oh, it sounds like that person's never been punched in the face before. Mm -hmm. However, that got really complicated when Will Smith approached Chris Rock on stage and slapped the shit out of right. him for saying something that you should not have said to his face. Uh -huh. We're not so going to dig into that. But. Right. So I'll, I'll say one quick thing on this. I'm of two minds on that. Way out of line, way inappropriate, right? Mm -hmm. And so was it Will Smith having enormous huevos? Or is that just the privilege of being wealthy and respected and famous right. that yes. he knew he could do that? No. Both. Yeah. I, I don't know. Was, was no, it brain or was it hubris? I don't think both. I don't think either one. Really? Seeing, reading the things I've read and seeing the things I've seen since that incident, mm -hmm. I think that was Will Smith having a breakdown. Okay. Sure. Oh, yeah. And, I mean... and, not, and, not, and not because of what Chris Rock said because of his wife's reaction. If you watch that video, he laughed it off at first. He knew what it was. Right. He understands those things can happen. Then he saw his wife's reaction and her reaction was not the same as his. Mm -hmm. And it was the final tremor it, that it, triggered it the avalanche. Because everyone has read all about their relationship. We've seen the yes. videos and all these things, right? And everything that's gone on. And so now he feels that now she is offended he feels called out his life again having only obviously outsider knowledge only the things i've read the things i've seen since then i really feel this is not a healthy relationship and in that, that, that moment he's further emasculated exactly if he doesn't so, do something well, again you, not well, the right yeah. reaction not the right reaction but is it an understandable reaction I think I when he least, says no is lying. I think I can at least that, wrap my yeah. head around it, right? Yeah. I can wrap my head around why he would have that reaction. And I would, yeah. I do I do disagree with his reaction afterwards when he won the award, when he apologized to everyone except Chris mm -hmm. Rock. To me, if you wanted to make that right right then, if you wanted to fix that problem, he would have called Chris Rock up on that stage, given him a hug and apologized to him right there in front of the world. Right. That's how you fix that problem right from word one um the, the the apology was canned but again the videos i've seen of their relationship this is a man who's broken because of her hmm. and this was the final straw he knew that if he didn't do something after seeing her reaction that he was going to pay a very high price at home it's i i, I think sure we could sit here and pontificate about their health or lack of in a relationship. I don't know if that's anything that I have any, any, any knowledge of, but when people, when I think the night of is it like 20 minutes after someone sent me the video, it was like, Oh my gosh. Like I don't even watch any of those shows. I don't even watch movies. We've talked about this today, but someone felt like they wanted to send me that video that night as like a way to somehow draw me into the conversation. They knew I wasn't a part of. And the first reaction I had was like seeing his face after he sat down and right before he starts yelling is like the and I, I was like, I understand the exact feelings I've been there mm -hmm. of like, I know I've overstepped, but I know I can't back down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
and that like lip quivering. I'm so fucking mad, but I can't believe I did that. But I still have to sit here with this. Like that primal feeling. I remember having that as like a three year old. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, that sucks. <laughs> like, you know what? It sucks that other people are drawn into that. But like, I remember that feeling. Well, and I think the other part of it, too, is we all get sucked into this saying, well, that's the wrong reaction, that's the wrong reaction. And it is. I wouldn't disagree with saying, you know, violence like that doesn't need to happen. But on the other hand, you know, myself, I'm Mary. Um, Not sure about you. I know, Dunn, you're not. Uh, But but my point being is this. Wow. Is... Called out. No, I I just know you're (laughs) not Mary. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I know. What would your reaction be to your wife being offended the way she was right um and i think we need to sit back and think about that again not saying it's right but can i honestly say i wouldn't have the same reaction i don't know i'm a pacifist but if she feels offended part of my quote-unquote job as her husband is to defend her and that includes yes defending her honor as old-fashioned as it may sound so can i honestly sit back and say that i would not have had the same reaction in all honesty, I don't know. I'd like to think that I'd be more in control, but at the same time, I don't know that for sure because I've never been in that situation, right? Mm-hmm. So it's 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 really, again, we can condemn it, we can say it was wrong, but if you really sit back and think about it and go, if that was the person I love the most in the world, that mm-hmm. just, I just watched her expression fall the way hers did. Mm-hmm. I just watched her get offended the way she did. What would my reaction be? And I'm willing to bet a lot of people, at least half of people in the world, would sit back and go, I might have the same reaction. I don't know, but I might. Yeah. I I, I struggle because it's hard for me to go and literally punch people in the face all day long and then condemn someone for slapping somebody else. So I'll, I'll give you this example. This happened in our own lives. And it's, yeah. Um, a friend of ours. Uh, had a very bad breakup with his boyfriend, okay? These are people, these are guys we've hung out with, uh, a couple we've hung out with multiple times. Um, This friend, someone I would consider one of our best friends. Very bad breakup, okay? Our friend is always more than welcome in our home. This this boyfriend of his um, texted my wife and decided through the course of that text, because she was standing by her friend, uh, decided to call her the C-word, which I will not repeat on this show. Oh, okay. nope. Now, I'm not a dumbass. I'm not going to jail because you're not worth my time. So I'm mm-hmm. not going to come find you and beat you. Right. But what our friend was told was, should you resolve this breakup and decide to stay together, he will not cross my threshold into my home ever again. Nope. Full stop. If he tries, he will be met with force to be removed you're not going to do that you're not going to disrespect my wife and then think that you're going to be then welcome into my home right so again it's it's i'm not willing to take that step i'm not th- this mm-hmm. person is not worth me going to jail for for an assault right. charge but you will never be anywhere near my family again full stop i don't care again the friend you're always welcome come on by anytime you want you know that we don't care come and knock on the door you ain't even got to call first but you're not coming in my home guaranteed so yeah and that's even like like the way we started the conversation of like was it also just the knowledge that like i will not get arrested for this mm. not like and like was it even that purposeful probably not it was probably just a full-on reaction and i think like again i can live in the modern society where violence is always condemned and blah 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 but like i also can't again two parts i can't dismiss the fact that i literally box for sport and strike people in the face (laughs) yes as agreed upon via the rules of the sport but like violence is very normalized in a specific way in many hours of my day and also the fact that i grew up in rural ohio where like you duke it out like i was taught to fight as a kid i was taught how to when to when not to and then to the idea that, like, I just, I can't honestly and full-throatedly say I condemn that because it would not feel like I am being honest with the, the things that I have to wrestle with in order to say something like that. 
I can tell I can I could tell my own kids someday don't hit people and still have to be honest that like that's not the world I lived in mm -hmm. that I grew up in right Midwest so. boys just want to fight I, I I work with a guy dude's in his 50s now and goes you know <laughs> a couple years back about I want to say about six years ago told and and again I say um I will say totally not his fault because this happened after he was already in handcuffs and the cops didn't do their job but this guy would go to bars and end up in scraps like every month and mm -hmm. not see a problem with this and i'm like do you, did you ever think maybe you're the problem right did you ever think that may because i go to bars i don't get in fights i got in fights in high school right but, i end up but interrupting after a lot that of fights. it's like at what point are you going to grow up and stop throwing hands with everybody that says something to you mm -hmm. right so it, it's just there are people out there in the world like that and i get it you know depending on your upbringing you're taught you will defend yourself which don't get me wrong i taught my kids to defend themselves you know yeah. but to defend yourselves not not go looking for it don't be the bully be the one that shuts the bully down yeah right? yeah that's a weird line like and that's maybe part of the conversation we we're just having is like because you're talking about defending your wife and x y and z but mm -hmm. like so much of the conversations I was having when I was a kid was like, how do I defend other people? Right. You use your, I, your strength, your advantage, your yep. ability and affinity to violence for a positive in protection of those that right. don't have those tools, don't have that access, don't have the physical ability, perhaps. Right. Yeah. And, and again, I agree with that as well. I, you know, my, again, our kids have been taught stand up for the people around you who can't stand up for themselves. I think the difference is, is, if that person's using words, you don't then you escalate words. that to yeah. physical right. violence. However, so, and that's, the minute the minute hands are laid, you have every right to defend yourself. <laughs> the phrase "if you start it, I'll finish it" lives well, it, on. <laughs> exactly. So again, another example from real life. My son, my son's on the bus. There's a, a bit of a bully on the bus. Uh, it's it's been verbal. I get a call from the school. Hey. He's not in any trouble, but we just let you know what happened. Okay, what happened? Well, the bus driver saw it. That's why he's not in any trouble. I'm like, well, that's good. What happened? Well, this kid decided to grab a hold of Connor, and Connor took his elbow and bounced his head off the bus window. And I said, okay. Mm -hmm. Is he in any trouble? No, he's not in any trouble. Perfect. Send Connor home. I'll take care of him. <laughs> Again, it, my son didn't didn't make the move to do anything until hands were put upon him. Right, so and your right to remain injury-free ends when you put your hands on me. Exactly. The minute <laughs> you've decided that you're going to actually physically make contact with me, I am free yeah. to do as needed. That's the lesson I've taught my kids. And I think it's it's walking that line between defending yourself and others and escalating a situation that maybe wouldn't get escalated otherwise. Mm -hmm. Because the minute you're yeah. the first one to throw that punch or to, yep. to do anything, now you're the aggressor. Right, you flip mm -hmm. that script to become the aggressor yourself, and it's just that's not what you want to be. You want to be the defender, not the aggressor. Yep. Mad Moe's in the chat. The job of the MC is to roast the stars, especially in front rows. Got to be able to take a joke. If Will Smith would have just said, "Please don't make any more jokes about my wife," I'm sure Chris Rock would have apologized on the spot and went on doing his job. I don't disagree with that. I think again, there could have been a completely different reaction, even if even if Will Smith had walked up on stage and done so personally right whispered it in his ear something and shown um i guess shown love instead of instead of the violence right walked up and said hey you know puts his mouth up to his ear and says hey man i'd appreciate you not doing that anymore give him a little you know guy hug tap on the back and walked back to his seat things would have gone very very differently um, with that will smith is a much larger more imposing figure than chris oh, rock yeah, so just walking up there and be like that's enough Mm -hmm. That would have ended it. Yeah. And you didn't touch him. It just reminded him, like, nah, not going to happen. And Chris Rock would be like, yeah, you're right. My bad, homie. Done. That's well, why that, also, that face that I mentioned, like, like the lip quivering, like, angry, oh, shit face. Like, oh, I can't believe I yeah. just did that. Like, and I think that, that moment is so important for me in the, in the situation. And I think Rock knew, right? Yeah. Because, again, if you watch that video back, Chris Rock, you know, Will Smith goes back to his seat. He does his yelling about keep my wife's name out of your mouth, etc. And Rock's like, oh, 
I could, and he stops himself right that right mm-hmm. at that word. Because I have a feeling Rock was gonna verbally destroy mm-hmm. both of them in that yeah. moment. He he n- manages hecklers for a job. Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Do you really want to come at me? Like Will Smith, great actor. Um even even in his day, a a decent hip hop artist, right? A decent mm-hmm. musician. Wouldn't take anything away from the, the career achievements of that guy. Even with this incident, he still had a great career. And I think he'll still have time in front of him as well once this settles down. But he was never a stand up comedian. He doesn't he have the never, mental agility. Yeah, he doesn't have that off the cuff, I've got a heckler in my audience and I need to shut this down right now ability that Chris Rock would have. And, and he was ready to verbally just, just destroy him. They both would have had to leave if they could walk out once he was done. 47 people in the chat right now. I'm going to break for one second here. I need to know in the chat right now, am I going for whiskey or beer? Let me know before I get up and go get something to drink. All right, carry on, fellas. <laughs> um, Listen, man, I'm on scotch, so I'm, I'm, my vote is for whiskey, whatever chat says. Uh, I'm going to go for whiskey on this. I'm thinking whiskey, a lot of the chat. With without any is the real question here. I've got both. Oh, there's two votes for whiskey. Chris, that a boy. TG. Oh, Tobias Gable TG says whiskey is as well. TG must just well, be getting up. That, that's like four votes. So. Between the two. Beer. Uh-oh. The real Uh-oh. DJ coming in with a beer. First time chatter in the chat, too. He must feel strongly about it. Hasn't chatted before now and decided to chime in with the beer vote. That's That's got some weight to it. It when does. I got to respect with that. Us, jumps in a little bit, right? Another first time chatter. Late night talk show, <laughs> loving it, guys, with Gray 14, but Gray 14 did not give a vote, so we'll have to see. But again, first oh. time chatter piping in. We'll have to see if we get a vote from Gray 14 between whiskey and beer. So if it makes a difference, I'll, I will help. If, it's, if this helps you make a vote, uh, the whiskey is uh, cheap. Evan Williams bottled in Bond 100 proof. And the uh, the beer is uh, Modelo. We have the Chelada Pina Picante or the Chelada Naranja Picosa. Good Lord, that's a long name for beer. Yeah, they're, they're Cheladas and uh, yeah, they're right? flavored with citrus. Yeah, yeah, it's all boys. Yeah. There's actually a picture in the Discord. I, I posted once I found out I wasn't racing. Mm-hmm. You'll have to go oh, several I did see hours that back picture, at this yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. So Hello, right lads, now, what time on, is it at uh, your place? Sorry, right now I'm on Glen Morgany, 10-year scotch. Nice, nice. So it's it's very smooth. I like it. It's really good over the, the daily Johnny Walker Red that I run. Um, picked up a bottle while I was in Canada last weekend. So I'm drinking a bubblegum-flavored G Fuel. There you go. Caffeine-free. Nice. Uh, then how are you Wait, even what? staying awake? Why, why is it What's G- the point? I, I thought the whole point of G Fuel was that it was that it had caffeine and uppers. Hi, um, gas station attendant. Could you please put some gas in my car, but that, that doesn't actually make it run? You know what? Just go ahead and fill it with Have water. Have you ever had fucking fine. Kool-Aid before? <laughs> oh, it's just Kool-Aid. They, then say Kool-Aid! <laughs> well, so it's G Jappy Fuel. Hunter it's like, asked okay. what time it is where we're at. For myself, I'm with Mad Moses on the East Coast, 2.23 a.m. There you go, TG, 8.23 a.m. That's why we're hearing from him. Great to see you in here, TG. Done. What time is it where you're at? Just past midnight. Okay. Uh, mountain time. Central time oh, is 0123 here in the central Oklahoma. There you go. So we got people Have all over. Have you ever the- been? Jappy, wh- real quick. Sorry, Dunn. Hold on real quick. Jappy, what time is it where you're at? Just out of curiosity while we hear what Dunn has to say. Have you ever been to the Stillwater Airport? I know I've been near it. I've been to a couple of OSU games. And uh, when I was in high school, I was actually a recruiter for the Army National Guard. And we would go up to Stillwater and some of the uh, small little towns like Kearney and Agra around that area. You know why? It's, oh, my God. Do you know why, Dunn? Why? That's where it's easy to recruit people for the military. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah. when there's 65 people in the school. Yeah. It worked yeah. on me. What can I say? I mean, not for the Army National Guard because, you know, I wanted to actually do something with my life. But uh, Exactly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wanted to pretend to be a Ford so, Observer for so instead, I, so instead I went in the Marine Corps. Um, but, you know, just saying. 
<laughs> sounds painful. <laughs> it was. Well, oh, because I, I don't remember if it was, um, I think the American Airlines terminal at the Stillwater Airport is literally just a uh, mobile home. <laughs> <laughs> that's about right, yeah. <laughs> I flew there for a job interview at OSU, and of course, they were like, yeah, we'd love to fly you into our local airport to help give it business. I land, Sean White and I are on this plane together. Wow. And we look out the window and go, what in the world did we just do? Yeah. In the middle of a cornfield and park beside a mobile home. Yeah. And they're selling uh, bait and beer. <laughs> like, what in the world is happening? Well, well, oh, shit. Was... You know Jimmy then, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was like how? That was like four years ago, I think. It was 2018. Yeah. Um, so... Hopefully that has actually become an actual terminal at the airport because they were like, well, if we get enough business, we'll build an actual terminal. But it was not when they decided to try to get me to work there by taking me to a mobile home. <laughs> That's crazy. So That's speaking awesome. of airplanes, uh, and up until recently, I uh, was working in aviation maintenance. I uh, was an avionics maintainer for the B-52 uh, civilian here. Uh, Tinker Air Force Base. Uh, no, we do what, the, what, what did you work on? What, what avi part? Avionics. So mm, okay, all, but all, nothing all, special, but, nothing specialized below that, or or no, oh yeah. So we, we we were generalized avionics. So all of your okay. flight flight equipment, all of your bomb nav equipment, uh, basically if it was if it had wires going to it and it had a screen that somewhere attached to it. So yeah, anything that had to do with uh, with guidance, with uh, bomb systems, with radar, uh, with the uh, oh, okay, I thought a car just went off. Uh, autopilot, ARs. Uh, I've forgotten most of it now. It's been almost a year since I've been off it. But anyway, so we were talking earlier about uh, you know how much these 24-hour uh, races are and just uh, endurance racing in general. Uh, and so my first week working on the B-52, I'm out on the flight line. They have all eight engines going, right? TF-33 engines, all eight of them just up and down, full throttle, back down. It's so loud. Compressor stalls, you know, get that big bang that happens. It's a lot of stress on your body. All that sound, all that vibration, the benzene, you're just tears you know from all the all the exhaust fumes and so after about a week of being out there on the flight line i noticed i would wake up in the middle of the night and my arms and legs would kind of just flail out and it would wake me up and i'd never experienced that before and so i was talking to some of the guys and my buddy harvey was like no dude that's the stress he's like that's the stress from all that new you know just constant pounding and vibration and sound that your body's not used to and you're waking up in the middle of the night and your body's trying to get rid of it so I fell asleep for a little bit uh, in between my stints, which I ended up not doing the second stint anyway. And I had not been laying down less than five minutes and I felt myself flail like that. And so it was it was really interesting. So I immediately went and got my wife. I was like, you remember when I was like, I just did that. And she was like, why do you do this? It doesn't sound fun. Well, someone just, just went lost, out. lost somebody, somebody again. Server going crazy. I have no control. You saw one and two. Um, we may have lost everybody. Nope, we didn't. No, we got no. some back. Julian Rayberg running now. Alexander Kukos back on track. So, uh, no, Kukos we running cars off flying. into the into the weeds. Down to sixteen. <laughs> I just love going drivers. quickly. I've lost pretty much everyone at this point. We're gonna have to see if this recovers. This is bad. Nobody's moving. As someone's parked off behind a fence, we may be done here. This is the longest Are this we... has lasted. Mentink is flying up and over the. There's like a blue sign that goes over the track. Oh, I see grass flying uh, off track over on the service road. This is the entertainment you came for, folks. Yeah, everyone parked at this point. Um, oh no. This is gonna be bad and horrible. Yeah, screenshot, if this screenshot. Happens. Uh, we, you, you have O'Connor, yeah? Nope, they're in the grass. Dimitri Athwal still in the pit, though. We got that going for us. Had a boy. Guys, you may have done is that it. it. Is that it? I. We have messages in the Discord yet. This is the worst it's been. This is locked hard. We've seen bounces earlier, but this now is. Oh, yep, yep. We have messages in the, we're, in the Discord we're now. We're done, guys. We're gonna have to. I believe we're gonna have to uh, to red flag the race. You know, the, this deep end. Call it now. Four twenty left to go. I mean, it's twenty at thirty or nineteen and a half hours. I think that that'll count. 
Is that 90%? Close enough for me. <laughs> right, you'll be able to give some people their time back? Executive decision, gents. All right, so we would need to go 21.6 hours to reach 90% for official classification. Sounds good enough for me. Um, <laughs> 19 and a half is fine. I, I mean, my, my call is always just like, call yeah, it as I'm, is. Right I'm going to hop in with the drivers, but I, I'm in favor of red flag in the race. So. Yeah. All right, I lost you guys for a minute. Apologies. So, yeah, yeah. Um, explain, off. catch them up. Yeah, we Not, yeah for me, it's just, yeah, end it. We're, we're, we're going to call it as is, and these will be the final standings. Yeah, I think so. And then uh, I know Huff just jumped out, but we will need a he's, he's driver. talking to the driver. Yep. We'll through. need a driver list once this is done. And we will go ahead and start with that giveaway. Oh, yeah. Anybody still in? I mean, obviously, we know who was there at the end of the race, right? We're not going to cut anybody off from the giveaway this evening. Or yeah, this we morning, just, yeah. I should say, at this point. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, in the 24 hours of Imola, we have the... Um, Screenshot. <laughs> As, uh, That's a shame, though. And again, I, I apologize to everyone watching on stream right now. I had to step away, and uh, the screen is currently locked, I believe. At least it sounds like it is, because the car hums are just sitting there being the same. Yeah. Molson, you got a screenshot of uh, of the last standings in leadership. Okay, uh, is that Zap? Is that Zap I'm here? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to need a full driver list, though, not just of the current drivers. Okay, we'll, we'll get Oh, Huffman. actually, I can <laughs> probably use that. Okay, it does show all the team, all, all the drivers for each team, so we should be okay. <laughs> Getting some amazing screenshots, though. <laughs> so, go, can you pull up the uh, the ones I'm dropping in Discord? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> the most recent one. That is a wallpaper waiting. That is right? a off to the moon. In the uh, 24 hours of Emma. I am having a good time with these. <laughs> This is so silly. All right, that's all of them.
Our, our longest race went before now is six, right? My God.
Us. Whoops. Wait, did we choose whiskey or beer? Come on. Something like that. <laughs> a couple never stopped clearly <laughs> like so we just keep using going so pull up in the endurance announcement chat thumbs up if you guys want to run a four hour finish thumbs down to call the race vote is two to one in favor of being done right now you got a question like who it is i wonder if you how you suss that out like who's saying no is it is it just the top three or four guys being like no we, we... <laughs> I, I i don't want to call people out so i'm just I, i'm just yeah. toying with the ideas here let's go <laughs> And uh, there's a, there's... No, it's, yes, not all, not everybody who's, there are people who are pretty far down that are also saying no. Uh, the pink pig, uh, Pickett, finally uh, turns the stream on and murders it. So not sure what he did. One of his uh, fancy watches must have uh, absolutely murdered the server. So thank you, Pickett, for being here. Um, Adam, uh, we have decided, uh, as voted by the drivers, and, you know, uh, we're, we're going to call the race where it stands, man. Very unfortunate. We had four minutes and eight, roughly, to go. So we're actually wanting you up here in the uh, the drivers meeting. If you don't care to pop in, the guys have a few words for you. Uh oh. Yeah. But you're yeah. getting fired, Muslim. Oh. Are they cuss words? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, the answer. Monza, can we find? Can we just all populate a Monza launch? Nikaki. Can we move the AC and use F two thousand fours on Monza? All right, Molson should be coming up anytime. Yeah, invade a Monza pub for all the beans. <laughs> Molson, bro, great job on the commentary. Is there an empty Monza with an F lobby? Let's see. Yeah, dude, it was a beautiful job. Yeah. yeah big thanks molson um you keep it interesting your your silky voice entertains all and uh you know <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know about all, that. all of us <laughs> uh, i appreciate all you guys being out there and i just realized for the last few minutes the stream hasn't even been able to hear me uh because I'm Sorry, an idiot. You just so. sip the Good chat. Because no, you're out. tired, man. Like, <laughs> let's call it what it is. Yeah, I just dumped the, wrong, I dumped the wrong mic into the wrong places. And so I've got to switch up real quick. But I'll do that here in just a second. But no, I thank all you guys for staying out. And especially you guys driving single. It's it's uh, just ridiculous and off the hook. Unfortunately, having to pull it out and, and end it like that. 665 laps deep. Really unfortunate. Yeah. But... Uh, are, hey, are we still off stream, Adam? No, we're on stream right now, sir. Okay. Uh, we got to figure out a sidestep here for our, our wheel of destiny for the Apex, man. Well, uh, no. We Zap... had four hours to work that out, but now we don't have four hours. Nope, so. that's okay. So Zap provided me the full driver list of everyone who was there at the end. Yeah. Um, including the um, including all team members, stream? right? Yeah, so... <laughs> but, yeah, but keep in mind, my team got disconnected early. Anybody that got like disconnected, um, if yep. you guys are in here, have a team representative, uh, your names are in the head as well. It's not your fault. You you know you had to to be booted out. So let me uh, let me do something real quick here.
Ah, muted out. Thank you, Muto, for first time chatting with us and letting me know that. <laughs> Get muted out. That was fantastic. Um, unfortunately, not on purpose. But guys, I, as I was saying, appreciate y'all sticking with us. Hang out. We're, we're putting the driver list together. And, and my main point there being is it's taking an extra minute because we had time to work on this and, and get that list together. We had four hours left in the race. And that suddenly got turned into having four minutes to, to complete this list. And again, with this Apex Sim Racing giveaway, we want to afford the opportunity to drivers who were disconnected through no fault of their own. So in the background, admins right now working to draw out uh, a full driver list from the server. We're going to put that together. We're going to get everybody online. Um, as I look to add some content here, do a display capture. And we're going to throw it up there. Boom. Break that down. Watching, watching the, uh, you guys get to watch the sausage getting made here at three o'clock in the morning. A lot of fun. Let's, let's move that down. You don't need to, y'all don't need to. So true randomness. We're going to use a random number generator as this list gets built. Zap Brannigan himself will be providing that to me here in just a few moments. I'm going to put myself into that commentary chat. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to random number generate and we're going to give this button box away via random number generation. I do again want to thank everybody who has joined us. Watch the sausage. That is not what I said, Revis. Not what I said. And as we wait for these numbers to come through and for this list to come through, I'm going to ask y'all give me one second because it's three o'clock in the morning for me. We made it 20 hours into a 24 hour race before the server finally gives up the ghost. Um, really unfortunate. I, I gotta say I am exceptionally disappointed uh, in this result. Not disappointed in the drivers, not disappointed in anything, in, in any way this race shook out, except for the fact that the race just completely crashed at the end. Um, so what we're going to do is give away this apex sim racing button box that is still happening the drivers who participated in this race are all going to be 100 percent involved as we think that's important but we're going to do that through random number generation we just got to give it a few minutes here for zap working to pull the list from SimGrid. Dump that into an Excel sheet for me. Assign everybody a number, one through whatever, however many drivers we had. And we're going to run a random number generator. Not as fun as what I wanted because I wanted to run the big wheel of win that you guys saw earlier. Uh, but that's not going to happen now, unfortunately. We are going to use random.org to go ahead and pull a random the randomly generated number. So. All drivers will be included in this giveaway. And with that, we'll be hanging out. Will Green in Discord right now. These guys work on it in the background for me. And, you know, I really hate Spotify. Because I'm in a VC, so Spotify keeps dumping me. I kind of need to be in a VC somewhere. Uh, again, let's talk for a minute about the entirety of this race. Uh, we saw, obviously, some incidents. Uh, incidents and accidents, hints and allegations. Those all happen. They happen every race. But overall, I think we had a, a, a really excellent drive from a lot of people. Um, a ton of team members. A again, we talk about 20 25 teams starting this race. Uh, the number of teams is not equal to the number of drivers. We had close to 100 drivers participating in this event for the last 20 hours. 
Revis, exclamation point box in the chat for me, man. Thank you. <laughs> Steven's got you. He's got you cooked. And basically, I, I, again, to bring this many people together, for all of you to be here watching, I love it. I think this is fantastic that all you folks are here. I want to thank everyone so much from the drivers for putting on this show. I want to thank Kevin Huffman for setting this up and, and putting this together, uh, scheduling, uh, doing the sim grid setup, managing the driver lists, all these different things that happen in the background that nobody sees uh, with this 24-hour event. Kevin does that and did a great job. Will Will uh, Green for the, the live stewarding doing during this race really going above and beyond. He's awake now. He's not in a VC with us, but he is awake now uh, after spending most of his night over there in the UK handling stewarding reports. Uh, it takes all the drivers to put this together. Dylan Dunn for joining. Um, Josh for jumping into to commentary. I thank those guys because I'm not sure I would have made it all the way through without someone to talk to. We had some great conversations. This is still going to be a great stream to go back and watch afterwards, even with this happening. Uh, and, and, you know, even with this, the early server cutoff, I think this is which, just a great stream to go back and watch at some point. And we will be archiving it over to YouTube. Now a little over 21 hours live certainly my longest stream that i've ever done myself no matter what the uh, uh what else was going on but um just awesome to have all these people come together and put this all uh, all together and, and have everyone come together in this hobby that we love and i know i said together a lot right there but i'm a little tuckered so you all have to give me a minute uh, but again just waiting for that list to be put together zap brand again one of our great admins our our media designer working on that right now gonna pull that driver's list so number car car 70 you guys had a great race i gotta say uh Nikre in the chat you guys had a really fantastic race throughout this whole thing um bringing it together and really staying very stable throughout the entire race right let's let's take a moment actually while we're waiting for these guys let's see what we can find here and i don't even know because of the way i left and there we go some highlights so we can actually just throw these up real quick for you guys and bring some highlights into this race obviously going to start all the way back at the beginning uh, and we got quite a few here let's change our camera out as we look at the start of this race again in daylight if this thing will let me pull back to a helicopter view so right down into t1 Again, very clean through the start of this race. It was absolutely fantastic. I think these guys did a great job. All of our drivers bunched up. Again, incidents are going to happen. You're never going to stop that. But overall, some great driving at the front of this race, keeping it very clean all the way through. These teams knowing they've got 24 hours. There is no, absolutely no need to push here uh, to try and gain position or anything like that. That opportunity is going to come. So we're going to let this video play. Will this work? That will work. Let's jump over here. I'm going to let this play for you guys for a few minutes and we will watch this race. Uh, as soon as I do something else here first. There we go. That's better. right there you get the notes in the corner i'm gonna let this run as i take a quick step away i'm sorry guys i have to go ahead and use the restroom real quick um and i will be right back i will leave this view on for you guys so you can kind of watch again notes in the upper right hand corner as we get things put together to give away this awesome apex sim racing button box I ask y'all to give me just a few minutes take a look at some of the highlights from today's race again 21 hours we made it this time really hoping that at some point we're going to get a full 24 in these are these these are not races right these are events um this is so much bigger than a race to me to bring again a, together 100 people the organization behind it and to put this on i think is just something absolutely fantastic josh butler we see here vice pain So again, hold on one second. I'm just trying to grab the best views here. It's so hard just being able to use uh, mouse controls. Get this tuned in where I want it because there we go. 
PB2. That's the best one. It always is. But again, I'm going to leave you guys with this. Thank you, Steven, for that comment. I appreciate it. I'm going to take a quick step away as Zap, Huff, and Green work together to put this list together. We're going to leave these highlights on for you guys. And I'll be back in just a few moments as I step away to use the restroom. And again, bottom of my heart, thank you for everyone that participated in putting this event together. We'll be right back for this giveaway. Give me just a few minutes, folks.
Back, folks, again, watching some of the great highlights from today's race. So many great passes, and a lot we didn't catch during stream as we're trying to jump around and see everything that's going on. Evil Steve says, Discord knows. I assume he means Discord noise, and yeah, you're going to hear that as I receive messages on the side. Again, we're looking to get things together to do this Apex Sim Racing giveaway, and I know you guys are seeing my toolbar down there and everything right now. There we go. We'll make it back to full screen. Evil Steve, I'm drunk. Sorry. No problem, man. I am not drunk myself, but I have been vibing. Now hitting on, heading towards 3.30 a.m. Bradman and Stewards putting the list together as we get ready to do this Apex Sim Racing button box giveaway. And I am not currently in a BC, but if anybody would like to join me, let me know in the chat. I will jump into one as we watch these highlights. Old from today's race. We made it 21 hours, ladies and gentlemen. It was an absolutely fantastic time. I had an absolute blast. So much fun. Revis, I don't ever want you to type that sentence towards me again, and I definitely do not want you to say it with your words. With your mouth. I, you should not ever utter those words, much less type them. Horrible. Right there, Benjamin Astley. We saw that accident happen live on track. Just losing it down the hill, right into that wall, quickly heading into the pits afterwards. That team overall, great recovery from that. I mean, a lot of incidents today that a lot of teams had great recoveries from. Gasolina in that 555 Bentley. Looking for the overtake and able to make it cleanly. As Omega goes wide, coming through the last corner on track. Again, these guys doing a great job today. We had such, such a fun time during today's race. I appreciate y'all sticking around as we get through these last hassles. Server crashing on us four hours early. Very unfortunate. And honestly, very disappointing for, for myself. And I know, I think also very, you know, even as tired as they are, as, as ready to go get some sleep as they are at the end of the day i want to say I, I i'd be willing to speak for a lot of these drivers to say that they're extremely disappointed as well they wanted to finish this out when you've gone 21 of 24 hours you want to complete that task right you, you want to finish that race and so very disappointing with with servers and and modern communications what they are we have to work with what we've got and it's just really unfortunate that that had to end up happening. Really very unfortunate again. I, I just would love to have seen this finish out and we jump back to the beginning of our highlights right there. So again, great racing had by all today. Incidents are going to happen. Incidents did happen. However, I think overall we had a fantastic race today. Uh, looking at the race start here, very clean through T1 and 2. There were some incidents further back that caused some headache. However, those drivers, that, that team, you know, Remco Ottens being one of them, were really able to recover well. We talked about it during the race. 
that that team worked so hard, you know, getting knocked back from, from starting in P8, getting knocked back to P18 or 19. I mean, they were, they were dropped almost 10 positions. And at the end of the day, able to climb their way back up to P8, you know, if you look at the overall board, you say, wow, they stayed even the whole time. But at the, but no, they didn't because after knowing how far back they got, they got hammered, just the fact they were they were able to climb back up to to where they started the race where they qualified was just awesome to watch again both porsche teams that we watched today and i and i apologize not knowing uh, names off the top of my head but because i don't have the list right in front of me but just, but both tour both of the porsche teams that were running out front um heiss valik dozel and stempel in the number 70 porsche along with Handic, Husser, Martinez, and Lynn. Now, Martinez not able to drive for whatever reason, was unable to connect, but Lynn, Husser, and Handic really driving those cars well and working their way up to the front. I just read what Steven typed. I, this is why I don't read chat. This is why I try to avoid chat. But anyway, uh, both Porsche teams very consistent throughout the entirety of this race the entirety of the 21 hours that we did get in of this 24-hour race again these guys doing a fantastic job uh, being very consistent uh, that number 70 porsche working up to p2 just did a great job uh Asili, garen and was again a lot of consistency demonstrated throughout this entire race today even with the incidents we had, so many people working so hard to put it together. Nikre, of course, surprisingly solid. And I'm not even talking about the end. I'm not talking about, you know, that number 70 Porsche making it all up into, making it all the way up to P2. We had a lot of disconnects. But just the fact, both those teams, I think before, you know, even before a lot of the disconnects happened, things like that, had gained seven positions, right? had gained seven positions throughout the course of this race. That is something to be uh, celebrated. Those guys were extremely, again, consistent, stayed out of trouble, made the moves when they needed to, and really got themselves forced up through uh, this entire uh, list of drivers. Did a fantastic job. Lap 137, we see G. Steven here around Arison. Door bangs in front, and again, a lot of hard driving. We saw some door bangs today that I don't know if they got reported. Our stewards took care of that on the back end. But I got to say, we saw some driving that I would say on my end, I would not, and we talked about it during the during the stream, right? That I would not have reported something I would not have uh, had said needs to be reported. But at the same time, really hard racing and really enjoyable to watch. So with that, I am being told... We are ready. We're gonna drop out here of our highlights. We're gonna jump in here with Will Green. Mr. Will Green, Kevin Huffman, and Zap Brannigan. Gentlemen, how are we? Fresh as a daisy. Fresh as a daisy, because you got to sleep, punk. I did. Must be nice, I'll tell I, you what. I was just saying in here, I have a feeling I woke up to hear the stream going, oh, there's a car flying. <laughs> rolled over and muted it and then went back to sleep again and then rolled over to see the screen of be right we'll be right back or something like that and so that's, oh, that's fantastic something. hey you know what you know, listen we had planning on 24 do you guys want to help me with something real quick the three of you sure you guys yeah. absolutely want to help me with something we're going to do something and, and again our audience watching right now is going to get to see the sausage getting made and i'm
No sound. Can't hear us. All right, that was my fault. I want to do something and all of a sudden it disappeared. That was my fault. I'm being an idiot. Zap, you can turn your camera off if you want to. That's okay. Cool. We'll do the same. All right, guys. So what are we doing here? We, uh, we're giving away an Apex Sim Racing button box, right? We are. Excellent. So as I talked to Zap about earlier, we're going to use a random number generator. I know you guys were working hard to put that list together. We are at random.org. All I need from you guys. We can use the Wheel of Fortune if you want to. I would have to type every name in. Uh, I've got yep. that ready for you. You already do. Where is that? I can oh send you Oh my list. lord, look at Will. All right, Will, you're going to have to give me a minute. Have we got enough resolution? I can send you a link. Yeah, you if you got a link, send me screen. a link. Yeah, that'd be great. Because maybe and I can I'll send bring you a list of screen. names. I assume the names don't copy over, so I'll send you that uh, as well. Mm, yeah, no, they didn't. That's fine. I got it. I assume mm -hmm. I can import that, I guess? Uh, yeah, you can just paste the names in. It's only one name per line, so we don't need to um, gotcha. be doing anything interesting. Okay. We're going to get rid of these. We're going to take it's all the Discord chat. of Will's. Why is there one called Untitled? Uh, that's their that's their name. So these are their names as they appear on Discord. And there's a name untitled on Discord. Uh, there should be yes. Perfect. Okay. Whatever you say, my man. I'm gonna go full screen with this. All right, folks. This is what we've been waiting for. And let me rearrange things just a little bit here. We want to get that wheel right up front. So again, I want to before we do this. The th you know, I've heard a few people today tell me, thank you for running this stream. Thank you for doing what you did. It, it, end of the day, this is not about me. It's not about uh, Kevin Huffman. This is not about Will. This is not about Zap. This is not about any of us admins. This is about the drivers. This is why we do this. Is because we want people like ourselves who are passionate about what the, what we do as this with this hobby uh, and with sim racing. I want to thank all the drivers that drove today. I want to thank all the people that that watched this stream and uh, uh, supported those drivers, right? I, that's who I want to thank today. So again, I appreciate all the comments that I received in the chat. I appreciate all the comments I received on the side. But at the end of the day, this is about the drivers. I could literally shut my mouth, put, put the software on autopilot, and give these drivers the format. I do what I can just because I want to support you guys. And that's We're what just going to chuck an today. announcement out, Molson, uh, yeah, what's to up? say, go and make sure you're watching the stream because we're going to do the giveaway. So you do have to make sure you're watching the stream. Indeed. So give us a, an extra two minutes. I can talk about the drivers for an extra two minutes, Will. You're awesome. <laughs> Will, <laughs> Will, you have to, y'all have to understand watching this right now. Will, hello, Thomas. Hey, Janet is in our chat. Thomas. So, oh my, we got to get this guy in here. This is our, this is our solo driver, right? This is our solo driver, Thomas That is Jan it. Janch, and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, Thomas, and I apologize for that. Now in our chat, all of our drivers need to be watching this live stream right now. We are about to give away this Apex Sim Racing button box. But as I was saying, again, I could talk about these drivers all day because you guys are my entertainment. I gotta be honest, I came into sim racing, I've been sim racing for a long time now, let me qualify that. I've enjoyed driving games for a long time. And for most of my sim racing career, if that's what we, you know, we do the air quotes, if that's what we want to call it, that was on controller and such. Um, I still enjoy doing it. I enjoy iRacing. I enjoy ACC. I love sitting down in my rig, feeling that steering wheel, feeling that force feedback, and really being able to. But my entertainment comes from you guys, comes from these drivers, comes from the guys that I get to watch week after week who I know, I don't ever get to see it, but who I know put in the practice. This is absolutely fantastic. They put in the practice on each of these tracks. They work their asses off to provide a great race, not only for themselves, but the other guys that they have on track with them, right? Doing their best to not cause incidents, doing their best to give space where it's warranted, doing their best to uh, the slower drivers opening up and, and letting these guys through. So end of the day, uh, again, all the comments I received today, all the things that people had to say, I really wanted to say that I, my thank yous go to the drivers and my thank yous go to the folks that come here and watch. 
uh, whether whether you're a driver, whether you're a member of Box Three or not, that's what I appreciate because this is where I get my hook. You guys are feeding into my need to see this. So, uh, and also to Will Green and Huff and Zap, the work you guys put in the background. Dunn for joining tonight. I don't know what happened to Dunn. Dunn up and disappeared, uh, but he kept me entertained this evening as well. Josh Butler for joining during the stream. You guys are fantastic. I think Dunn got lost at the driver's meeting. Did he? He just up and disappeared. <laughs> He's on. still over there now, you know, Is after he? we convened and determined, you know, <laughs> what we were going to do. We lost and, you know, we, we I don't know if you, you covered it or if we covered it, but initially the guys were like, yeah, let's keep going. Let's reset the server. Four yeah. hours. Let's go. But I'm like, you know, everybody calm down. You're fresh out of the car. Let's make a rational decision, not an emotional one. We threw up a vote and majority was just to call it. I, you the, know, I, I think it was the right move. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and I, it th sucked, I, but, I think know, so as well. I just, uh, yeah. I just dragged Dunn down. For some reason, Dunn is not allowed to access the steward, <laughs> the stewarding VC. I don't know why, uh, but we've got him in here now. So again, I wanted to give thanks to him. I don't know if he was hearing it on the stream or not, but I want to thank I, yeah. Dylan Dunn for, for coming in and, and hanging with me. We went overnight with this race, now uh, running on 3.30 in the morning where I'm at. And again, to all the viewers, so let's get to it. Are the, I don't know if all the drivers are here, but we are going to go ahead and click to spin this wheel. And again, giving away that Apex vertical button box V2, their version two of that. Again, we heard Kevin talk about it on stream. Very solidly built. Those buttons with great some great tactile feel. And one of our drivers that participated in this 24, well, 21 hour race, whatever we want to call it, is going to take that home. So... Uh, go ahead, Will. I'm going to let you, Will, because you had to do all the stewarding. You let me know when I need to click to spin this wing, this thing and pick our winner today. I think go straight away. Let's go. Excellent. Let's hit it. Click to spin, and there it goes. The big wheel is a turning. Oh. Quiv is our winner of that Apex Sim Racing button box. Y'all couldn't hear it, but I got to hear the applause in my ear. So, Quiv, I know, Will, you're going to know who that is. Yeah, um, we got him. Versus a game, versus the game, uh, you know, the in, the in race name. Uh, who is that in race? Do we know? Uh, I can tell you which team they're in. Okay. Uh, Quiv was in Meatball Mode Sport. They were a duo. Oh, a duo. So only two drivers in that team. Excellent. Very good. Well, Quiv, you are the winner of that Apex Sim Racing button box. There it is, folks. We made it. We made it through. Again, not quite the 24 hours, but this stream having lasted 21 and a half hours. Not in... Revis says not in VC. Spin again. Shut up, Revis. Butler, I just... Can one of you hey, guys handle to... Butler? Dunn, hop Dunn, over there and gonna, go mute him, please. Do you want to handle Butler? Is that is that <laughs> do we is that do we Dunn's job do here now? He's just handling Butler. <laughs> I, I'm fine with that. Do you want to spend one more time just as I come back up in case Quiv for whatever reason? Yeah, fair enough. Is what I've sent him a DM to uh to request his info, but uh this we'll do it again for a backup. Yeah. Just okay, so just it's to have a backup a in case show. Quiv yep. in case Quiv for whatever reason. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and Second runner up, we have. Yep. Yeah. And just to make sure we've got <laughs> someone in case Quiv not available, we'll have a name as a backup. In case someone doesn't answer. Some people join Discord and Discord servers and then disappear. So Rava Java. That is our backup. So we're gonna hold on to that name in case we do not hear from Quiv. That will give us a backup. I don't I don't know why I hear chuckling behind me. I'm very tired. Done. What? I'm, I'm pretty sure it was you with your what? I heard you I, chuckling. I, I don't know. I'm half asleep right now. Yeah, I'm losing it at this point. So, uh, 20, 21 and a half hours deep, guys. Lateral <laughs> G's teammate. Excellent to see. But again, a big shout out and thank yous to, uh, to you gentlemen in here with me right now. Done. Kept me awake and alive throughout this stream. Huff, you as well, along with the organization. Will Green, uh, like, holy shit, dude. I don't know what you do with stewarding, but you are some kind of machine. So, excellent on that. Hey, Thank it wasn't you so too much. bad in the end. Wasn't we too got, bad in the end? Yeah. 
We 29 didn't have too many reports. Really, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Well, that's good to hear, and it wasn't too, too well. difficult. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching this evening. I want to thank all of the drivers that joined us. You see them there. I mean, that's a huge wheel, right? That's a lot of names. I didn't actually count them down through this list. That's a lot of names to pull together for a 24-hour race, and it's only because this organization, uh, Will, yes, Will's new name is Lando Norris, apparently, as assigned by eSports legend Ryan <laughs> Hannafin. And I'm probably still not pronouncing his last name right. Like, hoping he doesn't beat on me for it too hard. Guys, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. We appreciate each and every one of you. You guys bring it together. We will be back at this channel right here. We're going back to Imola for 90 minutes next Sunday. So be sure and join us right here for our, uh, actually we got three races left in season two of PC ACC. I'm hoping we're gonna be back for more coverage of, uh, let's just run through them quick. We got, we got time. I was expecting to go 24 hours and I'm gonna get like an extra three hours of sleep. This is ridiculous. I don't know what to do. Yeah, so again, me too, man. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I don't know what to do with myself now. I almost don't want to go to bed. Uh, again, we're back for an endurance race, a 90 minute endurance race at Imola next week, uh, Sunday, April 24th, 7 p.m. UTC. Don't forget next level racing, giving up that FGT light to our pro class champ. Only three races left. And as we've talked about beer cup, track, delicious nine, four, nine and box three motorsports coming together. Porsche cup cars, BMW M twos. Tuesday nights, if you're in for more casual racing, it's called the Beer Cup for a reason, guys. You probably want to join if you just want to have a good time. Thank you, Revis, for that. Much appreciated. Euro Trip, more casual racing. Will Green running that on Mondays, 7 p.m. UTC. Those guys are going to be in Spa this week. Xbox started this week. So many great things happening at Box 3 Motorsports. And we haven't announced it yet, but casual weekday racing racing coming to our Xbox League very, very soon. And if you enjoyed, if you enjoyed today's 24 hour endurance, you get a small taste of that starting this summer, May 14th, again, in conjunction with Trackalicious and 949 for summer endurance series, four races across the entire summer, GT3, GT4, multi-class racing. And it is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Those will be covered across multiple channels. So make sure you pay attention on whatever server you're a member of so that you can know where to go watch those races as they happen. And again, I want to thank everybody so much for being here. From the bottom of my heart, thank you to Huff, Will, uh, Zap, Dunn, who just dipped out on us. You guys are all fantastic. 21, almost 22 hours, 21 hours and 40 minutes. My longest stream yet, our longest race yet, and we'll be back. Don't worry, we're going to do another 24. It's going to be a while, maybe one or two of these a year, but I see it happening again. Thank you to everyone. For being here you guys are absolutely fantastic and uh we'll be back next sunday so you guys hold on for that back to imola for 90 minutes have a great week